Um, I found EFAB way back when I saw Mola's Soma review and Wolf through an impromptu stream. The way the story goes is uh, we were just hanging out and we were going to stream it. And then Rags, his stream wasn't working, so I did it. We did a video from Downward Thrust and Jared. And the following week, he released that video. And I was like, wouldn't it be fun if we responded to it live? And then the rest is history. Be weird. so sure that Sony is in the position to sell a huge more amount. Now I know it seems impossible to watch movies wrong, but you're watching movies wrong. This isn't supposed to happen to space wizards. <laughs> the giant alien cow thing is one of my favorite additions. There's no reason not to bomb right like right I'm gonna have to beat off pretty hard after this. Can I join you? Or, 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 my name is not Craig. <laughs> Who fucking Where said did you that? Get this? You can only really look at The Last Jedi as a sequel if you interpret it as a sequel. What? A Ruby Tootie. Cowboy Judy. Massive faggot. You get to look at women. Water makes things wet. Water is not wet. With, with, with. with. You were the souls in my mind. I The one in the middle of the target. Spiders fucking tell the future. 66 hours. <laughs> The intellectual gaming community of JJ Vicks. Oh, what a bad one. They did. The grape is absolutely a weird all Slice and dice. Bad people get more human rights than skinny people. Green Daddy J. You can take Mission Impossible to Jack and Jill. If you're part of the toxic brood. With artificial barriers of blockage. Like DMV Thanos. I would love my adopted child as well as my biological child. Cora is better than Aang. Hey, what's going on? I stand with Don, with Don, with Don. Don, stop believing! Yeah. <laughs> Harassment. That Asian dish. My master, Sora the Great, is deemed welcome. The spirit of General Grievous appears. Yes, this is part of why we play this movie for no fucking reason. <laughs> Here's the thing, if you're going to buy bath water from somebody, you deserve Herbie's. This movie has female characters and it's meant for children. This is bad. Objectively, it's bad to get Yoda. Lightning books. <laughs> me high cheek sent me high. Me high cheek sent me high. Everyone knows what a fucking Y-Wing is, you disingenuous thing! One, point two. There are planet bars. Human twing that I am. Come, jizz, hot come, jizz, erupts from the head of my cock. Hot jizz, it jerks out across me. Come all over me. Come all over me. Thank you for the super chat. Don bless, praise, tunnel. <laughs> Epic celestial proportions. I don't give a damn how good that ship is pointed. I don't want my spaghetti for a night. Is lay of man. Is lay of man. Glad when we're in the middle, go, 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 Jeb Bridges, Jeb Connor, Jeb Portstein, Jeb Goldblum, Jeb of the Hut, Jeb FK, Jeb Jeb Abrams, Jeb Snow, Jeb Shapiro, Jeb Trump, Jeb X, Jeb Sama Bin Laden, <laughs> Jeb Sama. <laughs> Whoa, I like that chick. Here's a McMuffin. <laughs> I'm closeted and homosexual. Real cause of all of your problems? You don't want to fuck? Cook cares. According to Wikipedia, a hat is a head covering. Well, what do you mean a cane is a clothing? We're debating garbage. <laughs> Wait, you fucking turn. Moonwalking in medieval warfare. Oh, what up, my Ewok? I make y'all sound like juice. <gasps> juice. You have to be 
movie bomb sex slave This force is considered the gay Is this guy supposed to be Alfred? Doesn't really have a vision Hey guys, Wilford here Bullard rags have a base, they like anything Where's Hitler's body? What's in my pocket? Doing intercourse on the job Don't mess around with eager letter I heard that you love minorities I do The one that will never be good What the fuck? Are you okay? It's charming, but what? No, it's a question! Fucking dead shit! Even though it's the way through! Everything is going to be phenomenal! It's just be jealous of his scrotum. No, never mind. Because it's my scrotum. I don't move with the door open. Rugby commentator. Oh, here comes Alwyn George with the ball. Here we go. TFA Part 4, mark my words, in August 2021. Pretend that it's what you want in Clown War. How Jedi's role create and they can't love, can't love. Come yum. It says Wilfred Brimley's 5'8. It also has brackets alive. It'd be really awkward if he fucking dies. It's time to let the children play. I am a girl. I'm gonna keep Harry to Harry Potter. An adventure about jewelry. Go, go, cars. Oh, thank you. Does it hurt? Hey, Mo, just before you go, I, I'm just gonna go for a piss. Whoa, we're a quarter porch in there. Whoa, bring me that droid there. Literally every death that happens is Joel's fault. Joel is not a fucking beloved character. No, 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 no. It completely solves the Mary Jane problem. <laughs> My channel was growing, but I was so unhappy to the point where I would like not be able to sleep. This platform can help people. It can hurt them, and it can aid in the sickening technology addiction and social media at the end of the road for the right person, even if it's just one person. You can, you can help someone. Fuck me, please, I need that cock. The literal wave of cum. That feels so fucking good in my tight ass. Fuck, jizz, cum, fuck, cum, all over me. Defenders think they're so incredibly fucking smart that they can find people to subtleties. Donald Trump stole my summer, my Halloween, my ability to enjoy life itself. <laughs> Opinions don't kill terrorists. When life gives you lemons, you tell life to fuck right off. Fuck all of you. I have lost all respect for you, Mauler. Your critiques are poor. The Legion of Squash. Do you think like eight Smurfs to give you a hand job? Dame, 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 oh, dame, no, no, yo. Oh my god. Sugi te, sugi, sugi te. Inside, man, he hates to be like. No, he covered it up, you piece of shit. I completely agree with you, Frenchie Smash. It's the equivalent of white bread. I'm curious to see what Hitler would say about the sequel trilogy. Manny, how come your internet face is all fucked up? <laughs> I'll take our loss and learn to fly. White is better than anything that involves anything other than white. Buller is literally Welsh. That should be all you need to know about him to prove his points. He's not even Gamorian. Gar is incredible. Is uh, Hitler a bad villain because he lost the war? I'm not watching a 12-hour review. That's the death of creativity itself. <laughs> I'm a 33-year-old straight white man. You're 33? <laughs> Yes or no? You guys know, let me. Timing tests. No timing. Yep. I don't think it's weird that some man called his mother by her first name. What did you want him to say? Save my mom. Cunting piece of horse radishing fuck. Absolute turd of a pill. I have in all my years never had a more unpleasant time watching a film that I have sitting through. Fucking awesome! Hell plus alienation, plus fear, plus despair, plus self worth. EFAP spreads their Snyder derangement syndrome propaganda. <laughs> A witch practices witchcraft. A wizard practices wizard. I don't believe in bad. It didn't work for you. That's totally cool.
Linda, that evil bitch stole my life from me. Full balls on the edge of a cliff. What's everyone's opinion on cock and ball torture? I don't really take much issue with any fetish anyone has. I, I assume that he was talking about, like, in a war or something. Wonder Woman shit too good for punching, but not for raping. Gene cream of beta thing. Have you ever wondered why things are smaller the further they get away? My mom is an heir to cook the uh, chicken for me. And what am I supposed to do? Die? One big futuristic science fiction allegory of the Vietnam War. We have enemies that are so unlike us that they're basically an alien race. Smash your mouth! Some have the ding, some have the ding. Explosion! What about the ding? This is the off story. You guys go one at a time. Believe. Believe in Noom. Believe. Believe. Believe in Noom. Believe. Noom won't work if you don't believe. There is no depression, there is no... The virgin. Let's go pluck, pluck, pluck. This is the Chad father I wish to engage in mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> you could cut pretty much anything with a cake. Am I on acid? Train to Hassan. All aboard the Nuggy Express. <laughs> you don't need to always use <laughs> or the do be 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 We only see this loathsome cunt for but a brief moment or two. Anyway. I am such a fat face. This <laughs> plan is getting too long. Too long. Oh, he threw his rage. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. Go to Trungo. Go to Trungo. I am Trungo. Chicky Grumbo. Fuck, alright, it's not good. The fact they can't like, be able to meet by and the fact that they cooperate the way that they do seems a bit convenient. <laughs> That's what I told <laughs> now. And he wasn't up to hell, he is the right decision. Dun, 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 dun,
McGregor is a fine actor. Obi Wan was a terrible character. At the moment, Obi Wan silently equips his lightsaber. Oh, no. for a good time. Jelly, 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 jelly. What's the volume of like a standard bathtub, and how much hot cream do you have? I think the volume of the standard bathtub is silent. Shut up, rags. I want to fill you with hot cream. The gratuitous just golden blood flying everywhere. They went over the top to just have it literally in your face. It wasn't literally in her face. Oh, that's true, though, rags. No, that's how he found his way out. Ooh, mon ami. Ooh, mon ami. Ooh, mon ami. Gotta get my pills. Watch this video. Switch my body. Oh, God. Rags. We're not all look the same, Rags. Why did I call you Rags? <laughs> I'm Rags. <laughs> no. All right. With that, thank you all very much for hanging out with us. The kind messages, the kind donations, and the kind insights here and there, back and forth. Thank you all so much for watching. You sleep well now. Good night, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Good bye. <laughs>
It was freaking nuts, man. That was it's big nuts. I think that uh, Nick, Nick, and, Nick and Frets. Thanks for a very celebratory Nothing opening to what will be us watching videos with people about opinions on things. Some of the most exciting, explosive content you can ever imagine. Yeah, so, uh, baby. But yeah, you know. All kinds of different things are probably going to happen, was, was my overall point. How long have you got, Mel? Are you going to stay up for the full, probably like 26 hours? I have until I want to go to bed. And wow. then I wake back up, and then I'm back again. You're a creature of habit, this whole sleeping thing. I've heard you've been doing it for a while. I, uh, don't, don't tell anyone, but I'm, I'm doing it like every day, actually. While well, the German sleeps, EFAP. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy like that. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be chilling. I'm, I have nothing to do. I did all my things. I, I had some barbecue today at my dad's place because he had the birthdays this week. So naturally, I'm going to go give him a visit and stuff. Uh, and now I'm just, I'm free. I'm just chilling. I'm just, just tell here. him I can't come to your birthday, dad. I'm e-fapping. And then you just exactly. hang up and don't explain. <laughs> yeah. It's like your birthday isn't even today. Like it was like a couple of days ago. You could have done it then. It's like, I mean, really, on. it was like 50, 60 years ago. So. Yeah, so I don't even know what the fuck you're doing, Dan, so just leave me alone. I told you to stop calling me, by the way. <laughs> just like, one of, the, one of the people that are on the way, I sent the message saying, yeah, join whatever you want. Their response was, I'm free if you want people, if someone to join. <laughs> it's like, I mean, how how long like, will this go on? When will the cycle end? It's, a, it's, a, it's all good, yes, jump in. But anyway, uh, I mean, I'm just going to get, get us going. You know, people will join as time uh, yeah. progresses. We got... Dude, um, we got we. This is one that I've wanted to cover for some time. Here's a here's a watch together link. That would probably be a good start too, wouldn't it? Oh, and ironically, this will be one of our shortest intros. Um, That's true. How long do yeah. we usually do intros for? A, An hour. But, yeah. But for the anniversary ones, I always find it's like, oh, we best get covering things soon because, you know, one video will take us the whole anniversary, and people will be like, wow, remember the Grace Randolph one? My God. Oh yeah, that took us twelve days. <laughs> <laughs> that she was she's like the multiverse of madness of uh of movie reviewers yeah well eh. we might just have another grace randolph video uh, on the way who knows Yay. but yeah you know, i was gonna say have have hope have confidence i'm sure it's gonna be exciting mm. um all right let, i'm gonna go ahead and guess that the aspect ratio isn't gonna be correct or rather whatever because they always change it um between when I when I go offline between weeks on uh Oh Jesus. Oh, Why it. is it right. now? Let us see. Subject. Yelled at me. Oh, you know what? That looks like a So that wasn't just oh. hyper loud for me then. You guys gotta turn it down and low at the default. You never know what they're gonna do to you, these videos. Yeah, yeah, they come at oh, you so cool. fierce. So um, angry, so yelly. Yeah, it has changed in a way that I almost didn't notice, but I noticed it. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's there's another video I actually want to cover, but we'll, we can only do it once per year, okay? That's how the rules work, I suppose, with the billing. But this one, yes. this one's a you classic. It's a very strigid, strict and rigid, strigid rule system. Rigid. Yeah. One of them, it's a classic conversation about, about video game difficulty. Which I think uh, you've had some interest in thinking about that recently, have you not, Mr. Fringy? Um, yeah. In some ways. <laughs> it's what I'm thinking about, yeah. Perhaps this will elucidate or ameliorate such discussions. Uh, we'll say, yeah. Who can wow, possibly... that's some fancy words. Oh, I'm, a, I'm what's called a professional debater. I know all uh, of the things. Debater? Oh, hello, Theo. Hello, hello. Welcome. Oh. I mean, hello. Yeah. We're doing uh, we're doing some coverage as you do. We're gonna be looking at um, the classic discussion. We have I don't even know if we've covered it properly on EFAP yet. We probably have, but you know how how difficult should video games be? And I wonder what game will come up in this discussion. Who knows? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what could it be? I mean, Theo is here, so <laughs> <laughs> what? I look forward to the day where no one can. What ever game be a video could it game? be? I'm gonna skip us past the intro because I don't even know if that's copyrighted yet. Oh, oh okay. how very exciting! Oh, but he still looks relatively normal. I don't know that hat. Hello, Skellington Boglin. Today's your birthday. What's that? 
you're very excited about your birthday. Look, I don't know when the video starts, so we're just gonna have to listen to some boggling stuff, all right? He's quite a boggling collection. He's got yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, he nine. Be and then he's got the ones at the bottom. Then he's got the one he's now. taken out of the the one he's using as a prop. It's it's mm. ruined now. It's out of the box. The yeah, value's yeah. been they lose tarnished. value significantly. Yeah, once a Boglin is unboxed, See? Not, there's a few things worse than an unboxed Boglin. I was gonna say, yeah. One of the standards. We've had that going on EFAP for a while. We've all known this. I've got a gift for you. Any Jimquisition topic today will be of your choosing. What's that? You think that's brilliant? That's quite a sound it makes. <laughs> that is a really strange sound. <laughs> also, I, don't, I don't know if the Boglin really had time to say all of those words. Well, it's a different language. They speak. They can speak like whole paragraphs in sentences. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, I like guess if you're from Star the Trek. There you go. We have my first Star Trek reference ever because I've been watching Star Trek. Oh my god, what was the reference? I missed reference. it. Yeah, uh, they t uh, the, the Boglin talks like the Binars from Star Trek. Whoa, Mel's like a nerd yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to get in-depth and knowledgeable about lore that isn't wrestling? And now Jim Sterling <laughs> is on Binar. <laughs> What's got an idea for one already? Well, tell me, just for you, what Jimquisition will we do today? Oh. <laughs> Whether or not Sekiro should have an easy mode. Every That's time, no. every <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> well, yeah, but to be fair, I can't actually remember what uh, the, the opinions are in this video, so it could be stuff we agree with. I don't actually know. Let's find out. Oh, it won't be. Probably Jim, not, yeah. Jim likes his easy mode talk. <laughs> oh god, Sekiro doesn't need an easy mode. <gasps> oh. Sekiro doesn't Correct. not need an easy mode oh, either. Ah. Ah. You see? Ah. 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 Indeed, it's time to talk okay. about difficulty in mm. games again, as yet another challenging no, video that- No, you decided to. <laughs> you, your Every your time. Your told you to. You can't do We that. don't- okay, We don't have to have this conversation. Because We've like never had you, to have this conversation. From Software put out a game- want to make this video. From Software put out a game, a bunch of people can't complete it, and then <laughs> this happens. It's like, shouldn't they make the mode where you just press it's forward win? It's kind of and then they just be owed victory. And they can get hyperbolic and be like, this is exclusionary to a like discriminatory degree. I'm just like, whoa, I was just making a video game, jeez. <laughs> game has hey. released to the uproar of a conversation that has only gotten more yeah. egregiously toxic over the, the years. Well have you contributed to that, Jim? <laughs> 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 yeah. Fucking what talk what conversations don't get toxic at this point? <laughs> You, mm -hmm. you brought in the Boglins to this conversation, yep. just to be fair. <laughs> they were not a part <laughs> of this discourse until you decided it had to be that way. And you broke them out of jail. Dark Souls to Cuphead. Lately, any video game that's marketed on its challenge, and let's not forget it's mostly marketing to blame for all this bullshit, we get into a... I don't know about that. These games are tough for a lot of people. Was... I guess weird yeah. gets around. Yeah, it is tough. Yeah. I wouldn't call that marketing, well, <laughs> like people talking I, it, about it. It is kind of, it's funny to say that it's marketing as though it wasn't a meme that many like games journals and websites would compare games that have nothing to do. Do people compare Crash Bandicoot to Dark Souls? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, there was an era where I think it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's a discourse marketing. issue, not a marketing yeah. issue. Yeah. When the is FromSoft going to make Dark Soul Kart? Uh, Dark Soul Kart. Um, we're still uh, waiting uh, on Bloodborne Kart. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, still waiting on it. Well, it could just be the yeah. FromSoft Kart, but it has all of the characters. Yeah, it has all of them. It yeah, it's like... Gwyn you would, and you don't Hunter and all of the characters. Multiverse Kart. Kart. And then yeah, they're racing can, on these crazy the courses, crazy. you know? Like, you could have a... What's it called? Analondo. You could have an Analondo course. All yeah. the yeah, levels. All the cool levels that you love now in racing kart form. That's right. <laughs> also, I the mean, game I don't hate the idea. Hard. <laughs> and of course, I don't know a single right individual play. who wouldn't play the shit. Yeah, out of oh, this game. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> I'd play that. <laughs> Sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Massive debate over whether games should have easy modes, whether accessibility options matter, or whether games. I'm going uh, to wait, 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 wait. Those are two going... different things. Well, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah, That's I'm going to pause it here. My prediction. 
In this video, Jim will constantly confuse to the point of dishonestness the concepts of accessibility and difficulty. He, I mm -hmm. know he has done it in the future, in this year, in Dark Souls year of 2022. Oh, for Elden Ring? Whatever. Yeah, for Elden Ring. He's, I know he's already done that. How, however, could it be that I know that? Hey, no. uh, I was willing that to be charitable. I thought he was <laughs> distinguishing them because he understood that they were different. Well, here's but, the thing. Hmm. Sometimes he probably does, and sometimes he forgets that they're different, and he can and he melds them together if he wants to okay. make people who want... Like, For instance, you always get the thing where people say they don't want an easy mode or that game should be difficult, and they get lambasted for not wanting any accessibility. Maybe it's that's fair, not a fair comparison. to say there will be at least one or two blurry lines when it comes to very mm -hmm. specific ideas about whether or not something relates to accessibility or difficulty, but I would assume... It's pretty clear as to the difference, but I suppose we'll find out. They are related. I guess they're, the, they're, uh, they're related, but different. The difficulty. I've had the, arg I've had the argument work. made to me that some disabilities can be things like people's cognitive reaction time. So doing things like making an easy mode in which the enemies are like slower is is an accessibility feature in the same way that a high contrast color mode would be. I don't personally agree with that, but that, that's that's the My... case I've had made. My gut instinct is to say that no Souls game or any Souls adjacent game even approaches anywhere even near needing anything like that. Because these games are difficult, make no mistake, but they are not that difficult once you actually understand what they are asking of you and what you have to, to do. Here. Hmm. Yeah, he's cool. I guess, um, <laughs> I guess it's a matter of uh, when you think about difficulty, you've got difficulty in the sense that it's hard to wrap your head around how to do it like how to engage with it versus maybe more uh i guess normal difficulty which is just you need a certain level of dexterity to to do it you like you just yeah. need to be able to hit the buttons fast enough and quick enough at the right time um, and, and dark souls and then... i would say just quickly dark souls requires nothing of you on that front in terms of competence with dexterity uh, or it maybe requires next to nothing from you Sekiro kind of does. Like, they, yeah, they, Sekiro requires more. Well, because the parry timing is extremely generous. It, it is generous, but you do have to move your finger pretty fast in order to, especially fight some of the, you know, the the sort of robed samurai enemies who uh, like they don't wear armor or anything like that. They just yeah. have those attacks that are kind of a, a one two three like really fast thing. I, I could see people having trouble with that if they have. Um, mobility issues in their fingers, for example. Sure, sure. That doesn't mean there's no other way to fight those enemies, though. So it's like, well, at a certain I, point, how... <laughs> I just noticed here that the subtitle or the, uh, the tagline for this article is the difference between what you quote-unquote earn and what you're owed. That is very interesting. What you're owed? I wonder. Well, because it what says, when is exclusion a valid design choice? Something I've been thinking about a lot lately... I'm sure it has nothing to do with any type of video that I might be working on, is um, are video games, by virtue of being necessarily interactive, are they also necessarily exclusionary? And that because they're yeah. interactive, it's conceivably impossible. Well, I, I, I think the answer is yes, but like I'm, I'm still not sure, like 100%. Um, is a game necessarily exclusionary because you have to play it to, to you know, progress? I mean, that goes into the concept of what a challenge even is. What a I, game guess, is. I guess I'm, going even, more, even, I'm going even more fundamental than that. Let's say it's even a walking simulator where all you need to do is walk forward. You don't have to You're solve any puzzles. You don't need to engage in... Com uh, well, I haven't played that, so... That's the like, example you usually go to. No fail states, but you still have to walk forward. It's like there's conceivably one person who can't figure that out for some reason. So conceivably, it's impossible to complete compared to once a movie starts, it plays. You can get up and leave, you can fall asleep, but like the film will play to the end. Sure, you don't have the whole experience, but like there's nothing that can prevent you from uh, seeing it through to the end, essentially, compared to a video game where you. Yeah, it, a movie I, I asks think, for inaction on your part as opposed to the well, action of getting up and walking away. Video games are an active activity like books are. I guess book, books are kind of interesting because, again, the book is complete and there for you to read. And even if you can't understand what you're reading, I guess you can still read it. But it'd be more so comparable to games, I guess, than like any other medium because it demands something of you. 
other than I guess having your eyes on the screen, and even then, with like well, a film, some... you don't have to. You don't want to, right? What's interesting about that is the uh, injecting then accessibility options in relation to books. It's like, well, you you just have to get the words to the person's brain. So Braille would be if they're blind, wow. or translation I if they don't so. have the language. Like these would all be considered accessibility exactly. for books, you know. An easy mode for a book where it's like, ah, the prose is simpler. It's like, right, Ooh, right. I don't think people would be fed to that. For yeah, and, and that's it, right? Like, if, if they release the version of the book, like, let's just say Lord of the Rings, but it's like really simplified language and it's only, let's say, 10 pages and the words are all really big and thick. You're like, oh. It could be part of a series, yeah. You could call it prose for noobs. And then, and then, the, <laughs> <laughs> you, I guess you might have. Uh, book is an audio book? Nah, I don't, I think that's accessibility, surely. Like, if you're blind, you can listen to books, but it doesn't change the sub, the contents of the book. Maybe that's the difference between difficulty and accessibility is what are the changes to the actual material. Well, Funnily enough, um, I actually would concede that um, listening to, let's say, Game of Thrones versus reading it is a different experience. Um, but of course. I don't know. I think it's like negligible in terms of the idea of one is better than the other. A lot of people say that reading it is better than listening to someone describe it, but some people might argue the reverse because you get um, voices and characters so like sometimes. It's totally subjective, isn't it? What well, you prefer, right? Instead of saying it's totally subjective, I would rather just highlight what are the pros and cons of either side if such a thing could be agreed upon. Oh, I think there sure, are but, some but things. A preference it's somewhat adjacent, but it's worth saying that a lot of the time when people listen to audiobooks, it's while they're doing something else. You right, know? Yeah. So the full focus isn't on the thing. True. That's Where... that's why for fiction, I've almost entirely switched to audiobooks, just because I can't justify setting the hours aside to just read a fantasy novel. But if I'm doing other stuff, I can listen to Brandon Sanderson or whatever. I guess that's. Uh, I wonder if that's indicative of like a problem with society now that <laughs> people feel like they can't just set aside an hour or like two or three hours to read a book. There's always got to be multitasking going on. Mm -hmm. Like well, I don't we say this while playing a video game or we say know. this as though people aren't doing that with everything anyway. Like people are watching films and TV on their computers while that'll be second That's screen stuff saying. most of the time, yeah. Um, what I'm saying, yeah. The th the, the cinema at least that means you got one hundred percent focus, so it still so exists. One hundred percent focus on the majesty of Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, Yay. that was great. Pure cinema. I loved watching that movie in cinema. That was very fun. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have a lot of hours about Marvel in this. <laughs> in this anniversary stream, the games yeah, are trying to squeak lines. in at the beginning, like, talk about us, we exist. <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah. they're video games. Hey, remember us? Games should be being an exclusive only to those with a natural skill or those who, as they say, get good. Way yeah. back in 2016, yeah, yeah, yeah. the opposite root cause led to the exact same discourse. Back then, the uproar was over games already having very easy Wait, modes. so this is Star Fox Zero. Star Fox Zero has bad controls. Like that, <laughs> I, I don't know if people were defending the difficulty. That game just has bad controls. That's interesting, um, which isn't is it? A, like. I think that's mm -hmm. probably one of the worst problems you could have in a video game is when the controls themselves are bad. Fighting a player, or you like, have to yeah, the finagling with these weird buttons. Well, because and... for people who don't know, Star Fox Zero's gimmick was that it used the Wii U gamepad as like a second screen, but that You're was the primary. Computer. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it was the primary targeting. So like, if you looked at the TV, you couldn't aim properly because the aiming was calibrated to the screen on the gamepad. Rather it's than horrible. the screen, yeah, it, it was it was an interesting idea that never should have made it past like <laughs> the, the concept stage. Sorry, Platinum Games. And yeah, they should, have, not, they should have tested this and realized it was terrible and never sold I, it. Well, I think it was. Um, I might be wrong, but I think it was Miyamoto thought that the idea was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and Miyamoto often has a lot of interesting perspectives, like in terms of Miyamoto. Thinking outside of the box has uh has created a lot of good stuff, but occasionally you end up with yeah that kind of problem with Star Fox Zero, where it's just like the idea was so dominant that it just overshadowed like a lot of the fundamental problems that existed with this um with this with this uh, control scheme. Yeah, it was Platinum who developed it based on Miyamoto's idea, and they seem to get, you get kind of a luck of the draw with Platinum, as if they're given a project that they can just knock out of the park, like Nier Automata or Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and then they get things like Star Fox Zero, and it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> we'll you, try. You make me think, though, about like how, let's say theoretically, that a game has shitty hitboxes all throughout to the point of it being really, really bad. 
Like imagine oh, that was put in like terrible. a Dark Souls game. That'd be really a bad. whole game. Um, yeah, like what? the whole fucking game. And then someone <laughs> is like, you know, God, this game is so hard. I wish they were in easy mode where the, the hitboxes weren't shit. Also, like like <laughs> misunderstanding that it's not even difficulty. That's just shitty design. Yeah, that's just yeah. bad. Mm. You gotta like make sure you draw a line, I guess, and how this works. Notably, Star Fox Zero boasting a zero difficulty mode in which the player couldn't die. A mode that toddlers could play if oh, they want. Is True? that why no. brought up? Okay, interesting. Yeah, fuck kids, no. <laughs> if you make a game for kids, go nuts. It's just like, yeah. if you have the idea of like, you better make sure you pack a game in with a mode that children are like, yeah, I'm right. Okay. My five-year-old nephew does not need to play Sekiro. Or gamers trademark didn't like this at all for reasons I still don't quite understand. I mean, the, the big argument for me is how dishonest as as do you have to be? As long as you didn't force the developers to do it, I guess I don't give a shit. Like they can yeah. put it in if they really want to. But uh... well, I mean, I don't see the problem with a developer if they want to add like an easy mode. Kind of where I'm at at this point is it's kind of up to the developer really if they want to do it or not. Yeah, it, um, what I'm, what I'm getting at when I say force isn't like a company saying you have to do it, we won't fund it. I'm talking about like social pressures like you're a bad person if you don't put it in easy mode. It's like calm right, the fuck down. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because that's obviously eventually they'll buckle if they get enough people saying they're bad people for not doing it. And it's like, great. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it's important that the the core game is still the same if you played like on normal, I guess. That they still have their well, mode so. where they intended it, how, it's, how, they, how they wanted it to be played. I'm That's a kind of consideration is that, that implementing yeah. another difficulty mode that takes development time. I, I Maybe not that much. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it takes yeah, development yeah. time. And that's part of the reason why I don't like that the conversation ignores just the legitimate choice of, nah, we want to do this and we only we want to have a hard game. We want our game do to be you, hard. Do people want your Souls games to be even more unfinished? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, because. <laughs> And we've all been there as well, because like, you know, like the uh, the idea with a lot of people who were saying like there should be an easy mode. He's like, do you ever find yourself looking at someone playing a game and going, oh my god, they're so bad at this? Not that, oh, maybe this could have been built better for them to accommodate. Like, you never. I've had it on streams where I'll be like looking around for something. I'm like, where is the thing? And then there's like it's right on the floor, literally in front of you, with a big bright thing on it, and you're just not seeing it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, yeah, I got it. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. And if someone said, like, no, no, Mola, we need, we need a prompt, we need a character to come on screen and go, hey, you missed it, it's hey. right there. And you're like, no, 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 for everyone else now. <laughs> it often works badly the other way around as well, when they put in hard modes and just like, now all the enemies take 17 hours to kill, and also you have no ammo, <clears> and also now you realize how broken this one mechanic is, and you will never use any other one again by a right. infinite. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. Difficulty can reveal problems with the core as well. Like if it's a poorly made difficulty, uh, yeah. harder difficulty. It goes both ways. Since it was an optional mode that wouldn't affect them in the slightest if they played on literally any right, other so difficulty. That's, I guess that's kind of the right. problem there is it might affect your experience on other modes because of just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess mm -hmm. you could appeal to that being a problem of, well, they screwed up. They could have put as much effort into... The difficulty we, compared to some other other aspect of the game. We just pretend for a second we're in a, a world where uh you know Elden Ring released with no ashes, the the super OP like little friendos you can summon, and then uh, they were pressured and they put in an easy mode where those existed. It's like that's different. But if it was that they realized when developing it, oh man, we need to make a way for this to be a lot easier because a lot of people are complaining about that every time we put out a game. Let's put in this new mechanic. We'll embed it into the actual like I say storyline, game line, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. Uh, people will end up with it, and then you get a shit ton of players, like, I, we talked about this on our coverage, but I didn't know those were hyper OP until it was essentially too late, and I'd already played yeah, a playthrough yeah. with them being OP. Um, and so, so like, it's, it's like, oh, if I had, if I, because in in a sense, in in that scenario, the, the world where there was an easy mode and a hard mode, or regular mode, you could even say, I can pick it, but uh, when they try and integrate it in a very, like, reasonable way, it can actually end up <laughs> making it worse for a lot of other players. And I, you know, I don't want to be too dramatic. It's not like I can't, I can just do another playthrough without uh, touching them or whatever. Without but, summoning, yeah. But there's only for first, you can only play the a Souls game for the first time once. So mm -hmm. I, I cherish those experiences, you know. And, Fun, and those, but... those, uh, those ashes, they were called ashes, right? I forgot. Spirit ashes, yeah. Spirit yeah. ashes, yeah. 
they could be really fun. Like, I, I like yeah. them the most when I had to plan around them. It's like, okay, this guy can take X amount of hits if I do well myself. I, I had that when I was fighting Millennia um, because I was super squishy with my mage. And I was like, okay, if I can make the Ash go, like, for this phase and then I have the Ash in the second phase and then maybe can tank a couple of hits and then I have to fight myself and it's still going to be challenging. Like, that was fun as shit. But then other times you're like, oh, the Ash can just kill the enemy themselves. I'm just going to sit here and throw some rocks for a minute and then it's over. It's like, oh. The solution I always think would work best to, to balance those in a way that at least the player can be told, hey, these are kind of a crutch and sort of an easy thing is just have an achievement at the end of the game for beat the game with no spirit ash summons. It's if like you a, need think... help, you can summon, uh, you know, frame them in a way that. Yeah. I find it really bizarre because that's already what they did with summons. You know? Yes, if you're yes. terrible and need help, then you could always... To the yeah, point, Solaire just says that to you. If you ever want to cooperate with someone or you need assistance, then, you know, hit up a summon sign. And you I guess it. in Jim's defense here, Sekiro has no summoning of any kind. It's it's sort of the most um, straight-up action game that they've made because it's one character mm -hmm. class. It's more like a Ninja Gaiden game than a Souls game, really. Because, uh, funnily it's enough, the, 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 the summons then became... The go to yeah, defense uh, the H Bomber guy had when D Dark Souls 2 becomes too absurd for a solo play. That he's just like, just summon people. I don't know, fuck you. Don't you have friends? <laughs> like, as the, oh, that yeah. mechanic getting. <laughs> it's almost like you're treating the mechanic as though it's it's a part of the uh, the full main line. Everyone should be doing it sort of approach, which to me just says you don't know much about the Dark Souls community and discussions about like how to approach the games. Because it, it's always felt weird when I uh, go into like videos that. Uh, Treated as though Googling is just a part of the experience of playing a Dark Souls game. It's like, oh, that's like that's like a sinful thing to do to me. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. You'll spoil everything. You gotta figure some stuff out, right? It's the classic Take away thing, right? It's genuine sense of exploration and discovery. Like, come on. Yeah, but uh, just the, the thing of I feel like this is the thing that all gamers are supposed to have at baseline. You spawn, you see a little character, you see the environment, you press all the buttons. What do they all do? That's like the step one of learning how to play the game. But I wonder if mm -hmm. you need a, a, a tool tip at this point for that. It's like, you should experiment, maybe. Go press all the buttons, do. player. Your keyboard gives you many different button options to press to make your character do a wide variety of things. Whoa. Press them randomly to discover what they do. I hate games! Famously yelled one commenter. I hate how Nintendo has a toddler option on it wouldn't be a Jim Sterling video if we didn't characterize the opposition <laughs> of the argument in the most good faith way possible. On all their new games, something like SFZ will only be bought by hardcore fans. Not that it mattered in the end, Star Fox Zero was shit. And even if it wasn't, it doesn't matter now, does it? it well, then why'd you bring it up? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah if, if it doesn't matter anymore, anymore. why did you? I mean, it doesn't uh, matter. Why, why do you do this, Jim? You're supposed to be your scripts. It's 2019, and no one gives a shit about the dip. Is Slippy a boy or a girl? Slippy's frog. a boy. Okay. I would. Well, yeah, Slippy is a frog, but that wasn't the question. I know! <laughs> <laughs> He's a boy or a girl. You Wait, hold on. Are, are there frog. any girls on the Star Fox team? No. Crystal. Wow. Wow. Well, there, are, uh, there are other characters, like, but they're not part of the core roster. Yeah, the four. Wow. <laughs> Exclusionary. This is just what Jim's I think it was, about. uh... I think it was Star Fox 2 introduced new characters, but that game only got officially released with the SNES, like, what's, what was it called? The, the what's emulator the, what's thing. What's SNES? The, SNES? The, oh, Super Z Nintendo. SNES, you talking about? Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you said S, I, oh, I thought you said SNES. It was, uh, no, it was released with the, it was like the, the mini SNES one. SNES Mini? That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's literally the SNES mini. It's I mini. Mean, Slip it Slippy is. is a frog, so I guess if he's in a same-sex environment, never mind. Well, no, no. What do you mean? Well, you know, he can he can switch, and they can you know. No I don't know switch? if they can just like swap. Oh, it, it, how did it work in Jurassic Park? <laughs> how did it work in the fantasy <laughs> book? Um, hey, they based that on some stuff that's real, baby. And I know, I know, I know. They, they... Slippy, like Slippy is a bipedal like alien frog in a video game world with talking foxes and, and oh falcons. so his frogness just isn't relevant to real life frogs i don't at all, know huh? what the frog attributes are that's all are there chemicals strange. in star what fox water <laughs> the star fox water and the cornaria water yeah the rivers <laughs> cornaria, cornaria turned the the space frogs gay
Did you hear the, uh, what was said, though? It's just like, oh, yeah, this this is from, like, ages ago, so it doesn't even matter. It's just like, well, the one that brought it up. <laughs> yeah, he brought it, <laughs> he brought it up. Exactly. If the comments, Weird. if the comments, in like, info doesn't matter at all, just, like, choose a different Don't one. Don't bring it up. Know. Yeah. That's what I was saying. It wouldn't be a Jim Sterling video if he didn't try to characterize the opposition a certain way. Well, there was that whole series. Even uh, if there was a point or not. That was made just to read comments while characterizing them. That was basically it. Is the comment something? I can't remember. It's with a, it's an aristocrat. That's the joke. Where it's all like snobby commenters mm. and how right they are about everything. Comment on, but, well, he doesn't have to play yeah. a character to be that. snobby. In the I hate one. that character so much. Everyone all those memories does. just came back. Yeah. <laughs> Any game that was released before 2019, because the conversation keeps happening and it keeps not mattering in the long term. Well, why the fuck are you making videos? Why? He's, <laughs> he's, he's been saying this for every fucking. <laughs> Clearly, year, it feels matters. like he makes a video about this, and every time he says it doesn't matter. Why are we talking about this? And he keeps making videos on it. <laughs> like you can't have it both ways. I guess this we is just what you keep farming it for content. Kind of. Because it, it matters for that, that at least. Uh... It's time and for my joy, biannual dis difficulty video game discussion video it where I talk matter. about how it doesn't matter. <laughs> nothing's well, why, ever going to change. Tell why me, am if, I doing it? If it doesn't matter and it's so easy to like nail it, why are these like some of the longest Jimquisition videos? 27 minutes. What took so long to just say the is, answer? The what is the answer, matter, Jim? Baller. Tell me. Games they bloody enjoy. Are people really incapable of any sort of difficulty? Asks one superior gamer. So what if he a player probably struggles? Is superior. Yeah. <laughs> Someone mad at three-year-olds. Like, the thing is... How did he get superior? <laughs> <laughs> this this <laughs> totally value in uh, the fact that when you first try, you fail. Like, like the concept. You, yeah. You're like, well, no, it's too hard now. And it's like, no, 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 no. You're supposed to, like, figure out what you did wrong and then do it again. Called learning. <laughs> I doubt any of us were very good at video games at three years old. Maybe I with the exception I was, of Rags. I was pretty good. Rags would have been good. Yeah. I was esporting back then. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a it's a dog years thing though, right? Because you would have been like twenty one. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I was just good at three. <laughs> <laughs> it was just three. Children are completely three. incapable at video games. I came out of mom with a joystick in my hand, ready to go. Multi plug. Yeah, it just go. goes into any console. PC. Point me to the noobs. People left and right. They asked, "Okay, what's your gamer tag?" And I was like, "I don't All know. Of them. I, 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 I don't know. I don't even know my actual name." <laughs> I haven't you tell me what is it what does it say on your screen that you were just fragged by? It's the <laughs> only oh, way they'll I'd get spawn. good. So what if a player struggles? Fair question. Here's a follow-up question. So what if a player doesn't struggle? So what if a player well, does? Then, uh, All right, now, next video. Well, that, we did it. That's kind of funny because uh <laughs> that's also an interesting subject. If let's pretend we're in a universe where all games were pretty damn easy, just Everyone was completing them with real ease, and there's this one game that comes out, and we all have a bit of challenge on it, just a little bit. We're all like, oh, that was a little bit tougher, we die a couple of times. That was kind of interesting. You know, because other games, I just breeze through them. I think, I was talking to Theo about this the other day, uh, my problem with Maria, before any particular move, or damage levels, or anything in Bloodborne, is I wish she had more health. And what yeah. is that if not me saying I want it to be more difficult? And it's like, why? And it's like, well, because then I'll feel better when I beat her. How do you solve that. a problem like Maria? Victory is often proportional. Um, and I just, it's funny that he's like, not a problem if you, uh, if you struggle, it's also not a problem if you beat them. It's like, well, and it can be, in both extremes, right? You don't want to... Yeah. If, if a game I mean, is... We had, we had that in Elden Ring a lot, where like, man, yeah, this yeah. boss seems to be cool, but I beat him in like 30 seconds. That's weird. Well, yeah, and no. we can share stories yeah, of our experiences. And be like, oh, I, I beat Rykard first time almost by accident. Then someone else is like, I was stuck on him for fucking ten streams. And you're like, oh, why? And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. because we bet we went to different places at different times and these <laughs> different experiences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. About this guy, like, the about the, the way we actually. play, like the Soulsborne thing is like, oh, we're gonna go explore everything. And yeah. in the case of Eld Ring, you can go anywhere. Yeah. And then you did you struggle at a different place, and then you go to the place where the game. You know, says you have to go next in quotations because the game doesn't really tell you where to go and then it's like oh i just beat this guy like instantly because i'm super fucking strong already yeah so uh, uh, i guess what i'm saying is that we don't want him you certainly don't want him too easy don't want him too hard understandable so th yeah. there's so much to talk about it's like oh this is boring conversation is <laughs> solved no one I cares just... I, I, I'm really frustrated by how contextless this is because i feel like it's very obvious to say that it depends on the game 
Not every game mm-hmm. has to be giga hard. Not every game has to be giga easy. Well, it's there the um, yeah. a wide variety. You're getting of quieter. Different difficulty level. I was going to say I boosted you again. I took you down and put you back up. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. yeah I, I've got you at 140. I, I, I took my volume down because people were saying I was loud. Oh, don't worry. I'll store that on my end. I keep an eye on what okay, people well, are complaining Yeah, because then you fuck it up for everyone else. <gasps> no, I'm sorry. All right, I forgive you. Um, Discord is a difficult game. It does was, not yeah, have an easy mode. I was going to say, by the way, it's such a cop-out because one of the most easiest and common answers to any question is, well, it depends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's like, that's, okay. That's, uh, the one Why does it depend? Video, which is, it depends, and what then the credits roll. Well. What does it depend <laughs> on? Tell us. Give us the answers. Seriously, so what? Are you really gonna get mad at a baby for playing a game on its baby setting? Does that idea- I don't think that's I'm what they're- I'm already mad at babies. <laughs> Does he earnestly think that these people are addressing children? When they, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, no, here, he doesn't- Remember when he uh, started Maybe. earlier in this video and he said, I don't even know what they want? Even though this is a discussion he's been having for years now and will continue to have for years to come, and he still is not able to understand what the opposing side wants? It's, it, this is the problem. It's He's the not thing, right? listening it, it, to the other side. He doesn't listen, he talks. And he doesn't talk to, he talks at. The Elden Ring developers, they see everyone's, everyone's having a grand old time, except that three-year-old. They're just struggling. They're struggling on that first boss. And so, like, maybe if we make, like, a you die 20 times and you become invincible. I could do it. Um, which, by the way, I think is like a Mario thing. Um, and so they pop that into Elder Ring, and then someone who's like desperately trying to do it and failing over and over again, the game says, have you guys ever had this sort of my favorite experiences where the game says, you seem to be having trouble. Would you like to do this and reduce it? And you're like, shut <laughs> oh, the man. fuck up. I am trying to get it. Right. It God makes you so war. mad. I kept doing that. So <laughs> it's the most condescending like... shit. Like... And the best thing is, did that to me a bunch, and I was like, "Oh God, no! I'm never gonna put on the Sentinel armor. Please stop offering it to me." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that that shit was so fucking annoying. The Sentinel armor, just go yeah. away. Dude, the worst part more... is when the game makes that like, it it doesn't even say anything, but it changes the game to make things more difficult. Mm. Um, like it, it makes less enemies appear or something like that. And you're like, no, 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 no. I want to keep trying until I beat. It. I really want to actually beat this like it's supposed to. Don't or... change it. You can be like Chad Infamous when if you're playing really well on normal, they'll be like, hey, you want to bump it up to hard? Yeah. <laughs> That's better. That's better. <laughs> God of War uh, asked you, but it also uh, asked you when you did like a platforming segment, and that's obviously an insta kill when you fall down. <laughs> Seems like, like you're hey, having you trouble. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm trying to figure out this platforming. The, the, the easy mode is not going to help me with that. I'm still going to die in one go. Well, they, put, <laughs> they put little trampolines all around the, the world so that you go back up. Yeah, uh, Interesting mode, but you know. Yeah, again, in the modern world, does that matter today to you? Does that set your teeth on edge? Knowing that so if your point was that they oh. wouldn't, they shouldn't care about a little baby, whether or not they complete it. Why would you say like, does that matter to you in the modern world? As if fucking medieval times that was a concern. <laughs> like, but I guess it's also kind of funny because you know how it's just like you could just do the opposite. Why do you care that they care? And then we just go on yeah. this endless loop forever. Why Yay, don't we just nihilism. have the nothing of, Why do you yeah, care about anything? Nothing matters. Exactly. Some people played Star Fox Zero and didn't die. If it does, why? I'll ask again what I asked in 2016 as I'm still, after all this time, no closer to understanding exactly why. See, and that's a you problem. If you can't figure yeah, that's out a you problem. Yeah. That why is anybody has problem. issues with difficulty. And he, he's also still like it's using Star Fox Zero as his metric. <laughs> It's like, why, why are you still talking about how well, people will react to a kid? You see, Mark, there was this one kids. comment that mentioned it about that game that he went and found, so... Allegedly, there's one comment. Yeah, we didn't even get to see it in its original form. It was just like, you copied it. I would have... Then... Yeah, I would have just copied the comment and showed it. Because here's the thing with Jim, is I don't necessarily trust him. Yeah. I, it, I, it, his, his, his primary argument, though, seems to be, see, no one cared that this Star Fox game that no one cared about had an easy mode. I'm now like, let's talk oh, about oh. games people do care yeah, about. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Sekiro is going to come up, I'm assuming, at some point. Mm -hmm. People are mouth over their shit outside of selfish, elitist, gatekeeping reasons. Boom, there what? it is. Yeah, it can't be anything okay. else. Is, is so harmful also, about a completely the fuck out of the shit you optional love. mode that you never have to experience. Is
So the game isn't something you have to experience. So there, I could flip it and tell you to fuck off. And that's not necessarily the problem. Like, it's not always optional. That's the problem. A lot of games will incorporate yeah. a lot of this yeah. stuff. We just, like, went over how Elden Ring has kind of done it. Um, and it was unfortunate in some ways. But it wasn't, like, more telegraphed that this... They may, you know, someone will be like, that's exaggerating. But I think it's true that those things are basically like, would you like to play on an easier mode? And it's like, yes, uh, for some people, which, you know, that's <laughs> one thing. But, and then the other aspect is that um, when they are making something that everyone is like, I love this something you're making. And then they make it for a wider audience. It becomes diluted and they change a lot of different things to make it for, it's a different thing now. And it's like, oh, but I wanted the other thing. I think that's valid. That I think that's the problem the that we're seeing in the discussion here is that it's ignoring... Sure, if we talk about just different modes, that's one thing, but what happens when an awareness of appealing to a broader audience seeps into the core design, where you start thinking about designing, you know, the world in a certain way, or designing the enemies or the combat system in a certain way, just because you're thinking about accessibility... Uh, not accessibility, like difficulty more so... Like, it, it can seep into more than just modes. I guess that would be where the concern would arise from. Is your players might have an easier time and not get good at the game on its default mode? So what? Why are you worried about what others think so long as they're having fun with the same game? It oh, is that our metric now? As long as someone else experience. is having fun. I was about to say, your, your answer's built in. You're like, why do you care if they're having more fun? It's like, well. It's at the cost of other things, namely fun of someone else's. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not talking about a mod that you can just unofficially apply to the game to suit it to your taste better after it's already been made. You're talking about them making decisions to design the game around multiple difficulties. If, like in the case of From Software, they they are pretty famous and their audience gives them money and keeps their business going by making single difficulty mode games that are difficult. Mm-hmm. I mean, then just you believe that people who are playing on easier difficulties are depreciating the value they're going to get out of their own experience with the game. That's like, the steel man of what where these kind of people are coming from. And like, do you Steve. honestly believe that they are literally just angry that three year olds are having fun? Do you really think that's the case? Do they, you just, can't be anything else. Like, come on, you're making fun of them for like as though that's their position, but it's like nobody cares about three year olds having fun. <laughs> No sane yeah. person thinks that, and the insane aren't worth talking about, so... Yeah. Isn't that why what is the Why is the fun of someone who's bad at video games more valuable than the fun of someone who's good at them? Well, I suppose Jim would probably be like, uh, no, nobody's having less fun, Rags. Clearly that's not the case. <laughs> Someone's having less fun, because all these complaints I mean, if, come from somewhere. If, if this is... The fact that this is a discussion that we're having, clearly someone is being affected by this. Exactly. Um, I'm going to be the hyper-elitist and say that the people who are playing on the easier difficulty are the ones who are having less fun. Ooh. They're not affecting me. They are yeah. having less fun. Yeah. Well, I don't necessarily disagree with you, because uh, I remember one of my favorite experiences in Dark Souls was when I finally beat Ornstein and Smo. I was like, fuck yeah. yes, this is the best. Same with Orphan of Koss. Uh, and Maria. I, I remember being so fucking satisfied. If I'd, if they all had, let's call it, uh, a quarter of their health, well, I mean, I would have had some fun. Um, I know, I know not everyone plays games the way I do, which is why it's important that, you know, there's a wide variety of different levels of difficulty in different kinds of game, but when I play something and I just kind of blunder my way through what it's presenting without thinking about it too much, that's pretty hollow. Yeah, because I, I, I think... Feel good. That's we an need issue to... I'm having with Final Fantasy VII Remake right now. There is a, a lot of just, hey, walk forward until very simple battle happens going on in that game. It's very pretty. It's fun to look at, but man, a little dull. And I think that we need to, like, because uh, a lot of people would just be like, oh my god, grow up. People can make their own choices with what they want in their video games. And it's like, that is absolutely true. However, why don't we develop that a little bit more and say, if they had a waypoint that was directional, uh, uh, sorry, optional in, in Dark Souls, I think most of the Dark Souls community would be like, fuck me, a waypoint. Oh. And you'd be like, what's wrong with a waypoint? And you can choose to have it on or off. And it's like, oh, that just... Yeah, you can have it if you want. <laughs> it's just like, Jesus Christ. And then if you just go further than that, right, you start knocking off all of the other pathways so there's basically just one. Which is funny because a lot of people would say that about Dark Souls 3 as is. Even though, like, mm -hmm. we're not talking, you know... You, you know what I mean? Like, it's... it's um. 
you could make it so that one could build their entire experience from the get-go. Like, imagine games were like that. You, you spawn and then you just tick a bunch of boxes or leave them blank for assistance. Someone's like, isn't this the best? Because now we can all choose our own experiences. But, I mean, what do you guys think about that? Does that not sound like, in a sense, it's like not trying new foods because you know what you like, <laughs> which isn't the best approach His with the uh, experience. The thing with that is, especially at the start of the game, decisions like that are completely contextless. I don't yes. know what exactly I want out of the game, and I don't yeah. know exactly what I'm going to get out of it with each button press, even if it tells me explicitly, because I just and don't, you don't know, know where what the safest present. path is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess um, here's something that's worth... What if the developers don't want you to curate your experience? What if the developers yeah. want you to play it their way? Like, is that yeah. invalid? Well, that's, that's they what have, I was like, kind of get thing. They want to, they want to show, uh, they want people to go for, or a certain well, mechanic I guess they want people to use. I'd want to expand it beyond difficulty because I think once you do yeah. that, I, I think that this crowd would be too resistant. Let's say you're making a game. I like it because I think it's a good example. You're making a stealth game. Combat isn't viable. It's just not. You can try, but you'll always lose because they like, want you to a stealth game. Um, is that wrong? Or should you be allowed to play it in whatever way you want? Like, should every option be viable yeah, in I'd a game say, that is designed to appeal to a certain... Um, I feel like that's up to the to dev work. at that yeah. point, instead of saying, yeah, like, that's no, you have to make it viable for me to do whatever I want. Because so, it's just not possible for every game um, or every developer. It's, it's very important to mention at this point that you play specific games. When I boot up Elden Ring, I'm booting up Elden Ring. Play Elden Ring for what Elden Ring has in it. I'm yeah. not playing some generic blob of a game. I'm not going there to, you know, place my own desired experiences onto the game. I'm there to draw an experience out of what the game presents. So games having their own sense of vision and direction from the developers is very important to making sure there's a wide variety of different kinds of experience on, on offer. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a I reason agree. that genres exist because well, I think, then um, you can can see it's like, oh, this is a puzzle game. This is an FPS. This is this and this. Yeah, and a lot of them are treat, like framed into their genre via their difficulty related to their mechanics as well as just the mechanics themselves. Some and games the, are. All right, go for it. Uh, I was gonna say then a game can focus on different aspects of the genre. It's like I, I kind of mentioned Plague Tale. I saw someone in the chat mentioned it as well. Plague Tale is a game yeah. where like Amicia has, a, who's the protagonist, has this little sling, and she's basically trying to sneak around giant like French Inquisition dudes in this like fictional 14th century. So you can knock someone out if you catch them off guard, but if you get caught, you can't just sling everyone to death as they're charging you like you're gonna die so, and that like adds to the atmosphere of the game because you're supposed to feel like a sort of helpless 15 year old girl who just happens to be okay with one weapon and is sneaky so what you brought up there difficulty can be very important for properly realizing a world like that yeah it's important right, to dark that's, souls that's, that's cutting for sure. to the uh the uh, i guess a, a core point that is often neglected in these types of videos what if it is the artistic vision of the developer to achieve a certain vibe and they design their gameplay and difficulty in support of that? Yeah. Is that invalid or wrong if it means that it is to some extent exclusionary? Let, let's take a really easy example of a game that's mm -hmm. trying to be, you know, a hardcore survival sim kind of thing where, you know, it wants you to have big resource scarcity and stuff and struggling to survive, but it's really easy to attain, you know, an indepletable surplus that the game's the game's tone its atmosphere everything it was going for the fantasy it was trying to present it's just gone Fall it can't out. achieve what it was trying to do anymore because it's not hard enough true and to those in chat who are saying that it doesn't make sense everything mark was saying because of course any 14 year old girl could beat up a french soldier but <laughs> in his defense it is a french 14 year old girl so Ah, it kind of balances out. Just to be clear, here's one. And and she's a ginger, really... so I mean, there, there's oh. that. Oh my. No, no. About being entertained, getting hey, your money's that's worth. A, if some wait, what was that Pokemon? I no, nearly said it's Quagmire. I was like, wait, <laughs> Quagsire, right? Not Quagmire. <laughs> I, think, I think that's uh, the first, like, is it Wobby? Because there's Wobbuffet, Wobb like the, Wobb the, the middle one, right? I thought Wobbuffet oh, was the evolution. That the... That's, I thought that yeah. was, isn't it Quagsire? 
I only know Wobbuffet right, from so the memes. Or maybe it's Wobbuffet. Well, yeah, no, because Wobbuffet is one, but then there's the evolution before, which I think is the that one. Uh, Boba Fett? <laughs> Quagsire. I'm pretty sure it's Quagsire. Is it? I'm trying to figure it out. I'm on Quagsire the Pokemon Wiki. comes before... That's strange that Quagsire comes before Quagmire. Or unless... Help me out, Pokemon fans. Sire is like a father. Oh, people saying Whooper? Is his name actually Whooper? Whooper? <laughs> Whooper? That's like one of your flume names. Yeah. <laughs> Whooper. Whooper's my favorite now. <laughs> let, let me look it up. Let me look it up. Oh, Whooper different. Different. Pokemon. Oh, Whooper, he's got the little uh, little antennas coming out of his head. Barely a I'll show you, Being a I'll show you Whooper. That's Wait, Whooper. So the guy on screen is... Oh, that's Whoop. Oh, that Whooper turns into Wobbuffet, is it? Or, or Whooper, we... he turns into Quagsire, I think. Oh, I think that's. We got a tag. Right. Right. Quagsire. Yeah. Quagsire. So what I figured out is these are different species of Pokemon. Quagsire and Wobbuffet have nothing in common except that they're adorable <laughs> blue fellows. <laughs> All right. Look at Quagsire. Look at how happy he is. Yeah, he's he doesn't have any world. relation to Squirtle. Quagsire looks great. Look at him. He, he he's so such chill. a happy critter. I'll, Look I'll, at him. I'll, I'll, Posted here. Look at look at him. Look at him. Oh, he's so happy. Like, Hello, I'm gonna battle you to the death. No, he's no, not. We're the ones he's that forced them to do that. It's horrible. I'm your friend. Yeah. I'm gonna help you clean up the house, and I'm gonna oh. help you cook dinner, and then maybe we could go out and we could go he's shopping. So That's what's kind of fun, actually. Yeah, Quagsire looks great. He looks like a fun guy to getting have your money's worth. If some find that entertainment and value in a mode where that. Imagine going to the Pokemon world and you discover all these wonderful cre creatures like Wooper and Quagsire and they're all happy and everything. Then everyone's like, yeah, we make them fight. <laughs> and, <laughs> until you they. Do what? What? Well, and then you, you yeah, introduce. Yeah, we got like, like arenas and everything. We, we they're, have moves involved poison die. and like scratching <laughs> and binding. <laughs> what the fuck? They constrict you. They'll be revived to fight once again. There's yeah, they're no, just knocked out. No we don't want them to die. Torture. It's an endless cycle. I'm like, oh, what, what's <laughs> that move that you're using there? And it's like hyper beam. You're like, what? Wh <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I remember yeah, when that we said a... fight, we meant fight. They, they yeah, when powers and shoot when each the other Gyarados or the or the Onyx when it body slams the little caterpillar, he's just knocked out. He's fine. <laughs> he's, he's fine. fine. Don't worry we'll, about it. We'll do this all again tomorrow. It's fine. It's no worries. He never gets to escape this eternal torment that is his existence. They yeah, do feel they... a ton of pain, but they don't get injured. So yeah, it's fine. Da, 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 da. Pain makes them stronger. They the level crying, up. It's good for them. But they're fully yeah. healed. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, the mental damage, you know. That's something. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. He gets experience. He'll level up one day. This is all for him. Mm -hmm. this, he just doesn't know it now. This is for his good. Isn't He's that what game in the games are primarily <laughs> about? Being entertained. Getting your money's worth. No. If some find that entertainment <laughs> and value in a mode where they can't die. Well, okay, Jim, but what about two people, right? Just one, one. One of them's like, oh, man, do I love a challenge. The other one's like, oh, man, do I not love a challenge. So now what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Who do we cater for? What does it really fucking matter? Especially in this industry where it's getting harder but and harder what, to what find What does it fun. not matter then, I guess? Like, well, what does it matter? What still does still managed to die. All of these arguments they totally did. reflect back, like, <laughs> all the time. Exactly, I was about to say that. People don't, when people say the why can't you just let people have fun thing, they never think about oh. Actually, they don't I'm think so, about applying that to anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you just mentioned that. Whoever was playing as a uh, Nabbit just died. They fell into a bottomless pit. So yeah. even even this accessibility easy stop saying this. Even this easy mode is still viably you can fail. Yeah, so you maybe just can't get killed by enough. enemies. It seems. Yeah, maybe that's not good enough. Maybe we need to make it so all the platforms have like little step stools. <laughs> on, like every gap has a platform. Fall yeah, deaths are not an incommon occurrence in a Mario game. And everyone's uncommon. had that friend that's like, that they do that, that they're like, fuck, this game is so shit. You're like, yeah, the game is shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't design are... it with these pits that you don't fall into. Avoid the pits, man. That, to be fair, that pit does come out of nowhere and it does sneak up on you. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fun games that aren't trying to fuck you over, psychologically manipulating people into spending okay. more money. Make okay. 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 Calm the fuck down. <laughs> I feel like I've missed something. I, I, well, I disagree with the premise of being, oh, in a landscape where it's just so hard to find good games. I'm like, fuck off. Damned capitalism. Yeah, calm down. Hey, look, there's good games everywhere. 
It's the fucking golden age of games. <laughs> Fuck it. You got so many good options. You can't focus on the bad ones and say, oh, all the good games you got. No. There's a smorgasbord of good yeah. games. Just don't buy you AAA games for the most part. More than ever. And, you'll be fine. and the, and the <laughs> you, emulators you are working better than ever. So, you know. You could spend the next year playing nothing but free to play games that are good, even. Like, there's a lot of good free games Dude, that you can play for free out now. <laughs> getting a PC and playing just the free for play puzzle, that was like viable back in like 2010. Like, I remember being like, yeah. sweet, I got access to all these ones when I first got into uh, proper PC gaming from console gaming. Like, with the intention of making it my primary, I was like, oh, let's, uh, let's play some games. Like, you know, I think I played League more than anything else, just because, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. versatile Spends game and it's completely free. I it still does. go back once in a while. That that silly little game. I still play it once in a while. How does the drink I'll carry on? How does the conversation of difficulty in video games apply to multiplayer games? <laughs> I have no clue how you can. Complicatedly, they have. Out. They have what? Well, like fighting games, are maybe like an example of that. There's a lot of discourse in the fighting game communities of games having prohibitively high execution barriers for new players to get into them. Oh, yeah. And but then, haven't oh, people often said that the I don't play them much, so I can't say either way. Well, I tried. I think the them. last fighting game I tried was Pardon? Tekken 7, I think. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to fuck around for a little bit. It's like, okay, now I want to see what are the combos. And then I saw all the combinations that are available. It's like, I, as soon as I remembered the first two inputs, there was like 17 more. I was yeah. like, you know what? I think I'm just going to not play these anymore because I, I just can't be bothered to learn all these combos. Tekken or Virtua Fighter combos are a full-time job if you want to learn them. I feel like it they got really harder bad if you arrive at the on. game late. Yeah. <laughs> it gets really bad if you arrive at the game late because all of the, all of the people who didn't really care for it or all of the new people have moved on and only the only people left playing are, are the elite. Yeah. The Dude, I remember one time generates. playing Mortal Kombat online. I was like, I wonder what this is. Like, Absolutely body. Yeah. And I was like, I think I'm just not going to play online. Yeah, you get juggled by like... Because yeah. th this is the thing. It's, uh, difficulty balancing within multiplayer would just be like skill floor and skill ceiling, right? Like if everybody yeah. only has to press A and a laser fly fires and then you win, it's just like, well, this game's not going to be very interesting to anybody, is it? Because that's it. But then you have a game that's like incredibly high skill ceiling to the point where you have no chance ever if someone knows what they're doing or whatever. So that's, well, that'll be how they balance it at that point. And uh, plenty of multiplayers get ruined by going in either direction. Then of course there's hacking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Destroys all old yeah. games. Oh yeah. yeah. Doesn't Team Fortress 2 have like this problem at the moment? Or had the problem? Was like Titanfall 2 got kind of wrecked by, um, I think it was like DDoS attacks happening on their servers. It was really messed up. But there, there is like a mod that called Wait, the North they... Star Launcher you can use that actually fixes it. Didn't the community do that so they actually get some, some attention by the devs? Like, hey, we have some issues here. Can you help us? It, it, that, that's, that was kind of the rumor. I, I, I don't remember all the specifics about it. Oh, Upper okay, Echelon yeah. made a bunch of videos on it, and it was the... Um, the the crux of it though was that it was people that were attacking Titanfall two and Apex, preferably so that, mm -hmm. um, oh god, what's the respawn? Respawn would actually start paying attention to the problems in those games oh, and fixing okay. it. But it was eventually fixed by some community modders who made this North Star launcher that you can get as a mod for TF two. Uh, Titanfall okay. two, not Team Fortress. Oh, nice. by the way, Dark Souls, <laughs> Dark Souls three <laughs> servers are are back online after two hundred and seventy one days or something. Yeah, Jeez, <laughs> damn. Yeah, and now the Thanks. other games are supposed to follow soon, apparently. So mm. that's that was kind of interesting how long that took. I'm really interested from a technical standpoint what the fuck happened there. <laughs> hey, Futia. Hey, Futia. Hello. hello, hello. How are you doing? We haven't seen you in, uh, since Elden Ring. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's hey. true. I get good. Almost Here I am joining for Dark Souls. Tree. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's Sekiro, actually. Sekiro, well. yeah. Though he yeah, has, that's... he's hardly talked about Sekiro yeah. at all. He's gonna, gonna, gonna get, get there, I'm sure of it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> well, uh, if you want to just uh, use that link for Tia, you can join us in this adventure. The watch together. Yeah, it's above the Pokemans. Let's scroll up, you idiot. I'm scrolling. We need yeah. to make Discord scroll more accessible. Faster. Need a little character to say. Just yeah. use the scroll bar right there. Maybe for Tia just needs to get good at for at, at the Discord, and that's enough. Yeah. Oh, you stop ripping into our new guest, precious yeah. blue man. 
It's grindy and making games less fun, all to squeeze extra cash out of people who have already bought the damn game. Look See, okay, this is just all completely unrelated. <laughs> like, yeah, so whatever, <laughs> like, games can be really predatory and annoying. Cool. It Video just makes me think, like, you're complaining yeah. that some character is stronger than they should be in some narrative in some movie, and you're like, in an environment where they're making terrible movies, we should be thankful that this character is... And you're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what's... <laughs> I think, I think he's trying to frame it as if games are primarily designed to be super difficult to force you to buy DLC that makes it easier. But th that's that's not a super common thing. I mean, I, I can, don't think I've, I suppose it happens, but I don't think I've seen a single game with that strategy. Usually, it's they're really grindy, and then you know you want to buy things to I reduce think the grind. De Devil May Cry Five. I think you could buy. No, um, not at all. Oh, what, okay. what was the you thing? That you, no, no, but okay. it, there was something you could buy that was like uh, a revive thing that you could. Those microtransactions buy an in the amount. game, they are worthless. Oh, okay, fair enough. They are worthless. I don't know where you put them in. I, I, I because I recently booted up uh, Devil May Cry Five again, and I got like I don't know six of those game. revive things for free, and I don't even know why. Uh, <laughs> Maybe to get you hooked on them. It's it's weird. It feels like a corporate lizard walked in and just, you know, <laughs> said, you know, this microtransaction thing is cool, put some in, but just yeah. non-committally. It's really yeah, weird, because like I said, they're completely worthless. I don't know why I would ever buy any of those. Capcom in general is very not good at uh, implementing microtransactions well, maybe, for the most part. Maybe the corporate people said, you got to put microtransactions in, and the devs were like, okay. <laughs> didn't tell us how many. But they didn't want in the game. <laughs> Also, I I watched this this like three second clip after I joined, and I don't like this guy. <laughs> I just I just heard all his voice of like, and yes, and also you must have heard of Jim Steele before, annoying. right? Jim Steele has been around forever. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't watch that much. Wow, you don't watch my videos for Tier about Doctor Universe Multiverse? This? Not Doctor yet. Universe. Doctor I've been giga busy. It's like halfway through that before I had to come on here. Yeah, it I takes a while. His name is. I Dr. haven't even started yet. I I'm just been busy, and now I have to. Do I haven't this even shit. seen the film. This shit. Wow. Yeah, this poopy stream. Two hundred comes in a row or something. That that's that's a lot thing. of comes. That is a lot of comes. That's a lot of comes, and that's, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of comes for me. Yeah. You See, chat agrees with me. Wow. Yeah. Fair enough. Three second judgment, and everyone is like, "Yep, <laughs> you're right." <laughs> Three, it's I guess he's like, of that. he's sort of like the British movie Bob of video games. Oh. Video game Jim. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Oh, he, oh movie Bob. He, he just he up. has his thing, which is <laughs> getting really mad at the AAA, you know, blah 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 microtransactions, blah blah blah. Which, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, Different anytime topic. he steps outside yeah. of that, oof. He says microtransactions are bad. He gets that one right. And doesn't let you forget yeah, about that, by the way. Every video's like, I predicted it. Yeah. I called this out really early. Yep. It's like, Congratulations. yeah, sure, fine. Really fucking matter. Especially to be fair, though, the second it happened, I still remember it being De Dead Space 3. That was the one where it was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Take it back. <laughs> They're like, hey there. You look like you need some more scrap if you want to. Can buy a little bit. The protocol is going to be good. Just give me a credit get... card details. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's only off topic. Have you guys seen the uh, back back. the gameplay of Kalista Protocol? Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Looks I had a friend who gave me the pretty good. The... I hope it is because I'm excited. I, I'm yeah, a big same. Dead Space fan. I'm really looking forward to the remake because so far it's looking really damn good. Um. Between that, Callisto Protocol and Atomic Heart got a gameplay. Um, that looked thing that pretty neat. Sent me. Yes, yeah, I had a release great. date. I've had that on my Steam wish list for like four years. I wasn't aware yeah. of the game at all. I saw it for the first time. I was like, that looks that's pretty cool. It's pretty really, cool. Um, it came out like and got revealed years ago. And then I guess oh, really? it was in like mm -hmm. weird yeah. development territory, got a publisher, and now it's finally going to be like a thing. So I hope that's really good because that looks super cool and Bioshocky. But yeah, Russian. yeah. Lies of P looks really Russian cool nuclear as well. Bioshock. I mean, and yes, the name is funny. Yes, we will be. We will be hoping you and I both to stream that. Stream Hell Scorn. Yes. Stream Callisto Protocol. Scorn. Yeah. yeah, plenty of fun. To yeah. No, Jim. The... No, stop. Stop. Jim specifically said that it's really difficult to find. I guess technically they're not out yet, but <laughs> <laughs> they are difficult to find because they're not out. It's like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's fair.
especially in this uh, industry where it's getting really harder games. and harder to find fun games that are just fun games that aren't trying to fuck you over. So Isn't that your fucking I'm sorry, job, that's just a lie. That's a there's, fucking lie. There's a lot of very fun games that don't fuck. I refuse to 2019. 2019. Yeah. Uh, what? My 2019 so game of the year. Games. Anybody whose job it is, it robbed Devil May Cry 5, I tell you. It robbed it. Anyone whose job it is to play video Devil games is not in a position of saying, every single one I play is a horrible predatory mess. It's like, no. That's absurd. That means you have horrifically bad taste. I'll tell Wilds came out 2019, you fuckface. Whoa. It's an excellent game. To be fair, I still haven't played that, though I do you have an installed beat on you my up. Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. I honestly have it with me everywhere. Else to be world I have a request for a recommendation. Honestly, that's a really good recommendation to re to receive. Play it immediately, or I'll hurt you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Game. Uh, what else yeah. came out? Uh, Untitled Goose Game. People love that game. That's just a fun game where you fuck around. Yeah. Metro Exodus on Steam uh, if you pre-ordered it, or on Epic if you didn't. Oh. Blasphemous came out, but that's that's actually that, that can be a bit tough. Not not. Just fun, but that is a very good game as well. Well, yeah, oh, all yeah, you're looking for is games that are because like Jim says, like, oh, it's so difficult to find games that aren't predatory. It's like, no, yeah, to be fair, Wait, you're yeah, looking for games that are predatory, that's your game. job, yeah. Like, part yeah, of your job is reporting shit. on the predatory practices, so you're kind of like biased in favor of finding them and being aware of them, and they'll make it into because, like, your circles and stuff. Meanwhile, there's going to be people who are just playing every game and reviewing them. And they're probably yeah. much more chill. They're probably like, yeah, this year wasn't so bad. There were some pretty good ones, pretty bad ones. That's probably the regular take every year. Because it, it, we've talked about this before, but games seem to be in a better position than, well, better than TV and movies, at least. I would say so. And that's not even to say that's that, like, comics, for sure. you know, movies are in some Although, awful, awful place. They're not great, but the main, what we usually talk about is, like, all of Disney's stuff is doing real bad. Yeah. Which sucks, Disco Elysium like, came out 2019. I heard very good things about that. I still that know what it's about, but I heard it's really fantastic. good. Fantastic. Mm. So yeah, I could go on and on. There's there's so many games I probably forgot. I'm just looking for like random lists right now. And I've already 2019 seen like, was an insane year for games. Holy really god. Really good games. Slay the Spire. That that's still getting updates to this day. I'm pretty sure. I like Slay I the Spire they've, a lot. They, they've wrapped it now. I think they're one. done with it. Yeah, Slay the Spire like, uh... is great. I've dumped so many hours into it. Especially when you get the crazy yeah. runs. I um, just... I, I wish I was streaming. I had a run with with the Poison Dude, where just like after turn one, everything was already dead, uh, just because of all the combos <laughs> and redu reductions of price. I was just like, this is fun on the burn. <laughs> hey. Slay the Spire sounds like something from the gamer Kama Sutra. <laughs> Ooh. Psychologulating people into spending more money, making games grindier, making games less fun, yeah, all yeah, to yeah. squeeze extra yeah. cash yeah. out of people yeah, who have already bad. bought okay, the yeah. damn game. The game industry itself is worth. Um, Jim, I feel like Jim. this is all. This is all wrong. Oh, well, I, I feel like it's I all baggage. Got nothing to do with the yeah, conversation. So I think what I'm finding really odd is it's it seems to be conflating. Well, a lot of what is making the games successful in terms of their monetization model is through difficulty. Not really. A lot of the model is just getting people, like, a, a lot of the model, especially when you look at, like, multiplayer games, is creating, like, an ecosystem that puts a lot of pressure on you to buy into the system so that yeah. you can continue to be part of the community and engaged in, like, what is happening right now, where this is the cool skin that everybody wants to have, and this is, like, the signal of status in the game. And then, of course, the next Battle Pass comes out, and there'll be a new signal of status. Yeah. And I mean, in single-player games, I'm not sure how many examples I can think of off the top of my head in recent years where they were arbitrarily harder just to milk you for money, for microtransactions. Yeah. What exactly would we be citing here? And if you have any examples, it would be good if they weren't like you didn't have Nintendo footage on screen because Nintendo yeah. doesn't really do yeah, microtransactions. Yeah, Nintendo's a really bad one to target for this. Uh... But maybe the visuals like aren't supposed to be for that. You never know. Well, what, what's, being shown here is the, uh, what's being shown here is the easy mode for one of the uh, Mario games. This is and not one mode. of the mobile ones either. Like they have Super no, Mario Run and their Mario Kart, whatever it's called, on mobile, and sure. those apparently have really predatory microtransactions. But I, no, I, I feel like that's not Nintendo's bread and butter. But the thing is, is that it's never difficulty. It's just progression. You just make it take longer to unlock everything. It's not that you need a requisite skill level to do it. You just need time that most people don't have, generally. Yeah. 
Yeah, so like, it perfectly grindy. Yeah, so I wouldn't make an appeal to. It wouldn't be an appeal to. Yeah, I, I don't follow. That's I'm not sure also what yeah. you'd be appealing to. I go as far as saying it feels a little bit disingenuous too, because if you took people saying like, "I want it more difficult," when are they ever referring to like a want of you could fight Goliath and he's got all these mechanics, or you can fight him ten times in a row before the door unlocks? You're like, well, that that's not exactly. That's not what anyone, nobody wants that. And it's like, yeah, grinding. And it's just like, nobody's referring to that when they say more difficult. Nobody. Also, Jim, dear Jim, what if, what if spending money on microtransactions gives me more fun? Ooh. Why are you trying to take that away from me? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, see, and that's when Jim would be like, oh, really your fun. problem. You don't understand, Rags. Like, you, it, I think that Jim would appeal like you're being manipulated. And it's like, that's interesting that we can sort of talk about people's mental states and what they're missing out on in terms of their approach. So when you say like... I can legitimate... Well, I was just Go going to say, does it not reflect with, like, if you make everything easy mode is just press A over and over again and you'll get through all of Dark Souls. It's like, could I not appeal to them maybe being, they they think that's what they want, but they don't want it? Could I say that? Or is that going too far if I cross the line? I, I would just that. legitimately say there are games that I like and I think are good games. I have microtransactions. I pay for them. It makes me, it lets me have more fun. I enjoy the game more. And I'm not being manipulated. Yeah, no, it's I've, like those, um, those games exist yeah. too. So I, I mean, I, I've always said that about Killing Floor. Um, I think the game was pretty pretty good price for what it is, and then I was happy to buy extra bits in microtransactions for it. Uh, I don't think we've ever had like a full podcast talking about the nature of microtransactions, but like I don't consider them 110 percent evil. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's always a matter of how you implement them. Yeah. Oh yeah, they can be good. They can be bad. Yeah, what's the entry so, price for the game? What what cost for each transaction are you looking at versus what you get for it? Like, there's a, there's a lot to talk about. It. It's not just all bad for good. Yeah, what yeah. what happened was, Star Wars Battlefront Two ruined it for everything in a good way, I guess, by by being like five. What was it? Like seven hundred pound to get accelerationism. It was, it was, it was to unlock Vader early. You have to pay to like seven hundred dollars or some stupid shit. Oh yeah. It was the price of things and also the fact that you got very distinct objective combat advantages by buying like what like star cards, I think they were called, that just made your ships turn faster and shoot better and do more all sorts of stuff. Your blaster uh, now does five hundred percent damage. Which, uh, what Battlefront two <laughs> signaled was the Battlefront two signaled the end of game changing microtransactions because now it's all cosmetic. Um which I don't yeah, know if that's ruined it for everyone. Game. Um, they ruined it for everybody, but they've also kicked off a trend that I dislike greatly, and I think I've seen now with uh, Call of Duty Warzone just seems to be like this hodgepodge of um pop different art styles, and the yeah. very <laughs> the Attack on Titan styles. DLC, <laughs> um, and and absolutely no consideration for like continuity or anything at all. Um, like it, it's it's uh it's it's just shit thrown to the wall because the only goal. Is to um, become people... Fortnite. Well, yeah, exactly. Because I mean, Fortnite's yeah. the model. You've got everything in Fortnite. there. We love Fortnite. Yeah. Um, wait, wait, yeah. Springy, you didn't buy the the ninja skin when you played Fortnite? Don't you love the blue hair? I'm pretty sure that because I, I I remember I played that game when it first came out, like the battle royale mode. But that how many years ago was that? Like four years ago. Imagine yeah, if I played it again, it. it would be indistinguishable to me. I played oh, not the, indistinguishable, unrecognizable. I played like the alpha or beta for the original game that it was supposed to be, which oh, was like a building defense. zombie yeah. defense game. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh. and I never played it oh, again. This is neat. And then apparently I heard it it got resurrected, ironically as it is. As a PUBG clone, and now it's the most popular game in existence. Yeah. Well, well, well. If it isn't John, John, loves Fortnite. Oh, he's the one. John plays I'm his good. Master Chief in Fortnite. He knows about video games. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you follow that Watch Together link, you can join us with just having a little chat about difficulty in video games. One might oh, call gotcha, it a yeah. difficult subject. <laughs> that's, that's the name of the video. Well, um, that's the title of the. You bastard! Yeah, it's not that hard. I totally stole the idea. But yeah. Well. Uh, Predatory as fuck. I heard you guys were talking about, about microtransactions. And, we heard y'all uh, were talking I, shit. I, I agree it's not always uh, that bad, but um, I remember like when I first loaded up Halo Reach, and uh, whenever you had like a, a new, there, there was like a new DLC map that you didn't have, there'd be like a big gold star next to it. 
and I was just like, oh, this, no. is, this is oh, ugly. Cool and it's like yellow uh, right against like the blue traditional interface of like Halo. And it's just like so like visually distracting and it takes advantage of people's like OCD, I guess, to just like want to get rid of that uh, big ugly star. It's like, oh, I'll just buy it. Like, I don't like stuff like that where um, it like deliberately clashes with the the you know the the visual style of it to like annoy you to, it's like but having to... that constant notification thingy on your phone or whatever like if there's a notification you just want to click it to get rid of it even yeah not, like yeah. gonna actually mm -hmm. do like yeah do whatever the notification says they actually do this in mobile games these days where it's like oh wait that's something well, that's like a pop-up thing and you click on it, it's like hey here's your here's your sale it's like fuck off and then it doesn't well, go away that... It's like Here's a banner stop. that's taking up the last 10% of your screen and you can pay $5 to get rid of it. I mean, yeah. South Park did the thing where it was uh, Stan was playing a mobile game and as he was laying in bed, uh, it, the phone would just buzz off. It's like, hey, buddy, you've got new friends, guy. Like, hey, buddy, you want to come <laughs> back and play the game? Like, just... The Canadian microtransaction, buddy. And then, and then they gave him free, like, oh, you've got 1,000 free Canada coin. And then he yeah. stopped playing and then he spends like a million dollars. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> So I don't I don't mind it if there's like a separate dedicated page maybe somewhere just labeled store and you go there and if you want to get something you can. Um, you guys remember when described the whole situation with the beta costing a bazillion dollars the pride and accomplishment thing? <laughs> no, it's, just, it's still meme to this hmm. day, I promise you. It's, it's like it's still alive and well. I'm pretty sure it's like the most disliked comment in the history of Reddit or something. It is as far as I know, yeah. So oh, fucking stupid. Whoever said that must feel so awful. <laughs> Like forever, just that was also the event that gave us the term surprise mechanics as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it, that was um. Isn't that when they were there was like a legal thing, and then they they tried yeah, to use they, that as a defense in a in a legal sense to explain why they're not gambling. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not gambling. It's a surprise mechanic. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Yeah. Working way too hard to make games less fun. The last thing we all need to do as a collective is make games less fun for each other. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to be. The whole, the whole fucking point but is that you... people are finding it less fun to have games that are more accessible for other people. Okay, here's a question: If it's baffling, I care about this person's experience. Why do you care that I care about their experience? How am I depleting their fun? Well, so I couldn't. They can't, they can't play the game and yeah. beat it because it's so hard. I mean, just, what about, because yeah, the idea of practicing and getting better is something yeah, that he they, maligns and mocks. If we're actually going to go, they like, literally can be it. We're going utilitarian yeah. on this shit. If I said to Jim, making it easier will allow all eleven to play the game, but ten people will now find it a lot less fun, but one person will find it more fun. Now, what do we do? Do we, do we like? Is it, uh... Like, this is what I mean about, like, conflating the accessibility and difficulty and the satisfaction of defeating challenge. Like, these are all... They've just been thrown up into one big tornado and then being like, shut up, all of you. Everyone's having fun. It's like, you're not even listening <laughs> to, like, anybody. Yeah. If you can always transpose the challenge down to your specific level, when have you ever actually accomplished anything? Because uh, it, did what you do was pick the right settings for you, or did you actually complete something that was out of your comfort zone? And how would you ever know if you're constantly just trying to hone in the difficulties to specifically what you can manage? Just poisoning the well of the discussion with this shit. Oh, Jim! Okay, Jim so doesn't like it when people poison the well, guys. Asking for an easy mode in a Japanese-made game is a direct affront mm. to Japanese culture. We're overcoming extreme challenges as a way of life. Why do you hate their culture? Um, this person isn't real. I was about to say, like, this is they're doing <laughs> the same thing Jim's doing now. They're, they're like, hyper. They, a... they run it off into this direction that's absurd. Instead of just being like, hey, some of us like challenge, right? <laughs> Simple. Well, as that. Jim's isn't a... real. Why are you putting him on the screen? Come on. Does Jim believe in uh, cultural appropriation? He's an insufferable lefty. Does he think that cultural appropriation is like a thing that exists and it's real? Probably. Because if he does, then there might be, from his perspective, a valid argument in saying that if you want a game developer from a certain culture to remove elements of that culture from their game, which might include discuss, you know, difficulty elements, then that you are appropriating the culture of someone but that, else. That's probably not appropriate, and that's just being a dick to their culture, right? Or <laughs> just ignoring their culture or ruining their culture or something like that? Oh, something along those lines.
that. The anger over easier modes that already exist seems to run counter to a very popular argument against an easy mode in Dark Souls or Cuphead or Sekiro. It would betray the developers are. What's interesting too is that all these games that he mentions are generally very beloved and revered and respected. You know, the Dark Souls games, Cuphead, a lot of difficult games have a sort of um, kind of reverence to them. There's this respect that comes from, you know, discussions on these games and, and beating them in particular is a very respectable mm -hmm. thing. Um, and these seem to be the games that, unless unless someone randomly fucking talks about Star Fox Zero for the first time ever, uh, these seem to be the games that people talk about. It's so, always these really good ones. Sterling does think that the creator's vision is like not a legitimate point. Then, well, because yeah, I was, I was going to say this is the like, way he's putting that. This is a different bullet in the gun, as far as I'm concerned. Games this is never more than what they are. Well, it's, it seems like it's about to be mocked. The sentiment. Well, we'll see, um, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, this is totally valid to me. You should not. It's the same thing as writing. You should not force the writer or the developer to make the game you want instead of whatever their intention is as the artist. Their thing could be shit, but I don't know that you should force them to do something you want. That seems fucked. Well, they don't have to create yeah. a game that appeals to everybody. And in fact, I mean, trying to do that is quite difficult. Well, and you um, end up with something that's shit usually. That's like the whole. Um, it's when well, they say everyone it, likes it, it but uh, nobody loves it. Well, it, I no, guess it's uh, it's it's comp you, you look at something like Mario. I'd say that's a game that broadly appeals to a lot of people, but but again, that's not everybody. Yeah, I'm, it has I'm also going to like an extreme of literally every single person. You try and like it gets stamped down into like a sludge because even with Mario, there's plenty of people who are like, Egh. well, I think Theo <laughs> said it earlier, um, and I agree. I think that I I think that there's a lot that you can do in video games that that isn't achievable if the overall goal of everybody is to make games that appeal to everybody. I think that certain mechanics just aren't going to emerge unless we have games that are appealing to niche interests or uh, niche play styles or audiences. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's... I think you yeah, just I would, limit it, a lot of potential in a medium. I, I shudder to think of all of the games that I adore that are niche games and what they would become if they were made more... Exactly. Generally accessible. Well, to be fair, I think Theo, you believe that Elden it Ring what we get. Dark Souls. Yeah, Elden Ring is the <laughs> end result of that process. Uh, yeah, but it, it depends on the mechanic, though, right? Because, like, on on paper, a mechanic can seem a certain way. Like, uh, a lot of MMOs have like stuff you need to farm, like reputation or whatever, like certain currencies. Um, which on paper might sound like, yeah, th this will be a bit tedious, but it will be rewarding in the end. But then when you actually put it in the game and quality assurance or the community test it out, then it either turns out to be way more tedious than they thought it would be and the community hates it and like people literally stop playing over it. Or it's the opposite and everyone just like browse through the content and does it like in a day or so. Like yeah. some some things you have to have tested, even though it, it like sounds good on paper. Yeah, there's uh, there's a reality of like when they release uh, Demon Souls, for example, if they could then go back two years after two years of it being out and do it again, they'd likely change a shit ton from how re people reacted to their choices, which arguably is the same for everything that's made, I guess. No, yeah. <laughs> man, I I love all those Souls games, but like I, I've talked about this before. I, I'm terrible at all of them, <laughs> um, but I would never campaign for like a like an easy mode in that game, just cause because I think there there is something to the difficulty that's part of that game's intense atmosphere that it has. It feels dangerous because, and it's it's not even just hard for the sake of hard. Like it's or not like um, it's not cheaply designed difficulty. Like they they're really carefully plan it out and there's a way to beat everything and like you respect those developers for putting that effort in and uh yeah there is I an just... alert to, that difficulty has that you know video game danger has yeah um and it in and, and it colors a lot of my video game experiences over the years you know the idea of but in and, and plus a lot of it has to do with familiarity resident evil 4 is a game that i've 
<laughs> I like to think I've damn near mastered. I've played it so much. I, I love that game to death. But the first times I went and played it, it was the first M-rated game I ever bought. GameStop let me buy it when I was 17. Oh, but, um, you yeah, put on a fake beard and a fake hat. Isn't, I, well, isn't I, had a, I had a friend of mine, and I stood, I was on his shoulders, and we got a big coat, <laughs> and we walked in. And nice. I said, I said, oh, I would like a, a Resident Evil 4, please. And I am uh, 21, yes. Then, but you guys have to be 21 to buy M-rated games in the states. No, that was my no, that was the oh. lie in my joke. Oh, okay. Because I I thought 17 was the age. I was like, right. I, I think I you were just allowed. There to you go. Earthbound anyway. hero. See, that's chat. that's danger. That, that's it. that's Nobody meta else. danger. Nobody else picked up on me saying a fake beard and a fake hat. What is my fake hat? I don't fake know what a fake hat, hat looks well, a fake, like. A fake hat, yeah, a yes, fake like... hat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You yeah. the... Wait a second, you you put on this hat. It's fake. <laughs> this, this hat's not real. <laughs> this hat's not real. You just That's take it real. off. Turn it into like a, a sausage or something. It's like, <laughs> what? It's pretty fucking funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. Are you two From... 17-year-olds in a trench coat? Yeah. No, 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 10 no, feet tall. No, we're two 21-year-olds. No, no. It's just two voices saying... Just two voices saying no, like <laughs> one after another. Yeah. No, no. yeah. <laughs> Ribs like, the bottom guy. Shut up! <laughs> this hat comes like, right <laughs> off. It's not even real. Did it end with the guy on the bottom sneezing, so you flew up into the ceiling? So, would you say? Because I was, I was, I was saying, you know, Resident Evil Four. When I first played it a few times, it was like legitimately difficult. But I like that about it. It was a game that had like, oh, it's on the pedestal of difficult games. And it's there if I want to play it, and I ended up doing that a lot. But mm -hmm. what if people can't play games because they're too scary? Is that a kind of difficulty so, to overcome? I'm glad you brought that up, Rags, because I was thinking, yeah. if, if the perspective is, let's say you made a game, and the difficulty, like John said, is in service of an intense atmosphere, if that isn't valid... Why would the art style be valid? Couldn't you? Shouldn't there be like an option to make everything super colorful and bright? If it's like, yeah, if you don't super like high it, contrast. How, well, so the, I guess we're pushing. How much should a player be allowed to change their experience? How much should they be allowed to do that themselves? Yeah. And how far yeah. should it extend? Should it extend to the graphics? Should it extend to the writing? Mm -hmm. Should it extend to the characters? How spooky it is. I feel like yeah, this, uh, game is, right. this game is really yeah. scary. I can't play this game because of how scary it is and how. You know, I'm just I'm just a chicken, or I'm 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 I get scared of it, so I can't play it. They need to remove these elements from the game to make it more accessible Ooh. to me. Yeah, imagine. And I was gonna tell say, you, I Have feel you... like the first bracket is devs' intentions, and then if we want to delve deeper, we'll try and find out like if we can figure out some. You know, it, it, I'm trying to go further than depends, but it is kind of a depends situation on on uh, all these different details and every form and part of the execution. Because again, I want to come back to the whole. The mainstreamifying of From Software's games as they've gone over time. Also, you know what a fucking fantastic example of this is in a in a slightly connected way is what happened no, tell to me. Amnesia to oh, Rebirth. You can no! argue we no! got we got Soma because the, speak its name. The artists were like, we're gonna make something we think is great. Damn what everyone says they they desperately want. When that didn't work out, they were like, all right, fine, we'll give you what you want, and it was horrible. Like, they went with yeah. what they thought would be successful, and then it was sludge, like the worst kind. Oh, it's so bad. It rebirth goes. was shit. Fuck Rebirth. Yes. Fuck I hate that this is making me want to play face. Rebirth. Never uh, play what rebirth. was it they... Another was... French woman. Ah. What was it they I, I got Rebirth in a Humble Bundle one, so I feel like I gotta play it just to see what you guys mean have about it. Played... I have well, an extra have copy you... now because of Humble Bundle, and I'm upset about this. Mark, Mark, can <laughs> you have an idea? Have you played Dark Descent and Soma before? The... Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um. To give you an idea, the 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 devs like it's completely fallen apart to the point where they they've made the worst jump scare mechanic in the history of horror games, like the most cheap. Mm -hmm. Where Don't just call them that. That's keep... not what uh, wait, wait, wait. So that's my point. <laughs> <guess> <laughs> Surprise so, mechanics. We well, so we we were like intensely fucking complaining about them. Every player is. Where I've seen like this like one or two reviews of like, oh, it's kind of interesting that they just jump scare you once per ten seconds infinitely. That's, <laughs> that's, <yeah. laughs> it's not so bad. That's kind of interesting. Um, oh god. The, yeah. the dev, I, like, the, I like Star Fox Zero. That's interesting. <laughs> the, the devs eventually dampened that shit from what I know. But at first they said, oh, they're not jump scares. The they're fear flashes. Update. 
Yeah, they call him Fear Flash. Fear Flash is on <laughs> jump scares. That's different. I remember that. That's scenario. the most embarrassing thing I've heard someone say about their game. Yeah, the own your mechanic. shit. Kick that can down the road. Man. Man. Now, <laughs> in the, I guess it was technically the second patch for that game because the first patch of Amnesia Rebirth re included the EXE file. But the second uh, update for that game, the first proper update, they toned down the Fear Flashes. First, How do you make that kind of fucking mistake? First install of the game didn't have an EXE file. No, they, no. It, it was. It was an it, they made it. it yeah, well, yeah. That's all right. But They're I'm sorry, how fine. do you how do you have a whole team of devs that are familiar with video games that play test a game with that shit in it and they're like, well, yeah, this is ready to post. Yeah, go. People yeah. will love that. Yep. <laughs> Swear it had like a beat it like a beating afterwards like, uh, Frank, did you did you put out uh, like a post about those uh those uh jump scares? Like Did you tell yeah, the yeah, gamers they were wrong it's no, again? It's no it's no problem. It's like, oh, what's your right? Oh, I just told them it's not it's, we call them fear flashes. It's like, you did you did fucking what? That's fucking brilliant, Frank. <laughs> I, so good. It just changes Excellent everything. Work. Frank, you'll promote it. Dynamite. <laughs> Frank, you'll promote why did, why didn't we guys, think of that? Why did you call them something else? If you call guys, them something they're else, jumps. they're not that thing anymore. They're not Is jumps. It possible scares, they're it was scare a... jumps. Scare jumps. Oh. Scare jumps. Is it Don't possible it was a 4D chess move just so they would never have to make another amnesia game and they could just <laughs> do new stuff like Soma? If they put out Dude, another the, miracle the... after it, sure, fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, need the, I need this Alone in a Dark game like right now because it has the writer of Soma. Yes, and Mikhail Hedberg. Yes. Oh, okay. And I'm just like, where if you be come back, never leave. <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing like you've been fucking around in Need for Speed. We need you yeah, back what... in survival horror. What have you been Please. doing? <laughs> Guys, there are surprise mechanics. <laughs> no, stop it. You're upsetting me. I like the idea that you, you tell them as a playtest, like, oh, I, my game got bugged out. There's like a fucking jump scare that was like locked in and just kept repeating over and over. And they just look at you like, uh... Isn't that fucking scary, though? <laughs> like, <laughs> sustained fear flash. Flash. You say that's a bug. You're like, yeah, that's a bug, right? You're like, uh, uh sure. I'll go sure. sure. <laughs> for our next game. Why don't you take the, the day off? Ah, you're Frank. <laughs> they, 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 they talk to the devs. They're like, maybe we shouldn't make it once per one second. Ten seconds is probably the way to go. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We fixed it. <laughs> Popular argument against an easy mode in Dark Souls or Cuphead or Sekiro. It would betray the developer's artistic vision. From software, Why are you saying it like very that? Careful Don't you game think that's balance. an interesting argument? Well, yeah, that's, that's what we're here for now, is to figure out what the... No, but he, he said it in a silly it voice, makes, so everyone else is wrong. It makes oh, me hate him, true. because, I mean, <laughs> this man is the reason video games will never, like, yes. go anywhere. Yeah, we get less but, unique <laughs> and niche artistic ones. Artistic vision in a video game. Yeah, because they're all hunting to become more viable, when it's like, no, just mm -hmm. be great. And I know that sounds pretty actually like, fucking disgusting. I hate it. I, I can't tell you if can... he's arguing against that justification or if he's just doing the Jim Sterling poison the well thing and just trying to say that we're using that as an excuse. But really, we just want to keep out the people who are bad. Mahler would never want to take away the artistic vision of Multiverse of Madness. No, <laughs> but there wasn't one. <laughs> they, oh, 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 dude, oh, genuinely, oh. as much as I think Michael Waldron is a terrible writer, he didn't really get to write a lot by the looks of things. We probably didn't even see what his best work is there. We probably saw one of his worst possible works, but I'm not confident he's going to be making miracles. I just... I, I, from how he described the fact that he was like, he's like, he like happily describes the fact that the script was thrown out and then day one he's working on the, the script for a film they are filming. Like, he's like, woohoo! And this is like, dude, that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. You get commissioned to write a script that they're building the sets for right now. Like, what do you mean? Uh, oh no. Don't you build Can you write a scene that takes on... place in an alley? <laughs> we got an alley set. Could you do that for us, Michael? Yeah, then you do, and then they're like, throw that out, Michael, we're doing something different. Like, no, yeah. no, no, Ali's are last year. We built a zoo. <laughs> I need you to... We didn't go to a zoo, we built a zoo. I need like, you to write a scene that takes place in a zoo. Like, what animals are in the zoo? They're like, we don't know, Michael, we don't know we're yet. We're still getting the animal. We got a giraffe and three zebras and a cockatoo. There might write be... a scene that has a giraffe, three zebras, and a cockatoo. There might be some badges. Are there badges in zoos? <laughs> Is that something? <laughs> we gotta we get gotta some, throw some badges. badges in there. <laughs> Michael, we bought badges. You, <laughs> you gotta write, write that in there, badges. Michael. Write we a scene notes. with badges in it. Put the badges in the beginning. That's what they see first. 
Oh god, the badges died. We need you to write <laughs> you out, the write badges out the badges. You got to write out the badges, Michael. They all died. It was a disease. Don't forget it. We'll tell the we'll tell the guys in the Disney CGI dungeon to CGI out the badges. Michael, you didn't throw the badges away, did you? We can CGI in the badges easily. We will we'll be fine. We found a vet. He resuscitated the badges. <laughs> write the badges back into the scene. <laughs> you know, Michael, we don't need. We're just gonna CGI the whole zoo. It's fine. <laughs> don't you worry about it. <laughs> CGI the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what they'll do next. Can we just CGI a script? Like, well, I guess that... technically, if you write it on a Word document, it's CGI. <laughs> oh my! And they're like to so... have the actors standing on their marks and then CGI their lips moving, it's like that Wombo AI program. Michael Poulter, what was it like to write Multiverse of Madness? And he's just like, um, yeah, yeah. It was electric. <laughs> Badges. Developer's artistic Dead. vision. From Software had a very careful game balance in mind when it designed Sekiro, and therefore we cannot argue with them ever on the. Mo that's not the. Uh, you can that's argue. Not argument. You can say oh, that's oh, like. Listen. I don't like the way you did a thing, but that doesn't mean you could then go. Excuse me. Change it for me. How dare you? <laughs> like I wish for you to do this now. Ah, this is gonna be annoying to listen to. Why yeah. did it work, or why did it not work? Isn't that what game reviews are? Otherwise, they'd all be the same because everyone would do the really difficult. Yeah. With them ever yeah. on the modes they do or don't choose to have in their games, that's how criticism apparently works. But sure, whatever. It's about artistic integrity. It's about respecting what the developers want. But if you why decide that's going to be your argument, like, why are you saying that? It, it, it's yeah. like dismissing the whole concept of a person choosing to put things. It's, it's like yeah. I want to see Iron Man in the next Marvel Avengers. Like he's dead, though. You have to respect. It's like no, put him no. in. I want him. <laughs> but the next movie is called uh, Floompy Man, really, not really Iron Man. really funny that Jim <laughs> talks about video games this way. Oh yeah, this, this is so the brattiest fucking... video games this way. Imagine, imagine this worked. Like, we all played the new fucking Mario Kart, and all of us are like, I want Waluigi to be the main character. <laughs> it's like, well, what? everyone says that. Oh, I know, that's one of the, that's what I was referencing, it's a mainstream request. But they don't capitulate, <laughs> they don't give you Year of Waluigi, okay? No this longer man get is mad. constantly screaming at AAA devs, and then he says this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you want, do you want games to be sludge but with no microtransactions? Is that? Is I that guess it? so, yeah. Does want. But if you decide that's going to be your argument, you can no longer get mad when developers do add easy modes because, you know, respecting the okay. developers. Okay, when, when do we get upset that a de developer yeah, releases a game with an easy mode? This is the thing, this is oftentimes an IP argument. Like, if you release a brand new thing, and it's just like there's an easy mode in it, none of us are going to be able to complain with any conception of not having played. But when when you're like, ah, Dark Souls is well known for this particular experience, and you're paying them for that experience to get it again, they're like, it's different this time. You're like, oh. Like, how is that not hard, easy to understand? Like, it's the most simplest shit. Your fun gets reduced. So that other people's fun might increase. Like, how have you determined, yes, but their increase is better than your decrease? Like, oh, okay. And also, we value that increase more. Like, it's just the fun that someone has from an easy mode is worth more than the fun someone has from the difficulty of the game. ...vision and all that. Respecting creative vision seems to also go against the popularity of mods. So you can't... No. That's not an L. Yeah, those are not the same. Oh Popularity of what did he say? Mods. Mods. No one, Mods. Like, no, one okay. no one installs Macho Man Randy Savage as dragons in Skyrim and says, you know what? Fuck the dragons in Skyrim. I can't believe they yeah. fucking put dragons in Skyrim. It needs to be Macho Man Randy Savage. And like no one that installs weird, that mod would then... Oh, yeah. Who the fuck said that's they funny. were respecting the original vision by playing the game with Ra Macho Man Randy Savage dragons? No one. They know <laughs> what they're doing. They know that. Yeah. James We're not just saying this game needs that... to be changed for me. They're saying, oh, I can install this mod, and it'll be a fun little time, and that's okay. Saying, I want to change this game for me. Nor it's do I have a problem with anyone installing a invincibility mod into a From Software <laughs> game if that's what they want to do. My but... issue is with them saying, From Software, you need to put an invincibility mode in this game for me. Yes. Exactly. It's, exactly. Just thinking that's what, it, yeah. it's the same yeah. thing as if they I said... Actually, uh, have a problem. I don't want a mod... Macho Man Randy Savage Dragon for installing it. <laughs> I want them to make the next game to just simply have that in it, and if they don't, it's bad. Like that's retarded. Like if you want to mod it so the game is easier, your friends might judge you, but I mean I guess you can do that. 
It's just the, you, the yeah, this is kind of I, where we're at. Like, it's, it's the difference between forcing the developers to do it through, like, social pressure versus mods. Why would you even bring mods into yeah, the conversation? The community completely different. altering the game. I, I almost think, like, would this whole thing not be an issue if all consoles had as easy access to mods as PCs? Like if you could just if you could just say okay I'm on PlayStation and I don't want to I don't want to fight Millennia and be able to die so I'm gonna mod it so that I'm invincible like if, if yeah, that like, could happen would these people still complain about not having easy modes in game? Yeah. Also, James just reminded me. Apparently, uh, Jim defends the artistic vision of The Last of Us Two. So. Yeah, that. Uh, so I think it's as simple as um, that. Artistic vision is relevant when it comes to, I guess, what you would, what you would, in a very shallow way, describe as more overtly artistic. You know, like yeah, gameplay oh, isn't artistic vision. The gameplay, the same way yeah. the narrative when is. we Ex exactly when it comes to artistic vision, right? When they go, this enemy has a hundred health. He could have had fifty, but we've made it a hundred, which is harder. You don't go like that's incongruent with something else. Meanwhile. Last of Us 2, the majority of our issues with that game were its inconsistencies. As, and what I mean by that yeah. is, you when you say it's their artistic vision to say that, you know, this is the scenario, X, but it's also not X. It's like, you, that doesn't even, that's just, you have two visions that compete with each other now. So what am I supposed to, how is that in any way? You know, like, changing an, an enemy's health to be uh, easier to kill in a later version of the game isn't incongruent with the previous one. It's not even necessarily incongruent with the game itself as a different enemy, but... Like, these are two very, very different arguments. It, what I'm trying to say is that when we say Joel's out of character and someone says that's their vision, we are like, well, no, because their vision is built on another one of their vision, which is incongruent mm -hmm. with this vision. What, what, are you, what are you saying? This happened with um, Wonder Woman. And like I told you, some people were like, no, that's Patty Jenkins' vision versus Zack's vision. They're not incongruent. They're different visions. Like, they're a part of the same continuity. You can't do that. Supposed to be you on the same get, team. You don't get the benefits of being a sequel or part of the same continuity while also discarding all of the responsibilities and obligations exactly. that come with that. People love the have your cake and eat it shit, where it's like, I want to benefit from their work, but oh. I also don't want to have to respect it at all. And I guess we're seeing mm -hmm. an example here where the argument is, I want... I The artistic integrity of your narrative is unassailable, but the artistic integrity of your gameplay and design decisions is non-existent. It's kind of yeah. baffling. I'm not sure what the interest is in talking about video games if you don't really care about any arguments pertaining to the merits of the design of a game, including its difficulty. Bizarre. have were either modding a game to improve its UI, add new features and content, sometimes change the entire visual style of a game, is not only common but has been aggressively fought for over the years. Developers who disallow modding are often maligned, and Bethesda was justly raked over the coals when it attempted to capitalise on modding and turn it into a glorified microtransaction Why system. Why are we comparing to decisions made by the developers? Because yeah. James, I... This is, yeah, this is a totally, completely different discussion about what you're telling developers they need to be doing, as opposed to modding, which is on an individual basis. If you want to do something, you can change an experience for yourself in a certain way. It's well, it's external it's from the game lines. in a sense. It's, yeah, um, it is it's entirely separate from the developer's intentions or goals. Yeah, by installing a mod, you are you are choosing to add the the person who coded the mods vision into the developer's vision knowing that it might alter it to the point that it's unrecognizable and if you want to make that decision cool but i mean it's not the actual game and besides modding makes the game more fun for me so what's yeah what's the game this is what I mean. in many it's cases it does what what does me modding my game do to rags's game you know what i mean like the whole point of this conversation is when the developers are forced to do a thing that affects everyone's game, as opposed yeah. to individuals. It's such a weird thing to bring up. I think it's disregarding the concept of a difficulty mode being balanced for that would affect how other difficulty modes are balanced for. It's pretending that is just not a factor. It's also framed within the it's... idea of respecting original vision means mods inherently disrespect uh, vision, which isn't necessarily true, by the way. Um, I think it's as simple it as changing something in a game. Well, in yeah, his like, mind, if, if you change something in a game, then it's it's just all the same. 
If um, it, you take the uh, the DS fix that came out immediately after Dark Souls was splatted onto PC. Oh, it's like if you said that doesn't send. respect the original vision, I'd be like, I mean, <laughs> first I think off, it does. I don't even, I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that because fixing bugs is if it is if is if anything helping to realize that vision more exactly because i yeah. highly doubt that that those bugs are parts of the vision they get in the way of the vision the difficulty of many games and they've existed before without much issue in fact in one of the many many threads about dark souls difficulty out there mods were used as an argument against an official easier mode for people wanting an easy mode it's very easy to download modded save files for demon souls and dark souls that make the game really easy well you can imagine what happened when a mod came out to make the latest From game easier. After someone used a mod that slowed sec- And <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> you know what? Just, I do remember that article, actually. Court. You just want to pat his head and say, good for you. Uh, not only but you feel so fine, no shame, that you had to write an article justifying this does it, decision. Yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. insecure at all. I, uh, yeah, I somehow I don't believe he's totally fine. <laughs> the, the, the first thing everyone's going to want to do is just be like, okay, so can we make sure there is absolutely no sense of scale here and that no matter what, you're okay with this? Like, has there been any challenge in a video game you've ever valued and then seeing someone download a mod that cancels it out, would you be always okay with that just because of the feels? Like, is that really where we're at? There's just no example of this that's val valid at all. Like, it's, that seems a little bit unusual. I assume all of us are, You know, like, some of your favorite multiplayer mode online memories? I've talked about it on EFAB before, but one of them was I had a 5v1 on Ge uh, Gears of War 2 and I won. It was a, uh, uh, I want to say Blood Drive, I think it was on. And it was one of the most intense and fun things I've ever done in my whole life for video games. Yeah. And if, if it was, if it was like, ah, yeah, but you downloaded a microtransaction, whatever that got you, you know, the super laser and you just killed them all instantly, I'd be, I wouldn't remember that. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that's a feels argument from me. Seems like a feels argument from you, too. So who's mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. A, I don't know. Also, sorry if my mic's cutting out. Hopefully, it isn't on you guys' end at least. Uh, I can hear you. No, nah, how's yeah, it going? Sound fine to me. Sound good you to sound me. Normal. Hopefully, it's not too bad for the OBS people. I'll try and I'm moving it around a little bit. Right. Fucking fix your shit, goddamn it! Echo wrote down to make combat less brutal, people oh. became furious. The guy's best Sekiro with cheats works at PC Gamer. This is what a casual cuck looks like. True. Well, it is, it is kind of, yeah, I agree. Yeah. This, I mean, he is an FBI of, crack detective. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. Or spelling like it. It's kind of awkward when you, when you work in, like a, it, in, a, in a gaming... Uh, wait, what was it? PC Gamer? Mm-hmm. And you if don't game the game game. Cluck division. It's just <laughs> I, 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 I gotta respect I, the yeah, FBI. Can I volunteer to pay more taxes now? Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't know we had a cuck detective branch <laughs> on the FBI. Get him, get them all. Round up the cucks. Cuck Space Force when <laughs> put them in cuck camps. You gotta get rid of the, the cuck and attitude, fuck, okay? Well, don't fuck them, but the people they're <laughs> that's just what to they want. Oh, no, wait, that's not they want to. Point being, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah th there is a there is like a cultural aspect of um, a bunch of people talking about how much fun they had defeating something like Dark Souls. That if there was one guy there who was turned every enemy to have one HP, the rest of them would be like, oh, oh, you you're you not know. having the same. Like he walks up to your friend group, game. hello, fellow gamers. Yeah, I too yeah. beat <laughs> the boss in Sekiro. The you know, I, I I installed cheats, and you know what? I feel fine. And he just walks up to you and tells you this, and it, you just they're like, "Oh, you're, you're not one it, of us." Yeah, you're instantly the least cool person in that conversation. Absolutely, this like, yeah. is a really easy question, mm -hmm. right? Okay, don't enjoy a challenge. You're not looking for a challenge. Why do you buy Sekiro? Yeah, because everyone's be talking about it, and I want to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, then at some point, okay. sometimes cool. it happens, you buy <laughs> the thing, you buy a thing, like, the, you know, the form your purposes. Something happens, you buy things that you don't like, and then you're just like, oh, well, that sucks. I got, I bought Mass Effect and Andromeda and couldn't wait to get out of that conversation. I was just like, no, nope, no, <laughs> <laughs> three hours, I'm done. That's it. I'm not playing any more of this. This sucks. And another. Wait, that's the cuck who wrote that shitty article about beating Sekiro with cheats. Soy boy with a disgusting <laughs> neck beard. <laughs> I like Why are you highlighting all of these fucking chads? I like he's, like he's highlighting them like, look how 
uh, awful and embarrassing these are. It's just really funny. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Like, oh, I remember this. And of course, there was that other response to the yeah. Sekiro mod, the one that became, well, memed overnight. One so arrogant, it could only be read by an aristocrat, a oh, literal no. aristocrat. Oh, oh. fuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Sorry, man. folks, here we go. You cheated not only the game, but yourself. You didn't grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. Nothing was a risk. Which is weird. When I, if you were to isolate this quote as just text and present it to me, hmm. and I'm like, huh, yeah, I suppose so. If there's no risk involved there's and you didn't gain anything, there was no challenge you overcome, then it is a hollow victory. Like Where it isn't even is a victory. Lie? So this, this is, is like thing. something it's, I'd hear Socrates saying. It's totally. And he's like, Ooh. it's tone policing, really, because the point is kind mm. of true. It's just delivered in a way that's really kind of pretentious. Uh. Just kind of, just yes. a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. It's like it's it's mainly the approach the guy took, unfortunately. But like you know, this is a real thing. If if someone flew to the top of Everest in like a hyper safe, hyper technological thing mm -hmm. and then said, "I climbed Everest," don't you know? It's like, yeah, no, not really. No, <laughs> like, I feel like the guy who did it without legs, and it granted his legs didn't get tired, but still, yeah. the guy who did it without legs, he could see when he gets to the top of that mountain. Absolutely, I think his yeah. uh, victory is a bit more meaningful than yours. I just, yeah, I yeah. Someone in chat said it. It's saying saying something in a funny voice doesn't make it false. That's true, but unfortunately, well, gonna, I think a lot of people think that. Yeah, he's gonna milk this for all it's worth. Uh, because it's it's like, look, let's all laugh at the guy saying that difficulty matters when it's like, you you took one of the memed ones. You're not really taking the argument here. But he doesn't know what these people even want. Well, he, yeah, he said that himself. And nothing was gained. <laughs> It's sad that you don't know the difference. Royston! Royston! I just roasted me a soy boy casual neck beard! He doesn't know the value of hard work! Now feed me What do you say? I... I'm just... I wanted yeah. to end. I can't He's about to get it, that The aristocrat is rich because he was given money, not because he earned An end to skits. No more skits in Enough. videos, please. No, I'm I'm pro nostalgia critic skits. That shit is <laughs> mainly because they're fascinated. fascinated. Like they're that just... is fascinating. Yeah. I love those skits. I want to watch. I want to put them in a museum. That's another I wanna, tradition. I want to load it onto our Odyssey probe and send it into space. <laughs> We've almost got a tradition now of find... covering nostalgia critic every thirty first as well of Halloween uh, October. <laughs> so maybe we'll cover oh, them again wow. soon enough. To dangling from your hand. Oh! Nice. <laughs> Bear in mind, this was a mod for personal Sick. use, not a demand for an hey, easier mode like to be added happening. to the game. He's just sitting there like, man, this is fascinating. <laughs> Do go on. I think the, the bear wasn't the, very convinced. That, so that bear was watching that skit and was like, mm -hmm. yep, mm -hmm. move on. Please. Stop. The humans really have it better, I don't this know. So <laughs> These people think that the people using this mod are experienced. What do you say, sorry? I think sorry? that they're making the game easier on themselves in a way that's making it less fun. I'm just like, this is so easy. People think that using this mod, by using it, you're ruining your own experience with the game. Right. The, the, which is something I think nobody wants to talk about because it only would have happened with your choice and everyone is more so, generally speaking, in favor of everyone making their own choices. But it's like... Sure, but if someone says, I don't want to eat this really well, like, executed steak well, without my big fucking bucket of tomato sauce on it, and it's like, oh, maybe, oh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. I guess, uh, maybe an example in video games would be, yeah, well, hey, this is applicable to me, right? I beat Dark Souls 3 in, like, 13, 14 hours, and all I heard from people was you missed a lot of the game. You missed out on a lot of the experience. Yeah. Like, they want no. you to have more of an experience. They're, like, oh. sad that you didn't get to see it all in that first playthrough, or they're like, oh, you didn't play the game right. 
I guess it's it's just the sentiment of damn, you kind of robbed yourself of an experience that I think you would have thought was cool if you were just given it more time. You know, in the same way that if someone says, I beat Metroid by looking up all the guides, it's like, damn, man, like, that's, yeah. damn, you missed out on, like, a lot of what the fun is in this game, or I mm. beat this game by looking all of the, the solutions. Oh, and that's the thing, there's no digging for the good faith in any of this by Jim, because ultimately, if you watch people streaming, let's take, for example, uh, Metal uh, streaming something where he's trying to defeat a good old Bloodborne boss of some kind, Yes, we will make fun of and meme every time he dies, but the second he gets close to that health bar going to zero, and he fucking does a clutch dodge and hits them with something that kills him, everyone in chat's very happy. Woo, Why is job, that, man. do you think? Dead moment. Because that means that Bell did all the things that everyone else has had to do back when they first did it, now we can all yeah. share in that experience. Meanwhile, when you have a, a guy who's like, this is too hard, I'm turning on the cheats, You're like, oh. Oh, well. I mean, yeah, Whoa, I like dude, that. nice! Name. Yeah, yeah, who the fuck? Is... And, then Yo, they, and then they beat it. And, the, an file, and they're like, right, everybody. The proper mods folder. Like, imagine you were having a breakdown discussion uh, of uh, how difficult a boss is. Like, out of the four people, one of them beat it with cheats. The other three would be like, can you. You don't really. You can't really speak on this. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> 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 He's like, you can't even talk because he won't yeah, understand yeah. what's going on. Yeah, you'd just be like, I just went face on him. I just kept hitting over and over again, and I just won. It's like, yeah, but you had infinite health. I got. It was even really further cool. than the first try because I, I, I I'm sure you had a lot of fun because I will forever remember when I first fought Orphan of Cause and people who know me a bit longer remember that nine hour stream where I tried over and over and over, for nine hours only Orphan of Cause. When are you gonna beat him? And uh -huh. I don't know. All oh, right, that was a meme. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I finally beat the guy. I was like, fuck yeah, that was awesome. And then I did my uh, playthrough uh, New Game Plus one, and then I beat the guy first try on my uh, the second uh, on my New Game Plus, and I was like, "Fuck, man!" I remembered all those moves, and I absolutely not well, I didn't annihilate him. It was pretty clutch, but it was a very good time because I I learned the thing, had all the experiences, and then it just took over to the New Game Plus as well, and it was yeah, it's just just a great experience to have, and you definitely do rob yourself from those experiences if you just turn up some cheats. Yeah, like, but I guess what if, if we you could only just, go like, with upgrade. the argument, but it's fun, so it's fine. It's like, well, then we don't need to talk about this, really, so I don't know why we're even doing this. Like, what if you could just, like, turn on the no, time of 10 every the fun time? out of it, as far as I'm concerned. So you do 10, 10 times as much damage, you have 10 times as much health, and yeah. you beat him the pull after that. Like, you, you would never have remember that fight ever, like, two no, years later. No. You would just Dude. been like, Oh wait, he because now cost? now I can just go yeah, back I I, and I see wait, I see a certain attack and I was like, oh, I need to go just below him and just do this because I had those experiences for hours. Main things still super satisfying. Main things I remember from Elden Ring now are Godskin Apostle, Malekith, yeah. and Melania, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've mostly forgotten even the ones I fucking hated because my brain doesn't really want to latch onto that stuff, which is an ironic statement com coming from me, considering like everything that fueled me to make my DS2 videos, how much I fucking hated everything in that game. That's an example yeah. of, like, the bosses are really difficult, but when you beat them, you don't go, yes! You just go, Mish. Yeah. <laughs> Thank fuck that is over. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> You're like, yeah, Thaden yeah. dying on the planes. You're like, oh. <laughs> what the fuck, fuck ever, yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck this. Someone solved their own problem. It was simply someone using <laughs> modifications to make the game more personally enjoyable. You know, yeah. the thing that mods have existed to do since mods fucking began. I love that he's just not got the state of mind to be able to understand the, doesn't get it. the fun yeah. being pulled out in any way, shape, or form by any of this. There's just no concept of it. Like, nope, don't know what you're talking about. Sees no it? distinction between an aftermarket mod and a development feature. Demand, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's a very good image, by the way. The helicopter that is hat a lot of is questionable as to whether or not it's real. <laughs> is that a real <laughs> hat? Who's the dude in question. below you? Is there? A... <laughs> it looks kind of creepy. <laughs> but this time it was unacceptable, and it was unacceptable for no good reason. Because even if you no. think an easier mode in a game causes harm somehow, the writer who used the mod only quote-unquote harmed themselves, harming- That's the, the point! Wow. <laughs> Are you yes. watching self-harm right now? Or point. Fuck That's up? literally the point. I don't understand, like when- it's literally exactly the point. 
When someone says, like, oh, it's worth seeing this in the cinema because of the experience, and you go, no, I, I fucking don't want that experience. I want to experience it with my way, which is going to be on this mobile phone upside down. And you're like, okay, <laughs> you can do that. I'm just saying. It's like, who's mom really, really just seen himself? The Departed. <laughs> yeah. You haven't really seen The Departed until you've watched it with the Mortal Kombat soundtrack playing, trust me. <laughs> in this case making a game they bought more finely tuned to their own sense of fun which I can't even pretend to find upsetting. People get mad if a difficulty option already exists. They get mad if some people are put off when a game doesn't have an easy mode. They get mad if you don't just go and mod Do the they? game yourself. I don't know man, like generally speaking everyone gets mad at everything. I don't know. Yeah sure, fine. Isn't <laughs> You'll find weird someone. How different people have different responses to different things. Isn't oh, really Jim is weird? the expert at finding the person that doesn't like the thing and he could put it in his video. Yeah, mysteriously, we just don't see these people. That's fine, though. I'm sure they exist. If they get mad if you do just go and mod the game yourself, it's almost as if the argument evolves no, so that nobody it's, can win it's not, unless no, they... No, it's not about modding the game yourself. It's about installing your cuck shit BS FBI division mods that <laughs> just remove all <laughs> challenge from the game. Uh, yes, I know it's your preference, and guess what? Sometimes people's preferences fucking suck, and I'll criticize you for it. The that's Nirvana. what that's what his whole that's that's what we all do can we stop pretending like that do, oh yeah. it's just your, that's what we all do and people just want to yeah. act like oh no I think, um, no shut the fuck up that's what you do I that's think, what you made your I job think, doing well i think people do occasionally either forget or deliberately sort of ignore that um people do often have like a perspective on the choices that people make um even though there is a recognition that they are their own choices and in this case it's yeah, you can choose to, like, make the game this way, but I think you're missing out. I think you're making a mistake. Well, yeah, I just, I why can't we be honest about this? If, if Jim struggled yeah. on a game for a while and loved talking about that very difficulty choice, and then some other friend was talking to him, and he's like, yeah, but I had a machine gun mod where it just killed everything. It, like, the whole conversation dies. It's like, well, we didn't, we didn't have the same experience at all. What do you mean? That's not fun. <laughs> it takes yeah. it away. He's like, oh, shit. Well, And then that person's I'm, like, I had the same as you. Good. Like, this is so easy to understand, I don't know why we're pretending like it's absurd. Yeah. yeah players are extremely of good at optimizing it. the fun out of their own experiences by trying to finely tune them. Because they just settle for something really convenient that's easy to get into and easy to interact with. It takes away anything special about what it was. But it's really convenient. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about uh, using chess as an example, like a non-video game example of a game. And like, I'm, I find it difficult. There's a lot of moves, and, uh, but that kind of, the, that fact opens up this huge array of like possibilities of like gaining the upper hand over your opponent. And it's like, if you were to come along and say, oh, chess is too hard, I don't want to play this. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, go, John go, installed go, go play checkers then. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what Jim's response yeah, to that would like, be? It's... Is, okay, fine, if you found it too hard and your dad was like, okay, we'll play it so that all the pieces only do what a pawn can do to make it nice and simple, it's like, that should be okay. And it's like, I mean, no, it's not, it's not, it's not that's not that's okay. Not, You're not no, playing chess anymore. Chess game. <laughs> that's it, it's chess a different actually, game at that point. Chess like, is a good example for that. I, yeah, it's, it's like, I, I don't like the rules of chess. It's like, well, this, this is the game, these are the rules, take it or leave yeah. it. And in the case of Sekiro, it's like, the, the, the amount of health the enemies have and how much damage they deal to you, those are part of that game's rule set. So it's just like... I think um, chess is a... So one of the problems I have with the discussion about difficulty in video games is that I think that um, the arguments in favor of all games should have an easy mode tend to forget that video games are pretty different. An easy mm -hmm. mode for Devil May Cry is very different than an easy mode for Mario because they are fundamentally different games with different challenges that they present you with. One game could just have the enemies have more health or um, your weapons do less damage. That's one and the same thing. Um, you take uh, more damage when you get hit. Um, maybe they have like more forgiving power times or something in a game. Like th these are all options that you could implement that pretty easily reduce difficulty. What do you do in a game like Crash Bandicoot, which is built around very rigid platforming challenges where yeah. you just need to clear the jump? That's it. You need like to be able mode. to jump. adds more yeah. platforms, ability and to harder distances. Well, I guess. So, so that's kind of the problem. Is once we start talking about adding more platforms or whatever, how far? How much is enough? How 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 uh how much should the challenge be reduced? 
How much should it be allowed to be reduced? And is that line to the point where you can just completely curtail every challenge? There are no bottomless pits. There are no enemies that can kill you. It is impossible to fail um, yeah. by just not running forward and completing the level. And at that point, um, have we not stripped the game of all of its like merits from a gameplay design standpoint anyway? What is there to say about it if that's something that can be done? Um, difficulty is not something that can just be easily... Difficulty settings, rather, are not something that can just be easily mapped onto every type of game. And pretending that that's the case, to me, seems um, either dishonest or like indicative of a really shallow perspective on what video games are. Yeah. Yep. ...of getting good, which is fine so long as the process of Stop getting good... Stop denigrating the concept of improving at a craft. ...for the player. If the game isn't enjoyable until after you've gotten good, then people probably ain't gonna give it a chance. Well, what That's is, what is enjo so okay, enjoy what does enjoyment mean, though? Like, what do we mean when we say enjoyment? Because, let me tell you, I was not enjoying losing to Orphan of Cost, like, for, in the seventh <laughs> hour. That was not, that was not enjoyable in the broad, I guess, um, what you would, conventional sense. But if I had beaten him instead of not finishing that game, I probably would have been really thrilled. And a lot of what would have made me thrilled was the pain, the difficulty of getting there. What do you, when you say that a player is enjoying a game or not enjoying a game, it feels a little bit... Sometimes the enjoyment comes from the times that you weren't having as much fun. When it yeah, was getting enjoyment isn't just you going woohoo and smiling at the screen. The learning process is its own fun. This is yeah. somewhat tangential. Getting like, better. Kind of yeah. Overcoming but adversity. Games don't have, to, don't have to be fun. They don't have to be fun at the expense <laughs> well, of everything else. Engaging is often what I'll say instead of yeah. fun. Because yeah. fun yeah. is generally That's regarded as a certain, you know, a very Emotion. certain a particular sensation, yeah. But being engaged in something and wanting to focus on it and feeling the desire to improve at it, it's different than fun. It's a kind of enjoyment, but it's different. About... Horror well, games, like if, if someone said I wasn't having fun playing Amnesia, I was terrified. Does, is that a bad thing? Like, no. Right. That's, that's how it was. Yeah. I distinctly remember Total Biscuit. Um, I remember it was one of his like top 10 games list. And one of the games that he had as like a special mention was Spec Ops The Line. He said, this game is not fun. Like, this is not a game I would describe as being fun, but it was a valuable like experience. It was an yep. experience that I considered to be worthwhile, but it wasn't fun. And the, way the mechanics and encounter them. design in Spec Ops the Line are arguably bad. They're, they're, they're not very good well, at all, so but the story is mediocre. But, yeah. I would say mediocre. Um, yeah. but, but that's what it's appealing to is that, like, fun is a word that describes certain things. It doesn't describe this game, but it doesn't mean that this game is bad or not worthwhile. It mm -hmm. offers something that isn't... The games. games being fun... Fun is just... Um, I think fun is a word that is generally applicable, but there are these exceptions in terms of games that provide something. Like, is is Papers, Please a fun game? Like, is that a game that would be described <laughs> as a fun experience, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a valuable experience. It offers something really worthwhile that only video games can provide. Um, it, there's a lot of examples like that. And so, yeah, maybe yeah. the word fun is kind of like, generally when we talk about video games, fun is applicable. But, um, you know, there's, there's a different, more all-encompassing description of what a video game can offer um, that means that sometimes you have experiences that aren't so fun, whether that be because of the, concept, the subject matter of the, uh, of the game, or I guess in this case, a difficult experience that starts getting maybe even frustrating, and then you finally overcome it, and that catharsis is, like, unparalleled in terms of, you know, what any other medium of entertainment can offer. Mm -hmm. I think the enjoyment that you take from a video game can depend on, like, the mood that you're in in the moment as well. Like, yeah. uh, re recently I finished uh, the Kirby game on Switch, Forgotten Land. Yeah. Forgotten and Land. Uh, Good shit. Ev even on the game's, what the game calls wild mode, which is, like, hard mode, I guess, I found that quite easy. But uh, I enjoyed that at that in that moment. Like I, it was a very breezy playthrough, and that's what I wanted at that moment. I just kind of wanted to zone out and not have to think too much. I wasn't in the mood at that point to play something like Dark Souls, where I would get easily frustrated. Like in that situation, I wouldn't get enjoyment playing 
Dark Souls, but there's other days where absolutely I'll I'll play Dark Souls, and even if I mm. die a billion times with a boss, that's okay because I'm kind of I'm in the zone for that that kind of experience right now, you know. Thus, we arrive at the Chad Centrist take, which is, you know what, games, there is room in this world for games that are trying deliberately to be easy, like Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and yeah. there's room mm -hmm. for games that are deliberately trying to be challenging, like Bloodborne. There's yeah. room in the world for both of these games. Well, and, he, he has another and they can funny be satisfying thing about that. For reasons. He's He's not German's going to talk to us about humor. He, yeah. <laughs> Got me there. No, because... Uh, uh, fuck, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, right, because the uh, games to chill out and just zone out, uh, uh, zone out and play that. Yeah. Actually, Dark Souls falls under that yeah. category for me. <laughs> like, really? when, 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 I, I've done so many streams where just I'm just gonna boot up Dark Souls 3 and just fuck around because I'm so knowledgeable of the game at some point. And sure, it's still just gonna be annoyed at some things because sometimes you guys get stun locked by random enemies. But that's just a game I can just chill out to when I stream it and just talk to chat or something. The so like getting maybe killed the word by enemies. Should... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Maybe rewarding is a more generally a good term, like rewarding and engaging. Like you have the engagement Satisfying. because it's rewarding. Because mm -hmm. yeah. is it is it fun for me to? micromanage the efficiency of pawns in rim world or wants them die to some terrible tragedy no it's not fun but mm. going through that is a rewarding thing to do like it's satisfying for me to do certain things in games especially ones that are colony builders or efficiency simulators or whatever they are we're not just getting a you're not getting a thrill a minute you're just you're trying to it's like a factorio sort of thing yeah mm-hmm don't you love it when you get killed by a manhand manhunting manhunting pack of chihuahuas? I was like, yeah, <laughs> I got a chihuahua on my lap right now. I guess um, what I'm, what if maybe the reason why I don't think fun is the right word to describe it is because I think fun can often describe moment to moment experiences rather than a longer term. Fun is fleeting. Um, yeah, like for instance, playing Dark Souls too, but I still want to kill myself after I did it. Well, for instance, if you're playing like Sim City, I guess or City Skyline. Like, is it is it moment to moment fun, like building a road or like putting the infrastructure in place to support this particular block or zoning it? It's like on Especially a moment. It feels to moment like work basis, sometimes. Well, yeah, that that's I guess that's what I'm getting at. On a moment to moment basis, maybe not, but the totality of that experience, where the little building blocks lead to something really cool, and then you get that moment of catharsis when you zoom out and you look at this city that you built running really yeah. well. And it's yeah. just like, damn, that's this nice. This is what that's my work like, has given me. This is the fruit that's of my labor that I get to look at now. It's very Heinleinian in right. a sense. And what what happens if the game's like, well, I'm not finding it fun laying down these rows. It's like, well, there's a button that just lays out a perfect grid with everything in place to be perfectly optimized. It's like, oh, damn. Like, that's just, you know. That, uh, almost... that kind of... Something like that happened to me when I was playing the, I've told it was for the Jurassic World Evolution, I think, game, where like world one you've got just an average park that's not doing so great try and make it better it's like cool and then by the time you get toward the end of the game you've got to deal with this really small park that's been destroyed by a tornado it's the worst weather conditions and you've got like two t-rexes running rampant and very little money like holy fuck can you can you figure and it's like you do all that and you beat it all out. it's like really it's like it. no this is a bad and, investment and then the final reward of like <laughs> unlocking everything is like now you've unlocked the free play mode it's giant open landscape infinite money go nuts and i was like uh <laughs> like, a, I don't, um, hmm, interesting. Like, when, when, when well, it I... became kind of boring to do that mode, I was like, nah, I'm all right. I'd rather Yeah, challenges challenge. are necessarily limitations, and yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's fun to, to fuck around, of course. It, my yeah. eyes will vary from person to person, but there's that element of, hey, if I can just do whatever I want without any cost or anything whatsoever, then it's not really, not necessarily something rewarding to it. I might not enjoy doing it. The two types of Minecraft players. Something given has no value. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I'll in, to really enjoy both of those types of things, just depending on the day, the the mood that I'm in, and the idea that the threat of failure doesn't play a role in enjoying a, a video game is ridiculous to me. It's, Especially it's, with yeah, horror that's... games, you know, like I, I love like horror games, playing them in the middle of the night, like in the dark with yeah. headphones on, with the volume cranked up on like a high difficulty mode, like uh, Dead Space, for example. I was doing yeah. that recently. Like that is fucking awesome. Yeah. The threat of losing, the threat of loss. I mean, some of the most 
fucking intense gaming moments that I've ever had are in day Z when I'm wandering around and I hear another player's footsteps and I've got all this stuff on me and I've gone on this big trip and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like yeah. this, I could die and lose everything. And it gives us insane, like hands trembling and you're just focused on the screen. There's nothing else in the universe apart from you and this this game that you're playing. And it's just mm -hmm. this intense experience. Yeah. And if I knew it was just like, oh, don't worry, it's fine. There's no challenge. There's no threat of loss. There's no, you know, losing state. There's no nothing. Then those experiences, they they just would not exist. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a line for me where it, it would become too much. Like if a game has like a hardcore mode, for example, where you can't save. And if you die, you go all the way Rack back to the beginning. Modes, yeah. I wouldn't. We're getting personally, that's not for me. Everyone's own, you know, everyone out there. There's people out there who fucking adore that experience and there's people who don't. And so this is why yeah. this video is strange to me. Where it's just like it's yeah. treated enjoyment as though it's this clear, obvious, everyone is better off when the, this is happening. It's like, oh, okay. Also, I had a... Enjoyment is objective. Especially yeah. with the direction taken in it, which is enjoyment is best dictated by the terms of each player, which I don't believe is even remotely true. You yeah, could no, given the chance, I think given the chance, every single player will ruin their experience in one way or another. Possible. Well, I, I think discovery. actually I meant to bring that up with the um, the Dark Souls waypoints. If you had if you had the option in Dark Souls to just turn on a waypoint to tell you where the next place to go was, it would be very hard to resist turning that on. If you yeah. found of people, yeah. yourself kind of lost, but just exploring that environment and trying to find your own way is so satisfying. Once you, you find the elevator that links back to Firelink Shrine, it's like, oh, sweet. But if I oh, followed dude. a waypoint that said unlock this elevator is... to Firelink, <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're highlighting exactly where all this attitude comes from. If I was watching one of my like closest friends play Dark Souls for the first time, and then he was like, oh, I added this mod that gives me a waypoint that takes me to the next, ooh, this is the, oh, the elevator takes me right back to the thingy. I'd be like, wow, that just. Just fucked yourself from enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Annihilated yeah. that moment. It's that funny to me. Hey, it would actually be comedic, like if you put waypoints in something like Dark Souls. I think like, so. That yeah. would get a big laugh out of me. Yeah. Mm. Is isn't that such an interesting type of difficulty in a way? Like the finding your way discussion? around the wor world. Yeah, yeah, it forces I've you to study the environment and it gives you the shape of the land and like landmarks are giving you clues as to where it's to the, go. Like, that's a really interesting way it's to the... attaining mastery of a Dark Souls 1's world. Man, that's so satisfying. Yeah, Dark, you know that's, that's why we, we're up, forever, to get from to we're forever desperate that they'll, they'll do it again. But Dark Souls 2, yeah, nope. Dark Souls 3, nope. Elder Rig, nope. <laughs> <laughs> the closest they ever came was Bloodborne. Yeah, but... Bloodborne was okay. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it yeah. wasn't yeah. quite as good as... The, Bloodborne the, did okay. In reference to the weight yeah. of the map, because Yanam was pretty good. Yeah, I was about to say, it's the back half of Bloodborne yeah. that gets more segmented. Dude, uh, although, I you watch could say that of Dark Souls, also. Anytime I watch a friend play uh, like through Dark Souls for the first time, and I, I watch them like get closer and closer to shortcuts. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be real I happy get so in a second. Excited for them, it's insane. And if they miss it by like an inch. Or they, I and do, then walk I, into a boss oh. room. <laughs> I did it like twice on, I think I did it on Elden Ring too, where I would just, I'll walk across a bonfire or a, a grace or whatever, not even realize, I'd be like, oh god, I could really use a bonfire right now. And everyone in chat is just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> <laughs> you keep walking by the shortcut gate. Just unlock it. Yeah. By the way, the start of dark route behind the illusory wall that everyone misses. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I, uh, I got a notification. Yeah, it makes that, Sif uh, a lot easier if you have that one though. It's a, it's a Twitter one on, on my phone. I saw this. Uh, this is, it, I'm getting uh, criticism for the docs, the Doc Strange video, which totally makes sense. Somebody said, <laughs> "Not to get it. No, not that one." Oh. Somebody said, five hours and fifty minutes. Jesus, get a job." Um, <laughs> no, that shit's <laughs> ridiculous. Where the review is longer than the film. It's just, it's if a film is two hours, you only have two hours to talk about all of its problems. I'm, because as we what know, what a stupid it, fucking rule. Yeah, it, it is. An, the person who said this is fucking retarded. But like, it, <laughs> as if we don't live in a world where fixing shit takes longer than breaking it. <laughs> yeah. But like, what do they imagine my job is? Do they like hello? <laughs> Why yeah. This? It's I was cruising through Cinema one. Roberto's Twitter thread on it, and it was uh, hilarious. I actually oh really enjoyed God. reading through it. <laughs> I mean, it could be 10 oh, hours long. It just depends how much detail you want to go into everything, and that, that's worthwhile. Oh, they, they're getting me to the point where if, if someone just made a 10-hour video and they're talking just about, you know, somebody's shoe, I'd just be like, fine. Do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Go nuts. <laughs> that's that's this guy's bio. There. 
this is rider we- byline cbr polygon this and weird fam, sentiment out there where it's like oh if you do x amount of time you just ramble and get redundant like why why, why are you thinking that because i don't think you watched the video when you said that <laughs> do you know why people wrote books <laughs> i don't know what you mean <laughs> you know I don't know what you mean. I mean you're, said, you're making that up. a long while to explain. Mm. I like, uh, James has said, I do construction. I know how long it takes to fix shit. I do like the whole, like, it took you how long to build this house? And you're holding a grenade? Like, let's see how long it takes for me yeah, to, uh, <laughs> like, I'm going to try, <laughs> I'm going to do something else to it. It's like, oh, no. It is actually fun for the player. If the game isn't enjoyable until after you've gotten good, then people probably ain't going to give it a chance. Not true at all. I don't. No, I don't also, think that's, that's also not enjoyable. how it works. Also, that's fine. So many people. Getting good. That's totally fine, by the way, first... as an experience. If you're like, this is too difficult for me, I'm not interested. That's fine. Yeah, yes. that's fine. That that's explains fine. the complete lack else. of popularity of the Dark Souls series, yes. <laughs> yeah. but, but if, <laughs> Nobody's if playing you, Dark Souls. <laughs> but if you look at Elden Ring, so many people picked up their first Soulsborne game with, with Elden Ring. And there was a lot of people who's like, oh, that's too hard for me, I don't m- mind. But it was probably... More, if not the exact amount of people, they're like, "Oh, this is great! I, I, I understand it now. That's that's good shit." Because it's all a journey and get, getting getting good mm. is a really good experience. As much as it's memed, getting good at those games is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. so I people who mock get good, it's like the it's like, oh, you're mocking the concept of getting good. I don't have to listen to anything you say. Yeah, you're just I know he's just being dumb, but it's not the process. It's not after you've got good, you start to have fun. It is the process of getting good that people enjoy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, that's yeah, what I was going to say. He keeps saying after, but that that's not that's not As the if thing. Like, some, after like, you've got them good. Entry. Yeah. Like that, that's not the, the main point of enjoyment. Like that is also fun. Like me replaying the game and yeah, shitting and on, just... on the boss that I've played for hours is, is just... still fun to me, but the biggest fun is the first game, like first playthrough. That like nothing yeah. beats a first playthrough of a Souls so game. Good. Like holy shit! And, and then after that, you can go ahead and just try different things. But how many fucking playthroughs of Dark Souls three did you do when it came out? It's like a million. Because uh, <laughs> <a lot. laughs> um, I remember you was like, "Oh, this time I'm going to use this weapon, and this time this weapon." It's like, yeah. "What are you doing? All these things? Stop it!" <laughs> <laughs> I did the same with uh, with Bloodborne. Yeah. God, I wish they were all all those playthroughs would be around still. Fuck. Yeah, that'd be I'm fun. still mad. Oh, uh, this, the the Dark Souls two playthroughs that we did back in the day. All hey, at least those were worthwhile. They got into a video, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that they, that we didn't archive our things back then again. Oh yeah, I just one of my favorite ones. I just one of my favorite ones compared to my archive YouTube. Yeah, but, but, I, I wish I would have started my archive YouTube channel way way earlier because mm-hmm. man there's so much good shit lost to time oh i've i've had it asked millions of times for fortier and metals playthroughs you oh guys, I'm still you guys just clips as well in those series no. yeah. as fuck. gold yeah that, i was gonna say my favorite line that fortier has ever said that i've heard was come on game <laughs> <laughs> i re- oh, do you remember man, when so... uh mel you're running around some area i can't remember what it is but like seven fucking phantom spawn you're just like fuck yeah. off like what is this <laughs> <laughs> Like all oh, great. I, I, still, I still remember the square, man. The square, the square is just is like the pinnacle of Oh my thing. god, it's so good. <laughs> to the square. <laughs> to the square. <laughs> oh oh shit, god. there's too many. To the square. <laughs> the square. <laughs> so funny. That's like oh, a fucking phrase. The cube. Twenty minutes action of <laughs> compiling all of the shit AI in Dark Souls Two, which takes forever. <laughs> like. To the square. Uh, the square. fucking like uh, the, the Frank role playing. Oh my god, yeah. that fucking kills me to this day. Um, what was I gonna nice. say? Yeah, get into the whole like to simplify it out. To you get good, then you have fun. Is ignoring the the very real experience that I think a lot of us have had, where you go like ah, oh, they go left, dodge right, dodge up, dodge that. Ah, I fucked up the last bit. Okay, okay, I can do yeah. this. I can do this. Next try. Yeah. Like that on its own wouldn't be categorized as not having fun. It's like. No, no, I, I kind of am actually, because I know I'm getting there. I'm gonna make it. I'm, I got this. You know that that yeah. feeling where you like having so mm. much fun when I can see my improvements. improvements yeah, when I can see yeah. myself getting better and better, inch by inch. Like this attack was constantly catching me. Now it's not. Well, this attack was, you know, causing me problems because I never expected it. Now it's not. 
to uh, yeah. move to a different kind of game, but I'm assuming somebody here can share this experience. Uh, good old Guitar Hero. When you're oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. losing and losing and losing, you lose. Like, oh. And then you come back to that solo for the next try, and you can see your rock meter, and it's like teetering in red, and you're like, come on, come on, come on, come on, yes! And you're going to have to star power, and you get through it. You're like, fuck it. It's like the idea that Jim's like, yeah, but you only had fun once you beat this. And it's like, no, shut up. You know it's way more interesting than that, how this all works. Oh, that was just the payoff. Yeah. That doesn't mean nothing happened along the way. Exactly. Yeah, playing I mean, through a Guitar Hero or a Rock Band game on medium is okay if you don't really know what you're doing. But like the real enjoyment in that game comes from like, okay, I can play this song on hard. Cool. Wait, I can get it on expert. Oh my god, I can get it on expert <laughs> and hardly miss any notes. Now I can play this harder song on yeah. expert. Like it's yeah. it's, oh, it's god, fun. Punch buttons now. But, yeah. but the thing is <laughs> also use all that, five <clears throat> the thing shift. is also like th that's where the 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 good souls bosses and the bad souls bosses differ a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. when you go against the bad souls boss and you're having issues and you're on the boss for hours and hours, when you beat that boss, like like Metal said before, like you won't have the fuck yeah, you will kind of have like oh fucking finally get this shit out of my way. Like mm -hmm. it will be more of a relief than a enjoyment. But when you have a good boss and you're like, oh, okay, oh, okay, hmm. okay, I'm, I'm ready. Next time, next time I fucking got him. Okay, I, I got his movesets now. Like, it, it's more of an excitement. And then when you finally get him, it's like, ta da, like you, you did it, like in a happy way. Whereas a bad boss will be like a frustration, like a relief from a frustration. That's where was always so masterful getting good was fun it already gives players many options to deal with oh, okay. the game's challenges right. while maintaining a certain level of challenge itself you can level up you can call in help from co-op players you can try a massive variety of weapons and armor and all of it's valid all of it can work giving players tons of I mean, I was about to say, I wouldn't know that I categorize yeah. this necessarily as what is getting good. Like, the idea is, like, you figured out summoning is possible, you're getting good. It's like, that's a different kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's just like, I've re I recognize that a mechanic is in this game. Yeah, now. exactly. Like, <laughs> it's I wouldn't like, oh, look, that's, that a, as... that's a car. That doesn't make you a better driver because you, you, you saw a car. Yeah, summoning like, is a bit of an outlier. I would say, though, that finding your play style is is a form of getting good like understanding what uh, what you are good at utilizing in that game and then building your character around that i think is a pretty cool experience also yeah i, I would personally say it's more so a matter of finding out what the things you have are good at versus particular enemies for example figuring out with the zweihander you can just pancake a bitch and uh, <laughs> like, that makes most basic enemy encounters really easy it's also extremely satisfying as the yeah, uh, best boy, like and then finding out you out have a if you tool, get a lot of boys you can trade with people. Finding out you have a tool doesn't mean that you've gotten better. That's just like you've acquired yeah. a new fact. It's like if I go against Melania a hundred times and I I die at you know second stage fifty percent every time, and then I summon something, did I just get a lot better? No, I just added another tool. Like I, I didn't get better because I, I could beat Melania on the first try with a, with a summon, right? Like yeah, I, in, in the same vein, like he's talking uh, about upgrading like vitality or something. It's like that's not getting better. It's getting stronger. Yeah, it, arguably, it's making things easier, is what it is. Kind of, yeah. I, I think for me though, like when I first kind of got into the Dark Souls games and really, really found my um, niche, or it was after I played Bloodborne actually, and I think I realized that for me dodging was kind of the the better way to go about playing so instead of making a night build the way i'd i'd done when i'd first tried dark souls i made a thief and kind of fell in love with the series so i mean dark souls 2 notwithstanding but you know i, I find i would always just build my characters to be like light very roll heavy high stamina and that that was more fun for me personally just because it, it kind of suited the way i like to play video games more than you know, sword and boarding it. But I, I, I don't know. I would argue that, that that is getting better by saying, okay, I've, I've noticed that I, I, I suit this play style more than the one I was previously attempting that people told me was really powerful, but it was like, eh, I can't really make this work very well. So, I don't know. A lot of variety. Of engines. And if people want a tougher time, they can run around in just their underpants hitting things with a broken sword. All that said, it's clear from software has a very strong vision with any game. Just want to point out that's not always a tougher time. Sometimes it's actually an easier time because you get more iframes.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't necessarily say it was it was harder or easier to be. I just thought it suits my play style better. And yeah. The game it makes. And even with okay. so many options, Dark Souls and the more streamlined Bloodborne have one set difficulty level across the board. And that's fine. We have to accept that designing games this way comes with a risk of turning otherwise interested customers away, but it's fine. Sekiro is even more strict about the way it's to be played. There is only really one way to approach it, one way to maintain an advantage in combat. It's focused heavily on parrying and countering enemy attacks while maintaining a steady rhythm between defense and the seizure of opportunities. It's a specific game with a precise goal and a heavy emphasis on I pretty think a merciless seizure of opportunities would be if you went into an epileptic fit during charades. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. All of this is fine. Sekiro is a critical and commercial success. Sold fucking, what, two oh. million already? I really wouldn't want to base this on how so successful really thing like is it. anyway. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Because like, you can have games that are amazingly made that didn't get anywhere, so that's not. Brilliant. It's an incredibly well-made game that succeeds at its core philosophy. It doesn't need an easy mode at all. And if From Software believes adding one will pollute its philosophy, then great. Good for them. Seriously, From shouldn't feel forced uh, okay. to add an easy mode. Okay. I'm, I'm on board with this. Yeah, I'm so confused. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on this. They believe it would violate their vision. I totally respect that. But I also respect that you, the player, paid $60 for a video game and can do whatever the uh -oh, hell you want comes. with it. Ah, uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, I shouldn't be able to cheat if I bought a video game. Mm. It's not a yeah, DVD. You, can. you can't just That's fast fine. forward to an easier part of the game. You are not entitled to cheat because you did. If you're, I don't. That feels so weird to me. The Good idea point, that yeah. I'm gonna put cheats on this difficult game because I bought it. Yeah. Hello. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. People. Theo. Theo died. Yeah. It. You. You oh, lagged that. Oh. He's fucking dead. Are you alive? What's going on? It's okay. Sometimes you die. It's okay. Yeah, sometimes people back. die. Yeah. Hey, sometimes shadows die twice. Die. Theo! Theo dies twice. <laughs> oh, connection is flamed. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. So, well, right. but yeah, the. I mean, it's necessarily. that. That's sort of what makes video games interesting is that when you buy a movie, you're like, okay, I'm going to get everything that this movie has to offer me in terms of content, right? And mm -hmm. I can extract different amounts of things from that based on my, who you know who I am as a person. But a video game, you buy that game. It's like no, you you've you've purchased a series of challenges, essentially that you have to overcome to get to more challenges or more rewards. It it's what makes them sort of special in a way. You bought this video game, but you're not just owed through purchase through money all of the content in that game you have to play through it get to it yeah like Just... there's a different game for each person like if, if i watch a scary movie or say i don't like i watch a a kid's movie and then then i'm angry at the film that it's not a scary film but but i bought it it should be a scary film because i want to watch a scary film like you can't like that's not an argument this is a weird argument like i'm owed though. victory that's odd like to to on one hand say yeah so this is the objective of the creator in making this piece of art but because you paid for it you should be able to change it odd bizarre I wonder how he me. feels about jigsaw That's how publishers what, what about a painting like what if you bought yeah. the mona lisa it's like yeah i should feel free to just draw like some just stick this figures on needs it. a mustache i, I bought it it's like, oh, now. you're ruining it <laughs> like you're ruining it. Mona Lisa needs some makeup. She needs oh. a makeover. <laughs> well, I guess property rights, you know. Yours to do with whatever you want. Wouldn't recommend it. I knew that painting was missing something. Also, hey, Duma. Hey, Doom. Hey, hey Duma, man. We're, uh, uh, look. we're talking about video oh, games. You Ew. Cringe. They exist, too. Those. You don't just have to talk about <laughs> politics. God. Imagine talking about politics on the internet. I know. Lose. Lose. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> How about it's those not... politics? Hmm? Oh, wow. I, I like <laughs> politics. Oh, wow. Sure enough. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as we're not talking Canadian politics, I'm safe. Here we go. Time for politics. I was elected on Dark Souls 2.
What's the deal with all these politics? I I was given a copy of Witcher 3 by Poland. You, Or it was Witcher 2, actually, damn it. Pay $60 for a video game and can do whatever the hell you want with it. It's not in Fromm's artistic vision that Dark Souls should say thanks Obama when you die, but people modded that shit into the (laughs) game in droves anyway. It's not in Fromm's artistic vision that that you glitch the game out and walk through the air to skip and break gameplay sequences, but speedrunners do it to rightly earned applause. It's not in Fromm's artistic vision that their games be played at a slower speed, but oh well, people have done it, can't put the... Ex, ex, so his exploit, ex, exploiting, exploiting bugs and glitches for speed running is a thing. So therefore, and there are speed runners who like there's speed run communities who do like no glitch speed running. Yeah, like, that's that's, kind of, that's kind of its own like, thing. Yeah, those are often more popular, or yeah. sometimes they're more popular. I mean, it's, certainly yeah. far more enjoyable for me to watch. Yeah, I. I I I'd never liked the idea of like, oh, I'm going to just play a completely different game that's like skipping everything with glitches. I don't know. It just felt well, weird. See, it's fun to, to watch. It's not fun to do. This tile in 4 p.m. on a Tuesday and then turn yourself at 16 degrees and then press these sequence of four buttons at once. You can actually skip to the last level. It's like, OK, go well, into the console UI and right. change the date. To... <laughs> it's fun to watch. It's not super fun to do. It's fun to watch once for five minutes and then you're like, oh, OK. What's the thing you we play the game? We wouldn't resist the idea that there's going to be fun in it. It's just we'd keep trying to angle it of being like, what fun is lost? Hello. What, what, if you don't want to play it anyway, that's intentional. Or, uh, there's never the. I don't know why. You can't infer the other sides of the argument with, with what this relates to. In terms of fucking doing anything you want to. Especially a game. I mean, I wonder if um, I said I wanted to read a book every odd page and then every even page. If everyone would as fervently argue the same thing, it's like, yeah, it's your choice. That's how you have fun. It's like, yeah, but I think you might have more fun if you um, read it you know, in continuity. Yeah, it's fine. You... In the intended sequence. It's always what's being said, and I don't understand why this is so hard. The toothpaste in the tube now. It's their game. It's their mods. It's their experience. It's got nothing to do with how you personally approach and enjoy games. And again, I need to bring this back to something that's actually important. You know, the game. Stop trying to do that. Actually important. <laughs> it's yeah, not worth don't, it. you don't have to bring it back to anything. Just stay on topic. You will be on topic uh, anyway, but just the fact that, like, you see, everything I've talked about so far has been unimportant. That's why I talked about it. You're like, sure. The game industry itself is working so hard to stop us having fun in games to make more fucking money. We need to not be policing how other people have fun. Oh, because Uh... some publishers abuse microtransactions, then shut the fuck up. There. What about the people who fucking love microtransactions? Exactly. Certain fucking publishers. Honestly, though, like, I guess he's not wrong saying that you bought the game, you should be able to do whatever you want with it, because you can mod it. Like, nobody's stopping you from modding it, right? Yeah, you can't cheat. But we're not, it's not, that's not the point, though. It's when someone says, like, Dark Souls, ooh, interesting new game. I had a friend who did this, by the way. They got stuck in the first, like, five minutes. They immediately pulled up Google, and it was like, no, 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 please, stop, please. Yeah. It's like, hey, yeah. <laughs> I can do whatever I want with my game. You trying to stop me from having fun? It's like, that. We're trying to, guys, I'm not save you. trying <laughs> to rob you. I only want to. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> And, the, and yeah, if Jim were in the room being like, wow, Mola, let him Google, I'd be like, no. <laughs> like, you only get one chance. No. Reminds me Sometimes of you have to do things on your own. Sometimes you have to go on a journey, an unexpected journey, even. <laughs> just reminds me every time of H Bomber Guy where he said in this video, it's like, I'm just going to tell my friends where to go because there's only one way to do oh, it, anyways. It's like, fuck. no, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, Getting he was lost like, is a critical part of the fun of those games. DS2, you yeah. can beat it in so many different ways. In DS1, there's only one way. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that ah, <be> false. <laughs> get that way. Some people no, tell no. me things like that all the time. Go this way, go this way. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, just let me... Oh, chat me of the worst for that out. when you stream games. <laughs> like, mutually yeah. go this way. No. No, Mr. no, I'm stream not the, looking the at you. The you're looking for is here. It's just like, fuck off. I don't want you. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me play. Let me play the game. Let me exactly. play the game. There's nothing more beautiful than just going nuts in the in the game as it was made. Go ahead. It's it's what nature intended, honestly. God wants you to do it that way. That is what God wanted. Mm-hmm.
none of us will be having fun anymore. Have you seen the Elder Scrolls Blades? Have you fucking seen it? This. Hey guys, remember Elder Scrolls Blades? I don't even know Actually, what this is. I guess, <laughs> no I guess, here's there, the thing. What's, that was what's their mobile game. Right? game yeah. yeah, when this they game came out, it got talked game? out a bit. Yeah, so uh, oddly enough, a couple days ago, I was just with a bunch of friends and we were watching videos and talking about stuff. And then I, because I just remember Elder Scrolls Blades being a thing. And I told them, hey, do you guys remember Elder Scrolls Blades? Because it was a, we were talking about mobile games. And like no one in that conversation knew that there was, there's an Elder Scroll, there's a Skyrim on mobile, basically. And no like one, an just, no one knew that. Everyone forget. It went down the memory hole of just things that definitely happened, but no one remembers. Yeah, Elder I never like, heard about Blades Ninja exists. Combat. Like, do, don't you like swipe on the screen to swing the sword? I think kind of like... there's like blocking and something, something like that. Elder I remember Scrolls it getting Blade. announced at E3 or whatever it was, and people still didn't <laughs> know what it, it was it when it came the, out. The, it got the um, what was it called? The El, El, the Diablo Immortal. I almost said El Diablo Immortal. Oh yeah, <laughs> El Diablo Immortal. <laughs> I'm going to go and park Don't on you your guys lawn. have mobile phones. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that, that guy was, was vindicated. Yeah. The, uh, he was vindicated April the Fool's moment joke he said it. He was vindicated the moment he said it <laughs> by the room that he was in as he said it. Actually, yeah, I've got a little higher sticker. Position than Blizzard now. I've got a sticker on one of my hard drives that's the uh, Out of Seasons April Fool's guy joke, but it's um it's drawn like One Punch Man doing the OK. And <laughs> <I love it. laughs> you guys don't have fans. I would say it was a pure Elder Scrolls experience where it takes anywhere between five seconds and... Yeah, fuck them when they Why do that. Why are we talking about That's this? Fine. Stop! We treat this as though we can't just go, fuck them. That was shit. And he's gonna be like, yeah, but it's their yeah. vision, right? And we're like, well, yeah, sure. Their vision was for us to buy my... I don't have to partake in someone's <laughs> exactly. vision by not buying the product. I don't have exactly. to download it. Six to open a fucking loot box. That's what they want to turn games into, so have fun with Sekiro, have fun with Dark Souls, have fun with any game you can get your fucking hands on. There's completely just you, you blending up shit that doesn't belong together. I'm sorry, that's all this is. Enjoy it, cherish it, and stop attacking others over having fun. <laughs> no. Isn't no, that what you're doing, no, Jim? No, what? No, what if I have fun telling you people to fuck off and stay away from my video games? And that's fun to me. It's fun for Mahler to, oh, I don't know if it's fun, for him to make a six hour video on a Dr. <laughs> Madness movie. And the, no one, no one who says this is willing to, it, it doesn't, it doesn't beat the Hitler argument. Hitler had fun killing Jews. Why are you trying to ruin his experience and his fun? It never, it, nothing, pass, it doesn't pass the Hitler test. Fucking, it doesn't pass, doesn't pass, pass any Hitler test. test. It's stupid. The whole fucking point, the whole reason people are saying this is because their fun is being uh, infringed. It, it, it's that core argument. It's like, you're annoyed that a three-year-old's having fun. Like, you obviously don't even begin to understand what's happening here. The argument is so easy, but it's missed every time. There's yeah. two sides to it. That you have fun, to fun cheat. like your fun is being diminished because of, you know, games putting in, in, in easy modes that take developer time in order to put into the game. But then that you also believe that their fun is deep being diminished by their choice to play the game on a lower difficulty or to mod it to be invincible or whatever. It's so easy, so I don't understand what's hard about this. Just having fun while you still can! Stop painting the landscape as this barren experience yeah, I know, no right? fun games. Like, Quit only, doing that. There's only days of good video gaming left. <laughs> it's all about this is like games, dude. There's so many this, good games. This is the perspective of someone who just like doesn't play games, who only gets gaming news from a few places that are doom and gloom about video games. They don't actually go out to stores and to Steam and to wherever and buy and play games as they constantly are coming out over and over and over. It's like someone from the outside looking in. Well, yeah, it's like it's also never been throw. easier know, to play old games. We know Jim true. plays plenty of games, lots of reviews going on, but I think there's a selection bias and an awareness of the shittier practices, the shittier companies, and keeping an eye on all of them. And then you get to the point of being like, wait, this is just all... Like, that could easily happen to uh, us doing, like, Marvel coverage. We could be like, all movies are terrible. And it's like, no, 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 we we know that they're not. We know there's plenty yeah. other places to grab them from. That's so why we usually try and caveat that it's from this place that they suck. Which is what's happening here. This is a particular place you're talking about. Triple fucking A microtransaction-laden predatory mobile games. Like, that's not everything. That's a very specific selection. 
Yeah. Everything Everywhere All at Once came out at around the same time as Multiverse of Madness. It exactly. wasn't even the only multiverse yeah. movie out at that time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, ooh, ooh. I don't know why I turned into a ghost at the end. Is that a picture okay, of him as a baby? It's time to say that thing it's I said no, in yesterday. 2016. The same thing I said in 2013 before then. Because apparently this conversation blows up roughly every three years. Oh, so let's do you have anything that. to do with you're that? You're the one that made the video on it. I'm you softly. made the video. And yeah. clearly, if you're talking about, I, I don't know, man. I just, uh, what pro, what productive anything are you lending to this discussion? Because I feel like it's virtually none. Thing that gets people mad again. If from software decided to add an easy mode to Dark Souls, I wouldn't give a speck of dry jizz and I don't know how anyone else could either. Every time I say- You because definitely now, care. Yeah, yeah, he's shown us that. Once again, I mean, yeah, I totally don't care. Three yeah. years, so. If there was an easy mode in Dark Souls 4, then saying I beat Dark Souls 4 instantly comes with a follow-up question. What difficulty? It was an Imagine easy mode, right? That's Imagine being a commenter talking about that subject and being proud of the fact that you don't understand the opposition's argument. Especially when you've been talking about it for years and years, and even years to come, you're still talking about it. He's like, oh, I can't believe you're still talking about it. He's like, it's your fucking channel and your video. You're not a slave to anything. You can make videos about whatever you want to make videos about. Don't do this whole, oh, I didn't, I didn't want to make this video. I was like, well, don't fucking do it. The pity train has moved on. It has departed from this station. It has left. It has gone off the rails. I think it's in China now. Oh, no. Pity does not align with party values. <sighs> uh, yay, fun. Hello, everybody. Uh, is Mahler gone or what? I don't know. I'm Hello? scared. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, there was quiet for a moment. Yes, yeah, no, Mahler. I'm very, I'm very scared. Chad, Mahler, like no, not on the anniversary. Like no. no. What am I, the only one that Long can press play? Man. This oh, automatically <laughs> misquoted as saying I want an easy mode in Dark Souls. I've been misquoted on this since around 2013, most of the bloody decade. And the thing is, I don't even want an easy mode because I don't care enough about whether one's in there or not. I don't give a yes, shit. Yes, you do. I'm you not clearly care. Or did it's okay to care. I don't know why people do this. They're like, <laughs> as if, oh, I don't care. They're like, no, no, you do. You're talking about it. You made a video. You can't just shit though. Well, I guess some people can, but it takes effort and time. And you dressed up in that fucking outfit and everything. <laughs> you care. It's Those okay to care. That's Somebody else doesn't win because you admitted that you care about a discussion you're having. That's the main part of this. It's the it's okay to care about it. All right, you'll be fine. Yeah, you're gonna make it. Like he just wanted to dress up. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> people who don't care about things don't make. 27 minute long videos on a subject. Yeah, I've definitely. That. Yeah, and that's fine. It's totally fine. It's not cool. Yeah, this this whole I don't care about it's anything, cool man. It's like, yeah, it's weird. I'm just an easygoing drifter, blowing <laughs> through the breeze. Demanding an easy mode in Dark Souls, I wouldn't use an easy mode in Dark Souls, and yes, that is exactly why I don't care whether one's in there. You do? <laughs> or not, because you, you, off, I wouldn't would, but... use it anyway, it wouldn't affect me at all. And people say, yeah, well, well that's again, part. as Theo yeah. has mentioned, development affect, yeah. time taken away from some resources, it will. Yeah. There's, there is finite time in the world, finite manpower, finite resources. If you're dedicating development to an easy mode you are well, spending time on that to the detriment of some other aspect of the game as i said i think it's fair enough to assume that that's what spirit ashes were they were they were added to be like we need to add more things in here to help yeah. like you know help players who an are easy more mode trouble. without an easy mode and that is arguably more people... intrusive because lots of players who are like veterans would be like oh cool new mechanic i'll use it and then it's like I... you best not use it because you're fucking not going to play the game anymore at some yeah. point in a way, um, easy mode is at least in its own section, like divorced exactly. from the other elements of the game, in a way. The difficulty with any new feature or item or mechanic that you introduce into any video game is that they don't exist in a vacuum. They are one part of a whole, and they interconnect and interact with other parts of the game. Something you add that is, oh, well, you don't have to use it. It's like, well, 
you say that, but like the fact that it exists may well have influenced how you've designed this game. And in fact, it almost certainly will have. It's kind of hard to have an element in a game that could be taken out and changes nothing. And, and just, uh, just to repeat it, because I'm serious about this, like grabbing these items, if it were just called easy mode and that's where they're available, that's one thing. But when they're just in the world and you don't even know how good exactly. or bad they are, that's arguably worse yeah, damage. And, and how there's do you a know? lot of them. Yeah. And how do you do until you use it, you know, what it does? Yeah, and I had two play floors where people gave me I shit for my my I build because it was like, oh, now you're using this overpowered build. I was like, what? This is just <laughs> this is stuff it's I started hard. using. How yeah. could you know? Exactly. How could you know until you discover that it's overpowered, at which point some amount of your game has been diminished? Well, and also, and so how that, powerful do I have to get until I decide that I'm too powerful exactly. and it's not the game that is yeah. being too easy, right? Exactly. I mean, there's well, what, what's the difference between a smart build and a broken build? Hmm. Yeah. Yep. What's the difference between uh, an yeah, overpowered really mechanic good. and a broken? What's what's well, the difference I'll between just, a powerful just use an MMO ex item? Just say like, oh, this class, this specialization is extremely potent and extremely easy, low effort to use. And I will tell you from experience that if you have a like an MMO or, a, or something like an MMO is a perfect example. Let's say that I don't know, maybe you made a particular class. Let, let's call it mechanist. Uh, and it's very, very powerful, and it has an incredibly easy rotation. It does a lot of damage. It comes with a little, oh, a big old bot mech that does a lot of the work for you. It just so happens that if this theoretically existed, you would see a lot of these goddamn things everywhere in the game, and it doesn't make <laughs> me angry. It's fine. But if you have these kinds of things, this easy mode class, this easy mode specialization, then you start to see them all over the place, and you might have to start to fix your balancing in order to adjust that. Oh, look, there's one. Not that I'm actually doing anything like this, but uh. <laughs> somebody in uh somebody in chat has mentioned the meta, which is a, something that I think is worth going into. Um, it when you think about a, a FromSoft game like Dark Souls, there is definitely a meta surrounding that game that people find very valuable, which is the shared experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What is said about a game where any person that you talk to if they say, yeah, I've done this, I've beaten this uh, boss, then you know that they went up against the same experience that you had, um, that you have a shared experience that you can, you know, talk about. And you might um, have approached it far differently from each other. But ultimately, how much is that diminished if it's like, yeah, but I beat it on easy mode, though. And, yeah, not and, to, and that's yeah. available to everybody. Not you know? to be extreme, but it, it's the Everest thing. It's like, I climbed it, you climbed it too, and you look at the guy and, you know, maybe he's like, out of shape and you're like damn dude really and then he's like yeah and then you in your head you're like you climbed it you didn't you didn't use the helicopter right <laughs> <laughs> i saw the top whatever i used a telescope it counts because <laughs> like w when i was playing through elden ring um like i picked up the summon and i started using them and then i found like one of the really good ones I, I started noticing that I wasn't struggling as much on bosses. And that kind of like rang a bell for me that hmm, maybe this bell thing is kind of, or the, this summon is kind of maybe, maybe a little bit too strong. Mm -hmm. Like I, I came to one of the like main story bosses and I uh, killed him in two tries, I think. And, like, I remember after his, seeing him dying and, like, it started to play cutscene and all kinds of stuff, I was just like, that didn't really feel good. <laughs> so, at, after that, I, I stopped using the bell for the rest of the game yeah. because I, I, I felt like I was cheating. Because I felt like I was robbing myself of that, like, challenge to overcome feeling that, that we always try to impose on others, like, by, by mm -hmm. not having them Google and stuff. I felt like I was doing that to myself, so I stopped using the bell at that point. I don't know if that like like if that counts as the uh, the break point when some something is broken that we spoke of before or mentioned before. It's like the porn thing. It's like you don't you can't necessarily define it, but you know when you see it. <laughs> yeah, like it, it just it just felt off, you know. As someone who's played a lot of FromSoft games, I'm not supposed to beat like an end game. Well, it's not really end game, but kind of end game boss by just like just just spamming buttons you know mm -hmm. yeah i'm with you on that um there's an angle as well i would argue of 
this what what is because this this sounds like it's getting way too specific but i think it's reasonable like say you beat that boss and you're like and someone someone's in the call with you and you're like do you have fun and you're like yeah yeah and then a week later you look back and you're like not really <laughs> like what you know what 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 does that mean? It's like it could be like the a fleeting shame starts creeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fleeting fun versus a more meaningful like you know, I'll forever remember it being incredibly fun to play Dark Souls for the first time. Like so you know, what's the difference between those? And like maybe it's an English language thing, but just like saying they're both fun is like it's a bit lacking, isn't it? No. Well, Fun's how would it work? Answer that one, genius. And I won't answer that one because I don't care whether one's in there or not. It's not Man, you really like pulling out the don't care. <laughs> yeah. You might ask this one specific question to me that I put in my video, but my answer to that question would be that I do not care. Yeah. I see. Not my problem anyway, to let me solve. Elaborate. It's not from software's problem to solve. They don't want to put one in. But if they did, I'm sure they'd figure out an elegant solution because they're from software. Are you? And I wouldn't describe From sure? Software's approach with everything as elegant. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're better Most game designers than rough. me or you. The only reason my indifference towards an easy mode has been categorized as me demanding one is this ridiculous, farcical, us versus them mentality where you're either for it or against it. And you know, not everything I mean, has to be an I. Well, I mean, the, you, you might be, I certainly believe that you have an us versus them mentality. But I don't necessarily think that all agreements that I have with people need to devolve to that level of tribalism. But maybe well. you just do that and you project that into other people? Hmm. Perhaps. Ideological mm -hmm. war. You've got your Sekiro. You love your Sekiro. Enjoy it. Don't make yourself miserable by worrying about how other people are enjoying the game. I've been staring at this particular comment and I just don't get it. Unpopular opinion, but Sekiro having an easy mode would detract from the experience. After being beaten to a pulp for the 30th time by a boss, we'd all be tempted by the easier fight. Just knowing that's an option would stop us chipping away, improving over hours, days, and weeks. How is that hard to understand what they're saying? That's that completely is true. Real. That's, that's yeah. every gamer. Please make fun of this comment, you dumb. It's, on a, it's my biggest <laughs> problem with most of... can't understand it. Lots of modern AAA games have, letting you change the difficulty back and forth whenever you want and not tying achievements or trophies to difficulty. Yeah, we, we just we went over this a little bit earlier when the game is like, don't you want to make it easier? You're like, get the fuck out of here, go away. No, I you. don't. Leave me alone. I know you're, I will do, I will set the difficulty lower if I ever fucking I, just give up. But do you know I've never- That's yeah. giving up. Giving I'm, up isn't quitting. Giving up is setting yeah. it to a lower difficulty. I've never interpreted those kinds of messages in games as genuine, like, hmm, maybe I will. I always interpret them as the game making fun of me. Mocking. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Real funny game. Like how, fu <laughs> how fuck it? I'm going to prove you wrong. There, I'm going to do the opposite of what you want. It looks like That's you're having a hard time over like, here. Exactly <laughs> it that way. Hey, having a tough time there, buddy. Little, little fucking <laughs> paper clip. <laughs> Look, I'm not okay kidding. there, hmm? You pussy? You <laughs> <laughs> feeling a little bit cucky? How did your mommy raise a bitch? It's like, don't <laughs> talk to me like that. Video game, I, uh, <laughs> I don't appreciate this. I'm trying, okay? It looks the, like you're e sucking balls. Which easy mode would detract like. from the experience because after a boss has beaten you to a pulp 30 times, we'd all be, and that's what it says, we'd all be tempted by the easier fight. That's no. probably no, damn we close wouldn't. to that's reality. That's literally yeah, yeah, never yeah, happened yeah, to yeah. me. I don't well, believe you. Yeah. I don't believe you. I, I do not believe you. I don't believe you. If know, you can knock a fight down a difficulty level that is really frustrating you, there there is a point in your frustration where you will break. Yeah. But no, I, not it's not option, even that. No, no, no. It's not it's even not that. It's just being it. tempted. It. Yeah, it's, exactly. yeah, it's just a temptation. Are you mm -hmm. saying that you never, you never, after the 30th time, just sat back and just thought, Man, what if I just bump it down? Dude, <laughs> I'm totally... a stereotype elitist man, and it's happened to me. I mean, I think <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm tempted I... and don't do it is more virtuous. You know, I've said um, I mean... that Maria needed more health. There are plenty of bosses I fought in Dark Souls where I got them down to like 99% of the health down, and I'd be like, hmm, if this boss were designed with 90% of the health it had, which I think would be fair, I would have won <laughs> by now. And, and the... you know, what, what is that thought if not, hmm. Maybe it should have that kind of health. Hmm. Maybe if there was something that was like the lower mode reduces health forever. You know, do you remember? Like, the, no way you've never had this thought. Fuck off. Like, the thing is, being tempted and doing it are two di different things, right? Absolutely. Because, like, 
me struggling on a boss in Endgame and being tempted to summon because I know that trivializes the fight mm -hmm. is not the same as me actually pressing the summon button. Yeah, and what we often and end up doing as veteran players will go, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let it beat the boss. I'm just going to see what it does. Just going to see how easy it is. That's all. <laughs> it's, oh, what do you know? I mean, I, I literally did that, that a couple of times, and then I, I spit out just because I didn't want to beat the boss that way. Like caving to that temptation is probably the worst possible route because you're probably yeah. someone who appreciates getting a challenge out of what you're doing, but you've also not actually surpassed the challenge you were going for, and you yeah. can't really go back now. So you're fucked. That's why I kind of ruined my first Elden Ring playthrough at the very end. I figured out that I could use the Horfrost Stomp at the Godskin Ooh, duo. Yeah. And... Oh. <laughs> Dude, get in the bleed weapons and the blood slash move. Oh god, it started to become... One a... thing about bleed, bleed does not work on the two final bosses, Radagon or the Elden Beast. Nothing. No, no effect for bleed. So I think I already that, had... There's um, at least that. It was Tish. Oh my god, Tish on the Elden Beast. What the fuck? Oh, shit. <laughs> It's not fair. <laughs> oh, just the yeah, projectile alone would make that fight a lot easier. It's so unfair Getting to it is the hardest part. <laughs> you what actually you feel bad for the about, bosses. What do you guys think about summoning other players, like multiplayer, to help you with a boss? Do you consider that, like, detrimentally um, nerfing the experience? Uh, yeah. I believe it will negatively affect your experience, but it's the mm -hmm. easy mode that the games have. Go right. off if you my want recommendation to. And it's the easiest way to design with that in mind. Like, oh, you summoned another player. Well, we're going to have to add something to compensate for that. It's well, the easiest way to add more health. Get more health. Yeah, that's they, what it, their AIs just cannot handle multiple two targets. Players. Yeah, I think that's the best argument against it, yeah, is well. that when you look at how these bosses fight when you put another person in the room, they just mm -hmm. can't deal with it. And doubling their health yeah. doesn't account for it. Not, nor, nor would quadrupling no. it, really, because you can take advantage of them so hard because their moves mm -hmm. are all like directed at one person. Sometimes you get like a 360 right. move or something, but they are not designed to take on more than one person, typically speaking. And it would be really complicated to design the whole game so that they're ready for one and multiple uh, interactions. But yeah, so I would recommend if someone was really tempted and thought it was really fun, it'd be like, save that for another playthrough maybe? Try and do it solo. Yeah. And you can do that first or second, I suppose, but just, yeah, I, I'm just saying. I'm very familiar good... with summoning. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily as soon mm -hmm. as you have any trouble. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad right. way to get new players into the genre, though. Like, I mean, my wife, X-Ray Girl, she played Elden Ring. She's never played a Souls game before. She would probably never play one alone, even to this day. But she had a bunch of fun summoning me and having us fight bosses and stuff. But I wouldn't necessarily say that's, in any world, the ideal way to play it if, you're, if you want the Souls experience. And I'm not very good at video games, so I don't know what a real hardcore gamer would struggle with there, and I know for a fact that I'm- so Inherent good. in the question was struggle. Like, I don't even know, like, that's the, the hypothetical. When you are struggling, you will do it, and he's like, I don't know what the struggle that's is there. That's what temptation is. A temptation is essentially a struggle. Yeah not tempted in that way because capcom does that thing where it offers to lower the difficulty for you if you again i find that that's so insulting when they do it it's less like when there's modes and yeah. you know, it's a different experience. it's like a robot telling me i suck yeah it's and it's coming up on their preference not yours you know like this is slightly different die one too many times in a particular place and every time that's happened to me because i'm not very good at video games i take the attitude of fuck you capcom yeah fuck you don't you take pity on me i don't think you this pity way me? I don't therefore need your i know how pity, all people will think scum did the mirror what do you mean we we agree on this but uh absolutely not only admit that we've been in the situation of like tempted to bring down the difficulty but that of course mm -hmm. people would people in general come on why are you absolutely even... everyone would probably be tempted in a certain amount absolutely would existence of a lower a difficulty setting detract from Devil May Cry 5 for you. If it did, get good at handling different difficulty levels in a game. Get on my level, Scrub! What was that? Well, okay. Uh, it was a also, game was dank as fuck, that's what it was. If someone does lower the difficulty of a game, it probably is because they really, really, really struggle at the normal mode. So if they bump it down to easy mode, they'll probably struggle at it still. If they're I, I why what, where are you I, why where did you get you this just from? Made that up. You just made that you up. You made yeah. that up. <laughs> you just made that up for your video, and then you said it. I could have just said, <laughs> "What were you when people are struggling and they lower it? It's probably too significant of a drop, and so now they find it too easy." I could have just said that. Like, yeah, we have a plethora Some of easy fucking results. Yeah, we, it could be anything. Easy. Oh, Some yeah. easy modes are. Yeah, it helps. I don't even know. 
I looked at it on the screen and said we call this balance. Like, that's not balance. <laughs> like, not balance. When you have four difficulty modes, the idea that one of those is guaranteed to fit your abilities, like, I doubt it. One of the, There's going to be one that's too hard or too easy all the time. It's very rare you get one that fits you. What does it even mean for a difficulty to fit your abilities, like, perfectly? Like, in a balanced way? Do you lose only two times before winning? Is that what it means to be balanced? Yeah, I, like I was just thinking the messaging of that, you know, whenever you get a prompt that says, do you want to lower the difficulty? It's it's as if they think that dying multiple times is abnormal, an abnormal occurrence. Like if you die three times, like, like you maybe die 10, 20 times in a row. Like that's part of it. If I, like you set a, a high, a relatively high difficulty, right? It's like if you uh, die course. more than a few times, that's like weird. Like, hmm. That's why I've always found it weird that people count their deaths against Souls bosses sometimes, where people can tell me, I beat this boss and I died like eight times because I, I die a lot, dude. <laughs> 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 I'm beating these bosses, I die a lot. X ray I, girl I did count. have a death counter on her streams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people do it, and like that's that's just funsies. I, I don't care, you know, but like when people tell me that as like a point of pride or whatever, because usually I take me beating a fight in a low number of tries as a the sign the fight isn't very good, which is what my <laughs> that was the lesson I took from Morgoth, which was in fact wrong. It was just game balance fucking me over. Mm -hmm. They're less skilled than you, right? Playing it on the easy mode would give them an equivalent experience if that mode's been finely tuned and developed correctly. Easy modes are pretty tautological, I guess. Just like if it's done right, you will good, be happy. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Yes. Feels, hmm, it is know. good if it's good. Doing yeah. things good is good. Yeah, anyway. Want to new, of course. The standard, hard, normal, and easy settings have been a part of video games for decades with nary a complaint. And these days, ways of adjusting difficulty and challenge have become an art form in and of themselves. Wait. You, why did you, you show it? So, why did you show so an accessibility screen when you yeah, were look, talking about the first thing I read <laughs> when he was talking about difficulty was subtitle Disable background. Parallel. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Big subtitle. And then it says at the top. See, I told you he'll do this. He will dishonestly make these edits and make these statements that purposefully confuses and mixes up accessibility and difficulty. Because that's just. I don't know, I guess it's just the person he fucking is. Well, the he only does that. He's, he's done this years afterwards. The only one that he applies, I think, it. is option to skip puzzles. That's like the only one. Privilege goggles. Oh, well, privilege goggles is a great video. Privilege <laughs> puzzles. Adjusting difficulty and challenge have become an art form in and of themselves. Among the most impressive is Celeste, a game most of us agree is very good indeed. On its default settings, Celeste offers plenty of resistance to players attempting to conquer it and collect everything, but you can tweak almost any aspect of said resistance if you're struggling. You can extend your ability to air dash, you can slow the game down, remove stamina penalties, or even just become invincible like SFZ's zero difficulty mode. Yeah, so brand new IPs, you're not going to find people arguing against you on it. This is, this is all new. But even still, can, I mean, yeah. they'll, they'll wonder like, when you say, shit, I beat nerves. Celeste, they're still going to want to know what you mean when you say oh, that. That's really interesting, because Celeste is, is pretty hard, actually. Um, I didn't even know that those options were there, and I really liked the game, and part of why I liked it so much was because it was challenging. And I oh, thought yeah. that uh, it being challenging was actually really in service of its theme as well. I, um, and this is kind of, I, you'd want to ask Jim, right? It'd be like, so if people are going in with invincibility mode on or whatever, and they've, like, a, a grand wizard came down from space and said, I know for a fact that had you told them not to do that, they would have had more fun. What do you think? Mm. Like, yeah, well, uh, the ability to choose I, is more important than directing them in a way you think they would have more fun. I don't know I if it's this like this. a bit of a at... tangent, but I have a question that's rearing its ugly head, yeah. uh, which is... Do you, do you guys have any particular opinion on games having difficulty modes at all as to whether or not that's a good thing? I think that if it's designed with that in mind, it's usually okay. Yeah. I generally will, yeah. I definitely like harder modes so that I can challenge myself further, especially as I begin to master a game, but I still want to feel challenged by it and prove to myself that I've mastered mechanics and improved. Which is a lot of times something that you just need a harder mode in order to really do once you hit the normal limits. I think uh, it, 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 just, it depends uh, on the, on the game because yeah. some games harder means you have less health, enemy has more health. And that to me is just kind of dull.
like that that's like instead of dying in two hits you die in one hits like i didn't really get any better like i didn't like the challenge wasn't really me having to adapt in any way i just you know don't take hits for it i you know what i'm gonna take an extremely firm stance uh i am very 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 pro having harder difficulty modes uh, yeah i definitely agree like the experience yeah. that i want would not be desirable for most people and it just if they didn't have a lot of different modes then what i want out of a game would it just wouldn't exist I would not like they play would, they would make games, games for normies nearly as much if they didn't have a hard mode, whether it's Rim World or Vermintide or anything. Like what keeps me playing those games is that I know I could I could go to higher difficulties, keep making the challenges more difficult, and when I hit the max difficulty possible, you know, do mess do my best to really really excel and get better and become familiar. I kind of like it when yeah. you can unlock higher difficulties. Like uh, Resident Evil Four just has normal mode, like that's all you can pick re on a new At game. The yeah. yeah, and the, then you like, beat it once, series. and they get mode. professional mode, and you're like, hell yeah, dude, that was a lot that's of fun, and I, I'm, I welcome a challenge on this game. So, I don't want to fire that like, up right away when the intention I when I unlocked of it, it. Building the games with all of it in mind instead of just going throw on a mode where everyone's got double health done. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. If if you're gonna make a, a higher difficulty, please go with class glass cannons instead of spongy tanky enemies. It's just fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah. to wail I, on I something because for an I've hour. noticed. Play it. This, I guess you have to restart that. Theo. Taking you the wrong. Cut out. Yeah. Uh, I just ask because I've noticed a trend of players picking difficulty modes that are not conducive to the kind of experience they want because of. I don't want to say like social pressures, but their own perceptions of what's going on in a difficulty what do you mode. Mean? Like a person thinking, I'm not very good at video games, and then picking an easy oh, mode when okay. that's, you know, they are well within the well within the ability to handle a Played harder normal. mode. And so that compromise. Especially normal yeah. modes. Now, normal uh, modes are generally quite manageable. And yeah. of course, I, yeah. I consider myself pretty good at video games, but still, I feel like a lot of normal modes are. Like, you can definitely do it. Don't be afraid. Just play. Now, I like to generally start games playing normal because I figure that's that that's sort of the... I, I think it's sort of the default sort of this is the experience we're presenting to people and I kind of want to get that because I know I can always bump it up. I could but, be wrong, but I suspect uh, like hard mode in games is like the devs normal mode, you know? And like, and then they they uh, nerf hard mode for like normal mode for the release. The game. Depends yeah, on the devs too. I agree. Yeah, because sometimes with devs, I'm like, I because I just think I know, like I'm way better at some games than the devs are. There's, I just know it. I have the time to devote to it. I've been able to devote time to it. I've really been into the game. It's like people who know the writing of a story better than the writer might know, just because the writer's either forgotten or anything. It's like, yeah, they made it, but. Some people do. There are people who know like Game of Thrones lore to insane degrees or w whatever it is. And they probably know it more than the people who wrote it because they've just devoted themselves to really remembering and catalyzing, catalyzing, categorizing everything. So I could absolutely say that, that's why it frustrates me when I play a game and I ask, like, do the devs not fucking play their own game? Why did they put this in? This is nuts. This is insane. This is so underpowered or so broken. And it's so mm -hmm. obviously done that way. Do they not play their own game? Everyone could see this. But then you yeah. also have difficulties like in Borderlands, for example. Borderlands 2 comes to mind, where the enemies just start off with a way higher level than the weapons you would have at a normal play from the beginning, where they basically want you to play the normal difficulties before, so you have actual the, actually the weaponry to tackle those enemies in general. Because if you, if you would go with like ultimate vault hunter mode mode as your first playthrough, you probably have a really hard time. Uh, like getting Diablo done. style difficulty. Well, a lot of games exactly. just require you to have a familiarity with enemy behavior and mechanics and the synergy of abilities and things like that in order to do well. Like you just have to learn how the game works. Yeah. Even if your options for what to do in the game isn't necessarily high, if it's not a super mechanic rich game or if it's not like you don't have a huge move set for a character and stuff you just have to know how what you do interacts with the things in the world are to just understand a game that actually has a good like difficulty slider if you will um 
I mean, probably more than this, but like MMOs, like I'm thinking of World of Warcraft specifically. Like when you do a raid, you can do the raid on normal, heroic, or mythic difficulty, which is basically easy, uh, medium, and hard. Um, but so, and between those difficulties, the boss does have more health and does do more damage, but it also adds abilities per tier. So, like, the boss does new things that are also more difficult than the previous tier. So, like, it, it adds difficulty in in the sense of, like, it's more challenging on a mechanical level. Yeah. While it's also being more challenging on a, like, Numbers damage level. level. Yeah. That yeah. Way, Destiny's raids are similar in that respect. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's, actually that's probably mechanics. one of the better ways to do it. Because... Upping the difficulty shouldn't just be numbers. I think upping the difficulty should make the the a either the AI smarter somehow, but I think that's pretty hard to do, or just like m- make them do something else, like flick on the switch that makes their third attack doable or something. Like I don't know, something that just like changes the the place a little bit that to to make it more challenging. Yeah, I think Killing Floor 2 is generally my go-to example for how difficulty, it doesn't just make enemies you know, do more damage or whatever, but they move faster. There are different assortments of enemies. They will have, they will just flat out do different moves that they don't do on uh, lower difficulties. There is a lot of, you know, there's thought that goes into like, oh, I'm at this level. That means that this enemy will use this attack that he just flat out doesn't have on lower difficulties. Mm. Champion Halo difficulty and Vermintide oh. adds um friendly fire which like really changes things it's like oh man now i gotta no, i gotta not be too no, it doesn't friendly fire is Wait. extremely weakly minuscule in that game it changes nothing it's no, one of my but, complaints about the game what about on like the higher difficulties nope. i remember that they it like can if you oh. use a part some some stuff like if you're if you're not to get into deep vermintide discussion is what right, i play a shit ton of vermintide <laughs> but like yeah when you get to a certain level Technically, friendly fire is added, but it's just so tiny that it's just not like it doesn't even matter. And even you have to get up to cataclysm and then you have to hit friendlies with certain kinds of attacks to even do appreciable kinds of friendly fire. Oh man, but, I just remember one time I was getting nuked by a Sienna. I was like, oh my god, this is oh, <laughs> Sienna's impossible. Friendly fire is really weak huh. to the point where, as a Sienna main, I just don't even worry about friendly fire and cataclysm because it's like it just doesn't matter. It's, it does so little. I'm doing you. I'm helping you out by making this area of effect attack where you are because I'm preventing the enemies from hitting you that do just just Way more exponentially damage. more damage than I would. Yeah, fair enough. However, the point does, uh, it is correct, yeah. The fact that at a certain difficulty, friendly fire becomes a thing is, that is a good thing to do. That is a, it is a good way to increase difficulty by saying... It really makes it, you like, think a lot a more about positioning. Because it doesn't just say you have to play better. It says you now have a responsibility to other players that you didn't have before. The best uh, higher difficulty mode I've seen is in Fury, if anyone's played that. It has a Furia difficulty, which is New Game Plus, and it changes no stats about either you or the enemy. Uh, No damage values, no health numbers. It just makes their win uh, openings slightly smaller and also changes their patterns to be more complex. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's an interesting I think way to do it. it was professional mode on Resident Evil 4 is essentially playing the game at it it removes the difficulty um uh, adaptive difficulty so you're always playing on the highest difficulty that the game has and it never lowers uh when Does it normal comes, mode do that normal mode has adaptive difficulty but it can go that. up and down and move around. Professional is you're always playing at the hardest difficulty. So you always get the less amount, the least amount of ammo. The enemies do the most amount of damage. Right. And it won't lower. Oh, that's cool. Very, it, it was, is actually really cool because sometimes when I start a new game and I like, I want to challenge myself and do a zone. Like, can I do this zone, you know, like getting, you know, without taking hits or with only doing certain things and you try it a few times and you lose the game will make the game easier and you can't it's like no no no, don't do that don't do that i want it so i have to reload the game so that i can do that section over again but that's uh not generally something that players encounter 
Mm -hmm. rightly the time for its non-condescending approach to difficulty. It was a game that admitted quite acceptingly, hey, not everyone can play the game in its default settings. Here's a way to tailor it to your liking. And then that just, <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> tailor it to your liking by becoming invincible? <laughs> what? I, I, I don't want... I'm tired of this putting down of the average player. The average player can beat Celeste on its basic difficulty. Yeah, it will take no. time, but they can do it. No. <laughs> stop. stop. Like, the, the moment you say, I probably can't do this, you've given up and you can't do it. So congratulations, I guess. And that is where you fail. Pretty much. That itself isn't a new thing. Early Silent Hill games offered their own rudimentary adjustable difficulty, allowing players to raise and lower the challenge of combat and puzzles as two separate there things. Is, there is Chicken no amount of this other game dot 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 that will convince me. So just don't even bother. I'm just arguing principally, that's why I... All kind of bunk. Just like, all right. But easy puzzles or breeze past enemies while giving your brain a workout. And none of this has been controversial. It does only seem to be care. certain games where this discussion about difficulty and. Games where everyone's discussion on the experience of defeating the challenge is prominent. What a coincidence. And which, yep. <laughs> which side Game. of this argument is the one complaining to? <laughs> games that weirdly feature prominently in popular culture so people don't want to miss out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy mm -hmm. modes causes people to... And what are you suggesting? That if everyone had complained about Silent Hill or Celeste, that then they'd be right, I guess? Like, is people it... complained <laughs> that games were generally too easy. I don't even know. Like... it's okay to remove all the easy modes, or what? Maybe I they know would... what you mean, more. The arguments don't really... They, they seem like they're totally unrelated. Because yeah, he's, he's suggesting, I it's like, if this argument were true, video. then where are they for this, that, and the other? And it's like, so if they were I, there, you'd be like, aha, this I, must be real. <laughs> Does Jim script, or is this just stream of consciousness? This is, this is a script. script. This is a script. Yeah, it's just bad. Script. It's not a very most, good one. Oh, most people that we like cover on EFAP are script. They're just bad. At, they're bad. What? Or it's just first draft. Yeah, I guess first draft basically is stream of consciousness. Kind of. You can just retake lines. <laughs> yeah. Clutch their balls and gasp in horror. Games that a certain group of people have decided are theirs and snake theirs boy. alone. Something to guard yeah. jealously it's like really a cool dragon when you kill snake boy. No, fuck this. Gatekeep the fuck out of the things you like because we've seen yes. what happens when you don't. I, mm -hmm. I, kind of funny, like people who difficulty, they're like smog. <laughs> Sitting on their gold pile. Really, why gold. can't you? You couldn't possibly interpret <laughs> it in any kind of positive way. It has to be negative. It can't in it's any now, way be. You're now sitting on your pile of gold. The they gold want beans. you. They want you to experience the big highs. You cancel them out if you cheat. Yeah. And I'm not saying yeah. it's all cheating. You know, the, the, the words that you understand what I'm saying. Like it's, they don't want you to ruin when it I... yourself. When I tell people, like whether it's family members or friends, like to go on the crazy roller coaster, it's not because I'm, it's because I want them to experience this kind of experience that I absolutely adore. And I want them to feel that for themselves. I want to encourage them to know, don't be afraid, do it. It's, an, it's a crazy sensation that you'll probably never really get in your life otherwise. It's pile of gold. And fuck that. When I like a game, I want people to know about it. Like, I want people to know about Sticks and Bones, which is the funniest fucking game I've played in years. For 10 bucks, it's super, super short, so it's a very hard to recommend game. Hashtag but it's ad. the deadly premonition of zero budget Steam games. Now, am I just looking for an excuse? Is that good or bad? I don't know. What is that? What is this contraption here? What is this contraption? Even so, you. you Deadly Premonition is a game that you got to kind of sell people on a little harder than that because it's not for everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. What is this device? I assume this is something that you can attach to the loops on your shoes to pull your shoes up without having to bend down in order to do so. No, it's just a shoehorn. Oh, no, you, you, right? you, you, you put. Yeah, it's a shoehorn, isn't it? Have you guys yeah. never used a shoehorn? No, 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 no. This is different I've from a never... shoehorn. Well, it's just isn't a shoehorn it? with an extended grip. Yeah. Yeah, I've it looks like it's a, a loop, before. not a. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me too. What what, what, what's, the, what's the loop for? Just to, no, I, I don't like... think it's a loop. I think it, it might just be the. It, it's like a shiny oh, spatula I, thing. Oh, right? okay, like that's tongue. what confused me. I oh. thought the shiny bit was the background, and I thought it was a loop. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That is an. I'm sorry, you, you to put the shoes on then. Yeah. 
I assume this is for old people. Not I would people. presume so. But yes. again, this would be if this is meant to be comparable to video games. This would be accessibility, right? Like this yes. would be the features that make it. Yes, so like it's colorblind yeah. settings. Some shoes so fit kind of tight. Old people have trouble putting on shoes, not because they're stupid or untalented. It's because they're old and their body doesn't work. So yeah. they need some mechanical assistance in doing that. Yeah. I used to awkwardly shoehorn in a plug for a game I really enjoyed. Yes, I am. I have, Primarily I because it's an obscure though. game and also a game I'm being positive about. Right, which so is I, that I only have one foot. Oh my god. <laughs> no, so putting on shoes is easier for you. You have half the shoes to put on. No, I gotta put on a whole leg. Oh my god. Well, we're talking about the shoes. Shoehorning. I, shoe I didn't say I, I had the same know. issue. I feel like there's you two conversations going on at once. Yeah, right I don't now. know what's happening. <laughs> hey, Metal, well, how are you today? I'm good. Saying, I'm shoe you know, the, oh, it's shoehorned in. Now I know. <laughs> it's easier for you to put a shoe on because you can put the shoe on your fake foot before you put the foot on. That's even easier. Mom! Yeah, that's true, but I still have to put the leg on. Yeah. Yeah, but that's <laughs> different than putting on the shoe. It, it's harder, I, I can tell you for sure, because I still put shoes on my human foot. <laughs> it's easier to do that part. My human foot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the other one's a robot, man. So I'm, I'm actually if a I cyborg. Video, I never would have learned what shoe hoarding means. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> what the... Oh, wait, that was the revelation you were having? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. No wonder I was confused. <laughs> Yeah, is, I, is, is this like confirmation for all the ether painters that say that that you guys never touch grass? Like you guys never put feet on to go outside. Hey, I knew what a shoe horn was. <laughs> I'm legitimately I surprised. I've never heard of a shoe horn, and now I understand why it's called shoe. He thought it was a musical yeah. instrument. <laughs> well, got a, little, like, a little mouthpiece on the end, play through the mouth of the of the shoe. People are confused as to whether or not calling this like a Biden moment or a you're a boot Zuma. Like, it's, <laughs> they don't even Look, know there's gotta be a non-Australian <laughs> here who's never heard of boomeranging, right? I like, guess you don't, and I guess if, especially if you're our age, you don't really encounter shoehorns. Maybe at your grandma's house or whatever, and you see this weird I was gonna say, I know about it because like, I've seen my relatives use it, so I just, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how I heard about them. I've just always... I, I, I've owned, owned a shoehorn since I moved like away. Like I was eighteen when I moved from my my parents, and I I, I got a shoehorn like the first few things I bought. Yeah, if your if your shoe fits tight, like in a, and not in like a yeah, constricting really way, it's a very useful tool. Yeah. Or if you know you you have a foot in which you can't point the toe at all, it's easier to get a shoe on if you have a shoehorn. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, whenever a shoe doesn't fit well, I just force my foot, like, into the shoe. Wait, why don't you just, why do you not just keep the shoe on your fake foot, even when Sometimes it's not, Sometimes I have to like, switch shoes. To you? What if I, I'm going from, like, my job at the army clinic where I'm wearing combat boots to the gym, I gotta switch, switch shoes. Why not just always what? have the, uh, your work shoe on your fake foot, so you only have to change half the shoes in your life? But because I, I can't get into the gym with the, the work shoe on. I need, I need a running shoe on that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I could probably make a fuss about it and make Does them it, let me because they'd feel bad for saying for no, you're a cripple. But like, well, when, when you're running, supposed to. When you're but running what's... and you do it with your... Does, does the t kind of shoe on your robot foot, does that make a difference? Or is it just... Running is like, a bit yeah. of a special case because I have a whole, a whole dedicated leg for running that um, is like the... the the spine of it has its own like sole of a shoe, but I do still need to wear a running shoe on my left foot. Well, my legs are really generalist, I suppose. I don't have any specific. Uh, I don't you have any standard package. Lead. Kind yeah. of. I got Factory the default, default settings. Yeah. I used yeah. to have that. You need to buy like it's not bad. Complete set though, rags, don't you? You need two pairs. Or do no. you just have shoes on your front legs and your hind legs are just bare? I generally don't need them, but if you're going to go out to, if it's really, really hot, you might have to. Right, so that you don't burn your. You know, board. at that point, just Did the don't hind go legs out. Not be the one with shoes. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I guess you definitely, on, you definitely the, uh, want them on your, you, you want them on your rears. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Your, right. you know how there's front wheel and and rear wheel drives. Like, what would it be for like a dog? Which which legs would be considered the uh, the driving legs? Front leg dog <laughs> driving <laughs> legs. You would yeah, probably. Well, like, I don't know. I guess I've never thought about it because I just you just do it. You know, I you don't yeah, really give well, it a lot. Of I I, now, I know in like... cars rear wheel drive is you know a thing, but it's not a. Yeah. 
What is the I mean, utility? I, of rear it's wheel both. I'm right? assuming it, it, that it's the rear legs give the power and the front legs do the steering, right? Is it, is it not pretty similar to a car in that respect? In that case, that'd be front front leg. Well, uh, well rear wheel drive. It it it's not that. It means that the it turns the back wheels. It only right. it only drives the rear wheels. So even though you're steering with the front, that kind of it, it the engines in the back and it or it not in the back, but it turns those back wheels instead of I guess all of them. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know so, much about cars. I don't know much about <laughs> automobile powertrain distribution <laughs> systems, honestly. But rotational four wheel drive is not my area. Four wheel drive, the motor is turning all the wheels, right? But then if yeah, it's just I think so. I'm Other, right otherwise leg, the so motor is right turning two wheels. The, the steering. Because my oh, car is a rear that, wheel drive. Four like, four, yeah. four wheel drive or all wheel drive is when the power of the engine is going to all four wheels. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't affect the steering though. There are, I think, there's like rally vehicles and things like that that can turn the rear wheels in the opposite direction to make it turn tighter. But I don't think that's very common. So I'm, yeah, I'm, you're I'm not gonna, gonna so you're never gonna really need that in your daily right. life. Yeah. It's it's more things to break on your car. All right, then. Rag V8 <laughs> or V6? No, 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 no. It's not a V8 or a V6. It's a turbo V4. Which you might think, oh, that's weak sauce. But when your car weighs as little as mine, you could get, you could fucking zip. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would get about 100 views if I did it in its own video. But the point is, when I love a game, I want everyone else to love it too. That's the ideal world for me. Where all the well, other sure, but like, what if, I love I... is very different? Yeah. What if it's for very different reasons because of difficulty settings? No, what yeah, I disagree. I don't want everyone to yeah. love the things I love necessarily. Yeah, I want everyone still... to stay away from the things I love. <laughs> because <laughs> I know that's that's the grouchy old man mentality I have these days. It's just, just diluted, stay away it? from my shit. If stay everyone... away from my shit. If the, this is why we're always skeptical when when everyone praises a thing, it's like, uh, what mm. is it though? What is what is it offering if everyone likes it? Like, it's got to be something very very generic at that point, right? Or approachable, but. You know, that's just an indication. It can be anything. It's just that if there was a video game that everyone enjoyed and everyone agreed had fair and interesting challenge, I'd be blown away. Like no, but before even Tetris? playing Tetris. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. Well, one of the reasons I enjoy the, we live... it's one of the reasons I enjoy the Souls games is because it's distinguished by its difficulty because it serves to it lends to that game's oppressive atmosphere and it stands out from the most games nowadays which have accessibility settings out the ass they definitely you know? um like the the difficulty complements the world for sure yeah then that's one at least the difficulty is just you know you're not some big cool guy and you know mm -hmm. some raggedy thing with a broken sword that is a realistic threat to you it's part of how the game becomes grounded mm -hmm. yes all the horrible shit I like is widely accepted. If we lived in that sort of glorious world, my dates wouldn't hurriedly leave the house and drive screeching off into the night when I say, sit right there, I'm gonna put Puppet Master on. I guess I just don't understand and never will understand the mindset that says I'm enjoying this It's not game. hard to understand you know, the mindset. You know, it isn't hard. That's the way don't try. I'm just waiting yeah, for exactly. a, at the end of it to just be like, I don't care though. Throw that on too. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Another reminder, yeah. I don't want others to enjoy it. You are a hipster. Making games accessible, making games enjoyable for a variety of people, that should be seen overall as a, a, a net positive, sure. Oh, Speaking uh, purely mm, like... Why? Why would you say that? And also show but, any of us where we said that we don't want people to enjoy it. We just don't want them to change it so that they're not enjoying the thing that they're trying to enjoy anyways. Because it's a different thing now. I just want to replay that full sentence again. All right. Because I... Says, I'm enjoying this game. I don't want others to enjoy it. You are a hipster. Making games accessible, making games enjoyable for a variety of people, that should be seen overall as a, a, a net positive, surely. Speaking so you would agree that, like, films like Transformers are a great thing in terms of making films that are more broadly appealing to a wider demographic by comparison to films which cater to more niche audiences? Yeah, so take a film like, uh, Moon, and then someone's like, you should make it more like Transformers. 
surely that's yeah, better if more people enjoy it. That's how we got that's Transformers really right? 3. Because it appeals to more people. It's more fun for more people. I mean, look, it made more money, right? So it's my, this is not an argument that would ever just, be applied to like any other form of I, art. I think this is... Game. A great argument to go all the way back to the beginning. This is where it's the conversation starts, and you go, ah, so let's dig in. You know, we'll use that as our baseline. But this seems to be near the conclusion for some reason. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. this is what we've reached? Yeah, okay. Really hypothetical. If an easy mode led to Sekiro selling another million copies, then why I'm is that our for... metric for success? I don't yeah, know. Sell selling copies. Why is why are Jim Sterling, like Ifa man? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, the amount of revenue Justin generated. Bieber. <laughs> Surely it's a good thing that they have uh, Ultimate Team. I mean, that makes a billion dollars like every year. That's yeah, people love that. Fun. They have so people much fun with it. it. And if that makes more people buy the game and spend more time in the game and have more fun, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's healthy Stop for it. the industry. Stop it's making it. so much money. It's not <sighs> good. I'm, I mean, if cutting half the game out as DLC, it ends up getting the game more money and then more people see it and play it because of its success, like, maybe that's a good thing. I don't Hell, know. how yeah, many better. times has that happened and we just don't know about it? Oh, yeah. Well, that oh, yeah. Just think. Any game that isn't some mismanaged, cynically produced, live service trash oh, selling so as we, many copies. So we exclude that, then. Okay. It's very simple. Just don't do it when it's trash. You're like, right. Okay. Hmm. okay. Is as possible it it via sense? almost any means. I mean, provided they're good games in the first place. A game like Sekiro. Right, so more Lord. caveats. <laughs> yeah, feels feels like we've now realized, like, oh wait, it's about more than that. A lot more. Jimmy Johnson's yeah. anything with an engine. Games don't have to be designed to appeal to everybody, that's true. Yeah. But it's generally good for both but... the audience and the game if they do have a varied appeal. They don't have to appeal to- I No, sure. no, no, not no, true. No, not true. No, especially in a landscape where there are so many different games that you could- There's some- there's games out there for everybody. To say that games need to appeal to as many people as possible, no. You don't you think, you know, kill games. I mean, it's not that even how do you the apply death of games. Dude, this, 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 you... wouldn't it be better if there were more jokes in Godfather? I think it would make it better. It would appeal yeah, to more people. Appeal to more... Yeah. Wouldn't it be better if there were some straight romance options in Dream Daddy? Yes. Like, <laughs> or just, you know, wouldn't it be, like, how do you apply this to mature games? It's like, well, they should Talk be... Talk to you are the Dream Daddy. Or the yeah. subject matter, yeah. or the violence or gore or anything. You know, that's kind of like cutting them off from a from everybody you don't i don't know why would you think that you wouldn't say this about movies you wouldn't say this about tv shows or books why the games get treated this way yeah you know, imagine you know, imagine going to a bar game. shadow of the colossus yeah, what about shadow jokes. colossus yeah yeah more it needs comedy. more jokes and it needs more random holes in the ground with like a bad boss at the end of them or something yeah why Yay. doesn't the horse quip <laughs> it was lacking I, like and pop music, you know saying, imagine, pop uh, music everywhere. If you went to a to a bar, right, and you sat down, and all of the drinks in that bar just had that they had broad general appeal, all of the drinks, but there was no real like identity to any of them. You know that like I, I couldn't go down and have that drink that I really liked because they're all just sort of designed to be mostly appealing to most people. Well, the like, uh. Yeah, like, there's, you go into the bar, and there's this huge one tap, and it just says alcohol. You're like, what, what is that? And you're like, uh. that's your alcohol. You can have some. It's your you alcohol. And you taste it, and you're like, well, this is... I, I don't see how anyone would really object to this, I suppose. I mean, but most people probably think this is fine. What else do you just have? And like, that's rubbing it. alcohol and grape juice. <laughs> we have... well, do you have any more drinks? So it's like, no, but I can. we have more taps with this same drink. Because like, it's like, a very healthy bar landscape that we have now. Would you like food? And you're like, what food have we got? Food? Food. <laughs> food. <They're like> these, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's the food. And you, there's these gray cubes, and you eat them, and you're like, that's, um, okay. You should go get our food. It's, it's really generally appealing to a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> people really like the gray cubes. They come back with a lot of positive feedback, so I don't know. To Body, but if there's a way without compromising the game to appeal ah without compromising nah. the game oh, oh good luck doing that mm. why is that important jim yeah mm. to a few extra people a more diverse so why crowd, did you mock generally just the idea be good that people dude, how many caveats? vision of the 
creators. <laughs> Do you see how many cameras we thrown in? That's generally good. Like, what? hang on. <laughs> like, what you are you... making such a broad statement. I don't even know what you're making. Yeah. For the game's success. Sekiro did... And, wait, now it's about the game's success as well. That's not... We're talking about what's mm. good, not what makes the most money. Why'd you keep doing this? Keep flipping back and forth. I mean, well. if you um, don't they... account for all the people who die, hurricanes are actually good for you, you know? <laughs> They, they bring awareness. <laughs> it's just like, you're like, wait, what? Amazingly well. Would it have done better if more people felt they could play it? Probably yes, because in general, the more people done a better game looks accessible to, the more people mm. will access it. Some hardcore gamers TM don't like that idea. Whenever I've argued in... Why, why, can't, you, why can't someone be a hardcore gamer? I, I consider myself that. a hardcore gamer. No, no yeah. TM, no mocking. It's like a lot of people. But you don't think there are not hardcore soccer fans and hardcore parasailers yeah. and hardcore deep ocean fishermen? Probably. Like but why yeah. do you, he would never mock them. He would never mock these other things. People who are super passionate and spend a lot of time on particular hobbies. I guess we got to find a name that isn't considered cringe. So like, you know, veteran gamers be like, nope, too cringe. You're like, all right. Uh... It's Expert all gamer, from the too cringe. Professional gamer, too cringe. Like, yeah. It's it's residue <laughs> from the whole gamers are dead articles wave around. You know that thing that happened that is constantly being referenced by the same people in Jim's camp. But uh, yeah, they they don't like the G word. Gamers Flavor. are dead, so they're more passionate than ever, it seems, and more numerous than ever. And they keep talking about this thing I don't care about. <laughs> I should make a video telling people how much I don't my care. My YouTube channel is about also. In the past, I've been shouted down for quote unquote demanding that games appeal to quote unquote everybody. Some well, games, I mean, it is argued. You just said that it's better. Yes, yeah, so when you yeah. say yeah. this scenario is better than this scenario, you're you're pushing for the better one. Surely, why wouldn't you? Or are you indifferent to the world being a better place? In your yeah, that's a, that's where him not caring comes back. <laughs> Dude, I don't care. Should be in in, in the n next April Fool. It should be on his tombstone. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. He died as he I'm lived. I'm dead, but I don't care. That's your epitaph. You, Just, I don't care. Should exclude, shouldn't be as accessible, should shut people down. The game isn't for them, they argue. Yes. It's for people who know the yes, value that of hard happens. work. No, okay, stop. stop. <laughs> okay. Don't, see, this is the kind of bullshit that he does. Like, quit, not everything that I like is for you, and not everything you like is for me. That's fine. That's how I want it to be. And that's how you want it to be, even if you are loath to admit it. Don't conflate that with, oh, because I like this, the people who don't like it don't appreciate hard fucking work. Like, don't do this, you disingenuous fuck. Because they played a video game a lot and got good at it. Well, the phrase get good used to be a joke. The humor's been sucked out of it by people who took it seriously. Let's be honest. And you, should, you should take it seriously. You should strive to improve and get better. Yeah. It's not a joke. It's a fucking lifestyle. Do it. Live it. Love it. <laughs> learn it. It's, it's obviously said in a way that you could be like, you're kidding, right? And you're like, yes and no. Like, yeah. <laughs> sure, I'm kidding, kind of, but you It should. is not the most serious way to say something that you should take serious. There are some complaints and criticisms that can only be responded to with, like, you just have to... You need get to get better. better. Well, you like, gotta yeah. get better. Learn, give me an example. Learn right. some mechanics. Um, H Bomber guy said the thing he hates about Dark Souls is whenever you try and heal, the enemies will punish you. Like he's not even talking about reacting yeah. to healing. He's literally just talking about the act of trying to heal in the middle of a fight. How do you respond to that other than like, oh, you need to get better at the yeah. game? <laughs> like, yeah, Jesus. position yeah, when it's safe to heal. It's that's just how it works. Positioning yourself and choosing your moments so that you can safely heal. It, that's a mechanic. Yeah, hey, like, boss, different for every enemy. Stop moving. <laughs> I need you... to heal. And if someone said, like, oh my you god, you said get good, but for real? You're like, well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what life is. Life is about <laughs> you getting good. Like, the, since when when did this become controversial? Is it because it was because a gamer said it and you hate gamers? Like, so now it's just not a thing we do anymore? I just want to clarify. There are times, like, say, for example, there's a glitch and you fall through the floor and die. And you're like, what the fuck? And then someone goes, mm, you gotta get good. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, yeah. you gotta avoid that. Yeah, it's like, no, the, the game needs to get designed better if it's, if <laughs> yeah. it's a yeah. clipping yeah. issue. <laughs> Not everything is a skill issue. A lot yeah. of things are, though. Yeah, a yeah. lot of things are. Understanding is often a skill issue. Oh. Which is why, if, which is why if you're going to critique or review a game, you should be good at it. You should be great at it, even.
It would be worthwhile. You should certainly be Ooh, familiar with trouble. it. And often you become <laughs> familiar, I got good familiar. or great by becoming familiar with oh, it. It's, uh, it's the reason why that Cuphead video was so funny. Because uh, any, Takahashi. any perspective you share on that game is worthless. Because we are just not <laughs> playing the same way. Like, the way that you play it and the way that most people play it is going to be so different that any observations you have are just not valuable. Like, it's that's, just... what, that's not even... I just want to yeah. see you say that to him, to his face. Your perspective is worthless. <laughs> it's like, oh man. The perspective in the field that you have chosen to make your career is I guess worthless. The perspective is valuable to people who also struggle with the tutorial, but like, I mean, in the, I don't know. In the sense that, like, we can all value from a bad example in a way. Like, yeah, sure, good job, but that's probably not the kind of person you want to strive to be. F's in the chat for Dean Takahashi. He see he's like I don't know like because it, it always pops up with him every once in a while. It happened with Doom Eternal when he was yeah, doing yeah. the playthrough of that game, and he was just <laughs> fucking shit at that game. He's but, just not, you know? not it's really funny though. Anything ever. <laughs> he strikes me as the kind of like you know you go through a field. You let's say you work at a at a I don't know a mine, and you get in at the ground floor, so to speak. And you mm -hmm. go into the mine and you mine and you learn what all the rocks do and you learn how to save the canary and, you know, all the little things that you do. And for years and years, you mine and you, you know, you, you get your pickaxe and you sing your dwarf songs and everything. And then eventually one day you make it up to be a big, you know, big shot guy. You're the manager. You move up and then you then you work in the office now and you're doing logistics stuff and you forget what it's like to mine. That goes on long enough that you just can't quite, you know, it's just an old experience and you can't remember how to mine. So when you do your videos on mining, you go down and you're like, oh, I'm actually shit at mining. I've been in the office for too long. <laughs> that might be Dean Takahashi, which in a way gives him an excuse for being terrible. But maybe that's him. Or it's possible that he's just really shit at games, but video game journalists don't often nah, apparently play games. Of, of Dean Takahashi playing Doom Eternal. Oh, it's bad. Maybe it's, it's bad. the concept of thinking of your job as I'm a writer, so all I need in order to do it is this word processor in front of me. I don't need Man. to go anywhere else. I don't need to do any other things. I just need to type 1,500 words. Kind of. That's what a lot of these articles feel like. I've, I know I've covered them on dog bites and i read them and i and i hear them when like people talking about star wars and stuff or people talking about games and it just feels like content they shout out in an hour when they wrote this article and there's nothing of value there's yeah there's no passion it's just you know fuck the fans they're bad don't they think it's like you didn't like how many you didn't you just don't you don't have any sort of talent you're just you're just squeezing this shit out and putting it on a website you're and blogging. lucky for you that you just you're just one of those people that you should feel so 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 grateful that you were born in the 21st century it is a neat century i am uh, turbo tired so i'm gonna go and head to bed wow, that's bye really tired. take it easy for bye. Me later man bye Happy flizzums. <laughs> goodbye <laughs> what a piece of shit am I? And I hate him so much. <laughs> I like him. Garbage. You like what a nerd. <laughs> Get out. Oh. No. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Use it to entry because the irony of people angry at the idea of those who want games made for them is that they too want games made for them and only them. Not every game's made for you, these people argue, while at the same time wanting a game made. I thought you just said that they only say this about a specific type of game like Sekiro or Dark Souls. Mm. I thought you specifically highlighted that this thing weren't said about Silent Hill 2. I was just I don't thinking believe that, I've ever like, heard it. At least in the media, this only seems to be an issue with from software games. And it's just like, this is one developer, like, trying to do something unique. Like, just let them do their thing. Like, do they have to be it's, like every other fucking company? It's just because they're in now. They yeah. are the popular, they're the popular thing in the zeitgeist. So, you know. Metroid Dread was getting it a bit too. People, oh, really? and they eventually did add an easy mode. And, really and they're a good the developer. They've banked oh, a lot of goodwill, right. a tremendous amount of goodwill with the fact that the games, like the way they play is so responsive and rewarding and challenging. I mean, a lot of the people who get these games, they appreciate that about it. So I feel like the mi minority are the people complaining about the difficulty issue. You know, the only I people I hear complaining about it are like these people. 
It's ah, the only ones right. I've ever heard complain about it. Still it's always some polygon writer or just some fucking Jim <laughs> Sterling type who complains <laughs> yeah. about it, even though they don't care. That that's the only people I hear complaining about it. Yeah. Still Please annoys me because with the exclusion of Sekiro, these games are like to use inflammatory language that I can't think of better phrasing for, they're baby's first difficult game. <laughs> they are really not yeah. that hard with the exception of Sekiro. Sekiro is well, a lot yeah. harder. You know, I don't want to be too weird Cringe about this, but that. let's be honest, gaming is still pretty new, and we're a part of a generation yeah, that watched it go mainstream. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's this awkward element of, like, we're all very familiar with way more than some guy who was paid to, like, and he's like, video game? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, what do I, um... And he tries to review it like a movie or something, we're just all awkwardly looking at him like, why doesn't he know how to jump? What the fuck? <laughs> like, what is yeah. happening? Like, and yeah, I don't know. There's this weird disconnect that happens there. Them. And if you do do that, you don't ever get do to do complain do do. about games not selling as well as you want them to. Because by when was that a part of the conversation exactly? When was there this like portion of people? I mean, more of also, you know what? Sometimes I might complain about that. Well, yeah. Like if you if there's something that you think has some real merit, it's a really great game that is achieving something that you think uh, ought to be rewarded including a difficult experience, and it doesn't sell well, that's still lame. Yeah, still I absolutely complain well. about Titanfall 2 not selling as well as, oh, quite frankly, it should have. Yeah. Why, would, why would you say this? That, that Your only options are either you need to be willing for a game to compromise on what it wants to be, or what the developers want it to be, to appeal to the broadest audience possible, and therefore it sells well, or you can have your artistic integrity and it doesn't sell well. And you're not allowed well, to complain about any of the outcomes. Well, I'll tell you, Fringy. The reason is because there's only there's only one thing that determines how well a game a game sells, and that's how difficult it is. Apparently, <laughs> Even though, is, yeah, there, there are Elder literally no other like factors. Copies. Sight Elden Ring sell a lot more than um than Horizon Forbidden West. Elden Ring sold more than fucking anything in the universe. Yep. That yeah. game. Like... Yes. That was an incredible so, result. Maybe... Maybe I'm very happy about that. that. Let me check the sales of that game. As strong as you think it is, you know, like Elden Ring game sales from here. Unbelievable in terms of popularity. I think it's over 10 million sold copies well, now. I think I saw. I'll tell you. I'm uh, I'm looking at it. We don't oh, have to get. Oh, Mel, shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. God damn it. By the end of June 2022, it had sold 16.6 .6 million. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, now boy. let me look up Horizon. Like, I don't think West. The figure I trot out my, a lot is that for a long time I would check the Steam concurrent players for yeah. Elden Ring and Dark Souls 3 and Dark Elden Ring's current play, currently playing one would consistently be higher than Dark Souls 3's all-time peak. Which is crazy. Looks like, yeah, they're not... It's absolutely think. insane how popular Elden Ring is. Yeah, it looks like they haven't released the sales for Forbidden West, which is always a good sign. That's always a good sign. Sony's been pretty well. cagey lately. They just people. recently said that Last of Us 2 <laughs> had 10 million across like uh, two years. I everything, think, like, really. Well, it's just really interesting though, because Ghost of Tsushima, they were very quick to talk about how well that game sold because it mm -hmm. sold well. Well, yeah, didn't, it like, This applies to everything. Didn't Disney say like they gave the numbers for Loki, but then when Miss Marvel came out, they were just like, hmm? Well, no, it's, it's, um, this is, especially in the video game industry, if they tell you how many copies they have sold, then it means that they're happy with those results. If yeah. they've told you yes. how many they've shipped, or if they tell you how much <laughs> yeah. it cumulatively made in conjunction with, like, console sales, that means that they're not particularly happy with those results. And if they don't tell you at all, it means that they're very unhappy with the results. Yeah. Because yeah. all of these numbers get put out by these companies to benefit the companies. Didn't they keep ragging on uh, about Last of Us 2's like opening sales? Like they, they kept referencing. How many how I thought many yeah, but I thought they kept shipped. focusing. Shipped. Yeah. yeah, like they weren't they wouldn't address like either refunds or the, the crash in price yeah. for this game because nobody liked well, Yeah, it was one of those yeah. those turnovers was really low like month per month for that yeah. game. They talked about the ships, not the sales. They, exactly. They were like there was they, a big they did their best. They There's a big trend bad. of people taking pictures of like 500 copies on the rack at a Best Buy and things like that too. It's like, oh, okay. A lot of these are just sitting in stores, not being sold. Yeah, you hear about that game and then you're like, fuck, I don't want to play through that.
Mm -hmm. Buy your own. Well, some people do, okay, and that's fine. I guess some people <laughs> oh, do. They're, they're... <laughs> An admission you don't want outsiders playing your games. So you. Hey, Theo, he's. This is you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you know what? I. I. This kind of happened with. Uh, yeah, well, I, well, point being, yeah, I. I kind of don't like. It's... I want people to try it. I want people yeah, yeah, to yeah. try the game. But I don't want them to just be like, I, I don't want this game to appeal to everyone. I, I really don't. I, I, I don't. I like it for yeah, what you, it is. That's why I play it. You want to preserve the experiences that are available to you. You don't yeah. want it to change into something that you dislike. That's in totally, yeah. And, and I feel like audience. Jim will be a part of the group of people that would probably back Scorsese's comments about cinema exactly. as an industry. Yep. Like, what do you think that if we would do as best faith as possible, I could go with like, oh yes, you've got all these gangster movies that are really like deep and have very important thematic and character like interactions and stuff, but they're all they can be a bit yeah, dry like or they tang. can be a bit this, that, and the other. It's like, let's make them better by making them more like Marvel movies. It's like, you'd never fucking agree. And if they started to do that, would you be like, oh, well... Oh, It's well. sold more, so... <laughs> so yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, it feels like we're not keeping consistent across the... It really does feel like games, for some reason, doesn't get the same approach as uh, a lot of other things do. You don't really want them to be as successful as they could potentially be. Don't make it about weirdly the how much money I want it to make. Yeah. yeah. You just want to hoard the money. game to yourself, and if you do that, there <laughs> yes. probably won't be many of them made. What are you talking about? I don't know, there's about? five Devil May Cry, right, bro. You can't, you can't show Dead Space 3. Dead Space 3 was the product of trying to appeal to a broader and audience, it, and it, it didn't kill the franchise. Yeah, and it it's a shame so because that game isn't even bad by any stretch. It's just like, like it's not what Dead Space yeah, it's a, is. Dead Space is well, a different see, thing now. I guess let's see what Spelling has to say about Dead Space. It's just Rory. so easy. Why? There's five Devil May Cries. I... <laughs> yeah. Well, and the one that they tried to make to yeah, a and a reboot. Failed. <laughs> and yeah, I like, mean, we talk about Dead Space, we talk about Dragon Age. Dragon Age Origins is a niche game. A Dragon lot of people, understandably, will not like that game. It's tough. It's difficult. It, you have it has like mechanics, and you have to think. And combat is tactical. And and then Dragon Age Two comes out, and again, it's not a bad game by any stretch. It's just like it's clearly not Dragon Age Origins. It's been super not at all generalized, and so it fantasy just, Mass it, Effect Two. <laughs> Darkest um, did great, and then they made another one. Kind of, in a way, Mass Effect they, survived this. Um, the, this sort of the, that that reputation hit. Mass I Effect think because hit. the style that Mass Effect was going with just works better for that kind of more sort of movie presentation type game. Whereas Dragon Age not being a CRPG and all of a sudden becoming a, a cinematic action game with some RPG elements just I don't know felt to me a little weird. Mm. I can't put my finger on why. Just hit a button, something cool happens. We have the button that you press, and something cool happens whenever you press it. Um, it was certainly more flashy, better animated. It's it certainly was cooler in that sense. Um, but I I could not tell you why Mass Effect One became Mass Effect Two, and people were super into it and they loved it, and Mass Effect Two's revered. I can't tell you why that worked and. Dragon Age Origins became Dragon Age 2, and that just was clearly instantly met with a lot of derision. I'm sure there's a reason, of course. I just don't know what that reason is off the top of my head. And I think it's because the the writing for Mass Effect 2 stayed so good. Yeah. And people were really, really keen on the characters, but they just didn't quite, they didn't connect with the Dragon Age 2 characters the way that they did with the Dragon Age Origins characters. And, and Dragon Age... Um, Dragon Age lost a lot of flexibility too. Like there, there was a lot you could do in Origins that that are, it, it just kind of felt like a lot of your choices in yeah. Dragon Age Two were like, eh. You can Dragon kind of Origins was a little, but like it's far from an open world game. It was quite shoehorny, mm -hmm. but Dragon Age Two felt even more so. Dragon Age Origins was able to hide itself, not in a dishonest way, but it didn't feel like it was. It's kind of like a Pokemon game. Right when you, you especially the early Pokemon games, you could just get you just download a, a look at a JPEG of the entirety of the world, and it's not really that big at all. And yeah, you look yeah. at it, you're kind of shocked at how small it is. Yeah, it, Dragon it, Age Two Dragon is Age. all in the city, right? 
pretty much the but vast it took place majority over of it three time periods i want to say it's been a long time since i played it but uh, you go to the same locations a lot in dragon age 2 you really get set fatigue in that game but you don't in mass effect 2 because you go to a lot of different places and i think yeah. that's probably one of the reasons and there's all the planets you can just mine on that sort of uh give you the illusion of the galaxy being even bigger than the places that think- you can explore Sort of, I don't think that fooled a lot of people, but the no, probe no, no, thing because no. the Mass Effect one, in, which is my favorite of the trilogy, the trilogy of the three games, you could go Mass down Effect and explore made. them. I could make sure only one more. more. No, no yeah. they stopped the three, but there, there was it was really fucking cool to even though the Mako driving <laughs> was let's just call it skill based gameplay. Um, it was <laughs> it was fun to, to just land on planets and then find things and roam around and get to pirate outposts. I get why people might not have liked that, but I I did like it. It did make the universe feel kind of big, and I also, did like its very RPG ness. Hello, Mister Critical. How do you do? Hola. It's a pleasure Hi, to be here. Hello. We're having why? ourselves a little conversation about difficulty in video games, gatekeeping, yeah. IPs, mainstream infecting. Genre, I don't know, lots of things. Money. Okay. It's all going on. If you want to scroll up in our little chat, you'll find a little Watch Together link and you can join us. We're uh, nearing the end of this video. (laughs) He doesn't care, by the way. Oh, right, of course. I'm waiting for Story to say that again, yeah. Spoiler alert, Jim doesn't care. The next time a publisher cancels a series because it's sold below expectations, you don't get to be pissed off. You're showing a game that... Yeah, like, this is the rebuttal that we use. Like, Mac but, yeah, dumping to, your own foot right now. To like. be clear, <laughs> Dead Space was a very no specific line. experience. People fucking loved it. They released a second one that I think stayed pretty strong to the original. There's a couple Absolutely. changes, a bit more action oriented, yeah. sure. Then the third one, it was like, whoa, you've you've been influenced by current trends, haven't you? And Ooh. the reason yeah. why the reason why they did that is because Dead Space Two, despite being a success by pretty much any reasonable standard, and didn't everyone sell well it. enough to justify the cost. And so Dead Space Three had to appeal to a broader audience, and in doing so, it appealed to a smaller audience because a lot of people who were formerly interested didn't show up. They didn't buy it. You're showing believe- a game. That tried to be more accessible and in died. terms of like appealing to a broader audience and died because of it. It was also, I believe, in the era where Andrew Wilson was the CEO of EA, and he his mandate to every team was basically, "How can you guys turn your property into FIFA Ultimate Team?" <laughs> and they're like, they go to um, no, not Motive's the one doing the remake. Uh, Redwood, stu- no, not Redwood. Shit, what's the oh, name of the Dead Space Studio? Visual. Sorry, they visceral, were visceral. Redwood. They were Redwood, but they, they were vis- Redwood. They yeah, they changed. Vis- oh, visceral, visceral. visceral. Now they are non-existent. Yeah, yeah. Remember, and uh, they're like, oh, I guess we can sell weapons. <laughs> like it well, just there, did it, not work. There's so much well. about it, but like I just remember because the opening sequence, you're like in a in a sci-fi city, right? And then you're just waking up, and then they t- they the tell school. you, you're, yeah, yeah. And, oh, and, and right, then no. just... three, three was on uh, the moon. You were on the moon, and then some guys bust in and just put. Yeah, and, and I remember the double take. Back. When it's like you have your machine gun type weapon, there's several chest high walls in the middle of this like series of yeah. roads, and you've got your enemies and like a, and I was like, is this Gears of War? What the fuck is going on? And the whole like, shit, I think, yeah. yeah, it was the whole stick of Dead Space is you don't kill the enemies by just blasting them with bullets. You need to disassemble them or like exactly. use yeah. around the environment used to throw at them, like stasis and whatnot. But they changed it to appeal to a broader audience and it failed. <laughs> I think around that time, co-op gameplay was a major yeah, trend, yeah, yeah. and yeah, EA Gears. in particular was really, really trying to push that because they put out that game Army of Two, I think. That, that was Army also of that game. game. Yeah, around the era of Resident Evil Five as well. Yeah, Resident exactly. Evil 5, yeah, well, it started to be really cool uh, to have a survival horror experience where you had to co-op with someone. It's like, yeah, yeah. there's nothing says horror like you know being with your mate and having a laugh <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I mean, in the case of Dead Space, where isolation is so key to yeah. that uh, that franchise, and then all of a sudden forcing co-op into it, well, it really didn't fit. Metroid. Imagine there's another oh, sound just running around. It's like so the atmosphere is <laughs> dead. Hey, it's like, not like other girls. Girls. And I just want to make sure because people are going to fucking straw man. It's not impossible. There are games that are built like, what's that one that people really like? Fan, Phasmagorium, something, Fan. Oh, uh, Phasmophobia? Yeah, it, Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia, that's yeah. the one, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're going to have two players, like, it's going to have to be, like, they have to be the super Star Wars vulnerable. Game? Yeah. Like, 
to, to make horror work, to make uh, like fear work in a situation like that, because otherwise, like, yeah, you've got nothing to work with. Yeah, I, I don't think Ryan you can escape the meta really good of there's another Fabio. person playing with you that you're talking with that exists outside of the game, and exactly. that is instantly just, it's so hard to get sucked into the game in the same way I think that, uh, if you're sitting there chatting with people. I think if you're alone, right, like being alone and nobody has you back, like yeah, that one of the key elements. can be enough. It's a really especially for that. Dead Space. It's why I was going to say Resident Evil, I think, got away with it a lot, a lot more cleanly than Dead Space did because Resident Evil 4 was pretty is straddling the line of being an action movie at that point like yeah. it, it was a it, much oh, more yeah. of a shooter and i thought five worked well enough i, I didn't like the on rails turn sequence close to an action movie honestly resident think, evil 4 no <laughs> i mean like it's i don't know it's still scary but you're doing a lot of fighting in it it's not well like, well, it I, well action in the sense of your the i guess in the sense that if you there's a lot of combat in it what about yeah, that yeah. Life part scene, but it's the like, whole like the the over the shoulder so camera just opened the up. The, it opened up a lot of combat options, and obviously the game wanted to take advantage of that because it was like the first time a Resident Evil game could do that kind of thing. And yeah. it was great at the time. It was a real innovative, you know, way of engaging right with now. Resident Evil. But it doesn't really lend itself so much to like survival horror and the sense of like, you know, slow paced kind of creepy isolation. Well, it's, definitely yeah. disagree. Look, the the big disconnect here is probably is. the fact that you. Drink your, correct me if I'm wrong, but you you were very familiar with Resident Evil's format before four came out, and then you were like, yes. "So this is a big change." And so when you think of survival horror in reference to Resident Evil, you're thinking of the format for one, two, and three versus Take four. Four choice. changed it to be much more action oriented. People consider Resident yeah, Evil four as then, a form of you know, death for Resident Evil as a, as a franchise. By the way, I, I I think so. But then you go back to like the the remake of Resident Evil two, where it's like, okay, they, that proved that you can still keep that classic formula of survival mm -hmm. horror with the over the shoulder like 3D environments it does work it's just like it's all about the pacing of the game and how much action you want to throw in how much combat you want to put in versus just exploration and an atmosphere i think and that's actually why i always thought that dead space was a really good post resident evil 4 game that it took that from camera style and even actually added the ability to move while shooting in a limited way at least in the original dead space and made it it would tone down there, or tuned it closer to horror, and made that work and have it still I mean, be scary. Well, it's also in conjunction with that. Yeah, the, the atmosphere would be the thing that helps as well. Just like Dead Space as a concept is pretty innately scary, I think. Yeah, uh, which is why like making it more action was morphs. like, hmm. dude, Dead Space's well, opening was fucking yeah. terrifying when I first played it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the greatest of ways. And, and I want to and be clear, in, I was scared by Resident Evil 4 when I first played it. A lot of people saying it's not scary. It's like, don't Joseph Anderson. Oh, me. the first time you see The Lost Plagas is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a spooky game, absolutely. Um, it became more and right, camp. And, 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 honestly, I've got such mixed five. feelings about RE4 because like, there's there's moments of genuine brilliance. Like the, the first time you... You you fight the Ganados in the village. It's like that's ah, brilliant. Oh, yeah. Like they're they're swarming you. They're everywhere. Like you're you're running for your life. Awesome stuff. The regenerators are the, still like the scariest. They, you know? the, yeah, <laughs> uh, they they're pretty cool. Yeah. But then you know you're you're walking around these enormous like um you know gothic castles and you're fighting like suits of armor that have been possessed by the, the there's a goof factor. Like, there there's, is a there's, goof. Yeah, the there's, there's, yeah. I, was, um, um, I think it, it, verges, more, it really gets close to like campy yeah, silliness. I don't even know if we've I've talked to you about this rags. I feel like it's something we probably should have talked about before, but like it was always an awareness that I found really odd because I started with Resident Evil Four for Resident Evil. That's where I started. And so when I when people tell me like Resident Evil Four fucked the franchise because they went a completely different direction and now it's all over the place, Resident Evil in terms of what game you expect next is the FPS like Which sort of sure side of the hell tree. RE4's fault. Well, so the funny thing for me was like Resident Evil 5 was 4 but diluted and worse. Resident Evil 6 was the crystallization of destroying that that branch, yeah. if you will. I was like, fuck, it's all it's yeah. all worthless now. Um, when other people are like, no, it was destroyed back at 4. And it's like, oh, okay. okay. I think they have a very, yeah, the idea. Yeah, it the... wasn't destroyed. Like, it was almost just... It's, uh, they learned the long... The, sorry, they learned the wrong lessons from RE4. Where it's like, yeah, like uh, you know, fair. it was it was that fluid kind of fast paced gameplay, and they're like, oh, brilliant! We just need more of that. We need more enemies. We need more action. We need more combat and more kind of linear environments to facilitate that. It's like, no, that's that's not what made the game work. And yeah, it was following Gears of five. War that uh, popularized the co op in that type of game too. Five it's was funny. the best selling Resident Evil, as far as I know. 
It's funny because that's basically copies. the approach that was taken to Resident Evil 3 back in the day on PS1. Like they saw Resident Evil 2, how well it did. And then it's like 3 needs more action. You start off with a machine gun. There's more zombies everywhere. You know, more, you're in the city. You're outside. There's more well, destruction. There's a dodge The idea button. that you're going to make an action game with like 2D pre-rendered environment. I know. It's <laughs> amazing that's looking back on that's it. That's some undertaking. <laughs> That's what Onimosha like, was the yeah, there's, probably there's, the the end state of that. There, there's a scene that always sticks with me. It's like when you're fighting the nemesis right at the very end. You shoot it with a railgun, and um, like it, it gets blown across the room. And like I don't know if it was the same for everyone, but like the the frame rate drops to like ten frames per second because like you can feel <laughs> the engine just groaning trying to move that many polygons around. <laughs> like, yeah, don't shoot you, you re- again, no. Yeah, <laughs> like I think you've reached the limits of what the PS1 can do for you, my friends. <laughs> yeah. I do looks because like... I don't want. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was just checking. It looks. I'm just going to scroll here. Resident Evil Five sold 13.4 million copies. Well, good. For, I actually yeah. uh, we've talked about this before. I've enjoyed Resident Evil Five every time I play. Oh, it's I usually it's enjoy fun it. to play. Yeah, it's a One fun co-op game end. to this. Day. It's, it's a fun to play. One For those who don't know, there's a full like... playthrough of it on Moolah with me and Rags. We hated yeah, the yeah, last Chris sections. Redfield is <laughs> honestly Chris Redfield at his most jacked. Oh yeah, Sheva Almar too. Punch them boulders, boys. Shut yeah. One of the yeah. If you, if you played game. Resident Evil 1, like the very original one, and then thought, like, <laughs> it's going to end up this yeah. with, like, Chris Redfield fighting Albert Wesker in a fucking <laughs> volcano. Okay, okay. okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, at the top of his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone ever How doubted we... that Resident Evil was anime? Play Resident How Evil. Did we <laughs> It Come seems on. like you can segment them into like trilogies in terms of yeah. style now. Yeah. Like the yeah. first three yeah. are their own thing, four I, to I six are guys, over the show. Sorry, did, go ahead. did you guys any ever play the the Revelations games? Yep. I yeah. didn't. Wait, I did actually, I only played the first one. Actually, not the second. I really like the second one. I I was gonna say uh, I've I've got a real soft spot for the second one. I think it's uh, it tries to balance that you know that new like over the shoulder combat heavy gameplay but like pairs it back quite a bit and brings in a bit more survival elements to it like ammo's quite scarce you've got to be quite tactical about how you do things and there's there's kind of like attempts to like give you a bit of like scary horror and suspense and i Mm -hmm. I kind of like that game as a a little self-contained resident evil that was a little bit more restrained than some of the stuff we'd had before then yeah and the riot mode in that game is really fun i think it's called riot mode Okay, but who has played Is Resident like Evil Survivor on the PS1? Nope. I've I played that. <laughs> I just watched a video on it and it I still seems have my funny. original copy. <laughs> well, did you guys play the mobile game Resident Evil Blades? <laughs> That's not <laughs> many of them made. The next time a publisher cancels a series because it's sold below expectations, you don't get to be pissed off. I do it's because I don't, I don't Oh, it's uh, it's echoing on Drinker, by the way. But yeah, uh, just we've we've said it already. It's just fucking wonderful that Jim has managed to turn one of the most famous examples of a game going mainstream and stopping into it's your fault if you like. <laughs> or it was just like yeah, I don't want games to be exclusive to just me. Because just before I move on, Dead Space Two didn't meet expectations for sales because of non no it, it's marketing budget and the game production budget because you look at the second game compared to the first it is clearly a more expensive game and yeah, no, you, it you, just didn't sell enough to justify the the cost of it correct me if i'm wrong but we usually i mean this is what i remember my take being but it's been so long since i played them now i'm assuming uh, i don't know if i would change but uh the dead space 2 mechanically is smoother and more like uh, oh absolutely. yes, absolutely. Like yeah, absolutely. very yeah. noticeably. Yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Dead Space One had the benefit of just—I felt like it had the better experience for the horror specifically. Yes, yes. It's almost yeah, like in Bioshock, so. doesn't it? But of course, oh, yeah. A little bit. Bioshock has like yeah. the same yeah. the same thing going on. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I, I I'd put Bioshock right. 2's atmosphere up there with the first Bioshock. I think they did a great job replicating Rapture a second time. But I guess Bioshock it's... 2 on the Steam Deck, it's actually holds up to, quite well in train mode. The first Bioshock holds up really well. Um, it's got wait. that style. You well, know? I fucking it's adore that game. Be... <laughs> it's... I love oh, Bioshock. It's, it's kind of cool. One We've been talking favorites. about these games. Resident Evil 4, Bioshock, Dark Souls. Like These are three of our favorite old type games. It's just like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Those games are, they, they, they oh, have aged like a fine wine.
the it's atmosphere. This is what we say about movies as well. It's like, damn, we didn't realize how good we had it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> hey, but get gooders don't get to. That sort of discussion is, uh, how would you say, not for you. Why, why do you think that, do you think every person who says you should get better at Dark Souls thinks that every game needs to have Dark Souls difficulty? Because I don't think they do, I don't think anyone does, because that shit would be exhausting. Yeah. Oh yeah. And saying yeah, get good also it's... isn't saying quit. Exactly, it doesn't, yeah, you're right. Yeah. If, if they said don't play the game, they'd say don't play the game, they, but they don't, they say you need to practice, you need to get better. I've seen, yeah, I've seen these discussions so many times, like not so much with Dark Souls because I wasn't so much into that, but like with Elden Ring, um, yeah, very much along those lines of like it's it's insanely hard. I'm really pissed off. I, I don't want to play this anymore. And then people are just like, look, this is why you, like these games are meant to be challenging. Like if you if you don't want that, if you don't want the kind of frustration of having to retry something multiple times, like yeah, it's probably not for you. But like if you want to do it, you're going to have to put the effort in and get better at it. Mm, yeah. that's, that's not bad. That's not a bad thing to say to a person. And well, like, I think, didn't Az say like he was going to quit and then he got emboldened because he didn't like the idea that there was like monsters he couldn't kill and then he ended up fucking playing the shit out of the game. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think nice. uh, I, I've been on a similar emotional journey. <laughs> that game. I think Where Az found like, like a new katana or something like that and then he, he started like building more like yeah. a samurai with bleed and he's like, oh, <laughs> this game rocks. I'm not quitting this game after all. It's just, it is one of those things where it's like you get out of it what you put into it, and it's like you have to put in the effort. And like ultimately, it will become, you know, easier, it'll become more rewarding, and it opens up a lot more possibilities for you. And yeah, it's, it's, you get a sense of accomplishment when you progress through it um, that you don't get with other games, which kind of hold your hand and just like they're basically like interactive cutscenes essentially. Yeah, but you know, like different games for different people, I suppose. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm all in favor of games Pretty like much. this being challenging as fuck. Diluting it, your game. The to argument that people that Jim, like Jim, would make is that, well, you've still got normal mode. You can just play that, and then easy mode's there, and people can play easy mode, and then they can enjoy that. But the temptation, I think, would be too great. Like if oh, you yeah. lose a couple times on normal mode, to just go to the easy mode. I think we've got a lot of very you know realistic what, problems. I tell you what, you, you know what pisses me off the most <laughs> in games where it's like you die a few times, and the game itself suggests. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we were talking. Like, we we, 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 we have that arc. <laughs> I like that. That's just proof. That's a uniquely understood thing. You're just like, yes, yeah, you yeah. hate that. Everyone gets it. What, what I, I am like more than capable of humiliating myself. I don't need your help. <laughs> Thank you very much, game. I have Chad right there. They're telling me I'm shit every time. It's fine. <laughs> yes. And what I like. What I like about the Souls games is that in, the game wants you to go into that game with a certain mindset of, like, caution. And it's the type of game that actually encourages you to walk. Like, a lot of games don't really do that. It's just everybody just runs everywhere. Like, if, if, if Dark Souls, this any Souls game, had a, an easier mode, I would be tempted to just run around and be like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter, I'll just fuck around. But, like, because it's as hard as it is, and it it's all working simpatico with like the the dark atmosphere like the big you know foreboding castles and you know lightning or whatever if the environment has that it's like you're thinking oh shit i i gotta be careful here like that's part of the experience and getting your ass kicked is thematically relevant that's that's basically <laughs> dark souls one in a nutshell like what the game yeah. asks of you isn't much other than you know get off the methamphetamine and calm the fuck down manage that and you will realize that pretty much everything you're staring down is extremely beatable yeah mm -hmm. is, uh, how would you say not for you diluting your game to cynically chase every conceivable demographic just makes a game watered down shit so how what? come you're using or... this image now hey, that then, hey. So, but... so i'm a does, little bit yeah i'm a little bit yeah can we let him play a little longer? I guess I'm a little like, wait, what? You. Uh, okay. Diluting your game to cynically chase every conceivable demographic just makes a game watered down shit. Adding but. some features that bring new audiences. You oh, motherfucker, you, you're you conflating the two. Uh, you conflated yeah. them. Yeah. He did it again. He did it again with this image. This is you're the second cheating. time. That's Everyone cheating. owes regs a beer. Yeah, you're cheating. <laughs> That's just spirits. I I can't I can't do it, guys. We said I Dead can't. Space Three is like that. the best example of what he's advocating for. That he says well, no, it's no, okay Dead to Space have accessibility options, as if that's what people hated about Dead Space Three or something. Like ah, 
this damn colorblind <laughs> mode. Shame you ruined that everything. That game is savable. <laughs> oh, Dead Space Three is such a savable game. It's not even a bad game. It's just oh, you didn't. Oh, it's not there. Also, hi CJ. How you doing? Hello. Hello, hi, gamers. Whoa. Oh, you said yeah. the G word. Oh my God. Uh, he said it lovingly. Hello, gamers. Hello, I'm here, gamer. and How I'm ready do? to get cancelled. Let's do this, boys. We, <laughs> we found the right group. Since it's been a while now, and I don't want everyone scrolling up constantly, I will repost that Watch Together link, so it's easier for people to access. There you go. So nice. Exact ass bad. We're currently no worries. on the topic I'm already of... in, because I'm a smart I'm oh a my. smart boy. Oh my. Let us, well, since we're getting close to the end, because I'm looking forward to the, the video after this, it's thematically related. Ooh. Be funny. ...in to join your existing oh. one, however, oh. is basically good business. Part of the reason the AAA industry is in such a slump that it, I got really angry at that bit. I got, I, is I it in a slump? It was, it, it, well, this was made like in, in a slump. 20, was this 19, I think this video 19. came out. Mm -hmm. I don't... Hasn't the industry been making more money year on year, which is the metric so. that seems to be really relevant? It's I don't know why he's bringing up the fucking... Like the... The gaming industry probably in 2020 and 2021 probably would have made a shit ton of money. I would have thought so, yeah. yeah. You've oh got a captive audience, COVID literally. People inside, yeah. That thing at least a hundred billion dollar industry now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the wait, best wait. thing in the world to have an Animal Crossing. <laughs> well, it's why this shit happens. There's so much money to be Animal made. Crossing He's... is an easy mode, though. <laughs> Do you see the problem? He's like simultaneously advocating that, like, you know, it's that they can make more money if they appeal to more people. And then it was like, and look at Dead Space Three. That's what happens when you. You're like, well, I'm so lost. <laughs> like, what's... Dead Space Three is an example for both sides of a dichotomous proposition, which is interesting to see in a video. Yeah. Is this on industry? Part of the reason the triple I industry. I love this movie, by the way. The the Scrooge McDuck. Uh, it's great. And, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a classic. The Christmas Carol one. Yeah, Christmas Carol. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, good. Yeah, the ending really scared me. I, when I, was I wanted to enjoy it. But <laughs> yeah. How do those glasses stay on the beak? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is true. Yeah. Not anatomically possible, sir. I'm writing a big right, old it does suck. Beak six physics. hour video no, on this it, scene. No, oh, it makes. <laughs> It does Sorry, make sense. Movie Bob will pick you up on this one more. <laughs> yeah, he will. Scrooge oh McDuck is so greedy, he creates a gravitational pull that keeps the glass. <laughs> I just want you to know that all Scottish people are like him, by the way. You <laughs> fucking hate parting with money. Oh, sorry, Bill. Is not Beak. My bad. Bill, Such a slump yeah. is that it designs games to appeal only to people who already buy their games. That's why Fuse turned out shit, focus tested wank that it was. Uh. And this. It's really yeah, uh, it's, it's so bonnet yeah, and by the way, he's oh, like a bunch of static images. Really, really this engaging. We kept talking. That's what our main argument's been throughout all of this. Really, is like we don't want it to be focus tested sludge that gets ruins the original intentions of the IP and the experience everyone's hunting when they follow the IP. And then he's like using all these examples, like, "Ah, oh, we don't want this." You're like, "Wait, hang on. Whose team are you on again? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Where have you been t ten minutes ago in your video? What's what's happening?" This is why, rather than find ways to expand their audience, publishers use. One of the things that's interesting too is that this whole expanding your audience is that the gaming audience is just always expanding because there are more people being born, more people becoming part of the industry. Yeah. Um, so chasing a, you don't have to necessarily change a game in order to get a broader audience. I mean, a lot of it's marketing, a lot of it's just finding how to get those people to discover the game in the first place. I mean, it's yeah. weird that. Dead Space 2 didn't sell well enough for the budget, and so Dead Space 3 was their attempted solution to that. Instead of scaling things down and yeah. reconsidering market strategies and things, they were just like, mm. no, we're going to keep the super high budget action, but we're just going to dial it up even further and make it more generic in that aspect. I was going to ask yeah. about this, right? I know this is a slight tangent, and I don't want to derail from this video, so I'll make it quick, but... Um... Yeah, one of the things that I've posited in, in recent years is like, because they're much like with um, movies and TV shows and stuff, like there's such a massive choice now. Um, games designers, it, it, it almost feels like they have to like signpost everything for the players and make it as easy as possible, like generally speaking, because if they don't, players will just get frustrated and pissed off and just like move on to a different game instead. The slightest mm, sort of hindrance will get them to Yeah, quit. is that what influences game design at this point? Like, because, you know, 
20, 30 years ago, like you invested the money in a game and there wasn't a huge amount of new releases every month to choose from. So you would kind mm. of put the time and effort into just mastering the game, like even if there was frustrations there. But like now is it just a different gaming environment? Is it like, now this like this is the game I bought this month? This is my monthly or bi weekly yeah. game that I bought. I, oh, I'm going to stick yeah. with it. And it, it, it's Maybe. just like. If if it gets too frustrating, if I'm held up for too long, am I just going to say fuck it? I just don't care about this anymore. I'm going to move on to something else. And so it has to be like made easy enough that you always move on to the next objective. You always know where you need to go, and you can always like reload as quickly as possible. If you get well, it might be an aspect that most people who quit games probably quit them very early in their playthrough or their their, their play time. I bet of all the people who quit a game, most quit within the first hour. Um, or two hours, like exponentially more people quit. Really I was going to say, the if the I, developers I only... fancy themselves storytellers too, they also just want you to get through their whole story. So it's like, oh, we want to make sure yeah. they beat it, so let's make sure it's 10 hours and Treating super easy. The, 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 best one I can, I can, the best one I can liken it to is like, because it's like the longest running series I can think of, is something like Tomb Raider, where the, the new games that I've played we're very much like you've got a waypoint that you follow that literally tracks you to exactly where you need to go at all times. And like once you get there, it's pretty obvious what you need to do. Like the game's literally like holding your hand. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you, mm. you compare that to the older titles, it was like you, you were very much just left to figure things out, you know, by yourself. Um, there was no particular direction about where you needed to go. It was kind of up to you. And I just think, you know, is that that philosophy now just gone because people aren't willing to put that time in to figure things out. I think it comes a lot from pretty much the majority of, I guess, AAA games at this point being really embarrassed or frustrated by the fact that they have to be games. Yes! Yeah. Yep. Mm, you're yep. so yep. right. They've, they felt like over the last <laughs> decade, there's been this sort of... um, It was, it was kind of like coincides with the push for more cinematic games. And um, a lot of, uh, it's felt at the time, a lot of press heralding these games. As, I mean, damn, Bioshock Infinite. It seemed like an era when, when a lot of people were embarrassed about making video games or being interested in talking about video games that it needed to be like a push towards more cinematic, games as I guess, art. broadly appealing experience. Yeah, well, ignoring the fact that games do. have always been art yeah. forever since the beginning yeah. of time. And the well, games Bioshock the Infinite and Last of Us 1 were within a month of each other, I think, or a couple of uh, months. They, it, they were quite close. Yeah, that was definitely the year that seemed to kick it off. And also, man, it was not, yeah. also ignoring the fact that making games that way as art is directly going against what makes games compelling as an art form, and that they yeah. are the only ones yeah. that have direct I like my games gamey. Mm. Yeah. Soma doesn't work as a film. It doesn't get to do what it was doing as well as a film. Um, I think Soma would make a hell Whereas of a Whereas you, you think of... Think... Uh... Oh, go for it. Uh, I think that a lot of the quandaries it poses to you would not yeah, as, be as strong. Sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be as good. Mm. I, think it, I still think it'd make a really good film. I, yeah, I, mm. I agree that we would be watching someone yeah. do the things instead of doing the things, and I think that game is a unique way of making you do the things. It's very, very good. I completely agree yeah. with you, but... I... If we're talking less so about the meaning of it and more so about the I, I, I think it's a great fucking idea what they have for, for a story to be told sure. in it. That's all. Like the I movie I, I envision would be the, everything up to where the player wakes up to make a movie out of that. I guess, yeah. To, to rephrase, yeah. It being a game, it has access to you in a way that a film doesn't rather than Soma wouldn't work as a film. Yeah. It's all the adaptation stuff, right? Like, if Bioshock were adapted, it's not going to be one-to-one -one with what the game is. In fact, we might want to see mm -hmm. the fall of Rapture as, as opposed to what the game is. I mm. would love to have seen what Gore Verbinski's Bioshock would have been. <laughs> oh, well, well we got did, the TV um, show, right? Yeah. Well, we've got the Netflix one to look forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm less I'm less excited about yeah, that. Yeah, the guy, the guy the being pile. fresh off doing the ring and then demanding that he get funding for an R-rated Bioshock movie. And I think it, I forget who it was. I think it was Universal. Was like, nah, it's too expensive. You got to make it PG thirteen, and then he bailed. Yes. 
use monetization to squeeze more money out of a stagnant audience pool. Yes, yeah, I have yeah, officially yeah. tied even the pool. easy mode debate back to Not microtransactions. Why That's why I'm so <laughs> fucking good at this job. I don't just respect um, the lack of an easy mode in Sekiro. Very, very I am impressed by its boldness, the same way I was impressed that Nier Automata doesn't reveal the true scope of its narrative until you've beaten it twice. Doing that I is a huge risk in an industry way. where making as much money as possible is the only goal of mainstream publishers. That's I fucking mean, you're sure as hell I, I, using I, monetary gain in order to make some of these arguments. I was gonna say, so. I'm not sure yeah. whose point mm. that even assists. I don't even know, like, I'm just like, okay. What Sekiro's done is admirable. But even with that in mind, if Sekiro had an easy mode, I just wouldn't care. Yes, I don't believe you, you would. I That's what this whole video modern. was. <laughs> In fact, you've espoused that it is better, that it is yeah. undeniably better if games try to appeal to a broader audience. Yeah. Because his goal is that the most that amount of people going. have fun. And I'm telling you, you don't care you over don't and care. over and over and over and over again. The more, you, the more you say it doesn't make it more convincing. Exactly. Yeah, he has this you don't care as far as he wouldn't use it. That's Any man fine. who must say, I don't care, clearly cares. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, as Tywin would say. He really does seem to be going against himself now in this video. This is yeah, this portion is strange. <laughs> like, yeah. How Why this gets snuck in. Why should anyone? Anyway, see you for this discussion in another three years, I guess. But you don't care. Fuck. I thought you don't care. <laughs> You're already planning on caring into the future, but you don't care now. Keep scaling to Bobbin. Fuck you. Anyway, I realize there's a measure of irony in me emphasizing how little I care. <laughs> oh! oh you don't say, oh, Jim. You know that there's you irony say. kept it in the video. <laughs> This level. This is the part yeah. where you. This is the part you realize it and you go, "Oh shit, I have to rewrite that other <laughs> section because that's really fucking ironic." Or it's just like, "Fuck it, I'll just put it on the end that I'm self-aware, so it doesn't count as a criticism." Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. If it's self-aware, it's it's fine. About the debate while doing a twenty-minute video that shows I care on some level, and I do, I do care on some level. Uh, what? what? <laughs> oh, no. so, then, so are you? So you're just lying? What was the point of like, all that? Even know. It's literally stream of consciousness. Like, yeah, like yeah. whatever this pops is, into yeah. his head at any one moment, he would just say it. I don't care about easy modes in games. I don't much care for the cyclical discussion about difficulty. You've made it's multiple videos! I don't care about the cyclical discussion. You plan one, one, to make years. more videos. He's <laughs> yeah. excited, yeah, that you plan on making more in the He's future. made videos on this topic this year! Yes, correct. Yes, sure has. Up for Elden Ring. Show. Sonic the Hedgehog doesn't care about what's on that computer screen. Take cues from Sonic the Hedgehog. Stop <laughs> don't lying. It. Ignore it. Be like you don't Sonic. Don't care in as far as you find it frustrating, which means you do care. Be like, like, like you're, you're missing language, Jim. Language. There's not you, wrong words. <laughs> Using the wrong words. <laughs> It's a cycle, it goes on and on, but very much like the game industry- Is he itself. really quiet all of a sudden? Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. So as yeah. you can see, I yeah. had an outro, a closing Wait, statement, what? all uh, recorded, well, it's and, it's and it was choice. talking about how reductive it is talking to over himself. Speak of, from software games in terms of only difficulty. But right at the last minute, I was compelled to say something else. Uh, something that a few hardcore gamers, if they've gotten this far, will find blasphemous. Insulting. Oh, yeah. And I'm quite okay. certain when I say okay. this, a I'm certain started. subgroup of hardcore gamers will take it out of Get context forever. Fuck me, what are you- what's the point? <laughs> so, so instead of just I got a minute, I'm interested. It, I, I need a minute for this. I fucking hate this with video. <laughs> Get yeah. on with it. Get on with so, it. What he did was he recorded something, and then that was a okay, I guess. And then later, afterwards, he decided what he said needed to be changed or amended potentially and so instead of changing it he put in this section about why would you do this incorporating the past material when it was totally Voiced unnecessary over bullshit, and so he just like recorded himself saying complete nonsense and <laughs> used the like just faded out the audio we need a we need a lip reader here to see what he was actually saying in that original video. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just I'm, I'm checking my watch. I want the point already. You know? Is it? Like, as soon as he's saying you, uh, just to yeah, highlight I, again. For fucking, I get made fun of this all the time, right? Like nobody edits your scripts. Nobody's doing anything for your pacing. So I was like, 
Why would you, as Rise kind of put it out, you, you took the time to record that whole segment, and then you realized in post, man, what a stupid segment. I'll let it play to then talk over it as it fades away to talk about how I shouldn't have made that section and instead made this one. Instead of just doing the section. Yeah, what instead is of just the point doing of a different, this? yeah. Uh, is it because I, he thought, wow, that, that was really fucking good material. I, w I don't want that to go to waste, except for the part where I literally can't even play the part that I said. I think that's Maybe. exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a bit of mm. narcissism. Uh, it's just like, I, think I, I, I was wrong here, but the material is so good. I got to keep it in. Any or like, I no. still stand by it, but I have to um, do like, it's almost, it's so oh, noncommittal. I think it's simpler than that. <laughs> I think it's just that he had the live action footage of himself, didn't want to get all dressed up in his little suit and corset top hat again. So he's just like, okay, so I'll just have the video of the original conclusion I made playing, but then I'll fade it out and do kind of an artistic zoom into a space skybox and then do the actual conclusion voiceover. That way I don't have to get dressed. Right, it's yeah. It's going to be blasphemous to, I don't know, me apparently. Just, you know, just tell me. <laughs> And to each other so they can get off on what a not real up, gamer I it. am. So here goes. I don't play video games to be challenged. Not technically, not on a mechanical you will die. Honestly, so okay. if someone said like what is the fundamental okay. for you when it comes to video games, that's gonna be one of the first thoughts I'll have. Yes, I'll be like, yeah. Maybe the first. To to experience some kind of a challenge, either by the game or the game presents me with a way to impose challenges upon myself with a set of rules. <laughs> If you don't want a challenge, just watch a movie. Like, or watch a Let's Play. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, what do you play. expect to get out of it otherwise? What a weird... Yeah. Oh, also, hi, Cap. How you doing? <laughs> Hello. Oh, hey, man. Hi. Hey, Cap. Cap, why do you Hello. play video games? Yeah. I, I like that I can play games on my phone when I'm bored. And... But why do you play video games? <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he found that question challenging. Very right, well, There's a link to the watch together if you want to join. Is us. there an easy mode for that question? There's an easy mode for EFAP. The truth, I suppose. This yeah. <laughs> this the easy mode for EFAP two times speed. Also, yeah, by mode. the way, don't play games for a challenge. Why are you going to play Little Hope? Go enjoy that fucking game. Oh my god. <laughs> In, play Disco Elysium, I guess. That game's not challenging. Little Hope. Oh wait, that was the I mean, there's, Dark there's, Pictures one, right? There's yeah, more people gotten out of games mm. than just challenge, though. It's the experience of playing it. Sometimes you just want a power fantasy, also, like playing God of, like playing God of War three on easy mode and just fucking everything up. Yeah, that's why I said like that would be one of my first thoughts, but it certainly doesn't encompass all the reasons I play video games. I, yeah. I understand that. Like, I, but to 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 open with like I don't play games for the challenge. It's like really Ever? you're wiping that yeah, cool, out a lot of people do so i can tell you one thing for sure people in large part play souls games for the challenge yeah and he's been saying this whole video that he does play the souls games and he he doesn't want easy modes in them so I, dude I'm do you just not... really like the way the graphics look in that game yeah i'm not willing to make any like huge criticism of him with this one i just i just wonder why he plays souls games if he's not particularly after a challenge it, it seems makes inherent to the medium to me. Like there needs to be at least a tiny, tiny bit of a challenge, which is still a challenge. So I hope Jim answers his own question of why exactly he's playing these games. I don't know don't what else he's getting out of it. Caveat for him to like, enlighten us. It's, it's <laughs> not that the Souls games are just challenge, but challenge is a large part of what they are, even if they're not the most challenging things in the universe. Yeah. So. Mm. And that that's certainly how they exist in the discourse. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the mainstream discourse around Souls games, but th their reputation is the hard games where you learn the patterns. That's mm. that's what they are to people. Mm. Well, I play them for the yeah. story. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> but the, genuinely, when someone says that, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> I have trouble you believing you. atmosphere, I would, you know, there's sure. something to that. I would like, also concede okay. that plenty of people would like to enjoy this stuff, but like most of them are like, I'll wait until someone makes a video. Yeah. No, I understand, yeah. I mean, I play Tribal Hunter for the plot. A plot. That's why I play it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, lost. That's I, fine, no need I play to Mario for the plot. Yeah. Level. Challenging games can be fun, of course, but they're usually fun for many other reasons, not just because they're challenging. I've been like, playing video games since this is just the laziest. I was gonna say what? Thing. Yeah. Well, what even the point? Yeah. Gonna be lazy editing. It's nothing I else. I would like to know at least in brief what reasons. 
Yeah. And, well, Commodore 64 cassettes were still sold in WH Smith. Hell, WH Smith was still a thing. Is it still a thing? I haven't been to the UK in ages. Anyway, I played it Dizzy Prince of the Young Folk. You can yeah, Google it real quick, find out. It is no, still a thing. <laughs> Yeah. Call the Commodore, I played Gremlins 2 on the NES, why not? But it wasn't until the late 90s came along and the UK got Final Fantasy 7 and uh, not all that long we after we got Metal Gear. I, I don't know, know. know what's happened again. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? What is this? <laughs> Get on that. with it. This is why like, you can edit, but like, it's you have to do it well. Like Freaking This video is clearly edited. But it's not this good. Is, I, yeah, like, I think... this, is, uh, this is voiceover, so it's not like he's doing this off the cuff, presumably. He's got a script, but it's like, where is this I don't know. Going? This is a temp, this an attempt at a weird, like, like Tim and cuff. Eric type thing of just here, like, oh, here. look at how random this is that I'm doing with this edit. I think what he did was he sat down at his computer and he was finalizing this and he was editing it and putting it together. And as he was doing that, he listened to himself saying that thing earlier, realized at this point that maybe that would ruffle feathers or do something that he didn't like. So all of this, this that he's doing is being done with Vegas open in a way and he, he wasn't planning on doing it. And so I think this part is off the cuff that he's doing now. He sat down at his computer to edit, to to edit visually everything, caught something he didn't like that he said earlier, and instead of going back and changing it or getting back in the outfit, he was and it doesn't even it's not even a full outfit. He just he doesn't have he doesn't even have to put a pants on or anything. But he was like, no, nah, I'll just do, I'll just fix it right here, and I'm not even going to get up. I mean, he's got like he's got another three minutes, so maybe he can tie all this together into some like like cohesive argument <laughs> but like uh, i'm struggling so far like he just seems to be meandering between different like perspectives on this how do you make a like short a video and then got a meander. chance to appreciate that hey video games can have something to say video games can have intricate stories with lots of different plot threads right and lots of different yeah. themes and that's why i yeah. truly love Games can have something to say immediately defaults to stories. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> They're, they are games. <laughs> they can say something to you through the game part of that the game. That is very true. Yep. God mm. fucking damn it. <laughs> games, because they can be so many things. I play Final Fantasy VII for the story. I played Metal Gear Solid for the wild characters and the... You want to make a point? I'm still what wondering about the what video games. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Metal, one of the things you're... that makes Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear, good is the ways in which it uses gameplay to tell its story in it some, some ways that are kind of unconventional. It had pretty and if revolutionary you play Metal stealth Gear... mechanics for its time. I was about to say, yeah. I'm not even like a Metal Gear Solid player person, but I'm like, man, so when there's not a crazy character on the screen, you're just like, what, fucking around, waiting for the next crazy character to show up? <laughs> But you get things like Otacon when you're in the prison cell giving you a bottle of ketchup. And then you can figure out that you can use the bottle of ketchup to fake that you've killed yourself so that the guard comes in and then you can escape that way. It, it doesn't just show you that in a cinematic. It lets you figure that out and play it. You know, yeah. it's, not, it's not just that there's a cool story. There's more to it. interesting anti-war themes. I play Silent Hill for the dread atmosphere. I play Saints Row to be immersed in an open world of constant- It's funny because we brought this up about all these different it's IPs, funny. right? What if their sequels, yep. they then were like, oh, you dread an atmosphere? We want to reduce that a bit. We want people to be a little bit less freaked out by Too it. Too appeal to a larger Too audience. Yeah. Mm. And you can do that with yeah, any of these the, aspects. The average the, human is afraid of atmosphere and dread. So the we diluting when... of an IP, basically. And then when Sterling says, oh, that's publisher mandate, the developer said, no, that's our, no, we yeah, want to do that. Yeah. Nobody told us to do that. EA actually told us to keep it the same way, and we disagreed. Now what do you do? Because <laughs> exactly. developers never get it's any a, blame. Like it's always the publishers who catch the blame. I played Red Dead Redemption 2 for the impressive writing and the amazing vocal performances. And challenge Why are you playing the gameplay? Really? Really? Film. But <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 has like a lot of stuff between all that. So it does feel like... exactly. It's like the Metal Gear Solid thing. How many I'm gonna be honest with you. Are there out there? I played it for his vocal performance. If I said, yeah, if I said I played like good about the game, but like, why would that be the first thing you go for? That's right. It's so weird to be like, oh, GTA, fucking love GTA 5. Oh yeah, great, great, great. It's mainly the voice acting I'm in it for though.
Like, really? Like, really? Yeah. like four of the romance that. story. <laughs> struggle through all of this gameplay in order to get to the things I really want. That sounds how it feels. Like you are pushing through the gameplay to get to the stuff of real substance when for a lot of people the gameplay is the substance. Games are so fucking embarrassed of their gameplay. Like they they don't yeah. want to be associated with they don't want to put any effort into it. None of them mm. are, care at all about actually realizing the fantasy they're presenting through the gameplay because the gameplay is just the inconvenient vehicle through which the story is to be delivered and we can't make it too inconvenient or rather else people are going to get really annoyed you know like rather yes. than the means by which the story is conveyed you can do so many really cool things because the player has direct interaction with the events going on they are a participant rather than an audience member sounds exhausting <laughs> Just tell me how I need to feel. <laughs> no, <laughs> please. <laughs> See what Jim's got to say before he blinks out of existence. Make those games more. more interesting, more fun, but challenge on its own isn't all that compelling to me. It's not. You sure about that? And who cares? I don't believe this, this I don't believe video you. is a fucking challenge. Who cares? You play Souls games. I don't believe you. I don't, but like, who, who cares? I don't even know. Like, what, what if I just made the exact same video and said, you know, oh, vo vocal performances on their own just aren't that compelling to me? <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> what bearing, yeah, what bearing does exactly. this have on the point yeah. that you're trying to make here? I don't understand. Nature, yeah, what's the point? Like, whether games want to have difficulty. If you don't care about difficulty, I don't even believe that, really. But like, given mm -hmm. that you've spoken about it for 30 minutes. Like um, people who say they don't care like about Like whole generations of, of arcade gamers played games like Pac-Man or, or, or fucking Space Invaders. They didn't Asteroids. play them for the story. You know, they played them for the challenge. There was something deeply compelling about that. Like yeah, that, beating the high score the other score. guy. Yep. So oh, when, I, when I hear him talk about all of this stuff here, I remember earlier when he said, I wouldn't be tempted for an easier mode for a boss that I couldn't beat. And I, I wouldn't do all these things. Mm. And then I hear him right now I saying, I oh, I don't even play games for challenge. It's like, I just, I didn't believe you before, but now I really don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. My degree of disbelief has increased. Yeah. Agreed. Silly. I don't play games at all. Gatekeep what video games can and cannot be enjoyed. What oh, video games? No, I don't. I don't think they do. That's I don't think that anyone's kept. gatekeeping what games can and cannot be enjoyed. People Literally. are saying that don't take this game that is enjoyed by all of us for this reason, and I and then dilute it into something else so that people who didn't play the game before will now play the game. Once again, it's kind of by some people. And those people often seem unhappy. They seem like they don't oh, actually okay. like right. Oh, who hurt <laughs> okay. you? Who oh, hurt God. you? You know, you just. These people are unhappy. They're angry. They do this with all, us. It's on like, the, oh. With EFAP, right? Like when people post any of it, they're just like, man, they must not have lives at all to spend one day talking to their friends all day. That must be yeah, so. That's... Like per week, you know, that must be. You must have not have lives. It's like, what are you talking about? Not even yeah, you believe that that's true. Yeah. Why are you saying this? Yeah. You're like, well, they're saying it to try to denigrate you. That's all. They're just trying to make you look like a, a, yeah, a these worse people are just person. unhappy. Yeah, imagine, in, imagine time caring I'm, about something. I was keeping my next time I'm meeting up with friends. Like, I can only stay for an hour. Otherwise, people think I don't have a life. I'm sorry. We'll just bring a pot <laughs> of grass with you so you can touch that while talking to him. And you should. Be yeah, fine. yeah. Video games. I know when I like things, I enjoy sharing them. I think oh. that one quote near the top of the show said it best. <laughs> I hate games. And I'm not saying you hate games if you like challenge and you play games primarily to be challenged, but there are lots of other valid reasons to get into and enjoy and love games. Who are you talking play all the to? Games. Yeah. Who are you talking yeah. to? Yeah. Play <laughs> games that aren't about then. Uh, the, 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 no one, fuck off then. Go no play one is saying games. that narrative games need much more difficult modes or we won't ever play them. Do you remember um, Play Civ 5, put it on print, steamroll the map. How, do, do you remember how the, the post people? about the Batman where someone said, you know, I, I couldn't enjoy it, there just weren't anywhere near enough jokes in it? Like, legit, there was a tweet where someone was saying that, and it was just like, what the fuck? Marvel oh, has poisoned yes. you. <laughs> like, you can't. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, it's too dour. There wasn't enough jokes. It's like, go watch a funny movie then. Fuck. Yeah. People were saying that about Dune as well, I remember. Yeah, was, I think so. Dune didn't have enough jokes, yeah. Just, just, as I was out. walking out of the theater, I heard, yeah, the action scenes were okay, I guess, but it wasn't as good as a Marvel movie, and I was like, oh. Did you oh, no. <laughs> shoot me. That's become oh. the benchmark now. Uh, mm. Pain. Your pain. But, um, how many people do you think play 16. the Souls games on like only for the challenge and not for everything else, like 
the atmosphere and other aspects of the gameplay, like like in Elden Ring, the exploration and the rewards you get for kind of going, oh, there's a cave. I'm gonna, you know, h- h- roughly like how many people do you think play it just for the challenge? I would probably say it's a majority because what, of the reputation the games have. Is it worth saying people, I think the majority play it primarily for the challenge? Because I certainly do, but I'm still there for the other bits and bobs. I like the, the, yeah, only you know, the is a strong yeah. word. environments, the music, the uh, all the little tids, tidbits about the environment. In terms of you can learn about what happened in this world, even just like the vocal performances. There's little bits and bobs that are all flying around in terms of me enjoying it, but yeah, I'm mainly Especially there because... because... you pick it up along the way. Like, as yeah, you like, seek out that challenge, you're just going to absorb the things around you anyway. The main excitement and anticipation I get is when I look, I'm, I'm walking down a corridor and I'm seeing a big room ahead of me and I'm like, ooh, time for a boss. Yep. Let's hope it's a good one. <laughs> It'd be a boss. <laughs> if you don't respect those reasons, you probably don't like games very much because some people truly do talk as if challenge is the only thing that makes a game Yeah, you've nailed it. Wait, the people you said who say what? This, <laughs> the, the people who say this don't like games very much because they're about more than just challenge. You've nailed it. That's because it. they're about gameplay. Uh, the yeah. people who play games for gameplay, they don't really enjoy games that much. Fuck off. You know, well, no, he's, personally. Fuck you, personally. He's, he's now concluded that, like, the people who care so much about challenging games don't care about the story, don't care about characters, don't care about, I don't know, any other element that can be in... Why would you... Why? <laughs> like, things that the to... difficulty might have a lot to do with. He's like, and also things that are just there with the difficulty. As if the story... As if you... It's like, like you can only care about one thing. You can only have one reason for doing a thing worthwhile so much so that if there is an alternative way to enjoy a game they get offended and no, they'll call you a cut no, and tell you that you're playing no. the game <laughs> they'll call you, you a cut see this is jim like sterling this is just like <laughs> gosh darn it they call you sterling. a cut for enjoying a games person. differently <laughs> how can even... i mischaracterize the other side as much as possible while also making up? shit arguments myself fond God. of video games, having that attitude, <laughs> wanting them Why do you, you keep bringing up cock <laughs> argument? He seems really insecure well, for some reason. He seems very know. upset by the <laughs> fact that someone called him a cock. <laughs> they called me a cock because I told them I played games for the wacky characters. They called me for a the cuck. vocal performances. I think, I think most people called Jim Sterling a cock because he came out and said that he lets his wife have sex with other people. Oh. Oh. I mean, oh. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Who, wait a second. Though, Who wouldn't want to have sex with Jim Curling? That doesn't make I, sense. I play Red Dead Redemption 2 for the voice acting. Ah, sounds like a cock thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> what are play you for a the cook? murder. Off, closed off, kept away from the quote-unquote masses. And while I'm here, I might as well address what some people are doing where they're finding players who are physically let me tell you what other people are okay. doing. I'm an expert in other people's minds and behavior. And now Challenge Jim's going to stand up for us cripples. Through Sekiro, failing to note, of course, that there's a reason why stories like that become big hits, become become major headlines, and why people playing Dark Souls with a Guitar Hero controller. So but there's a difference between saying, I like this game for its story, mostly, and saying, I don't play video games for the challenge generally those are two different things because there are games that i don't really care about the gameplay at all but i mm. adore the atmosphere and the acting and the all that sort of thing mm. but that's not generally the reason why i play video games i guess um also, does 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 sterling play stuff like tetris or chess or any number of games that have no for the story mostly <laughs> for the the vocal performance <laughs> <laughs> the vocal performances of the In Tetris. Tetris. <laughs> it's turn around. I'm convinced he plays many games at all because that list he gave either. off was just like you. You go into Google and you type good yeah. video games. Yeah, it, it's a bit generic, isn't it? It's um, it's like when some. What are your favorite films? Oh, you know, like uh, The Godfather, Blade uh, Runner, Kate, yeah. Jurassic Park, Runner, yeah. Runner, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's okay. It's like oh. Uh, but if someone said, like, Anthropoid, I'd be like, oh. Wow, really? yeah, exactly. exactly. And it's the same with video games. What are your favorite games? The Last of Us. Okay, Bioshock. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, uh, Ocarina of Time. Oh, all right. Whoa. Uh, they're like, my favorite game is, I guess, yeah, Dragon Age Origins. That'd be like, oh, okay. Oh, you played that like, and you yeah, didn't you liked boy. it. Oh, that's good. Dude, that reaction tells me a Souls game like that. that. Is, I'm like, that oh, is a oh wow. Games. 
Your favorite mm. game's Dark Souls Three, huh? Mm. Whoa, okay. calm down, <laughs> Mister. When someone lists a bunch of generic good games on their list mm. of like favorite games, like has has been done here, it's interesting. Is all true? Yeah, pretty significant news. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's fine for an ordinary person to enjoy those sort of. Oh, of course. The, no, and so no. yeah, okay. My favorite game pack. is Red Dead Redemption, but like, if if we're talking about somebody who is, I guess, a video games journalist or somebody who's played games for like twenty odd years and stuff, you'd think he, that the taste would be a bit. More, more refined, more yeah. Varied. I, mean? I exactly. feel fairly confident in saying that people who have actually played a lot of video games, their favorites aren't the ones that everyone knows about. Well, because usually they'll have some well or defined a good variety. In video games. Yeah, yeah, variety. Because yeah, so it's when I could say, of games you played. Yeah, mm. I've played games for a long time. Some have stuck with me. They're not games you might necessarily know about, just because I've just tried a lot of games, and not every game is a mainstream game. And they're not all necessarily the same genre of game, maybe. Well, and it's also sort of statements like I, I've always found it really odd when people talk about like uh, I guess the types of stories and characters that you see in video games because most video games don't have characters at all. And like when you, when so much of your conversation about storytelling or whatever in video games or I guess um like you know what types of playable characters there are when people bring up um video games it always seems indicative of do you do you think that like the only video games that exist are the ones that sony makes like third person action adventure games with stealth elements um yeah i don't know these sort of statements are really i guess telling in terms of where the focus is yeah. for you and the types of games that you play and what you're interested in tell these sorts of people that something like darkest dungeon exists and they just lose their minds like whoa oh, really also yeah, great like game yeah, it's really Darkest Dungeon. What do you guys think of Darkest it, Dungeon yeah. 2? I haven't played, played it yet. I haven't played it yet. I'm waiting for the actual release. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, figured I'd, I figured I'd ask. I, I was wondering if anyone, I was From what wondering I've if seen anyone said, what? There's a Darkest Dungeon 2? <laughs> it's not because they're easy and that they quote unquote don't need easy modes or whatever. It's because those players are exceptionally talented. That's why they're mm. big headline grabbing news stories because no. they're exceptional. And that works. No, I I just don't think okay. you you don't have to be really an exceptionally talented no, gamer I think to not you, I want think to have these done so, down. So the point that's being made is um you know how like you'll see those articles where somebody beat Dark Souls three but they have some disability that you would presume would make it impossible for them and then they manage to do yeah, it. Yeah, like they don't like have they an have arm some... or they have some mental disability or they're French or something. <laughs> it's just some 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 uh set of uh yeah like I guess uh. A, that, that you wouldn't expect them to beat it. And I think the point that's being made here is, uh, yeah, but why would you, her like, these are exceptions. They're exceptions to what would generally be the case, which is that a lot of people are precluded from playing these types of games. I think that's the point that's being ramped up to. I would assume so. That spins off from exception for a reason. It's not a good faith argument. It makes you look like oh, a bit of a Oh, good dick, faith, Jim Sterling here. And it ignores the fact that accessibility <laughs> options exist in video games for many. Yeah, again, we already went well, over sure, it. Accessibility is a different argument. It's, it's, it's not well, yeah, the same like, thing as difficulty. Rebi oh. Rebindable controls are, are a feature of accessibility, yes. in a sense. Uh, or different controllers. I don't know that you're going to find anybody who's like, it harms the experience of playing Dark Souls that you can rebind your keys. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, if someone's like, that. you can complete it with a banana, but that's not the way you should do it. It's like, well, I, well, I, mean, I guess if you can only <laughs> access a banana, then... Like, like, yeah, that doesn't sound like Nobody a very will. appealing way to play the game. You remember nice. how uh, Microsoft, Microsoft uh, released a... Uh, yes. That was a good pun. Um, Microsoft <laughs> released a, uh, a controller... They, they had some sort of controller that was adaptive controller. To be, yeah, that's the one that's highly customizable and yeah, very much yeah. designed for players with disabilities. I know that literally nobody world, dislikes that. Exactly. Who yeah. who is upset about that? Nobody. Even There's Satan is like, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> Many different reasons. Easy mode being one such accessibility option. Oh my god! <laughs> Seems no. like you there you go. Get more disabled people that's, to say the right, end. So I would say that's the conclusion. The yeah, I would yeah. say that's the conclusion of the video. It, it, you sh if you're against easy mode, you're against accessibility options, which means you're against it people. So you smuggle it in the You're it. ableist and you hate. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said that before. You said that it's that's great true. that they did that. That they created a game that. It, but you've also said that it's exclusionary. I are mean, you, you saying wait accessibility you're, options are good? 
You're saying Jim is taking both sides of a position at different times, depending on his well, bad argument. Contradictory. The perspective mm. is contradictory. Well, hold on a minute. No, Listen, he doesn't argue for the, He doesn't look. He doesn't make arguments for the challenge. Okay, he does it for the characters and the voice acting. Clearly. <laughs> So anyway, this bit up. was only supposed to be <sighs> a minute Jim long. Sterling is a tough-talking street sure who tells it like it is, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> he does it so much, he cancelled his own part of the video to record over it and <laughs> like to say, hey, I came up with a different thing now, shut up. So I'm I was hoping he would eventually disappear, but he, he kind of stopped. I find it hilarious, we're still on this graphic, yeah. This is just <laughs> lazy is what this is, like, that's all it was. <laughs> and we've only got 20 seconds. So yeah, we're almost there, everyone. <laughs> Easy mode yeah. being one such accessibility option. Anyway, this bit was only supposed to be a minute long, so I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. So there. instead of re-recording, um, it so instead of, yeah. <laughs> or you know what? Instead this, of saying this, this is what rambling what he's is. Saying is. He's saying here that this bit was only supposed to be a minute. I've hit that predetermined time limit, and even though there's something I might need to say to further my point, I've already I reached the minute limit, which is more important. So I'm going to end it here. Yeah. yeah, and people say that I ramble in my videos. I was talking to Rags about this. Like, yeah. this is what rambling. He turned on the microphone, just started speaking, and then threw it in. That is yeah. literally... More, I don't do that with my videos, that. trust me. More this was not the original plan, plan yeah. There's a nerve on, his, nerve on his head, and it's been it's been uh, grabbed today by some people. Yes, yes. I've Well, I mean, I've upset a lot of people with existing today. <laughs> well, maybe if you'd edit your videos finally, they wouldn't be so upset. Yeah, Mahler, edit your How videos. Dare you talk about a movie for a long, a length that is above my arbitrary limit. They did it How again. The, the viral the need to make your love... videos more accessible. Yeah, like, the viral I tweet love, he, yeah, he I lays out. Oh, I, the length of your videos as if that's some kind of own. Like, oh, look at this guy he made a long video. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I can oh, only talk even. about things for four minutes. But dude, every time he made a really long segment so on this wit, show. Everyone uh, in their audiences say like, oh, well, but I like H. Bomber guy's long videos. And he's like, well, no, that's different. He's making points. That yeah, are that, that's fine. He's an intellectual. <laughs> he's actually saying things. Long. It's not the long at all. It's how good or bad the video is. Yeah, just say you think I'm shit. Yeah, just say you think I make bad points. Stop saying I'm long. That's not your issue. Or even better. read of Movie Bob's Twitter feed one. <laughs> Long or even better and they'll never do this but maybe actually just bring up any point that i said in my video well, and why it's wrong how could i do but, that if I well i don't video. have to see something to criticize it you see I don't know. It's, it's long. Be, oh, but I'm not going to watch the whole thing. It's like, dude, just watch like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, just pick out one argument. Just, just one. Just, just skip to anywhere. Pick out an argument that he makes, and then yeah. just go with that. And if you can't find one, then well, then there you go. I guess well, you couldn't you find one. You already do better than oh, ninety percent of anyone else. If you don't know, I just you see don't have to Bob, like responding to other people who like call. <laughs> yeah, you him out, like, J. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like his, really his, funny. His, his argument seems to rest on like, well, how can you be criticizing things like the consistency of the magic and the, uh... like, the, the powers and abilities of these characters because it's just a dumb. You know, like fantasy world where anything can happen. It's like, okay, that that's not really a valid rebuttal. Uh, maybe movie you know, movie Bob just watches. He doesn't watch movies for the story. He watches it so he can take four screen caps of wide shots and post them on Twitter. Watches he, he that. He's, challenge, he's, maybe, he's uh, watching it for the vocal performance. Well, I thought you were. Okay? I thought you were going to say that it gives him to something. He gives him something to do while he's eating. Dude, that oh, no. works as well. Angry. Well, the chicken. Gary's reply is like, yeah, while the, well, the chicken is in the oven marinating in the Mountain Dew, I gotta have something to do. Something to do while he's stalking Lindsay Ellis. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, do you like chicken? Do you like chicken, Lindsay? <laughs> If you don't like Mountain Dew, would you, you like Mountain Dew? Look, look, guys, it was a normal <laughs> amount of McDonald's for an average size person. Believe, okay. I can't believe that. I'm willing to switch to diet Mountain Dew for you. <laughs> it was four meals. <laughs> what was it like? Lindsay, four you have to choose the Mountain Dew four or large me. fries, four large cokes or something. Well. Yeah, that's, that's and like two. I'm like forty that's chicken nuggets. Yeah, yeah, I know. I tried it. Oh, it's like, Bob, you and I. Oh, have you very tried it. Definitions of what I, I streamed it. It's all there. Yeah. Go how'd you go? How Metal, did go? how? Remind us of how far you got. I, I've, I've forgotten. How far did you get? Uh, I did not finish the fries, and I had two drinks left, and a burger, I think, and I felt very bad. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is good timing, actually, because I had this, you know. I'm gonna read it out, Rags. I would love. Oh, this! Oh, this! Oh, I love this tweet! Okay, okay. 
a, a wind gust. This is movie Bob. He tweeted, a wind gust just hit the house so hard, almost 100 <laughs> empty soda cans stacked neatly in a window frame fell all over the goddamn kitchen floor, frowny face. <laughs> and then Phil, uh, Phil uh, says, yeah, why do you have 100 empty soda cans stacked in your house? <laughs> to which Bob replies, because I have... <laughs> <laughs> because I have very little storage space, and it's a place to keep cans, sparkling water, by the way, <laughs> not actual soda, oh, until recycling. What a story, Bob. First off, that's I don't horse believe shit. you. They're full of soda. <laughs> all right, we know the, the truth. Second, like, store them until we're just put them in a bag. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> put them in a no bin or a bag. Space. Stack them up in a windowsill with a breeze coming through it. That's we know he lives in a basement apartment. There's so little storage just space what? for all of his cans. Why would that, you block like, the light coming into your house like that? Why do you stack them on a windowsill? With he window likes open? less light what coming into his cave. <laughs> Probably stacked in front of blackout curtains, anyways. You know, just if you have you purchased 100 <laughs> cans every week, that means I mean, between. Every because recycling comes by every week. The date it will be will vary. Oh, right, because in America, you don't do the thing where, like, people... Do, do, does anybody have the thing where, like, you can just get your cans and you can recycle them for, like, five cents? You get five cents per every You can, do? Or, that? That is uh, a thing? I don't bring know them the, in, though. Yeah, so well, most people, what we do is sure. every we house has a, um, has a special bin... And it will be for recycling. So you'll put all your recyclable yeah. materials in the bin, and then you'll bring that out to the curb on recycling day. And so there's people with a truck who come by, they collect all the bins, and then you do that once a week. Which means right. that in a week's time, he has accumulated so many cans that he cannot store them without stacking them by an open window. I want to know what that stack looks like as well. Like, is it a castle of some sort that he can go into <laughs> and, like, romp around in? Like, this is my I, castle. I like a little man. Like, like, sparkling soda cans. When you consider that soda cans are essentially collapsible using your foot, and they store really easily, it... it no one has no storage space for cans. <laughs> I think we can conclude that Bob can fit quite a lot of weight behind his foot as well. Sparkling my cans water, by the way. The, the wind, the wind. Like, <laughs> if you crunch yeah. soda cans up, you can probably fit many, many dozens of cans in just a grocery bag. Because I know he buys groceries. No, so I don't have enough just, storage space. I got a stack by the window. I, it's, oh, I feel it's so, he just puts on a shoe. It's it very easy for him to crush a can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here in in, in Germanheim, we we have deposit on all these cans and stuff, so we actually have to bring them back to the store, so we get twenty five cents back. Twenty five. Oh, twenty five. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, twenty five cents, and that's it's eight big. cents on 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 glass bottles. Because um, I think that's uh, that can money. So I cannot crush them, but. I know how bags work, so... <laughs> no. I've heard big, of bags. Beautiful German engineering right there. And I have big <laughs> bottles of water, it's not even cans most of the time, so those take even more space. Still, two bags, oh, and we're oh, Gucci. It's I'm not so 5.5 hours. Wait, 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 so I was going to um, say, to set that up, right? <laughs> Chad, do you remember once upon a time I was talking about how some people don't know what decimals are? <laughs> like, they get <laughs> confused. <laughs> Um, so you got five hours and fifty minutes. With how hours and minutes work, that is not five point five hours. Or like he's converting the hours into minutes. It's just like, well, yeah. no, that not how decimals work, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. five point five hours would be five and a half hours. Yeah, it's also mm -hmm. not five hours. Five fifty and decimals. What five point eight seven? It's something like that. that yeah. Also, the sentiment is really amusing when you remember that I think at peak there were like 12,000 people watching that video while it was premiering. Well, yeah, and, no and it's unnecessarily like, come after me, sure, but why are you going after the people who helped edit it? What's, what, what the fuck? Like, what was it? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> worked on it. Interesting. Had, it's like, okay. I had a really hard time not just tweeting below. It's like, go fuck yourself, you absolute piece of garbage. 
Exactly. <laughs> like, what a fucking piece of shit. Just go. I almost just... said something. I was just like, I don't want to interact. Dude, it was clutch pop. as fuck. Uh, getting the video out that exact moment. I, yeah. I, you seriously have no idea how much of a matchstick operation it was in terms of getting it all to line up. But uh, yeah, I never would have made mm. it without the additional four editors that helped the fuck out of me. Like it's. It's baffling that you'd be like, but the video yeah, well, wasn't edited. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. The, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, did, I, I forgot. The video is just me rambling randomly. I remember more. You made the video it's... long to help you in the algorithm, even though, even though uploading yes. big videos every like six months is very much not good for the algorithm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so yeah. funny for us to hear it because like Free and Rags and other people I talk to semi regularly, like they're all aware. That is not the intention at all in this production. I don't want it to be a particular length. I just want to get my points out, and I will tell them, like, yeah. oh, shit, man, this is going to be two hours long. And then I'm like, it, it ballooned. It's three. It's like, I've and I will tell you, there. man, when you stop caring about, like, trying to make the YouTube-appropriate algorithm-matching videos, and you could, just, you could just say, if it's long, it's long, and that's how I want it, it's just yeah. a weight off your shoulders. It oh, really yeah. is. You've got all of these weird arbitrary restrictions that you're placing on yourself that are getting in the way of the creative process. But remember, this isn't creative either. This is if just the video, um, if it's what you know? Yeah, if it's the kind of video you want to make and you feel satisfied when it's done and you're glad when it's done and it's got everything you want to be in there, you do not care if it isn't great for the algorithm. It's so much more rewarding to make what you actually want to make. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I just don't like p someone just randomly saying to my friends that it's fucking un un not interesting or... I, I don't know. I also, just have a hard time not to swear by just saying that all the time. It's just, just fuck you. You don't even know who you're talking about. Um, so, already... so Jay put a comment saying, so it begins. And then he put a comment on <laughs> that saying, um, you know, I don't even know these people, but someone told me they like make fun of me on a podcast and stuff. Then fuck you. Uh, just... The unsolicited <laughs> lie, dude. I it's, love it. It's just so funny. <laughs> like, Jay wasn't even looking for retribution or explanation. Jay's one of the people who was insulted by the fucking tweet. Mm. Jay's just having fun. But Movie Bob is just like, oh, would you, I, you know, I, I don't mean it. I'm just, yeah. They're just <laughs> mean, though. <laughs> it's like, it's every what? time with the unsolicited lie that has information that wasn't, like, nobody asked. So why, I mean, we have why do you feel the need to explain that this? He knows who we are. It's just, like, it's that lie. Who, who was it? It was... It was a, it was a Hassan, someone I forget who it was. Um, multiple people have done this in our in our journey as EFAP, where they pretend not to know who we are. When oh, they've well, I think what you're mixing up with Hassan awesome. was the opposite. Hassan knew nothing about EFAP, and he but immediately claimed said to know. Dog shit. Yeah, well, yeah, no, 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 dude. The first thing was um. Oh, e EFAP, they like covered you or something, and then he said, fuck EFAP, I'm not watching their dog shit content. And that's that was, so, was like every frame pause is good. Oh, sorry, every. Yeah. Remember, painting is good. And he was yeah. like, everything yeah. painting. Like, I don't, I don't he know. He didn't know what, what was what. He didn't know. He just immediately kicked. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like he was a zebra and something just walked past. <laughs> he immediately bucks and kicks in the face. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, he, what, there what, is this what, animalistic what? quality to him. Like, he's just barely learning that you could, like, rub sticks together and live in caves, you know? There's, um, there was a couple of things. I don't want to cover, like, everything that happened, but. Um, Google, let me know about this one. So someone said, you know, hello to Movie Bob. And they, they seem good faith. They're like, genuinely interested in the answer. I made a video praising Godzilla, King of the Monsters, that's two hours long because A, it doesn't get enough praise, eh. and B, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's that oh. much and more to like uh, about it. Does the length them. of the video invalidate the praise? And then Bob said, not if you're not annoying. <laughs> Mahler, you are very annoying. See, like, see, see like, that's where you're going wrong. Right? I made that mistake. There's a special yeah. place in the New World Order gulag for people who annoy Movie Bob, <laughs> our Fuhrer. All right. <laughs> All right. Then. I want to play. I want to play a short clip of Mahler's voice and a short clip of Movie Bob's voice to to a woman <laughs> at the other side of the planet who doesn't know who any of you are and see which one she finds sexier. I like how the woman needs to be on the other side of the planet to not know. Who they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, Frankie, you further away, there. they wouldn't know. It, it, I mean, I'm in sure. Canada. I'm on Let's the other side sure. of the planet. That was a really weird way. The to other side that. of the planet from from Wales is the ocean, I think. Yeah. Sure. Atlantis. Unless he's just talking generally using hemispheres or something. Canada is not on the opposite hemisphere to. Wales. Okay, look, a, di a, a different <laughs> universe. What's the, hat, what's the, ha what's the left exist. and right hat? Is there a. Do we have a left, right have half? Yes, there is, an, there is an east and western hemisphere. Yeah, there. Yeah, get fucked. Wales is the hemisphere. 
Bob would choose to like pick a fight with you of all people. Like this it's not like you disagree with him politically or anything like that. Like you've never expressed any opinions of any kind like that. It's just literally you make long videos and that just makes him inherently angry. It makes a lot of people inherently angry. I would, add, yeah. I would add on to that because this is the reality. Whenever these tweets arise that are just shitting on Mauler for like making these videos, if he mm. wasn't effective, they wouldn't make them. Like if he wasn't convincing or compelling to a lot of people, nobody would feel like they need to push back. That's the reality. The videos are strong, they're compelling, and they get a lot of attention. That's the reason why people get really mad about it. No. The worst thing that you could do is be successful. And make more mm -hmm. long videos even longer. Yeah, like who, who would be making, who, who would be making these more. tweets? Like, oh yeah, Maul is a loser. If like nobody watched and nobody cared, and every video had a hundred percent dislike ratio, this just never happened. Yeah, the only reason that the, they keep coming is just well, because yeah. So the, the the whole like low level of artistry, low level of effort, rambling, no editor. Like this is and just long for the sake of it. It's like this is just the worst kind of shit, and it's just like. Why aren't you anyone else doing this? Like, it, it, like pumping it out. Why isn't everybody? Why isn't it all over the place? If this is so fucking easy to do, like, they yeah. treat it as though it's like this, like, oh, you can crap that out in a fucking afternoon. I can <laughs> sit in front of my webcam for ten five minutes and sort of talk about a movie that I just saw five minutes ago, and that that's well, that's real so artistry. Much, it, it's so much easier to just do the like. It's so much easier to not do it this way. What is the advantage in spending months? to spend like six hours talking about a movie that came out three months, four months, five months ago in exhaustive detail compared to like getting it out straight away. Well, and you know, some people here will know, like I've been advised against it by YouTubers. Like you probably shouldn't do it that way. You should do it this way to maximize. And it's just like, that's okay. I understand. And I, I know it is good advice, oh. but it's just ironic that I suffer the whole, like you'll just try to appeal to the algorithm. It's like, do you know anything about <laughs> the algorithm? Obviously I'm not. Yeah, I don't. I don't give a shit about the algorithm because, like, I I, th I suspect that it's changing all the time. So, like, what's the point in adhering to something that could like be different the next day? You know, it's, it's like just You're make the stuff the you want to make and put it out, and you know there'll be an audience for it if people like it. You're almost um, like treating the algorithm like a vengeful god. You know, people are just like <laughs> you don't want to anger the right, vengeful yeah, god. Like, yeah, it's like, like, it's like, it's like, um, <laughs> I, I compared it to some monster locked away somewhere that you got to sacrifice an animal to. <gasps> Ooh, it's the it's the black goo in the basement in, in Little Nemo. <laughs> yeah. By the way, that, that shit was creepy. We must appease the algorithm. That comment from uh, Bob, uh, Jay responded to it saying, "Um, okay," like just because it's bizarre. And then uh, uh, James asked, "Wait, do you watch Jay's content then? Like, because why would you have responded to Jay specifically?" And uh, Bob said, just clarifying, I was replying to Jay about the post in the image, not aiming to say anything critical of their work. Like, I don't what? think he knows that Jay helped edit the video, because... <laughs> uh, it's just... So, it, regarding that tweet oh, about confusing. your video, Mahler, when they say no one involved in this, are they referring to the editors? Well, so this well, is the weird... You're the only one that speaks in the video, right? It's... Yeah. So th this is the weird thing about it. Most of my videos are solo. Like, I mostly take care of all of myself. This is the first ever video that I've had four other people work on with me. And for some reason, oh, okay. he chose this one as the one to be like, everyone involved in this is uninteresting. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my why? I'm sorry. Appreciate I don't know. It. I don't know how you'd watch the video and assume other people were involved. You know? <laughs> yeah, you, this is what I'm saying. It's weird that well, he did. Well, they didn't watch the video. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, also, look, that, no, that's true. Yeah. A little bar there, so he didn't watch it. None of none of these people actually watch the videos they criticize. No, and talk about. They just see, they just see the thumbnail and video length, and then just well, they get offended when you ask. I have everything I need. Yeah, you're like, why the fuck would I spend my time watching it? It's like, but you, you're talking yeah. about you're it. Shitting on it. That's <laughs> yeah. why. I feel like you should watch Fucking a little. Long. Like we legitimately, we're not even asking you watch the whole thing. We understand that watching a six-hour video is just not reasonable to do. I couldn't even like, watch it. We're yet. crazy, no of course. But <laughs> just, you watch a little bit. You yeah. just, you just take a little Dude, peek. One of the, you one can of the pause long... it, and YouTube will remember where you were in the video. <gasps> just... yeah, one of the long man like... mad posts was posted. Uh, just like it, what it would have been right after it was processed, after it was premiered. So they were just waiting. They knew it was happening. They were just like, can't wait to get those <laughs> fucking points on the internet. Just, I can't oh wait God. to get them dopamine hits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, dopamine. Dopamine. 
Oh, Just like they 47 likes on twitter.com. Yeah, I they refresh I'm Twitter validated. all day, <laughs> checking the replies. Hey, yeah, 1,000. Yeah. Oh, wait, it didn't even get 1,000 likes. That's all right. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything at all. <laughs> if I don't get likes, that's the most important thing. I recently put out a bunch of videos talking about the first season of Halo, which I didn't like. And I, I split mine up into separate ones, but altogether it's about about the same, almost five hours. And uh, that was after I whittled, whittled down all my, you know, talking points, like just as concisely as I could. But there was just a lot to go over and a lot to go into and a lot of detail to elaborate on. And it's just this arbitrary idea of bringing the the length of the original material into into it is totally arbitrary like well let's people pulling all these rules out of their ass like oh it's got to be yeah. this length it's otherwise right. you're long-winded like it, it's so youtube is dumb. the ultimate like forum for making things as as long as they need to be exactly. like you're not you're yeah. not trying to fit into like theater showings or anything like if if it's really long fine people can tackle it in chunks like yeah. you, can, you can go away do something else come back to it like a day later and watch some more of it yeah this you idea where it's like, well, I hit play. I'm locked in now. mentality. There's a lot to be said for people who make really long videos like this rather than splitting it up into like half hour chunks and making like a lot more money from it. Like, cause they're all mm. separate videos and they're all got revenue streams for themselves. It's like, yeah, yeah, you put it all together into one to make a seamless like viewing experience for the, the audience. Like that's pretty commendable. But right. it's like, no, it's it's long, so it must be bad. It's like, oh, fuck off. I am. Yeah, I know. I saw people like discussing because in the thread, like people agreeing how bad how bad I am, and then they were talking extensively back and forth about how I never talk about the substance or the themes. And I was like, I felt gaslit reading it. I was like, I have whole sections yeah. about the themes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? They wouldn't know. They didn't watch it. That's, that's they didn't it. get they to didn't that point. It. Like, it's got it, to be like the ultimate fuck off kind of Isn't statement that the, oh, where it's like oh, yeah. oh it doesn't really get into the deep themes or the deep ideas of the movies like it's like fucking six hours we're talking about it, <laughs> it. Like, a whole section dedicated to themes well there was a they might have heard you say my themes once and then extrapolated that you don't believe in the concept of the theme <laughs> I had that reputation for a while. I don't know where it came from. I was critical of TLJ's themes. I didn't say themes don't exist or that I hate I don't know where this came from. It's like, I've, I've been quite a fan <laughs> because of Because if you criticize mechanics, that means you can't care about themes. Well, when I criticize the shitty hitboxes in DS2, that didn't mean I hate hitboxes you can't in care general. About themes. <laughs> like, he must hate all hitboxes. hitboxes. Um, I feel like these people just don't have they don't they don't have a lot of CPU power in their noggin, so they can only like do one <laughs> task at a time. Or else they'll just freeze. And so you, if you're criticizing anything other than themes, well, you don't care about themes. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, they like. I was just gonna say, quick, Mr. Drinker, do you need to drop out, sir? Have some. Sadly, I perhaps. do. I'll uh, I'll drop out. I'll make some space for other people to jump in. So. Um, uh, is yeah. there a chance of perhaps maybe catching you on the other end of this insane adventure? Because obviously we're doing this for a while. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be yeah out and about doing stuff tomorrow morning, so um, might be tricky. But uh, I'll so message. So will we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be going till like seven p.m. tomorrow. So if uh... yeah, it's a pretty decent window. So um yeah, if I'm if I've got a, an hour or two free, I will message you and try and jump in. Sweet. Crazy. Oh. Wait. Thank you so much for joining us. Great uh, talking to you, guys. Good luck yeah, with the rest of the stream. Toodaloo. Take care, dude. Bye. Toodaloo. Wait, we're nearly done with the video. Yeah, let's. Yeah. We may as well end this video. There's a video. Yeah. Let's finish yeah. off this quickly, sucker. Quickly, quickly, just rip off the bandaid. Yeah. We're almost there. <laughs> Not for me. All that shit. Oh, that oh, was. Okay, we <laughs> were really. <laughs> <amazing. laughs> we didn't make it to the end of the Jim Sterling <laughs> video. <laughs> and that part was over. Well, like we always have one second to go. Shit, and then it ended. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for me. And, you know. Oh, that was great. Well, yeah, we did it. Congratulations, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> The moral of the story is, if you're going to think highly of yourself, you should be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Good That's advice. Good advice, yeah. That. Well, uh, alright. So that was a kind of video. The next one, because I'm not wasting any time here, okay? We're jumping right in. Uh, oh my god. god this is because this is the thing, you get so many kinds of videos. and I there, was was actually... an, a, there was a production assistant on this video? Uh, and an art director? Well. What? Manuel, Manuel. I suppose. Well, I mean, 
the person doing the assistance would have been the assistant. Is that an art director? Well, um, yeah, no, I, you're right, actually, yeah, of course. <laughs> I was to introduce this video, right? It's thumbnail and title, actually, yeah. So, well, so the thumbnail says, Dark Souls sucks, and here's why. And the, the title <laughs> oh, is... I agree. The, the, the title is Dark Souls Retrospective. Dark Souls sucks, and here's why. So... You might be thinking, like, why are we covering a video that's probably, like, multiple hours long? Why are we doing that? Yeah. It's like, oh, I haven't well. even played Dark Souls, so, yeah. Exactly. Why Why would we cover this video? Well, I just caught it randomly. I don't know where this is from, but I, I checked it out. I was like, oh, my God, this video is fantastic. So, I'll, I'll start her up. Dark um, Souls. Wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know who this guy is? Oh, no. I know who this guy is. <laughs> oh, it's Ace. Oh, so this guy. <laughs> hold on. You might just be careful with this one. This guy is called Acerthorn. And he's a bit of a lol cow. So what he does is he makes these really mm. rambly like videos that suck. And then people will respond to them making reply videos and stuff. He has actually sued quite a few people for making reply videos to him. Really? Uh, he files a lot of... Yes, there's a few YouTube channels. Uh, there was a big one. I can't remember who it was. But he, yes, he did a whole thing about, yes, I'm being sued by this guy. He files a bunch of frivolous lawsuits uh, to basically because he's a salty little bitch and he used to work as like a law clerk so he thinks he knows the ins and outs of the law sit out for that's it um oh he lost that lawsuit okay but yes this guy is quite notorious for suing people who criticize him so oh, the video is so just, funny just be careful with this <laughs> no, one yeah, that is all i'll say just be careful all right only but, say uh, nice this, this things video guys. is awful but like just you might want to think if it's worth it. Uh, is it worth the means? It is. To do? <laughs> no, I'm. I we you can't be. You can't let people who do frivolous bullshit on the internet because they're lol cows to not like. That's not gonna. We can't let that give him power over us. It's nonsense. Yeah, but at the same time, do you remember like when uh, uh, H3 went through back when H3 wasn't the worst thing ever? Um, everything oh, to do yes. with uh, their complication. I think he eventually said Matt just Hoss. the yeah. the journey of fighting back for so fucking long. Uh, was like a, a huge detriment but um i mean yeah because if you like guys you joke but like what if he actually did fire a whole bunch of strikes or whatever or did some crazy shit you know you mm. never know with some crazy people this um, guy is definitely crazy which is a shame because the video is hilariously awful but, oh it's uh, awful yeah well hmm because we've got plenty of other videos to cover yeah uh, i mean the i mean it I, I mean, I don't think he's probably never won any of these frivolous cases and stuff that he even attempts to do. No, they're all no, they're all frivolous suits that get thrown out. But like, it's a pain in the ass to deal with. I mean, I. So we're not covering his video. Also, yeah, the, well, the whole idea of like you'll give people an idea that that's how you can stop them from covering it is like I don't think we have that to worry about. This sounds like a very specific and strange person. Um, yeah. Which we, we actually oh, he... don't cover a couple of people for that very reason. Yeah, I recommend uh, wa watching what you say about him because I have a friend, uh, Kratosis. Uh, he actually was on one of the lawsuits. This guy's pretty pretty nuts. He did lose a couple suits, but yeah, it's might be might want to avoid it just for just for now at least. Yeah, like I said, this we lose nothing. Trust me, I've got like a bazillion things. <laughs> we'll be fine. As much of a low, as much of a low cow he is, he's he's pretty weird. Like, I would love to see you tear apart this video, but I'm not sure it's worth it for you. What a shame. But, uh... Looking at my list, like... It's like a candy store. I feel like such a Debbie Downer now. That's alright. <laughs> well, I mean, warning's a warning. Uh, that's valid that you brought it up. It's just such a, yeah. it's, it's such a shame. The bummer is <laughs> oh, the, the yeah, bummer is what he's doing. The whole thing yeah. is bullshit. Yeah. No, it, it sounds like it, and it, and the re whole reason they do it, I don't even think is necessarily because they definitely expect to win. It, oftentimes, it can be just to tie everything up, um, tangle everything get, up. You know? Yeah. I'm not criticize him. It's to. Well, it's not going to do much for his reputation, is it? <laughs> it seems no, like has, everybody. No, yeah, he, he's a fully negative reputation. Everyone, yeah, this person does not care about their reputation. Yeah, I don't know if they it ever got approved, uh, but I heard a judge was threatening this person with uh, marking them as a vexatious litigant, which which kind of means what it sounds like it. But it sounds I don't like know a Harry they... Potter curse. <laughs> he is he is a vexatious, vexatious litigant. Yes. litigant. Oh, he is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, he is. He. I don't think he's been formally declared one, but that is what he is. 
I know they threatened to. I don't know if it was formally declared. Alrighty then. So this one is since I'm oh. staying on theme here. Okay, this one was passed around quite a bit actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this video at all, but a couple people in our community wanted us to cover it as well. The called the curse of video game criticism. Must wonder mm -hmm. what this may or may not be about, whether or not we'll agree. Whatever the points because may be, they all suck. Very. This guy, he's really prominently displaying the the Sonic. What what game is that? The game Heroes. Oh, Sonic Adventure Heroes. Heroes. Battle. Is that a good There's one or a bad one? one. Okay. Well, it's like just, it's just Sonic Adventure Two with a multiplayer mode added, basically. Um, I I wonder why it's so prominent more than you know the other games. Like it's special to him, I suppose, in some way. A lot of people like Sonic Adventure Two, right? That's often yeah. people's favorite. I like it. It's janky, but it's got a charm to it that I like. Do, I do you love the story, though? Uh, I kind of <laughs> do. Yeah. <laughs> it's silly, but uh, I don't what? know. I kind of get a kick out of it, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's find out these what nuts. this is all about. <sighs> I'm so busy criticizing every video game I come into contact with that I can't just enjoy things anymore. Ah, the curse of being incredibly intelligent and funny. In 2001, Sega released a little game for the Dreamcast <laughs> called Sonic oh, Adventure okay. 2. I was three years old at the time, so I didn't play it, but when Adventure 2 Battle released a year later, my child brain was slowly gaining true consciousness, to the point where one of my first okay. memories ever is when my friend's little sister spilled coke all over my GameCube. Oh. You don't understand, we okay, were playing two-player Emerald Hunt, I was to call, my friend was Get chaos- Get on with that. They're not gonna feel. <laughs> <laughs> Get on with that. Oh, at least I appreciate the editing. Uh, I, I, I think you covered a guy recently in the last couple EFAPs. At least I appreciate the editing actually showing what they're talking about. That's, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I do feel yeah. slightly bad. I just have no patience for this sort of thing anymore. I can't. <laughs> well, with the like, yeah. Yeah. If we could have listened, he spilled. He got his the controller spilled on when he was a kid by his sister. If you were, um, miss me with the lengthy preamble, please. Wasn't it like yesterday that we watched a video that was really bad for that? Yeah, that's probably why yeah. you lost patience recently, especially. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, you just want people to make points. I understand. The map was Aquatic Mine, and while I don't remember how the match was going, I was probably winning because I'm just... Uh, awesome. Needless to say, Sonic okay. Adventure 2 solidified itself as one of my favorite games of all time. Mm -hmm. I listened to the music for years on end and okay. looked back on it fondly as I grew up, but then, in right. 2016, uh -oh. I made a mistake. As a fledgling uh -oh. YouTuber looking to okay. diversify my content, I decided- I hope this isn't gonna be six minutes of fucking boohoo, woe is me, I criticize something on the internet and people push back on it. I really hope this isn't that video. I don't know what we're in for exactly. I just know that this caused a ruckus of discussions about things, and it's called a video game curse of video game criticism. So I, I have a feeling this won't work out <laughs> in terms of us being <laughs> happy with whatever is said here. Decided to well, it's already been so and clever and funny. I'm sure we'll be fine. Silly review, and quickly discovered that many segments of the game were not as fun as I remembered. That, or I probably never made it to Cannon's core as a five-year-old because I sucked at video games. I rescind so my statement. Finish the game. You were oh, statement about you beating my friend at Emerald Hunt before the incident. Despite Look at you. all, so Look just at you. you need to go back and change that. Good for so you. Just to clarify, so, the story is like I went back to review it, and I found it was much worse than I remembered. It? Oh, I know the feeling. That's it almost fun. sounds like it seems <laughs> to be, uh, yeah. I guess. I yeah. went back to review it and I realized that I actually didn't play the game when I was a kid. I just played <laughs> that, that like could be a one, I I played one multiplayer mode with my brother and I remember winning and it being awesome. And <laughs> it was all a fever dream. Everything and I've been calling it my favorite my game head. ever since. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I was so distracted. I forgot. Hello, Indigo Gaming. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> Hello. 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 It's just yeah. so, it's like a big, we're in a big Hello. bar, you know, people are just coming in and out. It's, it's very casual. Why indigo? Why not any of the other colors? They're fine colors. Yeah. It's actually just... a really, it, it's the curse of like picking off. I, I, I literally decided on a channel name, like off the cuff and I kind of regret it, but it's stupid. But literally the only reason I picked indigo was that when I played doom Two deathmatch way back in the day. I like the I color. The color. Indigo. <laughs> yeah, so, right that's on. really good. Yeah. <laughs> Weird because right well, now you're more indie, indie arrive. That's not really that arbitrary, or is it? Yeah, not arbitrary, oh, but like I probably could have put a little more bit. Into it. But yeah. I, yeah, I like the way that story ended. Yeah, and indigo. Yeah, I like the color in that Doom game, and uh, yeah, there you go. Hmm. I remember my first color for my my Halo Combat Evolved character on the Xbox. I chose Cobalt.
That was that's me cool. too. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a hmm. fun word. It's a fun cool. it's, it's a, cool a fun word. color name. Yeah. Cobalt. It's very it's got a lot of it seems like a gravitas for a color, you know, cobalt. Like crimson. Cobalt. I think Crimson's a tool too. company, there's a tool company called Cobalt. Or maybe I'm thinking of DeWalt. I don't know. DeWalt, DeWalt is definitely is hardware, a tool yeah. company. <laughs> All I this. came up I came up with my cringe alias digital fear almost 15 years ago because I was in a hurry to get started on Return to Castle Wolfenstein because I just bought Xbox Live. I got hooked digital up. Fear. I was like, fuck, I just want to make up a name and get started playing this. And then that uh, ended up being my identity for like a lot of my life. <laughs> I should have put more thought into it. Yeah, I but. took like probably 30 minutes. I got Xbox Live probably about um, like four years into Xbox uh the life cycle and it took probably took me like a half an hour to come up with a unique title that didn't have five numbers at the end <laughs> i think I, I made like a parody one once and i called him um sniper fire phantom glass like, what are we... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Look out. Like, oh, that's he's... a lot of characters <laughs> yeah that was the point i think i put like xxx333 three, 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 yeah. or something on either side <laughs> xx still... no scope sephiroth 66 or something like that <laughs> love sonic adventure 2 <laughs> But why? Well, it's about the experience. Now, I don't bring all this up to make an isolated point about the power of nostalgia, but to instead talk about a larger phenomenon within the gaming sphere, and how it's impacted both the way I view games as a self-proclaimed video essay writer, along with the gaming okay. community at large. I'm Alrighty. not trying to say that I hate talking about games, or that right. criticism is very odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never did. Never did. Get on with it. My I, mind. Yeah. It is amusing, right? It's like, let me begin talking about Dark Souls. Now, I'm not saying I hate Dark Souls, but also like, you're just like, whoa, why, no, I'm why not are saying we... I prefer whoa. Miracle Whip over mayonnaise. Some of you might be thinking that. We're going to dispel that to rest right now. Why are we jumping to that? This thing I've put in your head for you. <laughs> just tell me what you think. <laughs> We're getting there, I'm sure of it. I'm a video yeah, essay like... writer, along with the gaming community at large. I'm not trying to say that I hate talking about games, or that criticism is inherently a negative thing. I, I don't good. think anybody would have been <laughs> yeah, that. Not good. in the Why would that be our baseline Don't you <laughs> accuse me of this? hating criticism in general? Like I didn't even you I don't really even know what your point to... is yet. <laughs> yeah, he was writing this. So I need to preemptively make sure that we nip that in the bud right away. He's doing that, that speech pattern that kind of bugs me too. It's like I'm making a video and I start off high and then I go. L low like low. this and then yeah. when i end when the I sentence go, there's an upward low. inflection and then like when i this. end the sentence and when i start a new sentence i go low and then i go high like this like it's that over and over again low and then high again well if the script gonna, guys is solid, he's gonna tweet about how we're making fun of his voice i make fun of everybody's voices including my own come on it's only totally fair Criticism yeah, we make fun of apparently a negative thing. I think it's fun. Kinda sorta turned it into my job. I like criticizing manipulative practices and mechanics I think could be improved while Sweet. gushing about the things I okay. love, but Good. when I play games nowadays, Good. I'm so often looking at them yeah. with a subconscious lens of how they could be incorporated okay. into a video. All right. Well, that's a you problem, <laughs> yeah, but okay. Yeah. Like yeah, all right. I'm with you now. If you're a full-time <laughs> YouTuber who makes YouTube videos yeah. about games, that's a good habit. I could understand how that may affect your. You want to go back to when you could just enjoy things without thinking about how you could contentify them, I suppose, but I doubt that's the only point you're going to be making. Or what I could say about them in an interesting analytical sense. Pokemon was one of my favorite things in the world growing up. Same for everyone, and then everyone <laughs> realized what the. <laughs> hey, look, were. it's um. It's. It's uh. Quagsire. Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> This may be me being, I guess, elitist in another sense, but if you're going out looking for interesting things to say, you've already lost. Yeah. Wait, do what you can mean... I say that's interesting? You say if you're don't make a video if you have anything to say. Oh, okay. what are you to say? Make a video. About? He has things to say. He's telling us stuff about him. Yeah, aren't you enthralled? I mean, I know what you're saying, you know, like. Searching for a topic rather than the topic arising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, know, you don't you make a video on the premise of I will now go and find things to talk about with this thing. No, you probably <laughs> started from somewhere, right? Yeah. Unless I guess if it's a review, like if it's like, okay, this is a game that just came out. I got a code for it. I need to play it. Come up with something good to say about it and make a video. Well, to give you but an idea, not if you're an essayist. Like if you're just making videos about topics that interest you. 
give you an idea, I could have sworn I said around like April to either Fringy or Rags that uh, I doubt I'll be making any kind of video on like Multiverse of Madness. Yes, it's going to make no sense because it's like crazy nonsense shit, but like, you know, I, I just can't see myself wanting to make a video on that. And then I, when I came out of the cinema, I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a lot to say about that's this. Not, yeah. Gold mine of material happens. here. I actually find I, that, uh, sorry, Rex, go ahead. I think with some people, it's like, I, there's a difference between, I have interesting things to say, so I'll be a video essayist, and I'm a video essayist. I need to come up with interesting things to say. Yeah. yeah it's almost treating it like it's a job that he was given and stands to lose if he doesn't just put out product when it's like no you're kind of self-employed man you don't have to do this. Well, it's really unfortunate when it gets to that point uh you don't want to get to that point because when the when it mm. sort of because you manage to turn your hobby into a monetize it sort of but then it becomes a thing yeah. that you're like ugh, it's following me around a everywhere slave too. yeah you mm. don't want that to happen but the it's last thing you want to do is uh get stuck in some sort of genre that you can't stand I think that uh, didn't that happen to like Joji, the the pink guy, the guy who did all his memes. I think yeah. he kind of started hating oh, the yeah. content he put out. Yeah, filthy Frank. Yeah, I think yeah. that kind of happened to him. And he also he, like, had a bunch of health issues and stuff, and he wanted to focus more on music. I think. Yeah, I think he's actually like hurting his throat too, doing the voice and stuff like that. Well, he's yeah. just like, yeah. one example. Probably not good for you. His music's pretty good. <laughs> you know, all power to him. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. But that, but that's I like one thing I, I had a hard time with when the a video starts out with just like random anecdotes and doesn't like you can kind of get into your anecdotes. But I think a video should probably start out with roughly your kind of your mission statement or your thesis fairly know, yeah. front loaded. Because if you just get into random anecdotes, it takes like I'll just like skip it like I'm watching a, a an introductory ad or something it's like, OK, what are you guys talking about? Mm -hmm. I had, yeah, that, I had that problem with H Bomber guy. He does that a lot in his videos. He just kind of rambles a bit and then finally stumbles into his topic. Like it's it's nothing personal, but I just don't give a fuck about your sister spilling some soda on a GameCube okay. controller when you were yeah. a kid. I I just don't care. Like I said, after a bad experience, I've just lost patience with this kind Anyone of thing. Anyone who tells you they care is lying. I am more than happy for them to put a little bit of fluff in there. Let them let them have it. You know, I just hope the video's good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> just Our standards sure. for fluff need to be higher. Put them in an interesting analytical sense. Pokemon was one of my favorite things in the world growing up, but it's become a series I'm so hyper critical of these days that I look at people that enjoyed Legends Arceus and I'm like, how? Is that what it's called? Is that Arceus? what it's pronounced? I thought it was Arceus. <laughs> I, I think it is Arceus. Arceus. Is it Arceus? That, that's that's what X Ray Girl calls it, and I think. Um, <laughs> no, also? You, I mean, you have to agree. So. Yeah, well, I mean, that's true. <laughs> She's the Pokemon expert in the family. I, I've never really played a Pokemon game. Uh, I can click. There's sound. It says Arceus on the, on the little Google thingy. Yeah, Google I says swear, Arceus. Maybe Wait, so I've, what are the two maybe I've just always heard. Arceus and Arceus? Oh, I, yeah, so I Arceus, I've always thought it was Arceus, yeah. yeah. Oh, Brit British say it differently. British say Arceus. I, I keep hearing Arceus, Arceus. I'm in Canada. Arceus? You know I can imagine that there's a reason why that's the case. That's so weird. Arceus, 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 Arceus. So we, we've got three. <laughs> tomato, weird. tomato, you know? Uh, well, in this case, yeah, tomato, yeah, tomato, yeah. Tom Arceus, tomato. Arceus. It looks like the it looks like according to there's a Pokemon book that was released that has uh I guess it's canonical that is Arceus now. Okay. It is Arc oh, Arc E okay, yes. It's canonically it's Arceus. Because they, they released a book on it. Wow, and there it you go. Gave the, it, yeah, it had a how to pronounce it, how to say it in the book. Arceus. Hmm. That's a fucked up looking Pokemon. Hmm. Let me let me give you a picture of this. Creature, the fuck's going on here? It's got like a weird. thing around it. Pokemon. Doing yeah, stuff. it's got a weird. I just call this one Breath of the Pokemon. Breath of the Pokemon. <laughs> As, there's a lot of influence, definitely, from that game. Yeah. All righty then. I felt, ba I felt bad. Right, uh, my wife uh, played through the whole game, and then she was having a hard time, so I just beat the final boss for her. So I feel I wow. beat the game technically, <laughs> but I didn't play it. Misogyny, <laughs> probably. I don't know if it's <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Arceus, Man and I'm like, Pokemon. how? How did you... 
how do you do that? What I am trying to say though, is that it doesn't matter how many times I play through Sonic Adventure 2 and rediscover how rage inducing half the levels are. It doesn't matter that I called it objectively bad in one of my old videos, and it doesn't matter. Oh. Now what happens? What does matter? <laughs> what? Well, yeah. Please. Like <laughs> Why doesn't that matter? I, I I am kind of getting to that point where I really want you to like say <laughs> something. I you to begin yeah. the the topic. Yeah, I mean, we're two and a half minutes really in. Nihilism. I'm sure we're on the yeah. cusp. I'm sure we're nearly there. We're almost I'm there, guys. There. He will make a point. He's, he's doing a little mm. meme. We're almost there. Give up the what I'm trying to tell both you, <gasps> dear viewer, and myself, if he'd listen, is that it's okay for childlike wonder and dumbfounded happiness to win on occasion. That's it. What? What that have to do with that was no all. You, that's what, that, what that was leading up to. So, so it's child, basically child, let people enjoy things. Childlike enjoyment of a thing from nostalgia, or whatever fucking reason, does not get cancelled out by a thing being poorly designed. Those two can exist at the same time. Also, like no. he didn't have to make a video on Sonic Adventure. If he also, like, if he was yeah, that adamant about like, I'd ago. rather just not take this so away guess, from anybody. Well, I like, guess I think it sucks, but whatever. I get that people like it. I guess in retrospect, he's decided that that was a mistake. That the approach that he took, maybe with criticizing it, is like, wait, but why couldn't I just indulge my personal feelings about this game? It's like, well, I mean, you could do that. That doesn't really preclude anything, though, in terms of criticism. Well, yeah, it looks What's like we'll be going you know back to I mean? basics with this one in terms of like, so why do we even do uh, breakdowns of like empirically or verifiable mechanics slash? Things that are present in the story or the game. Why do we do it? And it's like, I, well, it's information, and then it compares yeah. on standard. Like that's why. Maybe the question that needs to be asked at this point, when you say this, is so: what is your goal when you like critique something? What is the objective of your uh, piece of criticism? Are you just saying it for the sake of it, or is there something you're trying to push for? Is there like a landscape that you would prefer to see more games that are a certain type of way, or is it just because you like to talk about it? Is that it? Well, the, I think that is the case a lot of the time. Like, people either like to hear their own voice or they want to be heard. And it's just like, my rambling is good enough for a video. Are you, are you implying Whoa. that this guy likes to hear his own voice? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. You can just make something because it's cool or because it has a well, boss yeah, fight. No fucking it? way, dude. <laughs> wow, you no can like something way. because it's cool? Okay, you can like something because it's cool. I can like things. This is a Whoa, controversial man. video. Yep, I'm aware I, of that. <laughs> why do you, why I, do you I, think that just because you criticize Sonic Adventure 2 that you can't also like it? I yeah, like you, can, you can talk about what what is good and what is bad about one game if you have mixed feelings on it. And There's no like, rule against they the don't, characters. They don't have to compete with each other. They can inform yeah. you of something. Mm. When you're like, I like this, even though I recognize it fails to do all the things I believe games should do. What does that mean? It's like, And then if you go, well, I really remember playing this a lot when I was a kid, and it reminds me of those times. It's like, here you go. Yeah. All right. The, yeah. yeah awesome. we sh all right, man. We solved totally I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you've, you've that completed is... that. The analysis is complete. You can feel satisfaction yes. in understanding yourself a bit better. And you get you to move asked on. the question and provided the answer. We can now move on with all of our lives. <laughs> the mystery has been settled. I'm still hung up on his point about, like, you know, contrary to popular opinion, I actually do like talking about video games. Like, it makes me think of, like, imagine if you uh, saw an episode of. The Talking Dead, where it's like, you know, contrary to popular opinion, I actually like talking about The Walking Dead show. You know, it's weird, but, you know, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of, like, like uh, assumptions of what people are thinking and feeling about things right now. And I mean, I'm just sort of sitting here blank, like, what? No, I don't. <laughs> what? No, no, just, just tell me what you think. Yeah. yeah. Where you're right on a big lizard. You don't need to write a college thesis okay. for your own feelings. Who said you did? Okay. That feels like what this video is. It's like, you can't jump in front of a train. You don't have to. It's like, yeah, I know. That's oh, man. Done it yet. Why does everybody feel like they're so interesting for having come up with this, right? So read what is on screen. Have you ever played a game before? Well, I have. I've played a few, actually. And I think that Sonic Adventure 2 might be the most objectively best one ever made. And how can I determine that? Well, through a scientific process I've developed called the definitely not subjective method. It's like, wow, you're clever, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> like, nobody's ever come up with this before. So in his original joke. video on Sonic Adventure 2, none of the criticisms that he had were objective things that could be improved if he were to 
like give them constructive feedback. Man, Perhaps that'll would, be the point. It's all just now. I just thought it was stupid. Why are my two options are this or Joseph Anderson when it comes to <laughs> video games? Like, I either get dry man who is bad, or I get just meandering nothing. Ugh. Where I'm are you, Matthew Matosis? This... Come back. <laughs> come West, back. Please, no, come back. Just, just keep making your game. That, that'll be cool. Keep yeah. doing that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit confused with this so far because I thought maybe I misheard, but I thought he had said in a previous video that he said it was his favorite game and he wanted to amend that. But then I think re more recently he just said that in a past video he said he didn't like it and he wanted to amend that. I'm not really th sure well, what so his position is. What I maybe the from first the... one was the one. Yeah. What I've now gathered okay. from this narrative is that you have this guy who enjoyed playing games as a kid, woohoo, and that informed in a desire to sort of and analyze them, and it became a job. And then he went back to Sonic Adventure 2 and he was like, oh no, like this is one of my favorite things of all time, but Critic Brain says it's bad. And then he had a mm. fundamental euphoric moment of, fuck the Critic Brain, that's not better than enjoying it for okay. any reason. And I think that's the revelation yeah. of this video. You can, there, there is no metric that's better than any other one, fuck it. Like, okay. Yeah. It's weird that that is presented as like a profound realization when it's really dull and boring well, one. So, what, 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 so this is the really big problem for, for EFAB, we get this all the time. Everyone wants to tell us this when it's like, oh, we knew all of this stuff. We got here yeah, we know. when we knew this. Like, this is where we would have started that most things just mean as much as anything else. It's like a really popular and understood worldview. I don't know why. Like, did you not know? How old are you? And then they're like, oh, I'm 17. You're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, no, I, uh, sorry, I'll just, I'll go. <laughs> you go have fun with life. It kind of reminds me of uh, Sterl uh, Jim Sterling's take on the whole objective criticism thing, what he did a while back, where he just like, he, he tried to, uh, you know, he obviously straw manning the idea of an objective review. And he was like, well, this is a game. It can be played by up to four people. It has controls. It has graphics. And it's just like the very, just a really stupid sort of take on that. And I, th I think I know what you're talking I, about. It's the one where he's, he's this ukulele, right? Where he's like, this game was made by these people. This game has yeah. these colors in it. I'm being objective, laugh my ass off. And it's like, yeah. Uh, that causes, and, and, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say quickly, the court, that causes problems when um, they've set themselves that the metric means anything that's like verifiable within the thing. It's like, cool. So what is verifiable? Let's just say, for example, Iron Man, he's there, right? It's like, yes. His name is Tony Stark, right? Yes. He likes alcohol. Can we say that? Yes. He is a bit sarcastic, can be a bit mean to people. Yes. He cares about people, though. He wouldn't want anyone to die, right? Yes. And they're like, we're, we're just, what's your point? And then we show him killing someone. It's like, oh, so, uh, is this a problem? Is this an incongruence? Objectively? And they're like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> like, yeah. wait, fuck. Uh, and you can do this with loads of aspects of design and basically any craft. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to extend out their logic. Go to work with them. For, I tried to explain this when I was debating fucking Destiny on Adam and Stitch's show. Let them set the, all the parameters and then just start digging away at different things for what it, it applies to. Jim Sterling had the exact same problem. He's like, this only goes as far as saying who made it and what colors are there and what shapes are in it. And it's like, feels like I could take that a bit further. But all right. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a certain human reaction and, and sort of subjective element to it. You know, I'm, I haven't watched your new video on... Uh, Dr. Madness, as Rex put it, but uh, the I'm sure you'll have <laughs> his name. I'm sure you have moments where you're like, at this scene, I really kind of felt it. His, you know, his acting was good. I mean, how do you measure his acting in a in an objective value? Can't really. You can just some people might react to it positively, some people might react to it differently. But you can say, okay, well, in scene nine of Doctor Strange. He said blah, and now in this movie, in scene forty-two, he said something completely contradictive. Was he lying, or was it just bad script writing? Things like that. Yeah, make a lot, it, but it, a nice mixture of the two uh, is good, and and you can kind of the, the the subjective stuff is is even more powerful if you ground it in objective facts that lead up to that. It's like you know because of this the, this scene, this scene, and this conflict that was established previously, you know this moment hits way harder because there's actually for uh, foreshadowing behind it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. yeah, to be fair, I have no idea where exactly we're going, but it just feels like we've set the groundwork for that. It um, feels like we're going nowhere. <laughs>
I disagree, Rags. I think that's exactly where they're going, and I've based it on what they've said already, so fuck you. <laughs> we could be nice going way. anywhere. We that's could true. be going yeah. nowhere. You need to write a college thesis for your own feelings to be justified, and the college... Also, that's another thing. They always say that. It's like, you just want your feelings to be justified. It's like, so... That can, you can make that sound almost like petty and insecure from one framing, but then if we reverse it and build it from the ground up of, I'd like to do some introspection and write about why I feel the way I do about certain things, like certain stimulus, certain uh, things that go back and forth in life. And when I discover like, ah, oh, the reason I was so angry here when I attacked this creature and it did nothing, and then he attacked me and missed, but it still hit me, was because my expectation was that the hitbox would line up with the model box. And ultimately, like, when it comes to, you know, and you, you explain all of that, and then they're like, you're just mm. trying to justify your little feelings, aren't you? You're like, I guess so. Um, uh, I'm, I'm yes. a little hung up on, you don't need to write a thesis, says I, the self-proclaimed -proclaim video essay writer. Well, but this is their epiphany, Ringy. The epiphany is that he's They don't need to do any of this. <laughs> writer? What is this, then? I was, I was assuming this is the video to say, well, it's called The Curse of Video Game Criticism, so I'm assuming we'll reach... And what is this if not you writing something to validate your feelings? Yeah. This is what you're doing. This is what anybody does when they write any opinion down ever. Mm. It's the shocking to... little, shockingly little introspection I notice in the videos we cover. I so. wonder to whom precisely that uh, criticism is directed, you know? Hmm. Mm. Who could it be? Could it be the developers, maybe? Who can it be? Developers yeah. in general? Mm. Someone else has written doesn't invalidate your own feelings. Sonic Adventure 2 is so stylized and cheesy and funny and stupid. Okay. Oh. Okay. And sometimes fun that it's one of my favorite games of all time, even all right. though the pish posh writer in me is getting upset. Yeah. What? Such an interesting, like, himself. view to have of yourself. Yeah, because if I were, like, having loads of fun with a particular scene in some superhero movie or whatever, and then um, I noticed, like, in the corner of my eyes, I was like, oh, shit, that shouldn't make sense because of the thing, and it's like, oh. I don't immediately go, like, shut up, critic brain, you're cringe, I'm having <laughs> fun. But I also don't yeah. go, shut up, feeling brain, you're cringe too. You, It's like, no, they're, they're friends. They're fine. Yeah, they're like... They're okay yeah. with each yeah, other. They're just the, chilling out. Critic brain is like, oh shit, that doesn't make sense, does it? And heart brain, for lack of a better term, <laughs> like is, <laughs> is like, la la la, oh yeah, whatever, oh, this is funny. Right. Does this person have a second channel where they tackle like a, a very different topic, like like politics or something like that? Because it almost kind of feels like his whole point is, yeah, doing anything about video games is stupid because whatever. It's beneath me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I yeah, do it because it's my job, level. but... I was kind of like, oh, okay. Chill out with the... Sorry, God. I was just chill out with the anger toward your just being critical. It's like, it's okay. Yeah. Remember yeah, like, Resident Evil 8? It's like, oh, that was fun to play. It was fucking garbage. Kind of, yeah. yeah. The, the, part of my, <laughs> the part of me that really enjoyed the movie Bullet Train and the part of me that understood that it's very, very stupid, they oh, get yeah. along. They're friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, um, it almost... Because, cause, yeah, there, there's two parts. There's the part that is just how you feel about everything, but the part where you're trying to be more critical is probably the part that has to do more so with the craft. Mm -hmm. How was everything achieved? How was the game design written? Um, could it have been made better? Or what are the things that actually work? Because, of course, you know, I guess if you want to say criticism is strictly negative, but that seems a bit limiting. Cause, like, there's also things that you can extract that are positive from it, too. They're not like, <coughs> pardon me. It's not one or the other. Yeah, but it doesn't be this... presented that way. I love this mm. point because I was thinking this exact thing because I and I kind of get where this guy is coming from. I think and why he felt motivated motivated to make this video because like I like the Sonic Adventure games as well for some reason because I know that they they are indefensibly janky. <laughs> Like to the point where it's like, did they even play test this? What the fuck were they thinking? But it has this accumulate the both games have this accumulative effect on me where I'm just kind of charmed by them and I enjoy playing through them, even though there are parts that are objectively garbage. And it, like I'm perfectly willing to admit, like, yeah, that part sucks, this part sucks, this was poorly designed. Like anytime you get to a loop de loop in a Sonic Adventure game, it's 
fucking trash unless like <laughs> you just hold forward and hope for the best and hope that it doesn't glitch out and put you through like the floor into a kill zone and then you have to restart from the last checkpoint um but uh it's i find it so interesting that i like them anyway despite how yeah um badly designed they are this and, and it's okay to think both things element yeah yeah, I don't know the whole story behind this video, but what I kind of get is almost a, an attempt to do the whole uh, Angry Joe thing, just a bit more highbrow, where, you know, right. Joe, Angry Joe is like, his immediate reaction is like, oh man, Game of Thrones season eight, best season ever, so-and-so, uh, you know, Loki, 10 out of 10. And then when people say, actually, it sucks, he's like, well, actually, you know. Uh, Are you trying to was, invalidate my experiences? Everything that I feel is totally justified and it's fine and, and I like it and it's okay it, that it's terrible and bad because uh, you can like things. That, and then and then he kind of like quietly back pedals a little bit to to sound a bit more reasonable so that his audience isn't tearing him apart. But in this case, um, I don't know who this creator is, but in this case, it seems like they're trying to sort of intellectualize that concept where it's like, well, actually so-and-so because, you know, nostalgia and I haven't played this game for a long time. So I didn't realize it was actually bad, but I still like it and it's still great. But if I were to objectively write a review, I'd have to say that everything was objectively perfect and amazing and, and explain nothing about it. And it, I don't know, it just seems like a kind of like a, an indie hipster until a, a more highbrow way of doing the same thing. It's like, kind I'm of sorry back. you think that you've gathered such a shitty audience. I mean, that must feel really bad that you feel the need to say these things, but I don't have that issue. Yeah, you just say, well, yeah, I know it's not the perfect game, but I like it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I never liked that, yeah. the whole we have to go to, like, I'm not saying it's perfect, as if that's ever something that was <laughs> thought that you were saying, but people say it yeah. all the time when you criticize something. I'm not saying it's perfect. <laughs> But I like it as if you can only like perfect things. Yeah. Yes, yeah, stay mad. You'll get I don't want to judge when... this video too early, but it does seem like the, the what, where he's going with this. Well, I'm not liking like... the vibes. Well, there's there's some the vibes. deep soft vibes part of me that does like this game, so maybe I should just disregard the critic side of it. And it's he weird. is looking at Why... it as like one or the other. Why can't they coexist? And yeah, but this, it's not yeah. just that. It's the vibe of like the critic guy is this pompous, annoying. It's like, oh no. Yeah, well, yeah, like you've right. arrived upon your enlightened now that yep. you figured out something that was pretty obvious, which is, you know, you can feel things that aren't reflective of, uh, I guess, what a more critical eye would um, conclude. That's not Fun. like a big brain take. Yeah, the real so intellectuals didn't feel the need to <laughs> give this out into the universe as if they've discovered, you know, something incredible and grand. No, the yeah. real... The real intellectuals teach uh, talk themselves into liking Blade Runner. That's what the the real big uh, problem uh, is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope. I wonder how many watch throughs it'll take. <laughs> that it's one of my favorite games of all time. Even though the pish posh writer in me is getting upset. Yeah, stay mad. You'll get your chance when. If there's a pish posh writer inside of me, then he needs to leave, and we need to have an exorcism. <laughs> we need to have a discussion about boundaries. I will hire the Pope to exorcise this demon from my soul. Inside view, there are two pish posh critics. Frontiers, which one out. wins? It's time for a stupid <laughs> the video. one you who make it so this is for. The main reason I'm making this video is because I feel like the issue extends beyond just myself or oh. game reviewers and writers in general. You know what they say? Everybody's, Everybody's a, a critic. Crack. Wait, who says that? Oh, it's fucking Zach from League of Legends. <laughs> Whether it's people looking to argue on the internet or give their huh? detailed review on Steam. That's one know. of the lines from Zach in League of Legends. This, this is a League of Legends quote. Oh. Oh, okay. But, um, okay, this has gotten slightly more interesting. He's saying this expands into everyone else around the internet. All right. What is our case? I kind of, was, I kind of like what he did there, like telling his own narration to shut up. I don't know. I just thought it was a little creative. He was telling the pish posh thing. writer inside of him to shut up, which I, is yeah. I appreciate that it's it's a likable thing. It just reminds me of Channel Awesome. And I'm... Mm. Yeah, oh, so it's okay. amazing. I've heard of that. I so it's amazing. It. <laughs> Channel Awesome it's got the, awesome in the name, you know. So. I Channel the Awesome is the most appropriately the, named the YouTube channel YouTube. that has ever existed. <laughs> They're that, so awesome. That's oh, not uh, Ego Raptor, is it? Like no, 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 no. Awesome and all that. Okay. So like. Chat would be able to help me out probably because it's bun a bunch of you would have been there too. Metal was there. It was uh, uh nostalgia critic. Phalus was someone I watched. Oh I think I watched yeah. A bit of film okay. Brain. Um, Mrs. I movie Bob. It's like a whole network of creators, including nostalgia critic, right? Yeah. I think I've heard and of that now. All of them 
it, without fucking fail. I don't know why. I don't know if it was mandated by Doug or some shit, but every one of them had to have personas, and they had to cut to them all over the place. They had to run a narrative. It usually had to reflect the film that they were covering. And it always. I yeah. think that. I think that was mandated. I think yeah. they were told that they had to be similar to Doug Walker. In order to be on Channel Awesome, yeah, yeah, um, I don't know if it was all Doug or if it was Mike Machad as well, but yeah, that was from the top down. Like everybody was basically told, "Oh, you're not, you're not overreacting. You're not moving your arms enough. You're not being as wacky and kind of <laughs> yeah, quirky. Like, act like, like a like, forty year old playing an eighteen year old." <laughs> and ironically, yes, it was like you had to be like animated characters because that plays well and it gets people interested and stuff. And I'm pretty sure it's a quote from Doug. He wanted to be like a cartoon, but in real life. Yeah. And in the end, in the end, they basically yeah. just created like. Uh, oh, I was about to say he was in, in the end. He is a cartoon, <laughs> but in real life, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. It totally kind of does. Himself. Yeah, is he like yeah. Judge Doom from uh, from uh, Roger Rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I think to clarify though, Ego Raptor was Game Grumps. Uh, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, for yeah, I was just going to say, God, it's so it weird. The word to think awesome about Game Grumps. The, uh, yeah. Angry Joe know. was was from that from uh, oh yeah Jim Angry Lawson. Joe he was blistered thumbs right that was like a blistered yeah. thumbs yeah right fuck us going back that sounds like a a, a Kojima creation <laughs> to argue punish on Joe the... blistered thumbs became to punish Joe however before we <laughs> proceed so we'd mentioned uh, Angry Joe someone just linked me uh, Angry Joe show put out a video called people are pissed we didn't hate She Hulk episode one so. <laughs> Well, I'll just, I'll, I guess I'll just leave it here. That's for, some, for that to be a thing. We, we, we'll, we'll be able to cover some of the things he said about She-Hulk in our okay. anniversary. Don't worry. Oh, did Angry so, Joe uh, like it? Wow. He likes all kinds of fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he Angry Joe is a horrific media reviewer. Uh, I like his game stuff. His, I, I guess his game stuff is fine, but holy fuck. When he talks about movies, movies and shows, yeah. he's worthless. Very um, stuff was impulse based, you could say. I suppose he's very impulse and non-critical. His initial reaction mean. means a lot to him. Yeah. Oh, I it's don't mind fucking him, yeah. Zach. Sorry, no. the <laughs> Whether it's people looking to argue on the internet or give their detailed review on Steam or make another bizarro concept video essay, there's a lot of people looking to share their opinions. All this right. might be the pettiest thing okay. I've ever been upset about, but I absolutely despise this copy and paste checkbox template that so many people use to review yeah, games. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's shit. Stop doing it. Um... Yeah. Someone said the gameplay in Hellblade was very good. Look, I love Hellblade, yeah. but the yeah, gameplay in that was all the things to serviceable. Fine. Gameplay, it was fine. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. That's a game that I did fine. not play for the channel. Also, wait, out of curiosity, just for all of you, would you prefer to have no information on the game or a review of this kind? Um, uh, I ought. Oh, I almost might say no writing. information. Like from well, some random what, just, well, so, a check, so, just a checkpoint list. Uh, what I'm getting at here is like it sounds like everybody's very against these kinds of reviews, but are you more so against the sort of abilities of the person writing it or the format in general? Uh, probably more the former. I don't think a lot of people can accurately review the game based on this kind of checkboxy thing. I would I would rather them just make a paragraph up, with their thoughts down. in it. Because I yeah, think that might yeah. actually have some information included in it. Yeah, I, I agree. I like, a, I don't know if you ever mm -hmm. had to basically figure out if uh, an Amazon product is just crap or it, it's got a bunch of uh, Astro Church reviews, or whatever. But what I do is I go, I go into the the uh, reviews, stars. I go into the one stars and see if I can find a pattern. If there's multiple people saying the same thing, I'm like, hmm, this might be an issue. Like that, that's right. that's kind of reading between the words and kind of seeing like, oh, well, this. The hinge broke in a month. Oh, I was using it's great until you, you know a year later. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, I, I much rather get people to write it because otherwise you can get just you know astroturfed reviews or you know bot farms just posting five stars and you have no no idea if it's any good or not. But if, if you actually had to read the reviews and you find out that it's actually just a bot generated oh. lump and of I garbage, think, but it, yeah. and if you have someone who just writes like just a paragraph or half a paragraph's worth of info, it might just be about one issue that they found. 
And I could use that in conjunction with a lot of other reviews as I'm scrolling by. And that's just like a data point on, oh, this person said this about the 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 balance or the 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 way that how well it runs and the performance or some sort of bug or issue and even that's if, if that's all I get from that review then that's something I can consider or it's just like these I just I get such little value out of it that I kind of just I would I just skip over them they don't mean anything to me I'm not sure I'm convinced because I've never ever ever even seen these before I didn't know they existed I didn't know this is a thing yeah. but in concept oh, convinced of I'm well. So if someone told me like, do you know that this is how people are reviewing things on Steam now? I'd be like, huh. I see it here and there. And then, well, is it, whether or not it's true, I'm just saying. So theoretically, what do I believe uh -huh. about that? I'm just like, I don't really know. I guess like, if I can get a better screenshot of this. Is there one where? On okay, so if I was reading, if I saw this about a new game, gameplay very good, graphics beautiful, audio amazing, I'm not like. Could, w w would I find this more valuable if it were a sentence saying, I thought the gameplay was very good, the graphics were absolutely beautiful, and the audio was amazing, full stop. You know, like, if, if it was... Yeah. I don't... Uh, surely we can consume it in the similar... Fringy, what do you think about that? I'd consider Help me those similar. I, like, I think I, I'd, I'd consider well, those two things very similar. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of the times when people write value. Steam reviews, they're just like one or two things about the game, and then they write it down. Because I'm trying to figure and out it's what more the... specific. Look at, this, uh, look at this format. So gameplay very good. It's like that's not helpful. Yeah. Uh, so is, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm assuming then it's more so I, that uh, it's just not enough information. Like we would take issue with these if it's just the information. It's too gone broad and them. diluted. Right. Right. I I and I, if you're gonna go that broad and diluted, I think don't waste my time. Just give me a thumbs up or thumbs well, so, down. So this is well, a funny. All thing. of the work they put into like the broad strokes of these things, I'd rather they just gave me a couple sentences about something they hate or really like. Yeah. Right. Funnily enough, because like, this isn't reason, gonna be the only review I read anyway. The reason I don't know about any of this probably is because what I rely on is the uh, current like new reviews and over overall reviews, and um, if they're yeah. overwhelmingly positive, I'm pretty much guaranteed a good game. Uh, we thought about this before, but like the sort of metric mm -hmm. on Steam of the um, aggregate review is like the best of any aggregate reviews ever. They seem so they fucking consistent. Yeah, it's um, if a game gets an overwhelmingly positive. You're probably gonna like it, whereas if mm. a film gets like a overwhelming or positive, like, oh, yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. And so, what's funny about that is that though, guys. if I saw the overwhelming positive, I garner more value out of that than seeing several reviews that say gameplay very good, graphics masterpiece, audio exactly. amazing. Like, so, like I'm with you on that. It's just um, what did we have before this format came out? A bunch of people writing out paragraphs that oftentimes were as about as vacuous as this. No offense to random Steam reviewers. I'm, I'm, I, don't want to be I, I think I notice when I when I scroll through Steam reviews, even people who just have a little, just, they just put a couple sentences down. They were compelled to do that because of some issue they found in the game, or there's something in particular they really like. And because if you're going to review a game, I would never just copy paste some format and check boxes. Yeah. I feel like if that's not the most, not really super informed or passionate people might tend to do that. Instead, they want to write out in their words what their issue or specific praise is. Um, I want to make sure yeah. people understand I am not saying it is 100% reliable. I'm just saying it's pretty reliable compared it to how tends to be unreliable every other aggregate is. Because someone said, RE8 is overwhelmingly positive. It's like, well, funnily enough, as Metal mentioned, I had fun playing that game. And I completely, yeah. I know, I, I understand fun. perfectly why it's given overwhelmingly oh, positive. Yes. Like, it, I don't feel lied to with knowing that it's got overwhelmingly positive. Meanwhile, with something like Multiverse of Madness, I'm like, did people really rate this high? Did they even know what was happening? Come on. <laughs> like, who are the... Multiple yeah. friends who have it in their top five Marvel movies. I'm like, and will it be well, that? now you have five less friends. Will it yeah. be... Will they keep it after another five come out, I wonder? I don't know. Uh, but some of them are going like, oh, I don't really like Marvel movies, but I love Sam Raimi. And that that's the one that confuses me the most, because I'm like, that's almost specifically why I hate the movie as much as I do. <laughs> because of Sam Raimi's involvement? Well, just because I think it, it, it seems to me like someone skinned a Sam Raimi film and then puppeted it around in a PG-13 Disney film. <laughs> and that bothers me as a Sam Raimi I don't fan. feel like it's wearing its skin other than like there are little, like he's got some bits on it. I'll tell you like what it some is, of his... Wearing his huh? hat. Fake hat. Yeah, uh -oh. that's a fake Sam Raimi hat. Fake hat, yeah. Damn. Take off that fake hat. A real hat. 
Not even. It comes right off. <clears throat> Speaking of okay. fake hat, I saw um, Abraham Lincoln's actual hat that he was wearing when he was when he went to Ford's theater and got fucking killed. Wow, that's, that's a real hat. Happened. That's his, fake. He yeah. should have kept it on. Some of those have metal in them, don't they? It actually probably deflect the bullet a little bit, maybe. No, probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. In no not. way whatsoever, no. I imagine. <laughs> well, some of them, so, uh, well, interesting enough, I don't, that might have been already out of uh, fashion, but there was, you know, the Mad Hatter? That's based mm. on uh, people putting, I think, was it lead? They put, used to put mercury. lead in, in mercury or lead, or, uh, one of the two. Some uh, safe in, metal, yeah. Yeah, a perfectly safe metal that would actually drive them crazy over time. So that's where that comes from. Mad but as I was a gonna, hatter. Mad as a hatter, yeah, exactly. I know I was it was cool. It was fashion at one point for people to wear like metal skull caps for some level of protection, but they would they would dress it up and have a hat specifically over it. But I think that's a total that's a different time when people had to yeah. actually be feel like they should be concerned about having some level of head protection in their daily lives, which generally we don't have to worry about now, thank goodness. Yeah, I was going to mention it was a sort of format I kind of stumbled into and I didn't really realize what I was doing until a commenter kind of identified. But I, I did a couple I don't really do many like straight up reviews anymore, but I did a couple review series where I would just kind of pick a, uh, games out of a specific sort of theme or genre. And all the reviews were positive, like they're all recommendations. So the entire review is basically caveats. So I would say I like this game. And I think you might like it, too, if you like games like Blah. You appreciate mechanics like Blah. You enjoyed uh, similar games such as Blah, or and you don't mind the occasional, you know, uh, turn-based action or this or that or the other. Like basically, the whole review was, you know, a thumbs up essentially, like a Steam review. But I would just go over the caveats of what my, what you may or may not like about the about the game. I guess that's what all reviews are, but specifically highlighting, hey, if you don't like games, do Blah. <laughs> But like a like a one paragraph uh, caveat or or like a you know a, an asterisk basically on the review is like I love it, but if you don't like turn based games, you probably won't dig this. Like that would be way more useful than graphics awesome and and sound yeah, amazing. If if every Steam review was just three things I like, three things I dislike, and everyone it's everyone just did that, it would be insanely helpful because oh, yeah. the patterns would become very apparent. Very much. Right. Or if every Steam review was just one thing that you really like and why. And one thing you really hate and why that would probably be even better, especially because you take reviews as a group. Boy, that would be helpful. Yeah. And you get to see what that person holds in high value for that game. Like, I, I swear to God, I think Jim Sterling reviewed Fallout 4 positively because you could have multiple partners. And that was like the, his the best thing about the game to him. <laughs> All right. I'm not even joking. <laughs> This might be the pettiest thing I've ever been upset about, but I absolutely despise this copy and paste checkbox template that so many people use to review games on Steam. This strange attempt at organized objectivity entirely removes what? the explanation. Okay. Organized what? objectivity. What? Why would that? Having uh... a consistent standard. Well, so, okay, to <laughs> clarify, when someone says graphics very good, you... <laughs> Like, why can't that Not just mean very, they like them mm. a lot? Why does that have to... I'm I'm a little bit lost. Organize objectivity. I don't fucking get it, man. I, I think he's referring to the concept of having a, a standard. like, a, like a, Or like a checklist. Make so it yeah, real scientific what, yeah. to him. Yeah, I feel I like think he, he, think, he sees it as a bit too cookie cutter. Uh, like, I, I see it just as like green text, you know what I mean? Where it's like super point form. Graphics, this, you know, gameplay, that. And uh, I don't necessarily object to that, but it's but it's I prefer ultimately like a little bit of elaboration where it's just like, yeah, this is what I think. This is my brief experience it, of it. It feels to me that it's just like wrong target almost like organized object. Like, like why we you could have an organized objective paragraph that talks about things in detail. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, what about can... audio good is like objective to him. You know what I mean? Like, why is he labeling it that? It's, yeah, it's a it, weird label, yeah. yeah. Organized objectivity entirely removes the explanation or context that would make Dark Souls difficulty or watching paint dry gameplay make a hint of sense. So, oh, so, so I'm so, so fucking lost. Made. I'm so, absolutely lost. Yeah, so me too. I, I'm a little bit, it seems like the point being made with the checklist is where well, there's no argument supporting it, so it's worthless. And it's like, 
sure. But how does that spin off to anybody trying to, I guess for lack of a better description, like separate their emotional response and try to go through it as clinically as possible? Like mm-hmm. all the only criticism here is you didn't substantiate anything, which is fair. Yeah, um, it's also just a like a Steam review. I don't know. It's not a, a dissertation. It's just like I didn't like this. And oh, so yeah, you see enough yeah. of those, you go, I Oh, think, then maybe this part isn't good. I think also this kind of Steam review where it's just like, oh, graphics good or whatever, those tend to not be upvoted very much in terms of like most helpful no. reviews. So yeah. when you go on a Steam, you know, page and you look at the reviews, it's usually the most helpful that come up first, right? These kind of reviews don't really get that much traffic, so I don't really think they're that important. I would I would go out and say I don't really see those views at those reviews much anymore because no. Uh, can, can I re- rewind like ten seconds? I'll tell you exactly what he did. Sure. He went to one stream, uh, one Steam user, and looked through all the reviews. This particular Steam user does oh. that type of review every single time because I I noticed every single game he'd scroll past and he sees he saw different games. And for every game, he'd have the same format of review. So he found one person who did it this way. Yeah. But I don't yeah. necessarily think it's a, a, an epidemic problem. I, I hardly see those. And, and uh, to your point, I think that the most helpful ones are the ones that people upvote and actually say specific yes. things like, yeah, this is kind of like civilization, but with, with starships or whatever. Maybe the guy who does that checklist format is actually the pish posh writer inside. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I had a question about that. Is the pish posh writer inside me uh, a book on criticism or a porno? A, por- a pish posh writer? Like he writes a porno that's very high class? No, no, no. The, the pish posh writer inside me. Is, is that the title of a porno or a title of <laughs> Like he's writing. Oh, the title of a porno. Oh, okay. Sounds like a Chuck Tingle novel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Last oh, no. coming on. <laughs> <laughs> So just to confirm what you were saying, Indigo, the guy filtered uh, the results to be only reviews from that one user who was using that template oh. across multiple games, mm-hmm. okay. and then made it seem like it everybody was doing that. Is that is that what you said? Uh, sorry if I'm getting it wrong. Yeah, well, I would say I've seen them every once. I see, you see them every once in a while, but they're not prevalent. You just notice them every once in a while because people are not going to. They're just going to just. Here's some of my light thoughts on my review. Yes. Can we do no. a playback speed? I just wanted to show uh, how the, the screen looks like. Uh, if you go to a user on Steam and look at the reviews, it looks like one user. Right. Um, can we do playback speed on on this? Or when no? you say playback speed, what do you mean? You mean slow? Like a ha- half speed? Yeah. 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 Um. Said about, but I absolutely despise this copy. Yeah, that's just the same game. user. These are all different games. Yeah, Wait, it's the, the same, same user. user. Oh, that doesn't really. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Wait, uh... difficulty. How come the middle option is easy to learn, hard to master? And wait, I hate this guy's review not... specifically. <laughs> just call him out. Fuck it. Like this asshole. This one Steam reviewer. This don't do that. It's fine. Is a blot it's on the video game criticism world. I got a bone to pick with this asshole. This is one <laughs> sick son of a bitch. Boxes. So many people use to review games on Steam. This strange attempt at organized objectivity entirely removes the it's explanation or context that would make Dark Souls difficulty or watching paint dry gameplay make a hint of sense. It tell- tells me. Thanks for the random clip of you dying in Dark Souls. Still, I'm still kind of baffled by that statement. I just don't yes, quite follow the context it. this checklist, it doesn't tell you much, but the average Steam reviewer also doesn't tell you much because they're kind fucking of, stupid. Kind of my issue no. with this whole <laughs> idea, like, uh, trying to rip into this for being, like, l- there's lack of information there. It's like, well, yeah, that's the format. I think they knew that when they were writing it. I just, it just looks like it's quick, I guess. It, uh, yeah. You know, like, to be critical, it's, it's being treated as though this is an approach people now have to games. It's like, well, no, that's just that guy's quick review. Why are you... What are you... Yeah. yeah. If anything, I, I load up. If anything, we're better off up. now than ever for billions of reviews Absolutely. that go into all kinds of depth. Like, you'll be fine. There's someone mm-hmm. out there who will get you the thing you need. Be it a one-minute review of a game, five-minute, ten-minute, hour, you'll get them. They're out there. I mean, that guy does Steam reviews where he has a little template... And he he enjoys yeah. filling them in for the games he plays. I yeah, think if you that's follow fun him, too. Like, you get that level of information. Yeah, like, <laughs> as much as I harp on these people, a five-minute video from a person whose opinions you generally align with or trust, saying this game is good, I recommend it. 
Yeah. Easy. That's that's fine. That'll do. How yeah. come we? Next- how come whenever you're getting onto someone, you call it harping on someone? Because a harp is a gentle, pleasant thing. Like if someone harps hoppy? at me, <laughs> you ever tried to like carry a one? Well, harpy is different. Is that right? But a, but a harp is if someone was to harp at me, I'd be like, oh, so like it's almost like you're serenading what I'm saying I, instead I of. <laughs> I yeah. think it's because harps tend to go on, you know, go on for a they, long they time. Resonant. They take a while and they're slow instruments. Like they vibrate a lot. Their tones last. The long one guy time. at the party won't stop playing the fucking harp. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's Jim. He brought his goddamn harp again. He did. He brought the fucking harp again. Like playing the piano while holding the sustain. Panis, you need to talk to Jim about his harp. Not, no, not now. It's, it's just sometime. So don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. <laughs> not in front of him. Don't look at the harp. Just don't. Don't ask him uh, about his harp. That's what he wants you to do. That's why he's carrying around a harp on a cart. Uh, so oh, interesting. Oh, somebody ahead, somebody said more. in chat that. Uh, how come you're not acknowledging the, the hit he just took against Dark Souls? I have no idea if that was what was happening there. That sentence is bizarre well, to me, okay? It no, was so bizarre, yeah. He said, I think I got what he was trying to say. He said that the criticisms, this has Dark Souls difficulty, and the gameplay is like watching paint dry, make no sense. And, I mean, the paint dry one, it's, it's an obvious expression that people use for boring. So just so, saying so, the oh, gameplay so in this saying, game is boring yeah. makes no sense. So he's saying <laughs> Dark Souls difficulty is really engaging, and so if you describe it that way and it turns out it's boring. Is that what he's no, saying? No, no, no. He says that because it was examples from the checklist. Right. That like difficulty, one of the options was Dark Souls. And he's like, so that option makes no sense. I'm like, well, I don't know. Like a lot of game journalists do compare video game difficulty to Dark Souls. And I think if, if like it's a thumbs up for difficulty, it's like, yeah, it's hard. Okay. Sure, well, I get that. That's call, what you're trying to say. You shouldn't call something Dark Souls difficulty just because it's difficult. All right, I'm well, listening yeah, to it again. It's clearly well designed difficulty. I'm listening to it again. I'm yeah. doing my best to understand this People sentence used now. to review okay, games go. on Steam. <laughs> this strange attempt at organized objectivity entirely strange. removes the explanation or context that would make Dark Souls difficulty or watching paint dry gameplay make a hint of sense. And like my argument is that yeah, they could be more clear that they they do make a bit of sense. Mm. Like I get what they're trying to say with it. If you're if they're you're not... like a normie gamer who just uses a template to review a game, they... and you said yeah, it has Dark Souls gameplay, and it's also kind of like watching Paint Try. I'd be like, okay, so the guy thinks it's hard and boring. I have right? seen right. templates like these that have on the difficulty the most difficult difficulty option just says Dark Souls. It it's kind of mean. a it's, it's kind of a thing that's been around for a while. Like I remember before Dark Souls was uh, people's uh, cultural touch point for difficulty. People used to talk about NES hard. Like if you were play the old yeah. uh, NES <laughs> oh, games, yeah. like like uh, yeah, Battle Toads or Ninja Gaiden. Those games were fucking hard, and oh, people yeah. would always use those as like a reference point. Like oh yeah, this is this game's NES hard. You're gonna have a, you're gonna have a rough time with it. Ninja so, Gaiden's hard but doable. I think Battletoads, I think there are parts of that that are just <laughs> legit bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen several yeah. interpretations of his point in chat. I'm trying to keep up. Because he's a skilled communicator. I think it's... <laughs> Basically, I think what he's trying to say is um, if someone is just saying, oh, it's difficulty is Dark Souls and it's gameplay is watching paint dry, obviously those are shorthand for hard and boring. Yeah. I think what he's saying is that there, there should be more to it than that, and just saying that on its own is not enough information. So it's not a knock oh, against so Dark Souls. I, think that, I, think that's no, that's I don't think it's a knock against Dark Souls. Souls. No, no, the fact that, the fact that that was a 50-50 interpretation for people in chat makes me think this <laughs> line could be better. But, I will say, I think that what you said is what he meant to say, but not exactly what he said. I think what he said is that it damn right doesn't make sense. Didn't he say yes. it doesn't make yeah, sense? Yeah, and that's he says it doesn't make sense. I'm like, I well, think it's not good. Or maybe, but or it maybe that is sense. what he actually. Well, maybe I that is what he's trying to say. Well, I think what your what your framing of it was the more charitable and better um, way of saying what I what I think he just said there is that when you say, "Oh, the difficulty is Dark Souls," that doesn't make sense. Whereas what I would say is, "No, that's just nothing. I can't use that information. It's, it's barely anything other than it's hard, I guess." But it's there isn't a lack of hmm. sense. There's just a lack of anything in that. Like, what am I meant to do with that as a statement? It's, I guess it's just the problem of uh, saying a lot, but meeting very little. Um, hmm. I always go to uh, uh, Ahoy, where I think you guys have covered him on, on, this, on this channel before. 
Ahoy, oh, like, will, will basically break down an entire paragraph into like one sentence. He'll just, every word is so meaningful in his scripts generally when he's talking about whether video games or, you know, technology or the Amiga or anything like that. He, he's able to condense a lot of useful information into very few words. Whereas generally, even for shorter form content like this video, I don't think it's very long. They'll just go on and on about something and you really could probably break it down into a few paragraphs of actual data. Yeah, yeah. just like Mahler's videos. Got him. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, 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 here we go. 10,000 likes. What? <laughs> Aren't I clever? <laughs> it tells me to nothing about how the person actually felt, right. nor is yeah. there any Sorry. interesting evaluation of what the game might be trying to convey. I mean, it's a very basic I, I mean, opinion. what are you expecting? That's what you're going to get. Is, that is what it is. a Steam is. user review, man. But it's not just a Steam user a... review. It's a very specific format of a Steam user review from I'm... one account. Like, yes, it's it's designed not to give you very in-depth feelings of the person's thoughts and feelings. Well, of course. Okay. Isn't it a thematic definition of what the game's going for, an analysis like that? Why would... He's framing it as though that's a very common way to review games that everyone's now on board with. Like, we've lost the soul of analysis. Like, what are you talking about? No. You yeah. see them every once in a while. I swear I'd go back, to, I'd go back yeah. to affirming my review critique distinction where a review is just a description of your experience with it and a recommendation based on that, whereas a critique is more analytical in nature. These people down in the Steam reviews, they're reviewing to try and recommend a game. They're yeah, not, it's product recommendation. They're not necessarily there for substantive analytics. Describing the product more mechanics. than anything else. Still not a fan of right. splitting those words that way. I feel like there's so much more broad that you could have all kinds mm. of crossovers. He's yeah. found the perfect scapegoat. Like, really, the, the video title could be I really don't like the stream reviews by a Gary template. That could be the scene. That could be the entire review. It's like, this this guy, don't that's like fucking, him. That's <laughs> fucking bastard, dude. Yeah, Gary's a dick. <laughs> no, just the whole template family. They're just like this. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Templates Mother was a too. dick. Like, I know where they got it. Sister was a dick. Don't ask. <laughs> Graphics? I play games that could probably run on my 2007 iPod. Okay, so when they say the graphics okay. are good or not, that doesn't mean the game is good or not, does it? Yeah, You're also, asking... you don't have to care. You just it's a it, component part. And you don't have to care. You're it, right, does yeah. any reviewer, the, any reviewer who talks about the graphics, are you this upset that they talked about graphics in their review? Well, imagine... I would expect someone to mention the graphics in their review. What he just said to me is not quite as stupid, but as like on the level of being like music good. Why would I care? I'm deaf. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, you well, don't that, care about it, but that, it's it. That review yeah. wasn't specifically written for you. It's, it's fine that you don't care if the graphics are good or not. That's still information. Touch. What the fuck is a graphic gameplay? I'm not. Even you don't start know what they with... mean. I'm sorry. What? Oh, there's your problem. What? You don't actually know what the words mean. <laughs> you don't know what the <laughs> Wait, are. Hang on. <laughs> Is he... <laughs> did, did we jump ahead to assuming a better point was made and a worse one got made? Question of what the game might be trying to convey. Graphics? I play games that could probably run on my 2007 iPod Touch. What the fuck is a graphic? Game... Are we saying that... Like, is he doesn't know what a, a graphic joke? is because well, he doesn't play games that all... Not all the games he plays have good graphics, so he's like, I don't even know what a graphic is. Is that the joke? Well, you know I what this even, normie with a the, checklist probably means by graphics just, good. But he doesn't care how good the graphics are because good games don't have to have... Is that, I thought that was... The, yeah, I think that's probably... The point that, is like, oh, not every game has to have good yeah. graphics, so therefore why are you rating a, really a game based on stupid, graphics? Yeah, but, stupid argument, but because it, <laughs> we, I'd like yeah. to know how good the it, graphics are anyway. It matters a lot to yeah. people. I actually have a very specific, I have a very specific example. I just moved, and I was talking to one of the movers uh, that I helped uh, hired for a couple hours, and we we're talking about games. It's like, oh, I noticed you have a tattoo from Elder Scrolls. Right on. It's like, yeah, love Skyrim. It's like, oh, right, looking forward to the next game. Yeah, graphics are gonna be awesome. That's like the entire thing he had to say about it. Mm, I'm like, that's okay, that, that guess that's all that matters to him. Yeah, it's fine. plus. If a game has bad graphics, so that and if everyone consistently says a game has bad graphics, that's that's something worth like taking into consideration, especially because that could mean okay. things don't load properly. Oh yeah. Um there are there's uh, clashes in the visual style. It just well, looks Assassin's Creed, horrendous. Assassin's ugly. Creed Unity uh, suffered from very they had very, very good art design, but in horrible faces, graphical bugs. Yeah. What I find that 
strange about this coming format is the fact that it's clearly become a I'm going to highlight one and then tell you why this stuff is lacking, I don't know, depth or information when you f I feel like you've already made that point, but your first one was that you don't care about it, not that it lacked information. We're not off to a great start of proving mm -hmm. what's wrong with this format, which I think we all agreed it lacks information, lacks depth, lacks detail, lacks context. So, I don't know, but yes. like I'm curious what the knockback for the rest of them will be, like gameplay. Again, I, I would happily just concede, like, yeah, I don't know what any of these words really mean. That's the problem. And also, I bet the person who's making these reviews would agree that they're not in-depth. Yes. Gameplay? I'm not even going to start with that one. Audio? Okay. okay. Just, so, what? Um, Isn't that the point the of this point? video? <laughs> like, what was uh, yeah, I thought, aren't, isn't that your job? Okay. That little list that he had there, that's like a joke, right? That's not like a standard that's used, is it? I like, assume like, it is. Meh, and it's just gameplay are both the, options on there. Like, fuck. Yeah, well, I was like about to say, last two, the, the last two are redundant. Because yeah. watch paint dry instead also means don't. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the video creator like Maybe made this list himself as I, a I gag. Think, like, I think he did. Yeah, this looks like a Google form or something. Oh, okay. Like, I, mean, uh, I, I, I don't think this is anything that actually is official. Like, I remember back in the day, official. it used to be pretty standard. Like, remember GameSpot? I don't know if IGN did it, but GameSpot would, all, would have, like, your graphics, music, uh, or maybe they'd bring it over to sound, you know, graphics, sound, gameplay, and, like, maybe multiplayer, and then have, like, various different kind of stat points. And then the, the overall was an average. Game Pro the had, yeah. uh, famously had fun factor as one of its criteria. Yeah, it, it, it's a stupid system, but they tried to itemize it. It's like, yeah, this game looks awful it, it you know it, it doesn't it's nothing to look at doesn't sound great but hey the gameplay is fun or maybe it's actually a, a middling game but has an amazing soundtrack i mean i think the halo fans in this call could could tell you how much impact a really good soundtrack how much that enhances a game already like if it's a decent game with an amazing soundtrack it can make it a lot more enjoyable but it, it things that uh are totally it really matters to who you're talking to. Like I, I, I try to convince my friend, you know, yeah, VR is really cool. You can see the depth, you can see that, and that. And then I forget that he actually is blind in one eye, <laughs> and so can't see the depth <laughs> factor. That's like a big. That's like a big uh, down point on VR because that's like half of the experience. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I think it kind of probably this sort of form format uh, review, which I honestly don't see very often, probably was inspired by that sort of like yeah, the Game Pro. Uh, Nintendo Power, PC Gamer, what have you, sort of, you know, we're going to itemize this, these stats and these it numbers to make them look more official. It. An organized yeah. aspect to it. Like, on the eyes, it's very, it looks very structured and good for just visually the way that it looks. Yeah. It seems for to give... For medium, it, too, it's a style, like visual style, even. It also tends to, like, give a little bit more gravitas, like, oh, we've done this whole scoring system, and so this is our official number based on our scoring system. When, in reality, it's an arbitrary number. You could pick a seven or an eight, doesn't really have any objective standard to it. You just happen to give it that higher number because you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, the whole like gameplay very good down to just don't. I mean, I, I'm assuming we're all here, we can reasonably assume this is supposed to just mean one to six and how did it score out of six? And mm -hmm. that's that's all you're supposed to really because again, like being like, what do these words even mean? And it's like, well, he was gonna you yeah. have to choose words to go here. Um and when you've got only one or two or three words to choose from, or whatever, it's just like, yeah, you're probably not gonna be able to do much better than this. The limitation of the format, I just, I think that the, the premise that's bugging me about all of this is the idea that we're all doing this with games now or something. It's like, no. I'm not even gonna start with that one. Audio? Okay, does that mean music or sound design or balancing? Or What's funny about that? Ask the guy who made the template. What's funny about that is you can dig further than those you just said too. Like all of them are gonna have subcategories as well. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. audience? At... Yeah. Sign me up for the grandma games. <laughs> Wait. Well, like okay. who it's meant for? Okay, so, maybe. So that's not a Is good that a response. genre? To be fair, Sorry. being like intended <laughs> audience, audience isn't that kids, bad. teens, adults, that's a useful piece of information. Yeah, that's actually useful. Yeah. That's like what a rating is on a video game that you've had basically your entire life. This is. Wait, why is grandma at the... Oh, that's a horny has a grandma. I mean, back in... <laughs> She's on the bottom, not near the kids version. <laughs> Well, also, like in like the Nintendo <laughs> Wii era, there were a lot of like old folks' homes that just 
had video game consoles that the old people would play, and I'm certain there were some games that were better for old people to play than others. I, I just, I, 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 I didn't know that we're now throw, we, we've gotten so overzealous about all of this. We're throwing out like audience intent. Like, why would we throw that out? Age rating, yeah. This so, is essentially age I'm rating. A, I'm, I'm a little. Wasn't something that he said earlier in the video? Oh, I don't need to write a whole dissertation on why I think a game is good or bad. But now the criticism is that there's nothing here to latch on to. Mm. So, like, what are we doing? Pick Maybe one. I, mm. Do you want it was to be it a dissertation on why he liked it, it or to justify why he liked oh, it? Oh, well, no. He, he was originally shitting on, like, the notion of spending a lot of time writing up a big script, explaining, like, objectively why something is good or bad. That was something that he didn't like. But now but these are objective him. enough. They're not accurate enough. Well, I mean, I, I don't, he, he, would, he just said that there's nothing Maybe here. Maybe he wouldn't like, say it that way. I Wait, don't, there's a there's a Goldilocks zone. What I'm saying, I don't understand like <laughs> what point he's trying to make. Which one do you want, or d what do you want? L what does this have to do with your original point? Well, what do you want? The, gold, the gold zone that he wants is for you to tell an anecdote about how you played it as a kid <laughs> and your sister poured coke into the machine. That's what he wants. Oh yeah, my. sign me up for the grandma games difficulty. Dark Souls is unironically an option. Oh, hey. grind. <laughs> Hey, I called it. I mentioned it earlier. It's a real thing. See, it's been confirmed. Mm -hmm. Hashtag vindicated. Grinding uh, yeah, isn't I even really a don't concept like that. Like, in really so many video just means games. Dark Souls. Story. Well, That's yeah. not, now he's point. very yeah. specifically arguing against this template. But like a it, lot of people hate grinding in games. I was about so to say, like, what, yeah. telling, pe telling people that the game is grindy is valuable information. Well, yeah, it, it is. Imagine it, I it said, legitimately is. Uh, is the game an RPG and someone goes, RPG, that's not, why would you even care? Not all games are RPGs. Like, well, so, yeah, I was asking if it was. <laughs> like, Don't what? even get me started on gameplay. Which yeah, is, is, this the, is this based on the template from that uh, Gary Temple didn't. guy? Or I'm trying to figure well, out where he, he is. He's acting as if form. these are not his. He's, a, he's saying that these aren't his. I guess this is just one that he found. I think he's assuming... been a straw man this whole time. I thought this was... <laughs> he's just... well, okay, so treating it as that's embarrassing. If this is made I think up... this is real. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm hoping it's real because the fact is, like, this isn't a very good response to this. Like, you could have just said it was shallow, but instead you're going way too Ironically far. Ironically, an option. And saying grind? like, why would you talk about whether or not there's a grind? Some games don't even have grind. And it's like you see the option, nothing. That's to the grind? option. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is legitimately useful, and if exactly. games had this, I could, this is information that I could actually use. If almost every option I see for a game is, like, the top three options, I'm like, oh, okay, there's not really much grinding in this game. That's good. I was about to say, so if I was playing this game for the first time and it ticked only if you care about leaderboards and ranks, I'd be like, oh, okay, sweet. Then if it said, like, you'll need a second life for the grinding in this shit, it's like, oh. All right, mm -hmm. well, we're playing a different game then. Exactly. This isn't actually... Hmm. One to cite for being worthless. Grind? Grinding isn't even a concept in so many video games. Then it's Story? the top yeah, option. Good. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the no I mean, grinding would be... Yeah, like Malik yeah. said. Well, here's another thing. You can... It's a template. You can just remove things that not, do not so apply to that game. Or you can just yeah. fucking filter it so you don't just read them. Know. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, if you see it, just skip over it and read yep. the other seven. That's what, yeah, the, the there's game. a scroll on your mouse. It's super helpful. Any video Some games. of these reviews I don't care for. So, eh, so well, what do we think I... first about this? <laughs> um, story, no story, some law, average, good, lovely. I like the... Mildly <laughs> interested. I think this it, could be could somewhat replace useful. Your life? I just like that some law is <laughs> like guess, placed like at like the low end. Uh, the Dark Souls I like equipment this... or... I like this mm. better because this. There, there's at least a rank, an identifiable rank to this. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like, if like you look no at it from story. top to bottom. Yeah. No story, some lore, average. It's like bad, okay, good. Like, you can tell, like, there's actually well, you, differentiation between each. Well, this is great. Great. a story so that has a lot of story but is bad. I was, I was about to say, this conflates two at the same time. It goes from whether or not the story is there to story being there is a good whether thing. Good, yeah. You know, it's like, wait, yeah. wait hang on. Yeah. Right. And also, yeah. a story being good, it will replace your life. That's weird. I, I have nowhere stupid. to put the Telltale games. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fantastic <laughs> point. I'd rather have no story than a bad story. Like a, a game that will just not shut up, but has terrible writing is the oh, yeah. worst. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Agree. yeah. Yeah, the problem with this one is you need like the presence of a still like amount of how focused the game story gameplay ratio maybe, and then you need quality of writing or something like that if you're gonna split these. 
story? Okay, but like how would a single checkbox warn me that before your eyes could throw hands? It's not gonna. What? It's not gonna. What? Yeah. It's not supposed what? to. Not was that a specific character well, in a game? Like, okay, so we need to reset. All we're highlighting is the uh, limitations of the format, Why? which, yeah, uh, yeah. Why was the format made? It's like, to be as in-depth as possible. It's like, no. It's no. to tell you something as quickly as it can. <laughs> I, no. Do yeah. I need to know what this wolfman's intentions are in order to enjoy the game before I play it? Man wakes up in the morning, looks at his fucking door, and gets super angry because it's a door. Just oh no, it's only a door. Really mad that it is what it is. <laughs> you lied to me. You said you'd be the Nadia door. <laughs> you're just a regular. You're a fake door. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fake door. Real, door. Real doors have Mr. Tumnus behind them. Yeah. <laughs> mm, doesn't so, open. You kind of, kind of can. It's kind of conflicts with what he said before, because before, based oh, on this dude. template, he's using. He had like a you know kids teenagers adults grandma who's like into porn i guess but like wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't the idea of like more of a, an adult themed game you would expect the story to be more mature and have more graphic violence and things like that like that even based on the stupid template that he's plucked from somewhere it kind of does cover that he it does cover the idea that this guy with i guess he says he, he threw hands i'm not playing this game so i don't know what he's talking about this guy he didn't even mention hands. what game it was <laughs> um, no, no idea. This next one, this could be useful if it was hours 1 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 yes. plus. If it was yeah. that, would be this great. is unfortunately, mm. short could mean anything, average, I don't know exactly. Like, I can interpret average what type of game. Short, average, yeah, long average could be like game, yeah. 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. It could be, but I don't know. Um, yes, average for actually... a Call of Duty campaign is not the same as average for a Japanese role playing game. Yeah, exactly. I was just thinking yeah. that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is average these days? That's just, so this that's the problem with this one. How Does he nail it? MMO? Does he nail the problem with this one? Time. Oh boy, the hour count MMO session is another topic for another video. Right? Is it? He, did, he like, didn't nail it. Uh, he didn't nail video. it. <laughs> Listen, listen, listen that... in case anyone missed it, just, I just want to play it again. Yeah, right? uh, I, yeah. I feel like I laid out the best argument against it. This was his. Single checkbox warned me that before your eyes could throw hands. Game time? Oh boy, the hour count obsession is another topic for another video. Yeah, like you you screwed up. You screwed up. Um, the reason yeah. why, the <laughs> reason why a lot of people value the game time knowledge, and we went, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this on fan before, but people in chat have said this. Some people do not have the time for uh, what you they they're not in a position in life where they're just like I'll just play anything for any amount of time and hope the experience enough isn't it? they're like no I need information I need this thing to take this this amount of time this level of story this mm -hmm. kind of engagement I got work to do I got a life to lead family to look after I need this shit to be delivered on time this is why like same thing with movies mm. right it's just like that's a two hour guarantee I'm in and out hopefully I go for a good one with games it's like. Yeah, uh, how long does it take to beat this thing? I'd like to get it done within the week, uh, or with day. And it's like it's Elden Ring. It's like, oh, you, you might not be able to. And if this yeah. guy just bursts in, going, you shouldn't care about the length. It should be about how good the game is. It's like, yeah, that's great. How yeah. long is the game? Yeah, right. So I found just... I found what I think he based this video off of. I linked it in the chat. It's uh, I had to dig pretty deep. I had to do game review form template Dark Souls, and it was like the twentieth result or something. And all it it's got some of the same verbiage. It's even got the kids, teens, adults, grandma, and Dark Souls as as a difficulty level, and even has uh, you know long enough for a cup of coffee, short, average, long to infinity and beyond. So I think he basically took that, you know, chopped out each each uh, question section, and then put it into his video format with all like the purple, you know, pretty background or whatever. And but this is hardly the gold standard of review. This is just some random. It's it's. Uh, something something dot github dot io, just something yeah. some dude made. It's nothing some official. Cherry picked thing. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. yeah. I just realized as well. Yeah, the obvious, the most common argument. So if a new game is coming, let's say God of War Ragnarok is on its way out, and then me and Metal are told like I can tell you the game time if you want to know, and we go N no, I don't care about gaming hours. I only care about the quality <laughs> of the game. I'd be like, well, no, I I'd like to know that it's like, uh, are we are we looking at like thirty plus, fifty plus, eighty plus? Like yeah. it, it would be nice to know that. Because, yeah, I'm mm. hoping it's not a fucking 10-hour game. I, that, that would be a surprise and kind of lame. Disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and more and more, as, as people get older and get busier and have kids or whatever, they actually, shorter, con uh, condensed experiences become more attractive to people yeah, exactly. who don't have 
500 yeah. hours yeah. to put into an yeah, RPG. Yeah. And so, so this whole like quite oh, an important thing. Everyone being obsessed with length, it's like it's perfectly reasonable to want to know the length of the game. That's fine. Yep. Well, okay. so this is the impression I get. A lot of the time when I've noticed people bring up oh, the obsession with length, it's usually to criticize people who uh, focus more on games that are longer and get upset when they see a game that's got a shorter length. It was mentioned, you know, if you once you get older and your life gets busy, you want games that are shorter, and everybody recognizes that as totally valid. Conversely, there's the person who's like, I have in my budget enough money to buy one game per year. You know what? I think that one guy might have good reason to be interested in finding out if a game is really long. Yep. And then for them, games that are really... But that guy's treated like an asshole a lot of the time. Exactly. Like, oh, wow, long. Yeah. Yeah, like imagine that. wanting more content. Cringe. Yeah. Price? Oh, boy. Count Obsession is another top... Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What just happened? Wait, what is it? Back. 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 Their uh, video. Yeah. Price? Oh. Wait, I want to see the fucking... God damn it. I want us to the judge it before he does. Obsession yeah. is another topic for another video. Price. Pause. Right, so we yeah, we go, will go. judge it before he does. Price. It's free. With the price. Okay, this isn't... <laughs> <That's just laughs> if, if it's on sale, if you have some spare money left, well, what is that? What? Isn't, is, I don't mean an overall assessment. I would like to believe I have spare money left so I can buy a game, so I think that's like a so, criteria you have to do it. I think it means time. if you have money left while buying other games during a sale. I don't know. This is this is a Why weird one because they clearly want to answer yeah. the question: Is it worth the money? And it's like, so first one, it's free, therefore it's up to you, I guess, because it's got nothing to do with the price. So the second one, How worth the price. The... I what I price? Full price? <laughs> I guess yeah, this will be for. Problem. I guess it must be about full price. Well, because he said if it's on sale, it's like, well, what about if the regular price drops? You're not helping me. Just say full price yeah. sale, like. Half price. The, I think we should assume what is it's a seventy dollar remake of a game you've already sold twice. Well, just give me yeah. monetary value: sixty bucks, forty bucks, twenty bucks. You know, you the, don't, you probably... the incorporation of humor in these, where the idea is to be brief, but then it's like, oh, we got to make it funny. <laughs> also, well, you, but then yeah. you have to like decipher like what does each yeah. tier mean. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it just gets in the way of it. Sorry, uh, I interrupted you, Rag. Sorry. I, this one's because worth the if it's on if you should get it when it's on sale that means it's now worth the price so it checks two boxes right yeah oddly <laughs> um, and also yeah. they could actually check three because if you have some spare money left it's on sale which makes it worth the price it is now three of the six options <laughs> yeah, if um, it's free it's worth the price too so but yeah. isn't the price because if they're going for price tiers then you know the stop fucking calling me um, but there is a no. um. Sorry, like, this, sorry, my phone went off for the third time and like I'll call you again. Minutes? Fuck you. Um, <laughs> Get out of here. Um, What's your number? Sorry, one. Good. I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> but five, if, five, five. the price five, is something five. you know. Like when, when you're looking at it, the price doesn't need to be in the review anyway. So this has to be for something else other than just telling me what the price is. And if it's worth the price, then you'd have to... this. Yeah, this is an odd one. This is weird. Well... So it's very confusing ex exactly what they mean, but I think if I was being as best face as possible, it's, it goes free, full price, sale price, uh, only if you really have money to spare, no, and you're seriously burning your money with this one. Like, that seemed, yeah. that's the best way I could interpret it. It's not yeah, great. Yeah, probably. Let's see what they say. Price? Oh boy, the hour count obsession is another topic for another video. Bugs? Wait, Wait what? Wait, what? Oh, he yeah. fucked up. Wait, what uh, happened there? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, okay, same we, thing. Hang the fuck up. We played this thing. Oh, 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 hour count obsession is another topic for another video. Price? Oh boy, the hour count obsession is another topic. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, wait, that's a wait, wait, wait. Oh. wait I, I think, joke. is the point supposed to be that price is based on hour count almost, like worthwhile? Good. No. No he, way would he. I don't be serious. It's the same I say, footage. I though. say it's like I, critical footage too. Is that I, he just wanted to show up. more is that the better. Better. Uh, footage. No, is I that think the... he copied and pasted part of this video. I've seen that happen before. Is Somebody that the point? Though, part well, of the video. So I is think I think he's trying to say that when people talk about whether or not it's worth the price, they're talking about the hour count. I believe so. What? Surely oh, not. I, no, I what? think he, you do some mean, people like, say that, but I don't understand how or why. Either, either he's made a mistake. Like well, because like obviously the mistake. response I would have to that is like, well, no, because we can have very, very short games that are really fucking potent. So, and yeah. cheaper. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I don't. This is either a mistake or he's trying to say like tongue in cheek. You're obsessed. You need to calm down. It's not a, the price. Is it the exact? Anything. 
Is it the exact same clip exact or are they just similar? Yeah, it's the same the clip. The score is the same and the dot left. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be an error. Unless it, unless he's doing some sort of like fourth wall sort of Grand Hog Day repeating himself thing. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> he hasn't been that I'm, clever I'm so far. I think this is just well, it's not a clever. editing it's mistake. Just, well, all right. There also uh, wasn't well, a ton to clarify. the gameplay inside our Wild Hearts. Clarify, like game, either he fucked simple. it up or his point is pretty worthless. One of those two. Like, it's... Not a good selection. No. <laughs> Quick no. video. Bugs? All right. Try filling out the... Okay, what the fuck? Oh, what? so uh, this, one, this okay. one gets a pass. Yeah, hang on, hang on. It, it, and like... I guess all of the options in the template are valid on this one. Sorry, no, it didn't play no on my No complaints. End. I'm gonna have to play it again. Is another topic for mm -hmm. another video. Price? Oh boy, the hour count obsession is another topic for oh, another video. Wait, Bugs? No. no. <laughs> All right, you can have That's that so one. Awesome. I could try filling out this template to the best of. Okay, wait. So Bugs. See, is okay Bugs then. is okay to talk about. Yeah, yeah he's fine with the one that... for Bugs. Okay, so that this... one gets a pass. You fucked up because the whole point you were trying to make, which I thought I thought you were trying to make, was that it was really shallow and that it was really like not that useful, which you can definitely argue. Especially with the bugs part, when it says there are some bugs, there are no bugs, there are a lot of bugs. Yeah, like, what a yeah, but what, bug, yeah, what, what the bugs? Like yes, you can start the game breaking. Yeah, yeah. you can't yeah. start the game. <laughs> there are, that's what I'm saying. Like, what you can't just. That's one of them. In fact, we might have been most critical of that one, but he's like, oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a pass. It's like, uh, what? <laughs> I, I would say that there's like, you could probably have multiple categories of bugs. You could have sort of like immersion breaking, you know, nothing too bad. A lot of just weird kind of funny glitches that don't really ruin the game, but kind of break you out of the, out of the, the moment, uh, stability, um, you know, crashes, but also you can get performance. Is this game going to be running on, you know, the CryEngine 10. And so you need a, a supercomputer from NASA to be able to run it, or is it, is it pretty easy to run? Like there's a, there's a whole. I don't know if there's another category for that, but that's that's a whole other ball game of just you know actual performance issues, and then hard locks, soft locks, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, because when it says minor bugs, does that mean not many or low impact? <laughs> yeah, like minor bugs and can get annoying <laughs> really blur <laughs> together to me. Like, that's bugs only know. about children, you know, children. Related <laughs> bugs. <laughs> and yeah. then you, you know, well, a deep prop galactic. There's a lot of minor bugs in that one. <laughs> well, there's loads of bugs in Mario Sunshine, uh, but like. It works. So, like, you know, do, Wait, why, is, why is one of the I, things Arc Survival Evolved? I don't even understand that one. Is I guess it has I a would, lot of bugs. I would just simplify it to like cosmetic versus like interfering with gameplay. Like, uh, you know, when you go to Blight Town in Dark Souls, for example, yeah. and those fucking yeah. flies come at you and then it <laughs> yep. drops the frame rate to like five. <laughs> But yep. but then like cyberpunk where objects get like duplicated and they hover in midair it's just like whatever it doesn't interfere with the game it just looks stupid like I I, those are like the two primary categories. Well, no, this me. got a pass, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can have that one. I could try filling out this template to the best of my ability, hesitating on my complex thoughts involving each category. Oh my god. I feel bad for the <laughs> template maker at this point. The guy yeah. is like, why are, you, why are you ripping me apart when this thing is meant to be read in like 10 seconds? That's all yeah. it's for. Gory. Is the Chow Garden a grinding mechanic? Or I could just write my the, own review what? for Sonic. The Chow... I don't the know what, what it is. Or nothing like, garden, grind. a grinding mechanic? Like a, it's, it's like an like area in Souls like Adventure like, 2. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, side like thing you can do. Much. I'm sure it's a fair question to, in terms of how does grinding exist, but that, that's the, the format is not capable of dealing with that. You are correct. I don't know yeah, if already found the solution. Yeah. He can just make essays on YouTube. Oh, yeah, wait, there you go. Oh, he already does. If only someone had thought of that before. If only there were thousands of these things. Like Adventure says, Sometimes this game feels like walking over broken glass while getting my eardrums ruptured by a smoke alarm, but other times you go fast and it's kind of fun. And that makes more sense. Well, yeah, but yeah, you could why, that was always an yeah. option. There was nothing yeah. stopping you from doing that. <laughs> yeah. can't, can't why do you, can't you don't have to follow any right. template in a Steam review. To be fair. You can do whatever you want. If we're going to yeah. be as mean to that format as we're going to be consistently mean, okay? So yeah. sometimes the game feels... What does Ooh, sometimes mean? mean? How often is that?
And are you talking oh, no. about bugs yeah. when you say walking over broken glass? Are you talking about mechanics that aren't working? Is the game functioning, or do you just hate it? What is it? What are you saying? Your <laughs> people who like walking the... on broken glass or getting their eardrums ruptured by well, a smoke alarm. So the sound eardrums... is bad. Yeah, is the sound? Is it? Are you saying it's been poorly mixed? Are you saying the songs are poorly written, <laughs> or is it too just? It's just loud. It's just really fucking yeah. loud or constant yeah. or repetitive. Oh boy, we could have a conversation right. about games feeling like walking over broken glass for hours. Fast. We can save that for another video. And then you go, we other do that times it goes fast time. and it's kind of fun. I'm just kind like, so fun. all you said is I don't like and like parts of it. So, How really, is that more useful? Because you said broken glass and eardrums ruptured by smoke alarm. You see, you had fun. It evokes thoughts eye. and imagery in your head, which means it's better than the boring objective one that said there are bugs. It's less instead helpful. of broken glass, Except they said the gameplay was bad. And instead of Under eardrums head. rupturing... What? They said the, the audio, audio was, was bad. bad. Yeah, yeah, the audio was bad. That's virtually the same thing in my mind. I don't. This is I what would, I mean. Yeah. I, how is that better? Tell me. Explain His is more to me. flowery. I think and that worse, makes more actually. sense than watching paint dry. Be you said boring. it makes more sense. How does it make more? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make more it's, sense. It communicates shorter, less information. Because more succinct. Could you haven't told me anything about when, how. Like, you haven't told me anything. What's the ratio? How often yeah. am I going to be having fast fun versus exactly. the glass eardrums? There's so thing. much information that's not in <laughs> well, yeah. well, we can we can take this route. Remember when he criticized the sound option for not talking about, what do you mean sound effects? Do you mean the music? Do you mean the, the cues for things? And then exactly. he makes this, which doesn't describe any of those things as well. And True. he says it's better. He's like, well, no, wow. you didn't. Right. You didn't yeah. do those things. You had this the chance. You specifically... You, you made a specific complaint about the format, and then in your quote-unquote fix, you didn't have that fix in the format that you criticized. Kind which of is what fucked you need his own point. Kind of. It's hard to itemize what he's talking about here. I wish he'd use a template to you know, <laughs> do the review format. Oh, <laughs> no, those are bad. <laughs> More sense. I think. I've become so engrossed with the world of game writing and video essays because there's so much oh, value found right in there. an individual's experience with a game, especially once you understand the kinds of media they're typically interested in. Donkey mentions this in his video about game critics, understanding oh, the- don't even. I don't oh, agree. Yeah, but Donkey's an idiot, so maybe we shouldn't quote him. Fucking Donkey, uh, don't. ...person behind the review is important. If someone like me... You know when you don't need to know who's behind the review? When they give you, like, proof in context? Yeah! And, and they do research. I don't know, yeah, I don't know Barfy Man 369 on Steam, but if he makes a really good review on a game, then I'm like, alright, this is, this is interesting. Unless, well, uh, he's probably not just flat out lying to me, so... Right, so or if they're just right talking now. about their experiences with the game, are they backing it up by saying, I had a lot of fun in this seg segment because this is this mechanic is designed very well, and here's why. Here's why it's engaging. Here's how I think it could have been done maybe a little better. Like, you, you can go into depth. You don't have to just be like, yeah, this is my experience, so watch my video. Like, yeah, okay. It's you got anything else? <laughs> a little bit beyond to me because, like, right, like your new review of Fallout 76, right? It's like, we don't just go on your word that you didn't have fun with it because it is bad and I don't like it. It's like walking across crushed glass, damn it. Instead, we're, we're kind of like, well, sure, but can you show me any any of that? And then you're like, yeah, look, this is a glitch. Look at this happening. Oh, yeah. look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And we're all just like, oh, shit, mm. yeah. Kind of the point with my videos, I'm like, Dr. Strange chose to do this. That's fucking dumb. Moving on. <laughs> this is like a case you didn't understand. Instead of just me saying like, oh, I just, I just don't like it. Like... We're doing we're doing the thing where it's like, isn't it so much better to speak from the heart from a person you understand and their experiences are led before going, uh, Oh, the audio isn't at a particular bit rate. Oh, this is a stupid robot. Like he's isn't he's kind she... of priming it to be like, don't even think about what the reasons for my opinions are. Just watch my videos and listen to me because you like me. Well, yeah, then he can just make video essays like diary entries and it's fine. This is more like a diarrhea entry. Oh, got him. Oh, <laughs> got him. <laughs> if, if you were to add, if I, so far, I do not have any confidence in this person being a good video game reviewer so far. And if this is your professional career, then I would, maybe my, I, I should be expecting a little bit more. All right, Rags, are you saying that this review or this video is Pepto Abysmal? <laughs> yeah, that was really uh, good. I would have yeah. saved it for when like medication was involved, so it's a bit sure. more topical. But I, I like that Pepto Abysmal. I like that. That's good. Like That's good. Dude. That one's gonna grow on me. <laughs> Enjoyed sorry. Birth of the Wild. Actually, sorry, 
I took, I took a while to actually try because I was kind of thinking. So, well, it's because bismol sounds like abysmal, so yeah, yeah. they're really <laughs> so, similar. In, in terms of the, uh, uh, the point that this guy is making, I agree that knowing what uh, the person who's reviewing its preferences are um, is helpful in that if you know that somebody doesn't like a certain genre of games and then they review a game from that genre, it's like, well, their advice may not be any anything that they say might not be that useful to me because I like that genre. The good yes. thing about trying to substantiate all of your arguments with references to what is in the game or in the film or in the TV show is that the more effectively you can do that, the less somebody needs to know about what your personal preferences are. They can just rely on the arguments that you put forth. And if they're convincing to them, then that's it. So the goal of just trying to be more, uh, I guess, empirical is that you can create something that's going to just be broadly useful to anybody rather than people who specifically align yeah. with you or people who know exactly what you think about any number of different games or films or TV shows. If, um, not, yeah. If Metal played through Ragnarok and I said, Metal, uh, you know, review it for me. Give me a, give me a spoilerless, spoiler-free rather, blurb of what, what, what's it like. And he starts going, it felt like a summer breeze. You lay down after a long walk. <laughs> Just a breeze. It felt like the Make birds nice. singing. Yeah. Felt like felt like a lot of the weight on my shoulders was lifted. Like the fuck are you Sounds exactly like me. Yeah. You know, like, it's, a good, yeah. uh, it's, it's a good point, Fringy. Sometimes uh, some a reviewer's consistency is more important than what they think about something specifically. You know, it's like they hated this thing, but I know what they hate and what they like yeah. traditionally. So like or when they I know that this. I'm probably gonna like or hate this thing. Yeah, based I, on that. Yeah, yeah. To, to Friggy's point, I, I find two different types of reviews really, really useful for myself. One mm -hmm. is from somebody I've followed for years, and I know exactly what they like and don't like. Like, if I ever get a review pop up from ACG or from uh, uh, Skill Up, I I know that they have a certain type of type of game. Like Skill Up likes kind of action RPGs with a lot of mechanics, a lot of depth, a lot of progression. So I know if he likes a game, I'll probably like that type of game because I I do type like that type of game. But I can understand when he doesn't quite jive with the game, if it doesn't quite have the mechanical depth that he's into. Secondly, the other type of review is, like you said, somebody who kind of uh, puts something in a frame of reference. Like a great, a great Steam review would be uh, Splitgate. I have played Halo for 20 years. This is like Halo meets Portal. Love it. Okay, cool. That sounds like fun. I'll buy it. <laughs> Right. So if you, yeah. if you don't if you don't know if you don't have a long history with that creator and, and know what they their particular likes and dislikes and have a track record of the kind of games that they liked and disliked, you know, a simple frame of reference, you know, uh, sort of brief introduction to the kind of things you like or the kind of things you play, that's so much more useful than you know a bullet list of graphics good, sound bad. For sure, yeah. I hate open worlds or if donkey himself says he likes an rpg everyone goes holy shit what's going on with that game video games can be such personal journeys that simple number scales and quote-unquote objective reviews For often fail sake. to convey the i just don't like if it's like you lost your understanding of what value can be gained from people being quote-unquote objective about sound design or uh, mechanics in, in any way shape or form like why are you now being like i'm in i'm enlightened I've realized people can describe personal experiences they had with video games. It's like, why wasn't this, why didn't you have this at factory default? How do you not know this? Yeah, this, um, this I, should be an idea that you just sort of come in to, to understand naturally very quickly in this environment. You are not, you are not clever your, by suddenly your, realizing it. Well, they researched, they researched, uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just saying the- What have you the, fucking go? Ah. <laughs> they besmirched <laughs> Sanic. How, you can't besmirch Manic. Manic. <laughs> I was just going to say, your job, Mr. Video Essayist Man, is to tie back the feelings about your experience and why you felt the way you did uh, to things about to the, the game. Thing. Yeah. Then yeah. make a yeah, point about the thing and how it exists. Otherwise, all you're saying is, I like it. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't like it because of personal reasons that I can't share with you meaningfully. Like, the best cool. thing a review can be is accurate. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, how do we how do we address, like, if you watch a review where someone says, you know, Uncharted 4 was a great game. I really like the part where Crash Bandicoot... Oh, fuck, no, he's in that game. I really like the part I was where about to say he is. went to Haven City and ran around in Haven City. Like, I really like that part. 
And so someone looks at you, it's like, oh, that didn't happen in that game. It's like, well, are you, what does it mean to be wrong about something that you say about a video game, which is entirely possible. I really like the open world mechanics of um, Super Mario 3D Land, you know? Like, I really like the open world in that game. Or um, it was really cool how uh, in Mortal Kombat, that, that first person shooter segment in Mortal Kombat 11 was like really engaging. That was a bold choice. No yeah. opinions are wrong. It's inverted my expectations. Probably the toughest review is the review where you have to you have to convince somebody the value of a game without actually de detailing it for reasons that if you were to detail the good parts of the game, you would ruin the game for somebody. Case in point, if anybody's uh, ever watched uh, Total Biscuit while he was still around, uh, he reviewed what became quickly became his favorite game of all time, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Rubbing, yeah. But he could not discuss what made the game so great, which was really, really tricky. But he tiptoed around it well enough that you got an inkling of what to expect, right? but didn't spoil what made the game so special to him, which I think is quite a, quite a useful skill and very difficult to do. But yeah, it, you, have to kind of, you have to do that dance where you're not ruining the, the person's experience by showing too much, kind of like a preview or, or like a trailer to a movie. You have to kind of do that dance where you hint at what you can expect without actually showing or telling it in explicit detail individual take their personal feelings shine through, and I often wonder if the current state of criticism impacts the way the average person interacts with each new game. With well, the way just so because it affects the way that you do it doesn't mean it affects everybody. Well, and even yeah. if it did, so what? If the general discussion, breaking things down, changes how people consume media, that just seems like a natural thing that's gonna happen. There's no way to stop something well, like yeah, that. Is that, is that yeah, worse? Right. is that worse? And also... Question. And when I listen to a reviewer, I want them to talk about what's in the game because then I could listen to those things and say, oh, I like that, or that sounds neat to me, not him to say if he liked it or not. Like, this I, isn't I'm a review for the reviewer. Part of what we're getting at here is like, oh no, what if people start not going to the game for the experience and instead they're just searching for things that are good about its design or some, or some weird thing like that. Instead of just taking, you know, that Sonic example, instead of just taking it for what it is and enjoying it, instead some people will now be encouraged, thanks to all these reviews, to treat a game as though it's very mechanical, and very down to it, and so you, you don't get those experiences. Like, that's not happening and you know it. Yeah, you're not gonna give me a really <laughs> crap game and just like convince me emotionally that I need to appreciate Dude, like, the blah blah strip flowery bullshit. No, I would go as far as saying we're pretty hyper analytical. Someone might have thought that from the last 200 episodes of the show that we've had, but no, um, that doesn't change the fact that if I'm watching some shitty movie, even but it's like funny or just stupid, campy, fun, like it, whatever, I could just enjoy it. I don't care. Like, that's totally fine. And if someone went, wow, you've, you've, have you ruined yourself by now by breaking movies down for how they don't and do make sense? I'm just like, no, I'm human. I'm fine. I'll survive. Yeah. Yeah. I pity you if it does. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry if it I does. I don't know how that happened. I wish you better for Maybe fortune. you should, yeah. That's a moment where you go, how, how come this ruined me? And is it really me being ruined? Mm -hmm. That's another thing. If, if you start consuming media differently, you are out here saying that's worse. It's like, you sure? If they start like treating everything as though it's uh, to be broken down mechanically for design to appreciate and criticize where necessary as opposed to simply taking it for what it is, are you going to really walk up to that person and say you're consuming media incorrectly? Um, especially when they'll, they'll probably have a lot wrong. more to say about that media than you will. If you're gonna go like, I really enjoyed it because it felt like a summer's breeze, versus them being like, I'm oh, sorry, it's so fun. That's the personal way that they <laughs> want to express their feelings about that, you know? That's meaningful to them. Guys, you're saying, just it's, watching it's... movies wrong. Th this is what I'm confused <laughs> about. It's that like, th true. these are just two modes. <laughs> Talking about how it made you feel versus what you saw and understood to be there and whether or not you think that's well executed. Like, these are just two things people do. Mm. Yeah. Let's see why we're chastising one of them reviews are structured, it feels like people are searching for talking points to critique. That's you, you admit to that. Yeah. That's not everybody. <laughs> I'd maybe level that at, you know, the typical video essayist who just, you know, they just kick out a video every very regular interval and it's, it's you know, like 10 minutes at surface level, but Actually admitted honestly, I don't really care about those people, so. I watched She-Hulk. And I was like, why the hell was this so fucking awful? I have lots to fucking say. And I was just like, yep, we're talking about mm -hmm. this on EVAP. Meanwhile, I watched House of the Dragon, and I was like, well, 
That was like double the length of She-Hulk, and I don't have a lot to say about this. And that's fine. Both mm, results yeah. are fine. Back of the box creation, controversial takes on character writing, or incessant comparisons to other well-known titles. There's something to be said for establishing your own format as a reviewer, but I just don't think the traditional story, graphics, gameplay, difficulty 8.127 out of 10 is an engaging format to describe the complex multimedia experiences we call video cool, games. Cool, it's not supposed to be. Yeah, I, that's not what it does. That's... Yeah. No, no, in, no part in those reviews does it say, like, this defines how you will feel when playing it. I mean, technically it does in the terms of sensory thing, but what I'm saying is that, that you will not, they can't tell you what your experience will be emotionally, but they never pretend to. So you think the people making those just sit there for hours carefully cultivating the perfect checklist review as if it's something incredibly meaningful? I mean, have you guys ever watched a video that said, like, here are the graphics, the this good, they're comparable <laughs> to this thing, and then you're like, tell me how they made you feel? This is Hello Greedo, I just realized. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how did it make you feel, though, those graphics? I need you know to what's know great about this, you... too, is... Uh, I was gonna say, ACG is a lot of reviewers... really good at breaking things into categories. They make reviews for themselves, not for other people. There's that. Yes. I was also gonna go as far as saying, some of them don't know how to express themselves that way. Some of them would be like, mm. I don't know, I felt good. And it's like, tell me more. It, I, I don't, I it felt very it. good sometimes. Yeah, but and it's like, tell me more. Explain good. to me what it felt I like. Can you describe the game it? And, I smile. <laughs> good like. and you're just like, fuck you. I don't care to tell you how it made me feel. <laughs> like, yeah. Leave me alone. Give me info so I can see if maybe it will make me feel a certain way. Tell me if it felt like a summer's breeze. I have to know. Make me feel fine. <laughs> Almost. When I think he just said, uh, like, incessant comparison to other titles. And it's like, yeah. What the fuck's what, wrong with that? Why would you compare <laughs> games to other games? Like, he's saying it as if, like, when will it end? Oh, the, the humanity. When, like, when will we stop <laughs> judging things based on everything else we've experienced? <laughs> why That's the so fuck? That's so useful for <laughs> gameplay, though. Especially when like, trying especially to relate to a concept yeah, to an audience. Yeah, it's a good, useful metric. Why would you why judge yeah. The Last of Us 2 against The Last of Us 1, you goblin? <laughs> why would right, you do yeah. that? No. <laughs> Why would you talk about the shooting mechanics in other third-person shooters that feel better, or stealth mm -hmm. mechanics in games that are designed better than Last of Us 2? Yeah, yeah. most like comparisons are demonstrative and are an important part of analysis in that. They're way. relatable, and they like if you bad. tell me the you movement, know how I if, know the anchor I've points better too. ones here. Yeah. Do you like the movement in Titanfall 2? Then you'll like da 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 da. Exactly. Do you like the shooting in Battlefield? Then you'll like the shooting in da da da. When someone says, like, the inventory system in the new Resident Evil game, which other Resident Evil game is it like? It's like, oh, it's like this one. You go, ah, okay. Instead of, uh, that, he's like, like, wow, how incessant of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, Why can't you yeah. judge it on its own, its own, merits. own terms? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I it's am. Almost, I, because I, <laughs> it's almost like this guy just doesn't like shorthand. Like, I, yeah. I don't know who created this form, but how many times in, on Steam did you play a game and you're like, you just you just finish a game and it's like, hey, would you want to do you want to recommend this game? It's like, yeah, this game's good. Click click the the thumbs up button. It's like, okay, write a review. And I'm like, ah, I don't really want to write right now. I'll do it later. And you close out of the window. It's almost like that form, okay. which I don't think is very widely used at all. I don't see very many of those posts anywhere. But that form is basically just okay, shorthand, graphics good, gameplay good, good, got it, copy and paste. You're done. You don't yeah. have to write a whole thesis on it and, and submit it but to even your, his your professor. Even his example of what a better review would be was also incredibly shorthand and not very descriptive or useful. Didn't contain a lot of information. It was just a bit more writerly. You have to explain your format and also their stuff, which, again, doesn't really matter all that much unless somebody has a long track record. It's like, okay... I liked Sonic, uh, you know, Sonic 1 and 2 for the Genesis. Didn't really care for, you know, the Dreamcast Sonic debut, but I liked Sonic Adventure, so-and-so, or whatever. And that would give you somewhat of a kind of interesting uh, introspective into what they like. Like, for example, if you knew the Resident Evil games I played versus the Resident Evil games that Rags played, you'd probably know that I would have a different outlook on the games because I played some of the earlier ones before I played 4. And I didn't play some of the later ones or something like that. So I, I may have a, a, I may be more lenient toward the sort of uh, can't see around the corner, fixed camera, Resident Evil games versus the, you know, four, five, six plus. So that that's useful. But that, again, that's shorthand. Like he's kind of arguing against shorthand and just explaining why a game has value or comparisons Aren't to other you games. Are more likely to see around yeah, a corner with a point. fixed camera than over the shoulder? 
Uh, I mean, <laughs> it depends on the on the camera angle. Sometimes they're really, oh, really sometimes, tight. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're really not helpful at yeah. all. Someone asked if but I would I, use that format to recommend Soma. It's like, I wouldn't use that format. Just, I, I wouldn't know. use that format, yeah. I would have to be pretty apathetic on a game to use that format to the point where I wouldn't put in the effort of finding the format. Like and I, copying it and put it into review and then ficking, checking the boxes. Similarly, though, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do a five minute or ten minute review on Soma. Probably, I, I would be like, the second I start talking about that game, I'm going to want to make it a very long video. It's not going to be short. Uh, but however, if you want to be like, well, if you just recommend it, I just be like, oh, I just say I recommend it. Go play it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you did you do a video on that or no? I did a video Could... comparing it to Amnesia: The Doctor Sent, in which I oh, basically okay. just. Praise the fuck out of Soma and Amnesia the Doctor Sent. I love them both. Right. He's working on an Amnesia Rebirth praise now. No. Secretly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did. Fuck. Compared to relaying one's own experience to the viewer in a unique and interesting way. But don't even get me started on trying unique to actually share those not experiences quality. online. I can just. People are totally fine with you sharing your experiences like that if that's your format. Oh boy. If you made a video, this might all be very shit at it. No, they're not. Days. Didn't you see the gun pointed at his head? <laughs> Didn't you see the gun? <laughs> Look, okay, so if if you made a hey, whole... Hey, your editors. Also, I like that we've got this image, because I, I, I now I know exactly what's turn fucking into... coming. Oh, and that's why everyone who hates The Last of Us Part 2 is just a bigot. If you spend your whole video on The Last of Us 2 talking about how much it meant to you because you've gone through something similar, something like that, and then all the comments are like, yeah, but was it any good? How well, was the gameplay? was the graphics? Was the, yeah, but you where's well the written? review? If you were like, well, fuck all of you guys, I was just trying to review it my own way. It's like, they probably, I mean, at this point, yeah, like you... Have you always done it this way, or have you not? Because it's kind of weird if all your comment section was like, fuck your personal stories. Like, yeah. no, usually people yeah. are just like, whatever you expect to have on that channel. I'm assuming, maybe you, yeah. maybe they switched it up randomly and the people were like, what the fuck? I think that if we had an EFAP episode where Mirags and Fringy were only reviewing things in the form of relating it to personal experience and how it made us feel, everyone in chat would be like, um, okay, but like, was it any good? But, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, but how does this help me as the person that this yeah. review is being read by? Exactly. That's this. But you know, maybe I'm jumping the gun on that. Let's see. Let's see what happens next. Just say The Last of Us Two, and if you're vaguely tapped into gaming culture, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, uh, don't Explain look it, it up or anything. Completely oh well, then unrelated. that's not fucking helpful. What's it like to be happy? Your your example your your example that you're using is literally by your words only going to be understood by the people who already know. So the people who don't know who you should be communicating to the most, fuck them. Don't even look it up. I'm a little bit it's confused. I thought that and it was going to be suggesting an that I'm actually I, I would have thought in like a 16 minute video he'd actually say something, but I'm I guess I was <laughs> I'm sure we're getting mistaken. <laughs> Well, we wasted a lot of time because he he went on this whole tangent about how he hates that specific checklist yeah. format. <laughs> but but his real point, the real curse of video game criticism is critic brain. And so the format isn't really relevant. It's like the part that he doesn't like is when you analyze things based on, you know, gameplay and mechanics and things like that. He wants you to just you right. know, say how you know. feel. If I it doesn't said, really matter know. the format. If I said the thing it, meant a lot to me, and then I get people saying, like, give us actual information, idiot, he's like, wow, that's so unfortunate that that's the reality we're in now. That's the that's the industry, that's the culture. And, and it's, that's the point this video wants to make, I think. I just gonna, it's because random people on the internet probably just don't give a fuck about your personal experience. They came here for information. You are correct. This is the obvious fucking thing. When mm. you want to get, you want to know whether or not you should buy this game, or whether or not it's any good just from a point of view of knowing more about this thing that people are talking about, you're like, when you ramble on about your childhood, it's like, that's great, man. I'm, I'm not here for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, the other thing is, it, I'm sure a lot of people reviewed The Last of Us 2 in a way where they mostly talked about how they made, how it made them feel, like, in that it made them angry and frustrated and all that sort of stuff. Like, not every person who was critical of The Last of Us 2 was very, like, autistic and robotic about their criticisms. You know what I mean? It's just, he doesn't seem to like that anyone was negative about the game at all. Yeah, well, I was expecting one of those generic sort of lines. Like, if anyone says anything positive about The Last of Us 2, they get shat on. It's like, all right, yeah. fine, whatever. <laughs> up or anything. Completely unrelated. What's it like to be happy? Internet discourse has become so volatile over the years that to like a game... 
Well, if you play The Last of Us 2, you won't have any fucking clue, so... I don't even... I don't know. Oh, what it's like to be I happy. I don't even actually... <laughs> yeah, I don't get what that's actually pointing I'm sure, I'm sure at. Most people... I really like this game, and a bunch of people tell me that it's not a very good game, and that doesn't make me feel very good. I, well, I, well, I think did. even people who like that game would agree it's pretty fucking miserable. Yeah, that uh, shit's like it's a yeah. fucking misery. It's a miserable, miserable, game. miserable game. I want to feel miserable for the reason the game wants me to feel miserable, not because a bunch of people are telling me that I don't have good taste. <laughs> Aren't you happy that you're miserable? Game exactly why you like it and explain it in a way that sounds like you're a lifeless Wikipedia article. No, you know what? It's actually what? the opposite. I don't people mean, way yeah. prefer. Wikipedia, but yeah. You think Matthew people... Matosis is a Wikipedia article? And people way fucking prefer if you can deliver like nuts and bolts information, but in a way that's not monotonous. They don't want monotonous. Like this, the tip people people don't tune into that. But you you could get away with it if you have like a particular style and approach. Like, would one call YMS monotonous? Uh, I wouldn't, personally. Uh, um, sometimes, not, no, I wouldn't. but I don't... What I'm trying to say is... Only when he doesn't care about the thing he's reviewing, but... Like, no, I, I don't even mean it as necessarily, like, a very... criticism. I'm talking about, like, a you, style of speaking. You're talking about speaking. tone of voice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like I would say he's been on this as, as in terms of, like, style, yeah. Because, um, you, what I'm trying to hmm. say is there's a difference between, like, I thought this was okay because I went... Versus, like, the way that YMS, quote-unquote, performs slash voice acts. He's, like, got a very... I, I find him engaging. I like listening to him talk. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he's got tons of highs and lows. Yeah, he's definitely not monotonous presentation. He does have a little bit of an interesting, I mean, I have it too, where I don't always go up and down with my voice, but yeah, yeah. presentation has lots of like, you know, anger and then upset and then a little bit more subtle and then, you know, disappointment and anger and like expression. Hi, I'm Lana Wazowski. <laughs> the, the content <laughs> matters a lot too. Like his Lion King video is great. Oh yeah. But like, yeah, yeah point is like saying people like people just want you to read out a fucking wikipedia page of all the the things about like how the game works or just like come on man that's they, what people they, say your reviews are they do yeah i hmm. guess they, they, yeah it's true then <laughs> i guess the people are apparently <laughs> watching the doctor strange video i don't know what's wrong with them they must not have touched cross breaks what's funny though it's like you could you could totally watch a yms breakdown of a of a movie well, a Mahler breakdown of a movie a uh, er breakdown of a movie and I don't, he doesn't really do movies, but like a uh, internet historian breakdown and they all have very, very different styles with all sorts of weird expressions and cutaways and, and gimmicks. But, <laughs> but uh, in the end, like none of them would sound like a Wikipedia article. They couldn't, they all have their own, you know, takeaways. And yeah, just like, uh, I don't, I don't remember who said that, but it's the whole, uh, Wachowski thing. It's like, <laughs> We're, right, uh, we're uh, why, yeah, I am we're baby. You're a baby. baby. We are all baby. <laughs> I would love to go to Wikipedia one day and just have an ER <laughs> script up there where like just I wasn't expecting <laughs> to see one. I just searched Mad I mean. Max Fury Road and that's the other so, thing. Well, as, if, as if anybody does like? that, you know? As if there's any fucking reviewer who does that. The whole point is to format bullet points into a script. Sound like a human being. Like nobody fucking does it like a robot. Come on course has become so volatile over the years that to like a game you have to know exactly why you like it and we prefer you be good at your job yes i that's true. i would yeah. like well, if, if you're, you're gonna a game make a reviewer review, yes <laughs> it, yeah if you're a game reviewer it would be nice if you know why you like something yeah, in fact you. i would almost say that that's like mandatory to be a reviewer <laughs> if you want to ramble if you, on if you don't why are you doing this if you want to ramble on about how you feel about a thing please title accordingly like, I ramble about yeah. Sonic Adventure 2 for th th You know what? Fucking Toll Biscuit was a legend I mean, for that. I talk about this thing for this long. Oh, it's yeah. like, all right. It was yeah. incredible. One take. Yeah, he was incredible. He, I mean, what this guy is telling us is that basically, you just tell people that you like it. You don't even have to know why. Just tell them you fucking like it. That's well, enough. Well, I assume he's saying well, right. he wants to explain why he likes it to the point of saying it was fun. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was really great. I just really had fun. It was so awesome. I had fun. But you don't want any scrutiny, though. Well, like, you want to just be able to put it out yeah, there. But that you know, too. Yeah, that too. Well, he doesn't want the scrutiny of, I want to know why you liked it that relates to something verifiable in the point? game. Why are you making a video and putting it on the internet? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what I, was yeah. Asked. So, I would actually say that. Sorry, like responding to challenges with just well fuck you i liked it that's why i mean i would go so far <laughs> as to say the difference between a critic and a consumer not not the consumer but just a, a consumer of content would be can anybody can tell you whether they liked something or not but only a well-spoken well-reasoned with arguments and and knowledge and and specific critiques could you actually say why you liked it 
or how it, why, what made it a good piece of content or what made it and a bad piece of content. And explain it in a way that makes sense to someone who doesn't know anything about the content. Yeah. yeah. Y- anybody can watch Star Wars and say, uh, I just don't like Han Solo. Like, oh, okay. Speaking of ER, <laughs> I've never played a Life is Strange game, but I, I absolutely love his Life is Strange <laughs> video. I feel like I have a great sense of what that <laughs> the first episode or whatever season of that game is. And I think it's hilarious and don't need to know anymore. It's and pretty much explain perfect. it in a way that sounds like you're a lifeless Wikipedia article, lest you be told that your opinion is indeed subjective. This landscape of constant... Mm, all they mean by that so is no, just There's only one say, way to talk. When, when seeing the blades of grass roll through the hills that reminded me of my childhood, it's just like, that doesn't work for me because I fucking grew up in a cave. So <laughs> I, literally I, just, not gonna be just, I, I grew up in <laughs> Plato's cave, all right? I don't, I don't see what's so vicious about this. Cause what about the shadows of the grass? That is a dissatisfied okay, and then the conversation ends. That's all that is, you're right, yeah. When someone says, however, there are shit tons of bugs, don't buy this piece of shit. They don't go, well, I grew up in a cave, so I don't know what bugs are. <laughs> like, I just, I can't help me. <laughs> I grew up in a cave, the bugs that I had were horrific monstrosities from another world. Arguing leads people to become very defensive of their favorite titles, because there will always be others that get a kick out of acting high and mighty for not liking Fuck said Fuck's sake. I mean, what is that the only about? reason they're what saying that, that they don't control? like that game? Why are you so what? fucking insecure? I was about to say, the video they, are the ones, I hate it. they are the ones that are defensive, huh? Hmm. This video <laughs> reeks of insecurity. I would say, what is the point of this video? Fundamentally, what is the core point that you're trying to hit at? If let me. Jump in between I'm four struggling or five different following points. along. My impression is, <laughs> let me vomit out my feelings and call it a review. Yeah, because yeah. we run through the yeah. list. The list was, um, man, it's pretty like lame doing those like objective reviews. Here's a checklist that doesn't tell me anything. Man, video games are like really personal to me and I should be able to express how I feel about that without you criticizing me. We're jumping all over the place. Yeah, I think that's What right. is the core point you're trying to make? Because in the beginning it was like, oh, this is the whole critic brain thing. It's like you watch something and then it's like, oh, I see all these inconsistencies and that's really annoying. It's yeah. Like, okay, maybe this is the thing, but then yeah, checklist well, yeah, and this. I, I just, I'm, I'm. I, I'm but if it is I'm your job, for, which pays your bills to be perceptive of those type of things and then make yeah. videos about it, well, it that's yeah, just what you, what you do, the, man. <laughs> exactly. What do you offer it, it, from this, if, if not a more refined, more precise, more well-researched perspective? What is the difference between what you're doing and, and hell, what anybody on Steam reviews, like on the Steam yeah. curation thing is doing? Doing a template with you. What's the difference between you and him? Yeah, really, what is the difference? <laughs> and every single time with these kind of people, if you're able to actually talk to them, you could find something that they don't like, and they'd have some very strong opinions about that and why it's not good for society. Like, you ask this person about hatred or manhunt or something like that. I'm sure you can get some strong some strong opinions on some game that they don't approve of and they don't think is, is good for the, the industry or good for people to play. But how is that any different from us saying, hey, uh, I didn't like the sequel to Last of Us, and I think it, I think it was pretty terrible, and it's no good. Bad for the industry. <laughs> the same idea. Game. Those that missed the English lesson about not writing I think at the beginning of every sentence. And I mean, of course I'm guilty. Well, but, so but that's, that's what interesting said... that you would think that the only way to <laughs> make something is an opinion for writer is I think. I think indicates that you're giving a subjective thought. Well, I, what I'm getting at is like, you think the only way that you can convey that something is an opinion is, I think? I hate this shit. Like, that there's no <laughs> other way to signpost that this is an opinion? That feel that I realized by four or... years of effort has been wasted. <laughs> like, all this yeah. attempt to try and... <laughs> Nope. And as if putting that there changes whether or not what you're saying bears on the game or on your personal, like, inclinations. This to some degree, I've become incapable of not taking a jab at- And also, just to be clear, he- it would be more- I would- I feel like I'd be more likely to find I think, I think, I think, I think in front of his review than someone who's saying, the grass has shadows, and these are the mechanics, and this is what happens, and it takes about this long to beat, and da da da, and it's full of objective statements. Huh? But Genshin Impact in almost every video I've made this year. However, I do think there's a difference between analytical criticism and emotionally charged statements made to piss off fans of any given series. 
Okay. You know what? I guess I technically. And so right. what I'm saying. Are you about to say that this is okay though? Let me. I want to know. Thing is, so I'm tired okay, of opinions right. being presented as objective, even when they. So is that they the point of be. this video? Is are they that... doing this? I'm tired of people pretending like their own personal subjective video. human in the universe point of view is somehow reflective of an absolute truth. Like, okay, fine, just say that. Now, is he saying that he yeah. often takes cracks at people who play Genshin Impact in his videos, or that he doesn't appreciate when other people take... Uh, I, no, I don't... he does in his videos, is what he's saying. So oh. he's saying that's okay because he's not saying it's objective we... or official. You also had okay. to throw in that thing earlier about the elitism sort of and trying to make your opinion better than someone else. They always do this. They're always like, whenever someone says they're trying to be objective, they're just trying to make themselves feel better than other people. That's their only goal. And so oh. I, I'm pretty sure that's the angle. When in reality, yeah, the, the whole thing you're trying to do, hopefully, if you're being good faith when you're trying to be objective, is that you're not allowing your personal biases to fuck up the analysis. You're saying, this is what is here. This is bad according to this standard. It, I don't know. I didn't, never understood this fucking vile response to like, yeah. Get out of here with you trying to be objective, you fuck. This is like, you what's, what's... thinking you can accurately <laughs> convey details about reality. Be gone. We I mean, don't want any of well, that. I, like, if, if, um, if, if, to just bridge the gap, I suppose, if, if you're watching a review and somebody lays out a framework that they're going to be following, and they basically mm -hmm. say, this is the framework I'm going to be judging the game by, and then they proceed to judge it by that framework. If you're not interested in that, you can Leave. not watch the video. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to. <laughs> And it's fine, but if you engage with it and you know that that's the framework, then hell, like if you hear something you disagree with, you can try and figure out how that fits into your framework. Like it's fine. It's totally fine. Like it's not, it's not a big deal. Like if or somebody if you know wants to use different metrics to review games to you, how is theirs any more or less legitimate than yours? Or if you notice dissonance in their template and how it's applied to that game, point, point that out. Make that your criticism of the video. Be like, hey, I you're trying to apply this template to this aspect of this game, and I don't think that works. That's a valid thought, too. Mm -hmm. I, I, def I don't like the idea that, like, you know, positive objectivity is fine, but if you're being negatively objective, it's, like, toxic. Oh, they, they do that all the you time know. as well. Yeah. I guess yeah. Yeah. the core of if you say something positive about a game, that's... If you say something positive about any sort of piece of media, that's great. If you say something negative, wow, opinionated asshole, piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck out of here. Why are you so trying what, to what about the yeah. feelings of the developers and the hours that they put into it? So I'm and they, not really they talking about really that. Hard like, on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are no just doubt, opinions. But... A real objective review would be incredibly the boring the and the meme, not yeah. Yeah, helpful, yeah. and would yeah. probably like you do this water in the game. I am so... By the way, did he, did he say it would be awful? Come, come, sorry, uh -oh. yep, everyone. This would be a game. It will have would graphics. Be incredibly boring and not at all helpful. And not at all oh, helpful. Not at all helpful. Okay. Not at wow, all. Yeah. that sounds pretty. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest it. with you. When I say like, "Ooh, Thor next Thor movie," who's in it? And then Fringy says, uh, "Well, Chris Hemsworth." Um, funnily enough, Chris Pratt is in it. Not and it's like, oh, so <laughs> blah 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 is gonna be. In it. And then someone goes, "Fringy, that was an objective statement about the information of the thing. That is not useful." There's just a sit. You're like, what, wait, what? No, that is. What are you? <laughs> Fuck, that's like some of the most useful information is when it's stuff that's absolutely verifiable, which I assume is what we're kind of talking about here. Because if you're going to go into the meme of being like, lol, uh, Link is in the game, I guess that's objective. This game is an RPG, I guess that's objective. It's like, how is this not useful information? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Damn. would probably go something like this. Oh, God. Sonic Adventure 2 is a platforming game. No. Already useful. Uh, already. already useful. Yes, that is already <laughs> useful. It's a platforming game. I know what kind Fuck of game it is. Me. I don't this like is more useful. And saying it feels like exactly. a Everyone makes this mistake when they're being I mean, critical what? of this. They just like... Also, you're how showing that... footage that makes it look like a snowboarding game. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> At least in... But I already know if I don't like platformers, the... fucking... I might probably exactly. just want to bail. Sega Dreamcast, where you play as Sonic and friends. It has 3D Multiple graphics, characters. plays cutscenes right, in between levels, yeah. and even a has a You're going in you can't even, like, a 2D Sonic game, this would be useful information. You can't even parody it well, because you know, when you were writing this, oh god, there's so much more I could say while being quote-unquote yeah. objective, but that would make it nice sound like I have to I have to go for all the least possible useful bits of oh. information I can imagine. And he's still having I trouble. 
Because defining yeah, said, the gameplay is useful. I have to purposely make myself sound boring. This is pretty funny because he says you play as Sonic and Friends. Oh, so there are multiple playable characters. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sonic has X attributes. 3D environment. Dude, what he said, X X he said there are cutscenes. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, there's a story. Oh, yeah. There's some narrative. And, well, I guess to hone in on the playable. So Sonic hat, you could describe without stating anything about how you feel about it. Sonic has X attributes. Knuckles has, you know, Y attributes. Tails has Z attributes. And somebody can look at that and go, huh, I don't think I'm very interested in playing a game where the character has X attributes. Just doesn't appeal to me personally. And so already yeah. you've provided them with yeah. something useful. I think, um... and, and remember, you have to start with this. Like, this is a platforming game that was released on the Dreamcast where you play as Sonic. Yeah. What you think about that, build on top of that, sure. Like, you can go back and forth on that, but you still need to be referring to what is in the game. Yes. This is your base upon which everything gets built. What is it's in it? It's also yeah, a sequel, yeah. and think, you can you can find out a lot about how what, which yeah. things were carried over from the original based on some basic details about it. Like, if, for example, if they said there is not multiple playable characters in this game, you only play as Sonic, that would actually be really appealing to a lot of the people That's who really didn't like the other characters you played as in Sonic mm -hmm. Adventure. Well, imagine look, they <laughs> release a Guardians of the Galaxy game, and it's like you can only play as Star Lord. It's like fuck. That's and he's like, that's not I'm useful. It's like, of course it's fucking Never. useful. Yeah. Very useful. <laughs> and that every time you have to do this parody, you've got to do it in the most... Mu you could just be like, Sonic Adventure 2 is like released for the Dreamcast on 2001. You play a Sonic... You know, you could... Yeah, yeah. I mean, that There are reviews that would do fun, this, like, and it would be still, fine. You could still put in more yeah. personality, you know? And like, yeah. I think it actually sounds like the intro to real reviews I heard on like IGN and game trailers and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. Honestly, like it's good information to do. Like, so one is a single player game has you know, approximately sure many, twelve uh, hours of gameplay, etc. I'm pretty sure Matthew McCarthy begins every single review with that. Like, this was a game that was released for this platform in this year, and it is yeah. this. Pretty sure he does that every time. So, so way to yeah, sum up, it's useful. What has just happened in the video, IMO, is that he had his he had his big well. He went over it. He went over to it with like a little bottle of poison. He unscrewed the lid. He was about to pour it in. And he, just, he just fucking drank the poison. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, what are you doing? Button. Okay. He's like accidentally like, steel manning his position. Is it fun? Saying things. <laughs> is it fun? He asks. Is like, it fun? That's the, the, isn't the whole idea that how fun it is is going to be different for everyone? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> is it fun? Well, it yeah. Is it fun? Like, how useful is that? Me. How what useful is it? Tell me you're not a critic without telling me you're not a critic. It's <laughs> fucking amazing because if if the review said and th this is all it said, the game's fun. You pick it up and play it and it's not fun. You're like. Oh shit! Oh, so you lied to me. <laughs> you so you lied to me. <laughs> you hate me. We'll never trust you again. Thank you. <laughs> it's like the movement feels good, or the game is the challenging. Movement the movement good. feels good. Great. <laughs> so fucking useful. Well, the game is challenging. To whom? To How exactly. <laughs> that's that's stop my review it. of. Sex. No. The movement feels good. No, stop. <laughs> We need it in reference to something else. The second you go, oh, well, it's, it's no more difficult than this other game. It's like, wow, comparing it to another game. What is <laughs> yeah. wrong with you? Yeah. Didn't he, like, tear apart that whole Dark Souls, easy, medium, Dark Souls, whatever? Like, that's basically the same idea. So he tore apart that point. kind of <laughs> less valuable than that. It's I, challenging. Yeah. We've, already, so? we've learned less <laughs> than what he said in the fucking parody <laughs> review. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> or the music is awesome. This are music all is it's awesome. Is it because awesome? <laughs> Don't even like if I, you were objective uh, man, you might describe uh, what style of music it is, and then Jesus, someone could go, yes. "Oh, this I'm is, likely yeah. to think that." You could awesome. describe how often it plays, how long the songs are, what genre of music they are, how well composed yeah. they, or what were they composed with instrument wise. Like what the fuck? Instead, you say it's awesome. <laughs> Oh, also, this the, yeah, this is terrible because he actually says this ex almost this exact line in his fake script earlier in the video. <laughs> he's saying the music yeah. is, is amazing. It's the best soundtrack of all time or whatever. So he's mocking the thing that he, the, yeah, the, the stupid straw man thing. script. Yeah, yeah, he did. He said uh, that exact thing, basically. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Opinion. Game review you've ever read or watched has included uh, someone's opinion, music. no matter how said opinion was presented. When it comes to discussing right. games in any uh, meaningful way, I mean, whatever, yeah, just let him sure. have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most <laughs> likely. 
<laughs> just let him have it. We'll move yeah. on. Capacity, very few people cool. are interested in actual objectivity. Okay. For many oh, games, shit. things that are considered to be fact are often just the loudest opinions that have solicited. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh God. God. So, so no. wait, this, oh. Is, this is Persona, right? So oh. it's an RPG. If I say this is an RPG... Like, Turn-based Japanese that, role That's just the game. loudest people opinion, are, yeah, Fringy. That's, opinion that's just that? your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. There's a much quieter opinion saying it's a first-person shooter. <laughs> <There> are, <laughs> they there fucking entire, rock. <laughs> their entire website, uh, websites based around subjective facts around video games. One of the most useful websites I ever go to is Cooptimus. Their entire purpose is to say, hey, is this game actually co-op? And is the co-op online? How many players? Is it offline? Do you need separate controllers? Do you need uh, special peripherals? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it full co-op or is it a special mode where it's only a, a select experience for co-op and the rest is, is uh, single player only? It's like it's all just like fact based, but it's so yeah, if you're useful looking for because a co-op game that can be a handy resource. For yeah, sure. it's super useful because you you otherwise you have to peer through like tons and tons of marketing crap, which doesn't always hmm. tell you that oh it's actually online co-op and it's only non-story mode with five levels. And and you wouldn't know that unless you had a resource like Cooptimus. So like there's some there's tons of useful objective facts around games that people actually hunt for. It's silly. I've As never heard of that website. Jared. That sounds so useful though. Oh, it I is. Yeah. Look for that mm -hmm. exact type of information, and it, it's foggy most of the time. You know. Yeah, super foggy. Yeah. As in Quarter Black Garrett, we're very upset with the way Monster Hunter World has, handles co-op. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh god, that's so hard to actually okay, play with anybody. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in chat just wrote two plus two equals four is the loudest opinion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, true. <laughs> To the right point, over time. Yeah. Bias and subjectivity are integral in recommending a video game or dissuading others from playing it. But in the same vein, opinion pieces generally don't exist for the purpose of tearing down any opposing views. Out what? of the thousand. Are you, that, I'm like, no. are you sure what? about what? that? This is so uh, boring. It would dude. be very valuable sure to compare a Shin Megami sure Tensei game sure to a Persona that? game for a lot what, of people. What is the point that somebody is going for in espousing a certain perspective if they don't want to convince more people to hold that perspective? Perspective contrary to other perspectives that exist in the world or even just to make sure they're informed like I, you I, could because they show two games the uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 and Persona 5 that are both technically in the same series but SMT is a lot a lot more serious a lot kind of more heavy-handed not not as much fun not as not as much like crazy music and like funny characters so y telling people or comparing the two games are like hey this takes place in the same universe but it might not really be your thing if the things you go to Persona for are the the wacky teenager high school stories, you know. So like, I, I don't know. Like even him saying that comparing two games is unhelpful. Like he's kind of contradicting that by the games he's choosing to show. I don't know. So I thought SMT was Persona, and it was like a Japanese uh, like Persona Western was a, a spinoff of SMT. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It would be like Final Fantasy Tactics or something like that. Right. Thousands kind of and thousands same, of yeah. comments I've received, there's one that's planted itself in the back of my mind like a little parasite since I read it three years ago. It was on a video I made about why Mario Odyssey is one of my favorite games, and it said, May I interrupt you real quick and tell you? You're wrong. <laughs> the game looked beautiful and charming. I don't know how you survived someone telling you you're wrong on the internet. <sighs> oh my God. A great soundtrack, <laughs> Welcome to the YouTube painful. comment section, my dude. Like, he's, come on. he's never let it go in the three years since short, had a horrible skill curve, super generic level design, a lot of boring boss fights, and it pretty much only existed out of filler content. Watch the review from Joseph Anderson and tell me you Oh my god, I hope you survived. I don't know what else to say to this. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> How do you start look at someone that guy? loves a is video okay? game and go, <laughs> yeah, this person is clearly in the dark. Playing the video game is nothing compared to... Someone can change your mind with a review. That is possible and it's not evil. Yeah. Alright, calm down. 
fine. Yeah. Watching a video about it? Oh my god, what a weird thing to do, right? Because everyone oh, talks about this. Like, why would I watch a six-hour review of a film when I can watch the film three times and come up with my own opinion? It's like, what the fuck does that because even mean? Because your opinion might be shit. It's this plenty of things- Why do you share your perspective on the internet? Like, why do you do it? What is the goal? Is it just to be listened to? Or do you want people to adopt- Like, what is your goal with this particular video if not to convince people to think like you? Yeah. I'm sorry, is this a fucking yeah. Mario game where he's fighting a fucking yes. dragon? Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a Chad yeah. Mario game, fighting right. a fucking dragon. <laughs> he's he's he actually could... just fighting Bowser, but with a lot of LSD. Whoa, <laughs> this is what <laughs> Bowser really is. That's like the moon dragon guy, right, in Odyssey? I, I'm, I'm thinking this, of the right game, If this right? guy isn't trying to change your mind, then I can only assume that means his perspective isn't that valuable, in which what? case, I'm not interested anyway. Don't you think they should be a zoom out and be like, wait, I'm trying to change people's minds with this very video. Oh, I'm yeah. such a fucking moron. But wait, I, I don't know if we need to zoom out perfect. into space. I have very slow <laughs> zoom out of space, yeah. You said not 10 seconds ago that most people who express their opinions in this way aren't trying to persuade people. That's like the number one goal of... I'd like, say that's so, yeah. Usually, yeah. Yeah, what, why about... are you sharing it? If you don't care what other people think, you just write it down and pin it on your wall or something, or burn it, like, right after you've written it. It's like, well, <laughs> got that thought out of my head. <laughs> Dude, several people uh, with multiverse of madness, I saw this in the Discord, there was, some people were saying, and in the comments when it was getting ready to premiere, they were like, I actually really like this film, but I'm curious what Mauler, like, found. And it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can have that. Exactly. That could be the reason you want to check it out. You just want to see what things do and yeah. did not make sense. So well, you kind of... but, but as we've learned with this video, there is nothing to be gained from hearing what somebody else has to say because any insights that they could have, you must have had because you also played the game and or watched the film and or watched oh the TV God, show. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you... there's nothing new to be learned from somebody else's perspective. Which, by which the I way, thought was the thing that we're praising. We've talked about this before, but, like, I thought Get Out was awesome. And then I watched ER's video on it and I was like, oh... Not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I understand. If you do it. really oh, like something oh, and you find out someone hated it, don't you kind of want to know why? Yeah. 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 And I sometimes you end up really disagreeing with their opinion, and every so exactly. often it turns you around. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah I actually, didn't. Whole, it's almost way. like that's the whole point of all of this. Yeah. You could argue Sharing that. Sharing out perspectives and trying to reach some understanding. Yeah. You could even argue that any statement is persuasive, it, but the intent is persuasion to to persuade somebody to your way of thinking like a, even just like a trivial thing. Like I watched one time I saw it on my feed. I watched an entire video dedicated to the mandibles on predator's face <laughs> between all the movies and how it's changed over the years yeah. and how they start out with like, you know, physical little props, a little like robot mandibles. And then it got weirder and weirder to the point where like it got big sort of like this sort of stretched out like leathery thing and, and how it changed over, over the, over the years until, eventually didn't even look anything like the original predator mandibles i'm like huh i never really noticed that before but now that i notice it it does look kind of bad in the later films huh weird and right. and it was just it was persuasive it had facts it had examples it had visuals so i was like oh didn't realize that before that's cool yeah and the funniest part Joseph Anderson has a fantastic video called oh, Subjectivity no. is Implied where he was <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, yeah. that video. Hey, I remember, oh, yes. I re I remember yes. this video. Oh, amazing. Hey, what a throwback. That's like EFA 20 yeah. or something? 16. Yo, that Good was more right I, I, I remember this one. I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> what a classic. This is like when Patrick Will Willems recommended movie, Bob. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, exactly. he's referencing this video in a positive way that right and i gather yeah, by your reaction yes, that this is a yes. video that is like dumb it, it's very astute to give view. you an yes. idea the okay. reason joseph made that video was all the backlash he got from uh, his retarded opinions and, and lots of different things he was like oh shit okay well you know what stop telling me that i'm sometimes subjective and sometimes objective all of it's subjective so that's pretty much what that video is I am only mm. here because of how dumb that video is. Yeah, I've never <laughs> heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, ironically, for anyone who doesn't know, we looked at the comment section, we read one out, and then we realized that the person who wrote it was Theo, and they were in our chat at the time, I think. We're like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he right. gets to tell us that Dark Souls isn't that hard 12 times a stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I'm telling you. It's not. It's hopping. Eating a piece of media with someone might open your eyes to hidden meanings or flaws you didn't previously notice. Right. Finding a video. There's no such thing. There's yeah, no such thing as a flaw. 
you're right. Yeah. No such thing as flaw. It's all about how you feel. Remember? Opinion when you're trying to use it as some sort of mind-changing weapon isn't really a productive. Oh my way god, to that's go not what they were telling you. Just watch that. They mind specifically meant it was going to change your mind by opening your eyes up to flaws. That's what they were talking about. Critiquing. Yeah. Uh, However, no, with so many weapon. posts and think pieces and five-hour video essays and Steam reviews and comment oh, threads, it can be hard oh, to dive into oh, any given now, game man. without a bunch of disjointed Ooh. expectations. The overwhelming, unceasing barrage of content can drastically affect the pieces of media I'm you- I'm sorry you can't pass the different videos very well. Sorry so you have trouble with Yes, people reviews affect people's opinions. You, you actually don't news. need to watch any of these things. <laughs> it's all optional. <laughs> mm -hmm. choose to spend your valuable time on, or cause you to stress and reconsider stress. things you were confident stress. in enjoying, and I can stress. definitely say I suffer from this to a pretty extreme projecting? degree. That's Even a if I'm a pre-existing fan of like, a franchise, a or just excited for a new game, a single negative comment is enough to plant that seed of doubt oh, and no. cause me to start hyper-analyzing oh, no. things as I play. On, it's gotten so bad that I try to watch or read as little it's as possible real. about a game until I'm completely done with it. That's okay, fine. You can do that. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's, I think that's what too. you should do, really. Yeah, I, I'm on board yeah, with that. It's like you solved your own problem. So why are you making this video? <laughs> I know that this living in a bubble I'll tell you, this video was never for us. Oh, no, 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 this was not meant for us for us to see. <laughs> but we've seen. Right apparently, now. he thinks reviews are also not for the person reading the review. It's just for me to vomit my personal feelings. Uh, Usually, uh, the best. Best choice, and there's a whole other discussion to be had about spoilers and secrets, uh -huh. but for now, avoiding most opinions until I've formed an opinion of my own goes a long way in helping me enjoy a game more naturally. Helping to Seriously, enjoy it more so, naturally. How do you pick which games you play? That is one of the most loaded statements. <laughs> In terms of just like, what way, well, hang yeah. on, what do you mean? Because mm. so like, he's, I... Uh, okay. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, he's saying that he avoids any and all comments or opinions about games before he plays them so he's basically telling you be like me don't re watch reviews he's basically telling people not to watch his content right because he does reviews <laughs> or not oh, but also already made up their own mind about it. Like a lot I... of the times i like to go into things completely cold in terms of i, I know nothing about it yeah mm -hmm. but i want to know what like especially after i see it i want to know what people think I want to hear hmm. what people have to say. I want to see a review on it. I want to see if we align or we if we differ. Well, one one element of it is knowing you're not insane when someone goes like, oh, I fucking yep. hated Chuba Joom Joom, and you're like, yeah, same, same. I yeah. fucking hated him too. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah he's such a doom. dick. Personally, I, think, I'm gonna I feel like rather just rather than just ruling out all kind of review videos, this comes down to like hurt feelings. Where it's it's, yes, oh, absolutely. hugely, absolutely. you know. Whole video like, is very upset that someone said in a comment. Don't, fucking... don't say anything if you don't have anything positive to say, basically. And if yeah, you have anything yeah. negative to say, you're being Except overly critical the, and you're not, you know. There's a video on the channel called Open World Games Are a Mess. Oh, it's like gosh. that sounds like a very um, definitive statement well, about I best, current I, open world games. I best not and a lot of the watch criticism that. seems to be waypoints and stuff. I best not watch that till I play all open world games. Wouldn't want to destroy my natural enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of the mm. problem is that this perspective is something like the perspective espoused in this video is one that people really struggle to maintain consistently. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of like when people say. Uh, there's no such thing as, like, an objective review. It's like, that sounds pretty objective. <laughs> like, how, like, you know, how, how do you, how do you contradict yourself? So, like, I don't, I don't know what's... You have to appreciate the audacity of it. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's, um, at the end of the day, the reality is you put your opinions out there because you do want to persuade people. That, of course yeah. you do. That's why you put it on the internet for people to watch. Um, there are things that you consider to be good or bad by some sort of metric, um, and you're willing to share them with people. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you're totally fine with, with doing it to games that you consider to be bad, and then, of course, in the opposite direction for things you consider to be good. And that's totally fine. That's chill. It's yeah. okay. It's not, it's not that scary. Sonic <laughs> Frontiers with the mindset of a lobotomized toddler, so I can be excited for two seconds before the harsh reality helps me cry myself to sleep at night. You have I Sonic. envy people you that You like Sonic too much. You might just have issues. <laughs> like you said, you, yeah, I already said that. You like Sonic too much. I just, I just hate Joom Joom for the voice acting. Oh, yeah. Same. 
just play a game and have fun. How do you? I already do play games and have Guys, fun. Dude, just, just yeah. turn your brain off. And then on. I talk about them, and when they shit, I tell you it's shit, and it's still kind of fun. It's, it's, shut up. Yeah, I don't. I don't need this video Adam. to tell me like you need to stop being so critical. Just enjoy it. It's like I do. Shut up. Yeah, I can do both at the you same just time. Just turn your brain off. Like I can do it when I play Bloons Tower Defense. Sure. Okay. Like, for a regular single okay. player experience. What, a, a, what the, the damning fuck you? What? That's funny. What's wrong with Bloons Tower Defense? Tower defense, tower defense. You can't relax. Okay, shut up my brain for, <laughs> what? for a regular game. Ah, what? a regular game as opposed to a regular <laughs> game like Bloons Tower Defense. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just grasping at straws here. Yes. Yep. I don't even know how to end this video yet. I'm just gonna go <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? In my are you oh, the writer from Metal Gear Rising? You don't even know how it ends yet? I still have five minutes. I didn't want to make this video, guys. Wait, what is happening? Well, he's, he's playing, playing Metal Gear Rising. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good game. I fight. I hope he has that like, angry awesome. face like uh, Metal Gear Rising cool. Revengeance. Cool. Go on. It's probably the okay. video game ever made. I will never give it a score, and I hesitate Why? to even attempt to compare it to Platinum's. Because you enjoyed it Why? so much. Why? It's such Why? a crazy, you know, it has unique a experience. You never want to nail it down with any kind of definitive mechanical definition of anything that's going on in the game. Even though it can be very interesting to compare Metal Gear Rising to the other games that yeah. uh, they made, like I'm frustrated with other I'm yeah, frustrated yeah, because, because shit to talk about in this game. if a game is giving you such a crazy awesome unique experience you never want to touch it with a single critical eye because you wouldn't want to damage any of that, that's one direction to go. The direction I go is, fuck, I really want to apply a critical eye to this to figure out why it gave me that experience. Why? Exactly. What is the mechanical Isn't nature it? of this that causes hmm. that kind of experience? Doesn't that give you, like, religious it, so zealot well. vibes? Like, don't even question it. Do oh, not yeah. apply any sort of criticism to well, this So what I find interesting hold. is um, that you espouse the perspective that there's no way that you can qualify, like, any perspective that you, that you have in a way that is going to be, like, universally or broadly applicable, yet you're kind of scared by the notion of somebody yes. turning a critical eye to something. It's like, how? How can you be scared? It's all everything. Everything is everything that it can ever be all at once. Like, it... It can never be good or bad or flawed in any way or like it can't because everything is anything to anybody based on what they personally feel. So what are you afraid of? Yeah, it's a, the reason why you're scared is because you know that there are things that somebody could say about even this game, which I really like. There's a that great might make uh, you not feel as good about it. There's a great irony in the fact that he's like opposed to putting it in any kind of a box being sealed and labeled with whatever it actually is. But he's put it in Schrodinger's box. We don't even know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Other titles because who fucking cares? Where most Whoa, oh my care. god, you must be really care. Really care. How do you, you really fucking care, care about the other platinum you're, games? You really care because you're very nervous about it. You're scared of what will happen to your perspective on that game. So you care a lot, I would say. Games operate at maybe 60 to 80% for a runtime of 10 to 30 hours. Metal Gear Rising functions similar to the former it's CEO like four hours of Costco when they tried to okay. change the price yeah, of the hot cool. dog. If you let up on the gas even once, I will fucking kill you. I might have finished the whole thing in six hours, but I don't look, give a damn hours. about the hour count. Oh, it's a game I don't, I don't care that you don't care. Review because it's so fucking stupid and awesome. I wasn't thinking about so, whether or not the block mechanic was too generous or if so, the camera like, why not? Out a little bit Metal Gear Rising has got problems and to identifying fun. those problems would have made for a better game. Like the inventory, the weapon select thing, pretty bad. Yeah, yeah it's going to a pause suck. menu to filter through it. Shut you up, don't you fun. Lose, like, I can, you can <laughs> simultaneously say this game is awesome as fuck and I really like it, but also like the inventory system could be tweaked a bit. Maybe yeah. if there was a little bit more variation to the weapons, and that would have made the game is better. Overpowered. The power is yeah. overpowered, exactly. The subconscious brain was being physically pummeled by the pure adrenaline running good. through my yeah, you veins, felt really forcing good. me to scream. Yeah. 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 With what? Raiden, every time he crashed yeah. so over a fresh one. Gatorade There's only two animations What I'm trying to get at here, just like I did with Sonic Adventure Yeah, but he was having fun for him, so shut oh, wait, the fuck he, up. He's <laughs> saying what he's actually trying to get at. Adventure 2 is that Metal Gear Rising was all about the experience. There you go. A Steam checklist about graphics or sound effects or Every game is about the experience. Or a I thought, video. I thought yeah. we were talking about Everything. the essay, though. The big dissertation about Everything you it's... consume for entertainment is about... What are you suggesting? That we never talk about anything mechanical ever again anymore because it's only about the experience. What is wrong with you? Everything is about the experience. The exactly. mechanics are the experience. Everything is an experience. Every game that you play is an experience. This is what I mean about the whole, like, bad. 
It's like a level one epiphany. It's like, where are you? Catch up with reality. <laughs> we all know this. Move on. Also, Reach the second like epiphany where you realize it's important to have both. I want to like challenge this guy to be like, dude, you and me, we're each writing 2,000 words on Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. We're just gonna read them out, see how it goes. <laughs> every second of action could never have explained the feeling of playing Revengeance. Except yeah, for the one no, I found could. that you made you can check box. Isn't uh, that what he's doing right now? For every so category so called so Metal so Gear so Rising cool Revengeance. Man. That one's pretty good. Maybe what I'm saying here is that there's a part of games that none of us can entirely uh, analyze or review. It's how the part where we feel things individually. You're goddamn right because that's what we feel individually. Yeah. Like, that's, why would you even bring it up? How they make us feel. Yeah. Well, oh you my know, god! You kind of like knew that. I, we along with this. my other video essay colleagues in crime, do what we can to tell stories and share personal experiences about our favorite games. But the idea that criticism, reviews, and internet discourse can scare people away from things they might have enjoyed- No, scare you away. That's scare you. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> ...is kinda unfortunate. Microtransactions, manipulation, industry standards, crunch culture, and false promises are an entirely different can of worms. But if people hey. like something, even though <laughs> I agree, that is an entirely different can of worms. Yeah. Why did you even bring it up? <laughs> why, why, why is this? Why is this relevant? <laughs> what? Those are the things I prefer to talk about because I'm one of those uh, video game YouTubers who I tackles the real questions. Uh, don't, mm. I don't think they're <laughs> wrong. That's not how opinions work. Oh my Just God. because I have a couple hundred thousand subscribers and know how to apply transition presets to a sans serif font doesn't mean I have the slightest fucking clue what I'm talking about ever. Agreed. Ever. I, I know I've been agreed. bouncing around a ton of abstract ideas here, but I'll you, try to sum it up. Way to abstract say it. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> you're bouncing around abstract. Yeah. Sure, you have no definitely. idea what you're talking about because you had the one level one epiphany. You gotta wait a few decades and you'll get there. Don't worry. As I remember as my first week on YouTube. Simplest way I can. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's okay to like things that other people yes! think are yes! Oh my yes! god, yes! how old yes! are you? Yes! No one has ever Why disagreed this with this so point. Long? <laughs> long? Why? Or even this is not an epiphany! The longest video we've ever watched, okay? Literally. That concept. <laughs> it's just, it's this, so long for what it's saying. It's, Maybe. it's like I said, it's like I said, this video is literally just let people enjoy things. That's it! Yep. And it comes it, from the fact that someone this on a video fucking... video is let me enjoy things. All because this somebody... For yourselves, comment. I did not know this. All because he played Mario Odyssey, <laughs> enjoyed it, and then someone said, no, you're wrong. <laughs> that's, that's what all of this came from. <sighs> been stewing on Keep that on enjoying years. that game that your friends don't, or that a big YouTuber said is the I worst know thing all of this because I'm not for five. a clickbait title. They just mm. don't know how to have fun after spending two full months logging a hundred hours sorry, into your a video game so they despise to make a point about manipulative this. game design or something stupid like that. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. No. It's a bit different nah. in tone and style from what I've been making lately, so let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this no or if it even no, made any sense shit. if you'd like to it didn't make any sense at all no this was awful channel subscribing it took you 16 cool. minutes to not say what you said at the end i don't well, think you're awesome 16 minutes to explain. hey guess what people have different opinions and that's cool <laughs> like yeah thanks <laughs> very cool and yeah. if you want to be even more non and then if you would like to give me money to keep doing this all right that's it we're done Maybe that lawsuit would have been worth the risk, actually. I don't know. We did it. We got it. Excellent. In the bag. Gosh, we're just so gosh darn good at this. <laughs> um. And what? I don't even know what the curse of video game criticism is now. That's the name. <laughs> I don't know what the curse just is. That you can't it's enjoy this, right? things because you're happened. being critical of it. I guess. Oh, exactly. it's, it's just, yeah. oh, oh. That's what he was saying. He was saying, yeah. oh, I can't enjoy games because my critic brain is always on, so I'm always looking for for flaws the, and trying to evaluate that things. That was one of the seven curses. Don't be critical of games. You're saying the curse of video game criticism is the criticism? <laughs> yes. The curse of video game criticism is that this guy is standard fair. Oh! Got him. It was difficult to watch. Very difficult to watch. However, it makes me so upset. With bringing up that, uh, that that's we're gonna call it there uh, for good old episode one, part one of this 24 hour nightmare. Uh, I mean, happy times. But <laughs> it's worth mentioning that we're not going to leave you like on your own alone, Ted, scarified. Ted and scarified. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Mission posh. <laughs> that was, Scarify me, Captain. Depp. That was such a mode of my brain was like, is that the right one? I was like, no. <laughs> that's, that's completely wrong. He's got a brute force. But um, yeah, it's worth mentioning. Uh, 
the last time we did this anniversary mm. stream, you guys, you know, we go for a little half hour break so that we can gather poops and drinks and do yeah. everything that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something available for you folks while you wait in about six minutes from now. <gasps> what could it be? You guys oh said there'd never be more <laughs> Batwomans, would there? They're all gone. They're all gone for No. <laughs> can it yourself. be? Yes, it can be. <laughs> oh. So I guess you know I'll give them a few minutes Hi. to. You need to you need to go over there now, guys. See that one on Moolah? You got to go jump in there quick while we recalibrate. Gosh, there's so many more things we got to do. Yeah, there's that was oops. That was genuinely a dense eight and a half hours of EFAB. Like wow, that was just yeah. nonstop. Yeah. We covered yeah. two videos. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that was a grand <laughs> no. total of a, I want to say like 45 minutes. I think. So yeah, that's actually, that's actually <laughs> fairly impressive. Yeah. That was some oh, hardcore fun. shit. But um, yeah. you know, past us will take care of you, while future us are doing different. Or present us, I should say. Funnily enough, uh, metal rags for you. When was this even recorded? I don't know. I didn't. Oh, know, but it was still in the can. I hadn't. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Surprise! Uh, probably a year and a half ago. What I do know is I'm pretty sure this is Black Mask's first episode. It's season two, oh, episode nine. Oh my god! Um, That's when he pops up. Oh my, the origin. Yeah, oh, wow. we are that far behind. That was behind. a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> hey, we've, we've, we've really appreciate your, uh, your interactions with us there, chat. Obviously, Super Chats have been coming in. I think the plan, as it stands, may very well be that we'll do a uh, She-Hulk episode and then Super Chats for this episode for the next EFAP episode after... The anniversary, yeah, if that made any sense at all. Um, 201. And, and, scarified. and when we return for part two of this stream, we will likely have a whole different set of people. That's at least part of the goal. Um, well, and yeah, you, plenty more shit to do. I'm wondering when we may or may not fit in Gothic Phone. I don't even know, you know, because lots of things I'd like. Who knows? But yeah, who can really say? Uh, still another four minutes. Uh, um, oh. Uh, um. Uh, do we have to make up four minutes of time? I guess we do. We don't. have to talk. Yeah, I could just stop. <laughs> Ooh, three minutes. <laughs> Ooh, we're good. You could put on the uh, you could put on the panty uh, sniffing reviewer video and then cut it just before he sniffs them. Did Voxes show you guys oh, that video? God. I do oh, not yeah. know Vox's what that video, video is. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's Man. a guy. It's a guy who does like unboxing panty reviews in his bathroom while his wife's asleep in the other room. He's been, like, removed from YouTube. For the <laughs> He's for been TOS. removed it's... from YouTube. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's, great. It's, great. honestly no, it's, I... it's one of the grossest fucking things I've ever seen. Do <laughs> people sense yeah. how you know about You mean those? the greatest? No, he buy... no, he gets women to, like, wear panties and then he buys them off, off them and then he's like, yeah, I'm gonna take this. And he does, like, the Hey guys, how you doing? You know, the soft ASMR whisper voice. Oh my, and yeah. he's filming himself in the mirror and he's like, Oh yeah, it's nice, nice, moist, juicy pussy. Oh know? my god! Uh, it's, no. it, it, genuinely, it's one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. They're they're not used; they're pre-owned. I'm already subscribed. <laughs> that's that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Does this man have a Patreon? I just. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you like what I'm doing, you can support me on Patreon. <laughs> if you want to send on me your Patreon. God damn it. <laughs> What's the number that that Patreon could get to that he could come clean to his wife? <laughs> yeah, he's expecting to be like horrified, but she's like, "How much are you making?" It's like okay, twenty thousand dollars a month, honey. Can I keep sniffing your panties or what? And here's the great thing, honey: you have to do nothing. Yeah, you just got to pretend you don't know, because that's part of my thing. <laughs> um, oh, just I mean, it's, it's relatively close enough, right? Is it? Is it? Because I was gonna wait until it does the annoying, horrible, loud music. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chad will be fine no, no, for two no, minutes. No, no, They'll be no. fine. I don't. I don't know if they will. Mel, what if they all fall over? I mean, James can help them up. He's here modding, right? He can, That's true. He can and help them up. We'll aim to and thunder. Have the next one running around about the time this one is ending. Uh, of course, that makes the most sense because really? ultimately, the more little gaps there are in between, the less time me and Rags and Fringy get to have before going. No, more time there is before we can sleep again. Because we got, this is, you know, the first eight and, this is eight and a half hours, actually, this one is. Yeah, so, I think it went by pretty good for me. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm fine for now. It's usually the second hey. round that starts to be like, mm -hmm. hey, you've been up for a while, haven't you? So, shut up, brain. We're busy. <laughs> Stuff to do. <laughs> Done in 60 seconds. All right, we can, we can wait for that. Fine. Anyone want to talk about the weather or something? Uh, the it's weather been is hot. currently outside. 
Uh, I don't think it's coming inside anytime soon. Uh, well, if you're movie Bob, my... the weather comes inside, blows over your hands. <laughs> I just got back from Las Vegas. It was pretty hot uh, there. That's such a great sort of you wanted to talk about a thing and you realized in the thing you revealed something stupid and embarrassing and you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> you should <laughs> notice that when you're typing out hundreds you of cans. But well the problem Don't you guys was, like, hate that was... It when the wind blows your hundred soda <laughs> Exactly. Maybe he thought it was a normal, normal. event. Yeah. He's like, this is just yeah, something he, everyone goes yeah. through. Like McDonald's <laughs> meal. It he very thinks it's normal. Yeah. Like, you guys have like hundreds of cans by the window that you stack, right? <laughs> Yeah. He, no, he didn't even ask that. He just assumed that was the lives of other people. Well, where do you guys keep your soda cans? Well, here's the Bags. thing, Ruby Bob. We don't have a hundred fucking soda cans every week. I like how I changed the story to like, oh, it's actually not soda. It's, it's yeah, just yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Is the bar, window always water. open? Yeah. Like it even fucking matters. You have a fucking hundred cans on your fucking window. You have an addiction. Uh, yeah. Genuine PSA. Yeah, the window not in. So I'm guessing the window was open at the time, but if he has a hundred cans in front of it, how do you open that window without knocking them over before the it window? Opens it opens uh, outward. Well, maybe it so he goes outside up. to open it? Yes. No, it slides up. He only <laughs> oh, needs one little space for his hand to fit. Um, so, oh, I mean, fuck, he doesn't close that window. Genuine open PSA, it. mute the thing when it comes on. It's going to hurt you otherwise. Ah. Oh. Mute everybody. Okay, it's up. Oh All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.